It's time to say good morning from Portugal. And there is something of a buzz around the shores of Caparica. We've weathered the storm like brave Portuguese seafaring folk that we are. And things looking a lot more surfy. Some nice morning lights bursting through the clouds that have now broken and some anticipation for a massive day of competition on the European QS game phases. They are on. These are scenes that we saw well, in the last few minutes or so, as preparations are underway, we've got a really good feeling about getting started here this morning at Costa Caparica. We were off yesterday while we battened down the hatches and took the brunt of a massive Atlantic storm, but we've, we've dusted ourselves off. We've, we've had a shower. You've even, Chico, had a little bit of, you know, tidied yourself up a bit. We'll, we'll get into that in a minute, but you're looking great, as are you, Jervis. Good morning, bon dia. Bon dia, how are you, good? Great, mate. All the better for seeing you. Good morning, Paul. It's it's great to be here again. Are we feeling surfy? I think yeah. we're, we're surfing today, I think. It's classy, actually. I got to the beach. There's a few waves. Uh, tight uh, is feeling out right now. Uh, we're going to see some really good reforms, I think. Mm. So, a big day off yesterday. It was kind of a... wasn't much of a call to make. It was, it, was, it was huge, crazy, stormy, but a lot different this morning already. I, I can't feel our studio moving <laughs> with the wind. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. It's um, uh, we knew this was about to happen. Uh, we, we we're gonna have uh, we we were going to have a huge um, Thursday and Friday and tomorrow looks like it's gonna calm down a little. The swell's gonna drop a little. So I think throughout the day it's gonna be fun. Should we have a look at the fourie? Let's check the forecast and see what's coming at us. Of course, today and tomorrow we've got two full days to wrap things up here and wrap up the season on the QS in Europe. What are we looking at today, boys? Yeah, today we saw we see four to five meter faces uh, side on shore, but not as much as yesterday. So I think today is going to be a touch cleaner and uh, we're going to have a full day of competition. So I can't wait to see what they can throw down on these uh, big meaty sections here on the inside. And uh, tomorrow, of course, a touch smaller. Uh, we are thinking about finals day year. Uh, I think it's going to be, be the best day of the window so far, so one to uh, two meter faces, side on shore again, but uh, a touch less wind again, so I think we, it's going to get better and better throughout the day. Yeah, generally speaking, if you lose three meters of swell overnight, that would normally, that would what concern you, but that's actually a big plus for us, so we're <laughs> stoked, because 5.5 meters this afternoon, that's quite big. It's not really going to be 5.5 meters where we're surfing though, right? Just That's kind of the swell that's breaking outside, and as you mentioned, probably going to be using these reforms that right and left yeah like we have seen all uh, throughout the whole week we thought when we were coming here it was going to be impossible to surf and actually there's like uh, two sections the one that looks like Nazare <laughs> outside and the one in between there's no waves and then at, at uh, the shore it's looking really fun so uh, glad uh, they were able to surf uh, some fun waves here on the inside there's a man with a plan around this contest site his name's Ugo Panera let's go and hear from him he's with Claudia Pinto that's right. Good morning. We're here with Hugo Pinheiro for the call. Hello. Good morning to all. So here we are after a big storm day yesterday. So today we arrive and conditions are much better. So we're going to start with men's round of 32. 30 minutes seat, so riders have time to catch more waves. Uh, and then we go to the women's also. That's it. Let's go. <laughs> There you have it, it's on, and you can see from those shots just how clean that is compared to what we've had, and any surfer from anywhere would like to see lines marching in, quite, quite a lot of them, there's plenty of size out there, it'd be about picking the choicest cuts from the meet here, let's check out our quartet, we'll see Gassian Dele going good in the QS rankings, also João Mendonça, Portugal, Dylan Grun, the German, ripping in the early rounds, Keone Lassa, out of the Basque Country as well. Uh, four surfers who've already shown us form in this one. Gassian would be the big name. He's he's going well in the in the ratings to get himself on the challenges. Did got would have got the wild card for the CT, but got hurt. Take uh, his that was place. A bit of, yeah, that was a bit of a bummer. Uh, who took his? As we see the replay, first wave of Gatia, 4.17, just to start things off. Waiting for the wave to wall up and double up. We're going to see a lot of big sections today again. And turns like this. <clears throat> Not much of a bigger wave, but good to start. Just 
filling off your wax and, and take those jitters off because it, 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 it looks pretty big still, but you know what? We have been seeing some big turns on these big waves and I think it's going to be a fun day of competition. Technical surfing there. Felt like that back foot pushing the tail all the way around on that last section. Most of the score came from that, so 4-1-7. I think the judges are setting the scale for today. Uh, with these first few waves, uh, we know that the first is always a nightmare for them to understand what is possible and not possible in terms of score-wise. So uh, it's always great to uh, the viewers at home and for us as well to understand the scale and actually understand where they're going to score each score. So um, as you can see, um, there's a few lines approaching the lineup. Um, you can tell it's there's some size out the back, but here on the inside looks quite, I'm not going to say small, but looks smaller. And um, yeah, I think uh, they're going to have some great opportunities here on the reforms. Uh, hopefully we can see Keoni and Joao uh, Mendoza getting started, started on this one soon. We know that Katia started off really quick on this one and uh, Dylan growing with only a 1.07 Dylan that was one of the standouts I think on the ISA in El Salvador last year I think he, he, he almost made the semi something like that so Dylan uh, he loves this type of conditions uh, he's a big guy uh, he has some really good power turns so can't wait to see what he can do do you know who else loves these conditions X formerly known as Twitter Oh. The fans out there, they're in, they're in good voice this morning. As ever, they're inquisitive. They've got lots of questions. Got a tweet in. It's Dave. We'll get back to Dave in a sec, because we'll watch some live ripping go down here. Oh. It's Chao Mendonça. Very nice. The backhand attack. It's crisp and incisive. Yeah, nice little head flick as well to finish. Here's Keone Lassa. Slopey face for him. And the white water grabs the fins and says, I don't think so. Meanwhile, having a sniff, delay. Decides not to bother on that one. So we're looking at mainly these lefts again, this rip bowl. Opportunities for multiple turns. Yeah, we've been seeing this this uh, left-hand point break. It's not a point break, but as we see here, the, the replay of Keone. Nice cutbacks. Just unfortunately, the, the whitewash just got him in there. But this way, first wave of Joe Mendoza, two-turn combo, really strong finishing turn just pushing that back foot very technical João is on a great form right now I think he's gonna get on the roll in the next couple of years and as we see Dylan up and riding on a hard looking wave yeah it looks it looks fun but at the same time you can see there's a lot of work out there there's a lot of water moving even though the surfers can actually be sit down and not be pedaling against the current but yeah this left hand uh, rip ball has been saving us from these huge huge wave so there's always a little bit of an opportunity there um dave in bristol question on x formerly known as twitter he wants to know your favorite european qs events of all time we'll put that to each of the panel here european qs it could be a present event could be a past event obviously caparica imagine Lock that in number imagine, one yeah imagine in. responding to that question arika well, it's not, it's not QS, it's not Europe. It's not even Europe. Other than, Europe. That, other than that, it would be a great answer. I just know. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> I would go for uh, San Juan and Lanzarote. There's a lot to choose from. San Juan and Lanzarote. San Juan and Lanzarote was like, one number, of my favorite. Number yeah. three or number one? We, got, we need three. <clears throat> That's three each. All right, I'm going to say uh, San Juan first. Yeah. I'll score second because it's been a while and I, I actually yeah. used that place. Yep. And... Um, you know what? You, we used to have a QS in Algarve. I I, have, I miss that. It used to be like um, Where at? Kurduama. Okay, Kurduama. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I miss that because that, that that used to be that a, was the big cliffs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You yeah, have yeah. no signal on the beach. Yeah, you can yeah. be on the on yourself like and it. just just have fun and <laughs> just have fun crown. and surf. No signal on the phone means fun. watch the action all day long. Exactly. Trouble, you'd have trouble getting tweets in though, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, that's the, true. You, oh, it's almost as if you'd have to make them up maybe if you were broadcasting that event. That would be weird. Yeah, so you know, that would be who, weird. who does that? Uh, Shiko, your top three. I never done the QS, but... Uh, you don't have to, mate. I, <laughs> I'm just kidding. The ones I miss the most, I really miss them. It's uh, Oscar. 
Okay. Scotland. Oh, mm. I was going to say that one. Thurso. Yeah, yeah. Thurso. I, I remember know. Russell Winter. Uh huh. <laughs> Destroying that wave. There we go. Delay. What's he got? He's got a right hander. He's and a, a double pocket. up. He's got a slash. And he's got a section. Ta -da -ta! <laughs> oh. <laughs> we nice. said it at the same time. Third, third QS. First time. Third QS. Oh, big wave. Big surfing. Oh, and out. imagine that ramp. Third QE, mate. Uh, Spin it out. I would say, yeah, Canaries, I would say. Uh, the left in Canaries is San Juan or Las Palmas? Well, that, yeah. The one yeah. in Lanzarote is San Juan. I want the one that um, Ruben Vittorio one. That's Tenerife. Yeah. yeah, that's played Las Americas. I was going to say that. Yeah, that one. That one looks really fun. Never been Great there, events. but it looks really fun. Yeah, OK. Bang. Two for one there. Nothing really crazy. Yeah, just a little backup uh, for Gatia. The two-turn combo, nice carve. The wave just gets really, really whitewashy, and he deals that with that really well. Uh, yeah, a little bit of a backup in there. Look at this, this foamy face, straight into a double up. Sometimes you keep, it can get hard to land those turns, but uh, Gatia did really well there. Uh, yeah, 3.57, so in the lead. Um, not comfortably, but he's already pretty safe. As we see, green Keone Laza up and riding. Whoa, look at the speed. Check him out. Great wave. Oh, that was nice. So after slipping off and making an unforced error on his first wave, Lassa's back at the party there. A couple of nice turns from him. It's going to feel much better. Let's see where that puts him score-wise. He's going to paddle over and get in that rip. Try and avoid doing too much of this, getting waves on the head. But how good does that feel when you made a bit of a mistake, getting another wave and belting it? Yeah, it feels great. Uh, that, that wave looked really good from the start. Uh, nice first hit off the top and this uh, almost lost it there, but then finished it off really well. So I think this is going to be probably the best score of the eight so far, I think. No. Bang. And this last one. Bang. So, yeah, I, I think he's going to be up there with that 593 from Jean Marie Mendoza. That last turn was really dynamic. So, let's see what the, where the judges put their score in. Do you want to hear my top three? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You're on the edge of your seats? Mm hmm. Well, obviously, obviously, Costa Caparica is number one, but we won't, we won't have that. We'll, we'll say other than this one, but this would obviously be, be number one. Um, at three. I'm going to go with Scotland. Let's go with Thursday, Brim's Brimsness. Nice. Classic yeah. event. I went, for, I went there for the really last... Really good. For the Great last for time. us to watch, but oh, for, man. For, for everyone competing with... The free surfing was epic. I, cool. It was epic. I went there oh, the last good. year. The last year they did they run the, the cold water. Oh, you did the event? Yeah, I did the event. Got a couple, uh, we got perfect through, so perfect. Yeah, and yeah. the free surfing, man, I got some of the best waves in my life. It's so sick. Freezing cold, but it was such a sick place, as you see Dylan up and riding. What's Grown Dog got for us here? He's got a left. Fades down into the pocket with a decent snap. Ooh. Nice bowl. Ooh. Ooh, that was cool. Just about gets it done. Didn't really, didn't look like he really believed in himself as he attacked there. He always looks like surprised to have pulled it. <laughs> he gets yeah. it done on a morning. It could be a bit stiff. It's cold. It's, it's hard. And he, yeah, he put quite a bit into that. I, th I think he read this wave really well. He was looking down the line and the wave just came all the way back to the reform. He waits to attack this finishing turn. That, wow. A little bit of air time in there. So it's uh, it's been pretty similar to surfing. Two turn combos, finishing turn. So I think that the scores will be right up there with the rest of the, with the, with the, rest of the surfers. Um, what do you think is going to be the, the point of difference to get those highest scores, Sheik? Because uh, we've all been seeing two-turn combos around the fives and the fours, as we see João waiting for the wave to wall up. Huge finishing turn again. Well, I think the, to do like a, a major score today, you need to have kind of uh, both, like the, the, a bit of a, a start on the reform. Maybe not just weave all the way through. Can you compare this last turn to the one we just saw from Groan, first of all? Who did it better? This versus Groan's hit. Which one's better? Groan is going to be better just because the, the section was more um, hollow. And he had the first turn as well, so. Exactly. Bango. Oh, that was nice. Got caught up there and. Oh, fell. that's not like him. Not really. 
Especially on his backhand. What's the name of that nightclub in Thursday? Skin Andes. Did you go there? <laughs> oh, my days. <laughs> oh, my days, fam. Oh, my days. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what's the rest Skin of the top Andes. three? What's the rest of the top three? Uh, number three, Thurso. Can I just, uh, just delve slightly further into the Thurso anecdote? Yeah, obviously, I love that place. Going there for that event was the first time I'd, I'd stayed in like a in a building there because we used to go up there to surf but we'd always just sleep, sleep in cars on the, yeah, like, on the just kind of like go the, budget yeah. like when we were young that was a drive up there but it's like kind of a, you know whatever we'd always sleep in the car so like going then having the hotel in town with the open fireplace <laughs> and the bar you could get a little whiskey oh my it's so, it's good. so good yeah that that felt like it's like being at tabarua basically it felt so luxury compared to what you normally a little do colder up there. than tabarua yeah but just in terms of the level of the luxury um, Mendoza has gone to first. Hold the phone. Four four seven. Exciting times. He's up there. Uh, delays in seconds. Groan. Best got a five seven yeah. three. He did get the number, but he's still in third. He hasn't got loads to do. You got the best wave of the heat mm -hmm. on that one, actually. So judges really love the 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 meaty section at the end. Meaty, meaty, meaty. Looked yeah. a, a bit hollower. I think that's why they they enjoyed it. Did you? Did the Portuguese QS contingent visit the fish and chip shop much? Did you enjoy the food up there? Does, yeah. Did you get the deep fried so chocolate good. bars, the Mars bar in, in batter? No. Deep fried, so good. Deep Not fried really. pizza. Not they, do, really. they get a slice of frozen pizza and they fry that as yeah, well yeah. in the <laughs> in the friterie. The friterie. Yeah, the friterie. Yeah, yeah. It was such a sick. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to go back. It's uh, great days. I've, I've been trying to to arrange that trip again and yeah. get those really fun. those waves around that and around Thurso because if you get them it's really really fun yeah and actually Beautiful. actually I didn't get it like super cold it was like one of the warmest years yeah. ever it was like offshore days offshore winds every day but 12 degrees sunny 12 degrees big guys big Scottish guys just sleeveless and, yeah, yeah, and no shirtless I need bother <laughs> all right just <laughs> under 15 minutes to go in this at the moment it's the handsome Portuguese João Mendonça with the lead leading Gassian Delay in this one grown and Lassa don't need big numbers to come back they're in the twos for glory in this heat number one of the round of 32 more live action from Costa de Caparica right after the break It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. In life, there's always something that inspires us. The millennium is always present on your side in the conquest of new challenges. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. on the QS in Europe, it's a Friday morning. We got the Friday feeling, as does this guy, Mendonça. Just belting it, playing whack-a-mole with sections, hitting them hard, and they're staying hit. Meanwhile, Lassa likes this. What's he got here? It's in fourth at the moment, he's got a bomb. Great bottom turn. Oh. Wow, that was sick. As he just belts it, here's the double up. Oh. Oh my just God. overcooked that one, which is a shame, as his first oh. turn was radical. <laughs> he went for it. That was that. That was a, a eight five there. If he had landed that last turn, eight five nine. Ah, oh, easy. That easy. that was commitment. I, oh, I think probably more, for the conditions we have on end. Like that last turn was was, was next level. Like seriously, the way he throw the, the the fins up, and really, I like the commitment. He, he, he didn't hold anything back on that turn, which is something that normally you see. Surfers do mm -hmm. like getting especially, that backup score, and especially if you have the, the first strong turn, they go they kind of play it safe, yeah. but he didn't. So, we, we're gonna see here the replay. 
very good. This first turn by João, really good, drifting the tail out the back. He read the wave really well there and finished it off with a nice layback. That was really, really well served by João. Unfortunately, he doesn't, he doesn't improve on his situation, but I really like that wave. A little bit of a smaller wave, but really, really good as we see Gatiapan riding. Delay, delay off the bottom. Slopey face has to do a, a carve back to the juice, and then he'll get a good, great hit. Will he make this? Oh. Yes, he will. And he does it pretty smoothly. So well done to him for hanging on there. He's in fourth right now. Lass has moved up with his last wave, and that could have been so much better, Keone. Right now he's in second, and this one's a, a tough heat because we've got everyone similar kind of numbers as a high score, and still with 11 minutes or so. A lot of quality, it already looks like we're setting up for a really good day here. Thankfully, a lot less wind, and you can see the scoring potential and those double ups as well. Very enjoyable stuff. So yes, yeah, Scotland, okay, we've locked that in, that's good. We're good, we're all, we all love it, we're happy. Number two, Azores. Azores. Oh. Take me back to the Azores. I please. remember that one. Oh, yeah. what, oh, I love that place. So, yeah, that's number two. Um, Ribera Grient on the north side of San Miguel. Um, love that place. Delicious, delightful, de lovely. Here's Gassian Delay. Nice carve there, and I uh, like the patient here off the bottom, and bang. I think this is going to be his best score so far. Most likely because uh, judges will love the fact that he actually made that turn at the end, and uh, it was a really hard section. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, I think he worked really hard to to make through that all that white water. So I think it's going to be his best score so far. And uh, with 10 minutes to go, everything is really close. Um, yeah, it's so it's close, Chico. Can you handle the tension? I, I can. Uh, I <laughs> These guys can't. Look at them. Oh. It was a photo. As we see, round house cut back. <laughs> you they were just frozen <laughs> in anguish. <laughs> it was a photo. Oh, no, it was a video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another X, is, X for me, Dennis Twitter's fired up. Pe we've got Pedro and Erisira loving the action, enjoying Did the you heat. Say number one. Oh, I'm the number one. So, oh, get ahead of myself. <laughs> um, we're going to head across the Bay of Lisbon and go to a place that you guys know, but oh, Carcavelos. We're going to head to Carcavelos. Yeah, the, the one in Cascais, in between Carcavelos and uh, Gincho. Yeah, Gin, yeah Gincho's not in my, in my <laughs> top three. Don't say that. Car Don't is. say that. Yeah, That's no, my bitch. Gincho's in my bottom three. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, Carcavelos. Carcavelos. Yeah. <laughs> now, I love Gincho, too. We had some good days there. Yeah, some, some fun hot, days. Yeah, it's really not, fun. All, it's yeah. not always good, but every once in a while you can yeah. manage to get like that something. place. Waiting for a number to come in. It's a big one for Gassier. He goes back to first. 627. Sharp swords from him. And a 627 from the panel. And what a great heat this is. We've got a number to come in for Lassa as well. Wow, this is enjoyable. So as you can see on your well, you can see who's winning on your screen. It's all there for you. Gassian getting the favor of the judges and getting himself back into first. Pedro and Erisira on X, formerly known as Twitter, wants to know, he likes Dylan Grown. Favorite surfing Dylans of all time? Who do you like this to Dylan? Any Dylans coming at you? Oh, You can have a while to think about that. A good uh, question, um, Pedro. Well, um, the only thing... Joaquim Chavez there, speaking of people that shredded the CT. As a wild card, Peniche. He looked good. He looked happy, he looked confident, comfortable. He, he looked really calm. Did, didn't he? Yeah. He's working yeah, with dog, wasn't he? He was with Camp Marsh. Yeah. Dog was training him, that was cool. I have some interesting info on that. He was looking really good, but unfortunately, before the round of t round two, hit of his round two hit, he got injured. He dislocated one, um, one back. Ouch. Well, yeah. Whoa. And he spent the whole the whole city with back pain. He couldn't oh. even move. Yeah, he was going through the, the physio therapy like every single day twice a day and he's still getting he's still recovering from that it's not 100 okay. percent go um, uh, from the injury so uh, you know what, what, what many times can happen i feel like when, when you get into a position where you're really stressed out about something that you're gonna be able to actually compete on such a big stage sometimes like those weird injuries can come up just Almost a respond, mental, yeah. like a respond of uh, what you're feeling. Back then, when 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 I got the wild card, I just got really. I was wondering sick. how long it'd be before you brought this up, mate. 
Well, no, well, no. Hang on, seven minutes to I go. I just got really sick so 20, for the So old 23 mate. minutes into the heat. I got sick. I never get sick. <laughs> oh, come on. I got sick for the whole night. I woke up and I said, when was the last time I just threw up all night? <laughs> that, was the, that was the nervousness. Not, I mean, yeah. you, weren't, you weren't sick. Yeah, but the back pain, I had them in Nazareth. <laughs> when, <laughs> when he did the event there, I had back pain all my life, all night. And I was like, oh, what is this? Uh, what is this? And afterwards, and if it ends, no more pain. So myself, I feel pain when I'm nervous. So yeah, we all do, mate. And we feel your pain as well. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. We can Always. feel a disturbance in the force, like a Jedi. I don't feel pain now. <laughs> <laughs> Six, Six minutes. minutes. Wow. Is that again? Jinx. Six minutes. We saw, I just saw your face like starting to say it. <laughs> what do you say in Portugal when people say the same words? So the other one has to shut up. <laughs> What do you say? Um, okay, in French you say chips. Chips. Same yeah. thing. And yeah. then chips. you have to I don't remember speak the last time I, I, I don't remember the last time I heard that, that, that phrase. Yeah, I've got kids who are like nine, so that's, <laughs> I hear it every day. All right, let's check the recap, boys. Yeah, we got Gatti on the first place. This is his first wave, 4.17. A uh, combination of some nice turns. You can see this left-hand grip ball looking really fun out there. Uh, even though it's a lot of work, there's still some fun opportunities. Jomin also the second place. Absolutely smashing these waves as well. Combination of... You, you, we've been seeing a lot of two-turn combinations and I think it's going to be the recipe for today. If you see Gatti on the best wave of this heat so far. 6.27, attacking that leap, very vertical. Really hard turn because you can see the whitewash coming from the sideways and he managed it. I think that's why the, the score came out so so high because that landing section was not easy. So Gatian doing a really good job as we see João Mendoza trying to improve on a 4.93, on a 4.47. Yeah, he, he's attacking he, the whitewater takeoff. He wants it. Meanwhile, one of our favorite surfing, Dylan, Dylan Grown. Look at this stuff. Good work. Doesn't need a massive number, 367. He got that wave before that just fizzled out on him. And he was looking around like, where is it? That one had a bit more to offer. Tense moments, these. As we see sets, reforms approaching. Out the back in the rip with Pryo, the heat leader, delay. Mendonca hasn't added to a score for a while, actually. All right, this is Dylan's wave. Bang. Bang. That's go. nice. That's really nice. I mean, you take away a little bit from some of the white wall on the face, which makes it look just slightly less impressive, but the surfing is powerful, sharp. Yeah, very good surfing by Dylan and also from this guy. Unfortunately, just that one turn, but Dylan is so good at, at, at adapting to all, all kinds of conditions. And uh, one of the main characteristics of uh, Dylan surfing is, is he usually doesn't fall, which means if he gets the good waves, he's going to surf really well. And that ma makes him a menace, and that's that's always good, especially in these conditions. If you don't fall in these conditions, and you can you can put turns like that, you're gonna get the scores. That's for sure. He's, he has the second highest score of this heat, and he's waiting for this this last one. Uh, that might put him on the second position, even the first. So I'm gonna wait and see how the judges look at that wave of Dylan. I really liked it though. Yeah, Dylan already has a 5.73, so uh, this is really going to help his cause. Uh, we know that someone uh, is going to be a bit behind. Was his last wave as good as the 5.73? Uh, different. No, I don't think so. Kind of different. I think it's going to be under it. I think it's going to be like a 5.2, 5.3, probably. But yeah, it was a, a bit different, as Philippe said. I think most of the 5.73 came from that last turn on that really uh, hollow section. Uh, this one was more, more like, the wave was beautiful and he surfed it really well, but I, I don't think he had the, yeah, the steepness on the sections. On the first turn, he didn't have as much of a good um, first turn on the 5.73. Uh, he had a better, a better turn on that second turn. But this wave, he started off really strong, so it's the combination. True. True. So it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, he started off really, really strong. Check out. It's a very white water, Bang. but he started off really strong and he managed ah. to hit a lot. So it's going to be definitely. Oh. Yeah, it's going to be better. Better oh, wave of the massive. heat. So far. 
I was wrong. Let's have another look at this look again. At this first Bang! One. Whoa! And then this one again. That was not an easy, an easy uh, section to hit, and he did really, really well. He managed to get another one. But that that doesn't really count, but yeah, six eight three. So a monster of a score puts him in first. Bad news that is for Mendonca. You see his grimace as he looks back and groan. Can uh, Zef Harris theory double G digits always make it? Be applied to a day like today. Can what? Sorry, say that again. Come again. Zef has a theory. Yep. That says that every time you get double digits on these conditions, you make the heat. Right. Do you think it's going to be applicable for today? Uh, well, at the moment, it's, it's crazy. It's 90 seconds away from, from having a perfect record with this theory. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> he's been, every time they ends, he's like... Well, <laughs> if Mendonca gets the score that he needs, a 5-5-2, then it won't be, it won't be correct because Delay would drop to third. But at the moment, Delay's in second. But a big score from the panel, really. Most of it on that first turn, you'd think. And clutch surfing from Groan, who's been waiting for that wave for a while. He knew he had a big number in it. He's Check this waiting. out. All right. Both of, them's are, both of them are looking for it. Zhuang is going to get this wave. Here yes, he, goes. he will. Use his priority. He's Ooh. looking for a 5-5-2, five, five, and this section oh. doesn't offer him anything like that sort of score. That might be it for him. 40 seconds remaining. Zay Ferreira's theory is intact still. <laughs> it is. I just love that. Every that ends is pointing at the, the scoreboard like. See, two digits. <laughs> the statistics. <laughs> the statistics, they never lie. <laughs> just um, if we see like three guys with double digits today, it's going to be the end of the world. Yeah, but sometimes it's hard to get double digits on days like this. You know? It but is. It, it is, and that's why he has that theory as you see Keone up and riding on a last chance. He needs a 4.95. It's a slopey wave, though, and he doesn't really go vert until now where he does. That was nice, but it was just an afterthought. It was a soft section. I can't see that being nearly the five that he needs. So he's had... He's shown us flashes in that latter, actually. He's been a little bit unlucky with his ways, but you have to say, hats off to Dylan Groen, who just bouted it, really. He had the power. Crucially, he had the patience as well. He didn't get rattled. So after a couple of waves looking for that score, and he had a 2 and a 0.5, and he, he didn't get annoyed. He just kept a cool head, and then when the wave came, <clears throat> he absolutely belted it. And well done as well to that man, Gessian Delay, who keeps his campaign going. He's going well in the ratings, and he'll want to come for finals day here. A few more heats to get through before that happens. So there's the results. It's grown the German, delay the Frenchman. Unfortunately, Mendonca and Lassa are out. We'll keep going at the Caparica Surf Fest. Half hour heats offering surfers a chance to get themselves into the round of 16. Next up, Paulé Chavez, Lede Vast. More live action from Costa Caparica on a beautiful Friday morning, right after this. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals, and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente, ao seu lado, na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo.
And once again, a very good morning from the Costa de Caparica as we look at bright skies, light airs, fresh action in the water. We're having a look at Nicolas Paulet of France, Joachim Chaves of Portugal, Thomas Ledé of France, and another surfer representing France, Gauli Vast. Let's go down here to someone representing Germany and ripping. His name's Dylan Grohn. He smashed his first heat. He's standing by with Claudia. That's right. We're here with Dylan, the winner of the first heat of the day. Dylan, how is it? Uh, yeah, it was pretty good. Got the heat win. Uh, really tricky out there to find a good wave, but I was lucky enough to get two waves in that heat. Just had to stay busy and they came to me. So yeah, it was really good. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Dylan Grown getting it done and quiet confidence from him. We've never seen him go really, really deep in this event at this level on the QS. He's built himself a platform here. With that sort of surfing, we know surfing's there. The way he's competing as well will be danger for his adversaries. This is Joachim Chavez. And if he is feeling any signs of injury that we talked about in the last heat, he's looking relatively healthy there. And we'll, hang on, let's say good morning to Zay Ferrer. Good first morning. of all, mate, I almost just got you to talk without even mentioning that you're in the room. How are you feeling, bro? All good, thank you. Um, yeah, this is a tough heat. Uh, great two first opening waves, right? And yeah, these guys are having a good morning. What do you think of conditions this morning? Are you surprised how much it's cleaned up? Yeah, well, um, it's the first time we actually see the blue sky for like five days. So that's, that's nice and a nice turn off the top from Nicolas Paulet there. Uh, let's see how he did in this finish here. But, but yeah, it's, it's cleaner, um, although it's bigger it's you know the waves are allowing more turns it looks like at least with this tide i think it's more work in terms of current um although the guys are sitting and, and not always paddling so i think it's the best day so far yeah yeah it's looking really promising we're looking at a big day competition potentially up to 12 hours down at the beach today great That's, that means great times in my opinion, love it. If only we could squeeze in 13. Meanwhile, that's the look of the line. So out the back, we've got the bombs hitting. You can see on the horizon, those big lumps of swell out there. It's still solid. Forecast says five meters of open ocean swell this afternoon. It won't, probably won't be five meter surf as such on the bank here, which is, which is a good thing. Because of the Caparica, we'll just bend this swell in it'll break outside and we'll get these reforms running and that is really the reason why we've even been able to hold any kind of contest at all so the forecast that we had and the conditions it's actually surprising that it's been even surfable so in a way considering that what a tough hand we've been dealt by nature this week we've actually been pretty fortunate in a kind of a weird way because we have been able to run heats. We've, been, we've actually got about half the contest done. So a big day today. We'll set ourselves up for an exciting finish tomorrow on finals day. And it'll also be the thrilling conclusion of a European QS season. Here's a bomb. Here is Nicolas Paulet. Great bottom turn. Wow, brilliant Oof. surfing. If he makes that, and he won't. But I love the attack from Nicolas. That was aggressive. He, he had a really good first heat as well. Um, he looks really in tune with his equipment and in his heat, look at this, very aggressive. There was this wave doubles up and he doesn't oh. hesitate. Even had a little barrel that, that wave. Um, look at this beautiful bottom turn, hits it very well, powerful. It was a hollow wave, so that would have been oh, oh. a nice score. That's the bounce of the white water, massive. All right, it's Gauli Vast, rapid with the turn. And then had to get off, stepped off, the wave ran away. Gauli, so far just in the ones for his previous two rides. Let's have a look. Yeah, this wave it was kind of a, a reform. I, I think it's still kind of the same thing where you don't really know what, when you take off what's, you know, a good wave and, a, and an average wave. It's, it's really about being at, active and I think those one turn uh, waves will still count. Um, but yeah, today I think the, the, there'll be a few more combos that on, on the, the previous competition day we had. Because look at this, it's almost like glassy and compared to, to the other days where <laughs> we
we, we even had a tornado in Lisbon. Um, it looks pretty mellow. Did you see the tornado? There was an actual tornado. Uh, on Insta? Yeah. Yeah, that was scary. Oshilon, Juan de Aru. Shilon is, ju it's, it's, it's like chilling. Not really. No. no. Oshilon? What does it mean? Do you it's know? So, well, I've asked loads of French people. No one sort of seems to know. It sort of means like, let's go. <laughs> okay, of, okay. But not okay. really. Yeah, it's a bit of a mystery, actually. I've asked quite a lot of people what, what that's all about. And <laughs> it's quite hard to get a straight answer out of anyone. Okay. But yeah, it kind of means like, Let's, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's go. Yeah, kind of. That's the spirit of it, from what I can gather. Who it's knows? Like Maybe they're all playing a trick on me. It means something else, and no, no, <laughs> one, wants to, no one wants to tell me. Yeah, it's like, let's get to work, down to business. Yeah. Something like that. That'll yeah. do. 22 on the clock. A 5 4 shoves is the quality so far from this heat. Here is Tomalidi. Late. But it'll cling on. Yeah, this, this heat is in. We'll obviously start to see, especially on paper, heats that are, um, you know, very competitive. This is one of them. Joaquin Chaves, uh, as you guys were talking about, obviously has been um, on a roll, on a little roll. He was national champion in Portugal last year. Um, did the CT in the beginning of this year, a few weeks ago. And surfing good, but these guys, like uh, Thomas Lede as well, he's... He's a very good surfer. Was it, got a little bit off balance there, but um, nice turn. And always important to have one turn uh, finished, so you start building your company, your co uh, confidence. Um, and Koli Vas now up and riding. Nice first uh, first carve there with with a bit of spice in the end. That wave just closed out, and yeah, it's fairly messy outside, but um, gladly we have this reform that had have been saving this comp. Saved our lives, Zay. Yeah. They saved us from ourselves, saved the QS and Europe, it saved surfing. Cowley Vast, can he save himself? He's in fourth at the moment, doesn't want to stay there. Yeah, well, he does, um, he does have a, a, a slow start in the board, but you, you can see when he gets up that he's, um, you know, surfing really good. Also, he, he did, did he have a, a wild card this year for the CT? Or last year, maybe? I'm not sure. Anyway, he's been... In Tahiti. In Tahiti, yeah. Yeah, he exactly. ripped that. Yeah, and he Surfed ripped. switch, didn't he? Yeah. In the semi? Semis, I think, yeah. Unbelievable. So, a lot of confidence, that guy. Yeah. That's not in short supply as well. You might have if you've been getting performances and results like he has over the last few years. He'd be surfing in the Olympic Games as well at his home break. I was, I was watching The Matrix yesterday. I love that movie. The Matrix? The Matrix. Okay. Wow. And... I wasn't expecting you to say that. Yeah, I know. Things that <laughs> Zay Ferreira's going to say next, yeah. it wouldn't have been in my top million. I watched The Matrix yesterday. Uh, First time you've seen it, or no, no, okay. no, no, no. I, you're, uh, I like I like Matrix as a marathon. Does it know. still stand up? Is it is it the test of time? What is it? Fifteen years since it came out? Maybe twenty? Yeah, is it still, some, is something it still, like that. Still doing it for you? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I still love it. It's like Star Wars. I, I mean, it's I prefer, not like I, Star I prefer thing. Star Wars. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a bit of a bit of a reach. But yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. No, okay. but I mean, in terms of like the force and everything, <laughs> and it there's. A great analogy with competition. Let's just see Nicholas. Oof. Ouch. Which is, you know, Neo, the main guy, when he starts believing that he's the, the one, the chosen one, yeah. to save the... This is Keanu Reeves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, that's when he actually starts, like, being able to stop bullets and to do all those those crazy things. And yeah. in competition, sometimes it's, it's the same thing. You know, everyone is... Uh, able, let's say from a, a, um, a certain technical level onwards. Yeah. But when you start believing, it's really when you do very well. And Ooh. yeah, I, I, I that came to mind because of Koli Vast because he he really uh, has has a lot of confidence. Very young guy, 
but um, yeah, I, I do think he believes in his. Yeah, himself. don't stop believing. Of course, a great, great tune by Survivor. Um, get that on your Spotify playlist if you want to psych yourself up for a heat. Here's Chavez, nicely done, and again, didn't need to do too much there, and it will get rid of the one, and he's going all right in this. That was decent. That's Jason Aparicio watching on. Wow, his parents are really in love. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Some passionate scenes here already on a Friday morning. That's great. Caparica actually. is for lovers of all things, of surf, of just being alive and spinning through the eternity of space on our green and blue planet for a mere brief heartbeat before being extinguished for all <laughs> eternity. Um, let's check out Chavez again. Yeah, nice first snap, nice spray as well, and finishes off clean Not sure with if, this. Have we seen, in the, his, in the history of professional surfing, have we seen the sort of, normally when someone gets a score, you see a little clap, yeah, See, yeah, course, yeah. I'm not sure we've seen passionate embracing on the yeah, beach. That's, that's, that's oh, I love new. That. That's innovation. Ah, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. That's really, really nice. Uh, that's some white water coming through. Which of these four would you say would be the chosen one? Uh, which, which of these, if you had to pick one, is, is most like Neo? Ah, uh, the chosen one? Yeah. yeah. Which one could stop bullets out of Chavez, Lady, Paul, and Vast? I have to say Colin Vast. Okay. Could you um, see him with the with the with sunglasses the glasses. on and the suit and the yeah well, yeah? You think he'd carry that? I'd be warm the, in Tahiti with the that. The difference though. the difference It'd is be that hot down there with that stuff on though, wouldn't it? Yeah. Tahiti, yeah, It'd yeah, be yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah, it? Would, with humidity, would be, would be uncomfortable. Sticky. It had to be just like Sticky. a um, a rain stopper, you know? The, right. Yeah. All naked, but um, with a lot of guns, and here he goes. All right, here goes Gauli, still looking for something decent. And it'll be another fall off for him. And this is atypical stuff from Kauli Vast. It is. He hasn't really stuck much. He's trying, but yeah, definitely missing, um, missing that, that finishing uh, touch. He's been falling quite a bit in this heat. Uh, uncharacteristic that, that's it. All right, 15 minutes and 30 seconds to go. Let's go and hear from one of our super coaches. David Raimundo is with Claudia. That's right, we're here with David Raimundo, the coach of Joaquin Chaves, who's taking the lead in the water. Uh, what do you think of the conditions today and uh, this day, the storm that gave us a little bit of a break? Yeah, good morning. The conditions are so difficult today. So we, we start today with the high tide, lots of currents on the on the waves and it's really hard to manage and to fight with the current so the the main strategy for the the heat uh, try to get as many waves as you can try to find the the one that can give you allow you to give a strong turn on the hollow part of the wave and try to put two scores early on the heat Joaquin starts with a five now already has a four six seven on the backup so now it's try to keep on improving on the on the backup because it's really really hard conditions today thank you so much you're welcome yeah that's great insights actually and you know what that's exactly what this guy's doing so get ways quickly he did that opened up with a five he just backed that up with a four six seven he's in the lead he's looking good glassy on the face for Tom Day with a soft backhand floater didn't have to put too much into that but it had a nice glide to it. it's not going to threaten the scoring massively but it will be a help for him with the 147, his low number, but it is smooth and clean. He also interesting from David there, talking about the high tide this morning. So it's really big on the high this morning, first thing, when all of that swell was filling in. This outgoing tide's just clipped down the size a bit. Speaking of clipping, nice turn there from Cowley, and that'll feel a lot better because he, he made one. It's been a while since he came out of a turn. It looks like he's signaling. Maybe he's going to change the board and come in. Live action here, good looking face with some steepness on it for Joachim Chavez, bang, into the white water and finishing again his ride. So multiple maneuvers, some wiggles, some spray, and he's ticking boxes here. There's the board change. Yeah, something was a bit off um, and sometimes changing the board helps. It's It can be risky, but it, with these conditions you don't lose that much time. Uh, I think the current really helps you get get to to the outside after 
the, the, the confusion, but let's watch this again. The first little cutback, and then clings in that final section. Nothing special, but as, as you're saying, yeah. He was already changing the board before, so he, it's not like something he felt on that way, but it was prior to that, wasn't it? Because as soon as he finished the turn, he made his way in, he was signaling. Here's another look at Chavez. Yeah, again, nothing amazing in this wave, but smart surfing, powerful, safe, secure, and he, he will have another one. But this looks very good for Nicholas Pole. Yeah, he's done that a couple of times now. And as a strategy, the stick or twist, he keep trying to take on that big, heavy final closeout section. If you make it, you're going to get a really good score, or if you keep getting complete, you're going to get stuck in the small numbers. So far, Pule has been the latter of those options, and he, he took that on again there. If you can get work done early on the wave of feel, you can build up your score. You don't necessarily have to go everything hell for leather into that big, big section. 12 on the clock, and we're all caught up with scores. So Chavez did get a minor improvement, actually, 4-9 for that left we saw. So that goes along with his five, giving him the lead. Cowley at the moment in second. He'll be back in the lineup soon. He's had a board change. Maybe a fin was loose or something. His board looked sticky on that last wave, didn't it? He didn't, wasn't getting the drive and the speed out of it. So possibly maybe a crease in front of the fins or, or, or maybe one of the fins knocked out or one of those incompletions where he's been blown up. Either way, he'll have a fresh raft and he'll get back in the lineup and he'll Look to really just try and get something on the board because it's low scoring from his point of view. Three and a two. It is good enough though for second right now. It won't be in 11 minutes' time because we will see the surfers like Tomale de Nicola Paule getting improvements. Here is his coach. Yeah, just Jason Aparicio and his team have gone really well on the QS. They've won multiple events this season. Surfers like Marco Mignot. He looks like a peaceful warrior. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's an interesting character. Yeah, and, and actually, he, he trained he trains Scully, right? Marco Mignot. Ah, Marco Mignot, yeah. exactly, exactly. All right, 10 and a half on the clock, and right now, I think he might have Toma and Nicola out the water. He's definitely got Toma Lede. Meanwhile, here's Cowley on the backup board. That looks a lot better from him. Very nicely done. He'll get a score for that from our panel combo on the end. Was fresh, he's got a spring in his step, and he'll look to improve an attack first place. More live action on fun, clean-looking Caparica right after the break. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals, and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. Back to business on the QS in Europe. We're wrapping up our European season here at the beautiful Costa de Caparica. It's been a stormy week. It's been a little bit wild. It's calmed and cleaned a lot for Friday. The sun's out right now. The tide's draining out. We've got left runners and we've got chances for surfers to get through to round of 16 at the moment. It's one of the rising stars of Portuguese and European surfing, Joachim Chaves, who's got the lead, five and a four nine. And Cauli Vaz made an improvement just before we went to break. We saw a combo turns on the finishing section of a left, 487. Much better for Cowley. There he is in green, right of his shot. In red, that's Tomalei Day. We're going to get another look at Cowley here. 
Yeah, nice one and straight into that second turn. That, that's hard to do because he he didn't have uh, a lot of space and now Pole looked like a first nice turn, but unfortunately not a great wave. Um, but yeah, uh, sometimes a, a change in um, a change of boards really makes the difference. Did he score four? He only got five for those yeah. two turns. That's that's good. Solid this, number. This last one for yeah for Pole. No, for Colin ah, Fast. For, for Fast, yeah. Yeah, exactly. This this was nice though, but then the wave just died out. What do you reckon the tide's going to do? Or, or how, how are the waves going to be when the tide um, starts pulling in? It's going to get big when it gets to mid-tide, isn't it? All this swell. So that that's it's all draining out right now, that water. It's not going, going against the swell and calming it. So we've got kind of head high, maybe head and a half sets with some sort of explosive sections. But when it comes in, we're going to get, I reckon it's going to be really, really solid this afternoon. Someone that doesn't mind it's solid. Yeah. Mark Lacamar, the Frenchman. They're coming up next, taking on this guy, Tim Bisso. Another powerful goofy. Also Aaron Strong, who was highlight reel stuff, maybe the day guy back on Wednesday. Got Francisco Ordonez as well in that one. Tough heat for four servers in the water. This is brutal. It's all about. Well, as David Romano has said, Chavez's coach getting a quick start, get two scores on the board. You can sort of say that about, about every heat in the history of surfing ever. Idea would be to get two good scores early, but particularly out there with four surfers, really, really crucial. That's the requirement facing Nicola Paulet at the moment. 5-0-4 That's what he needs. He's not been able to get much going, though. His, his waves haven't offered a lot for him thus far. And, He's been forced to take on the... That's, that's, that's the ways that he's taken. They haven't had that heavy section. Otherwise, when he's gone into the heavy section, he's come off second best. Something with a bit of a runner is what he's looking for. Tom Lady. So, let's see if that's some of those signs of anguish on this guy's face, Aparicio. Yeah, I was just thinking he'll be feeling a bit happier now. He looks tense. So, Tom Lady, being trained by Jason Aparicio, coached by him. And as yet to get going in this heat, and that's the first bit of quality from him. He's in the threes and the twos as well. And that'll be that'll be better. So by the time he gets the line up with five on the clock, what he needs for second is a four five five A. Did we see that? I would, I'd love to see the replay on that. The the, the turn looked good. I, I don't know if he had uh, a turn before that, Ooh. but Pole here on a bigger one. And that was nice. I'm not sure if it's going to be the five oh four he needs, but he's definitely definitely going to to improve. And you know, it's one of those days where in two minutes you can change your situation because it's small scores, um, there's a lot of waves, and judges are recompensating those one turn, so things can change very quickly. No one's safe until the, the buzzer is... Yeah. yeah, it was just that one turn. It was nice um, for 455, that's what he needs, uh, Parisio surely um, thinks he got it. But it's a tough one. It's one of those like, will be will be probably close to that score. Yeah. Can well, go either side. I think that similar to that 487 Cowley got, he got, did two turns in about half a second for both of them. Drifted out the fins, then he got the tail slid on the second of those turns. The section was heavier for Toma, I'll say that much. Here is your heat leader, Chavez who looks loose and sprightly and confident. He's leading this heat, he has been from the beginning, but it is low scoring, to, it is close. And you can see that crucial double figures, not been breached yet. Yeah, that's true, but it's not a theory. It's actually like based on... It's an observation. Yeah. Um, yeah exactly. <laughs> I like which, it. Mate. Which Stick we don't, it. which we don't like observe it. in this one. But like, it sounds technical. It's just the in Ferreira terms of double probabilities. Yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It can be a theory. Whoa. All right. That's that another angle. That last wave of Nicola Paule. Okay. Tomalade's numbers in five nine three goes to second. Bad news for Vast. He drops down to third. Here he is though with speed. Into the lip. A little drift. A foamy section. And want another one. 
it's a, a little muted couple of snaps to finish. So it's a similar kind of stuff. He's never really unleashing. His equipment looks better, though. He's happy with that. He's made the board change. He's surfing closer to the form we expect. The first turn, you'd think, most of the money here. Yeah, beautiful surfing. Just hard things to do, all of them, in all this white water. So his surfing is really on point. Look at this first one. Releases fins. You know, look, this wave is just bad. And, and he's like a lot of drive on... on on that surfing, so, but yeah, uh, not much consequence in those turns. Bolle, late takeoff on a shiny, smooth right hander, a wrapping snap off the rail, big section, Ooh, oh. and again, he goes down. He needed to make that. He didn't ever really look like he backed himself. He was on his heels a bit, maybe just the speed not quite there, but he, he almost looked like his second guessing himself a touch. Ooh, look at this big one. That would have been the score because it was really How like... How big that white water is? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's mad, the wave is double the size after it breaks, after it bounces. That's like the biggest, the tallest part of the wave is after the wave is closed out. You get these huge white water bounces and they've undone him several times in this heat so far. And you, you do need to come out on your surfboard if you want to get the points. So we went for a number for Shavs. Also, Kauli Vars' last effort, if it's 4 5 7, he'll go back to that second place. It's not going to be, actually. It's going to come in under. He's going to have to think on. 90 on the clock. Priority is with Tom Lady. Let's see what he does with it. He's on the prowl. He's out the back. He's got the white singlet on. And he's looking at these opportunities. And he'll look at Kauli Vars as well, I reckon. See exactly where he is. Kauli will try and get on this. It's a, got a lump on it. On the backhand here. First turn, a soft section. And he'll go up with a, a sort of a vert re entry. Again, it's it's nice. It's not, not like wow kind of stuff, is it? No, it's smaller wave as well. Um, not very powerful, not very explosive. Just smart surfing, but like regular surfing. And, you know, he with, with these kind of waves, point one, it's difficult to do, to, to do better than that because the wave really didn't have a lot of potential. But point number two, you're always wondering if he made the score or not. So you're never really sure. Uh, it was a nice wave. Um, you know, every every turn uh, on, on that inside is hard. Go again here. Ooh, we'll have a look there. So Vars still plugging away. We're going to get a number for him. Feels like a big score, four, five, seven, basically for that, that last turn. Not much happening on that, that little cutback snap that he did to set up. So you think there's that last... Meanwhile, live action. Here we go. Paul Lay still rallying. Still looking for four, six, seven. In a couple of turns, almost a, a reverse, a mirror image of the kind of wave of those combos on the end that Cowley got, that got himself the four, eight, seven a while back. And Chavez, a little roof ride to finish. A job well done from him. So we're going to get number for Cowley for the right. Also, Nicola Paulet. Your thoughts? Did Cowley get the number? I think the, the situation might change with both last waves of Cowley and Nicola Paulet. Really? You think he got 457 for that right? Uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, but like right there, you know? Either either is like. Uh, In my opinion, that would be generous. 4 I would say that would be very generous if he does. Or 4.6. It can be. Both. Tense moment, so Nicola Paule gets a 3-7, so he'll stay in last. But for the, this last one, Nicola Paule? Yeah, yeah, Cowley. Cowley, he needs a 4-5-7. He's on the beach. He's breathing, he's feeling it. He knows it's close himself. And he's had a tough heat. He's had to change his board. He's fallen off a few times. And it's not been the kind of heat that we expect from him as he kind of swaggers back on the beach, actually and waits to hear his fate unfold from these guys. Five of them. They're looking at replays and scores, and they're going to give him a number. They're taking their sweet time over this, which tells you that it's not going to be a three, because they would have just locked that in. Yeah. So they're having a really good look, and they're going to compare, essentially, with other waves, similar order to that score. Oh, OK, wow. Oh, two judges really say yes, close. two judges say no. It comes in as a 4-3. Oh, yeah, I he said He doesn't that. get it. So he does not get the number. And Kaulivas will bow out here. 
And he'll reflect possibly on just a couple of things in that heat that weren't really mistakes that he made. Apricio loves it. Look, that's the <laughs> Thank you, Toma. That's for Thiago. <laughs> Thiago Caric. So Aparicio stoked. He loves it. And it will be Tom Day that advances along with Joaquim Chavez in the single figures in that heat. Cauli Vast never really got going. The Porsche shouldn't help him either. We'll lose Nicola Paulet as well. It's a lovely Friday morning on the cost of the Caparica. Glorious scenes. We're going to get a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to be talking through the action in the dulcet tones of Chico by Chico Alves. Back in the booth. More live action from Costa de Caparica right after this. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals, and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. Welcome back for the third heat, a stacked heat we have from Portugal, Francisco Ordonhas, La Comar, Timo Teriso from France and Aaron Strong representing Great Britain. My name is Zé Ferreira, I'm now very honoured to be joined by uh, Chico Alves, Chico by Chico. And good morning again Chico, what, 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 what can we expect from this heat? Well, I think there's a few big names on this heat. Um, Mark Lacomar, of course, is one, was one of the standouts on the round before. Uh, Timo Tibiso, always a, a danger man, really powerful, one of the best Europeans uh, ever. Uh, Aaron Strong, who actually was the performance, uh, the best performance of last round. And Francisco Ordoña is one of the best um, and talented kids from Portugal uh, right now. So I think this seat is really stacked. So I think this is going to be one of the best seats of this round. Yeah, definitely. Um, also, um, every every heat in this round is already, it's it's like a big heat, right? On paper, at least. So last last heat was was big. This heat is big. Next uh, heat will also be big. Um, and we 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 are into a great competition day. This is Timo Tibiso. Let's see. Unfortunately, he had to. Um, he couldn't make a comp because he, he was um, injured not so long ago. Francisco Ordoñez now, he falls here, little bump there. Um, ooh, that was interesting, Lacomar taking advantage of his priority. And I think that was Aaron Strong on the wave, right? He wasn't too happy about it. Uh, yeah, Mark uh, wasn't really happy about it. He's double checking the priority because he saw Aaron so close that he thought maybe uh, he didn't add priority. As we see, Aaron here uh, really uh, excited to be on this wave. Looks like a good one. Uh, just a quick wrap, and maybe he's gonna bow out. Yep. 
but yeah, I was checking the ocean uh, from uh, outside of the studio, and it looks com completely different. Yeah, looks a bit more. Looks difficult. harder. Yeah, yeah. Like when you look at the whole. I think beach. like the the what we see here on the screen looks a lot better than what it actually yeah. is. So you see the glassy parts. Let's look at this again. And the colors are completely different. The colors? <laughs> yeah. I just feel it's more uh, vivid when you see throughout the screen. Yeah. yeah. And on the on the beach looks a bit more. So let's watch this priority again. <laughs> he almost falls, and he's like, "What are you doing?" But Mark says, I'm using my priority. This is competition. And I even think Mark was like, is this an interference? No, no. And then he forgot about it. It's not an interference. It's the beginning of the heat. Um, that wave didn't have any potential. So um, no, nothing lost there. But here, here you go, Mark Lacomar. Uh, as you said, she, he was a standout in the previous round. And one can say that Lacomar, well, he's, he's a veteran for sure. And in, in these days, like when the conditions are hard, he, he can really make, make the use of his experience for one, but also um, of his solid surfing, which is, you know, his main characteristic these days. Yeah, I feel like uh, every time there's a few, uh, a bit more push in the ocean, he, he, surf, he, he surfs better. Um, he's a, he, he likes some powerful waves he's used to. Uh, Oscar beach breaks all the time and normally when there's a few waves it's actually a really powerful beach break yeah. uh, that every time you catch a wave you, you you tend to have a lot of speed so every I feel like every time it's just too small he, he has a, a bit of a hard time actually having fun not that he's not really really good in really tiny conditions but of course each surfer as um, his own uh, kind of uh, expertise, and I feel like Marx is um, when the waves get a bit more. Yeah, and in uh, the barrel, I, I remember actually like my first European Pro Junior oh, arri you, arriving you, at Super Tubus. You, you did the Pro Junior? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I did. No, but to say that uh, we arrived at Super Tubus, I, I think you were there. With, with the Oakley team and, you know, with a lot of friends already, like being the best in the middle of everyone, you know, you remember. Um, and we saw like a huge wave from Mark Lacomar at, at the time, like two meters was like huge. Um, and he just pulled in no, no, uh, um, no fear. And, and I was very impressed. I was just like, yeah, this, these guys are miles away from us uh, at the time. Then we had, to, we had to eat some soup to get to them. But now we're going uh, to hear Joaquin Chaves, the winner of last we uh, heat. Take it away, Claudia. That's right. Joaquin Chaves won the last heat and he's here with me. Can you guide us a little bit through uh, what you're seeing out there? Um, it's pretty tough out there, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie. Um, in the morning, it was even worse, so I'm happy that in my heat I got to get a couple waves. Um, it's a very hard uh, type of conditions to, to compete on because you're not looking for huge scores, you're looking for the scores that make you go through and you, you just have to be smart in my opinion and it's more than surfing. I mean, I'm, I was surfing with Cowley that it's one of the best juniors of our generation and and he, he got down, so it's it's basically uh, it's very hard, but uh, I'm, I'm stoked to get through. Winning again at home, you're going to the next round. How's, how does that feel? So good. I mean, uh, the last few QSs I, I did here uh, didn't go that well, so I'm pretty stoked to be uh, on the round of 16, I think. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just going to uh, continue doing my routines and keep focusing on the next one. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done, Joaquin Chaves, keeping his campaign alive. He's the, the local surfer. We have two local surfers uh, that are doing well. One of them is Joaquin Chaves. The other is uh, Guilherme Ribeiro. And we have a paddle battle here. Who's going to win? The well, I think Aaron is really strong. Oh, yeah, Aaron is strong. Yeah. And I and think Aaron got it. 
but uh, let's Mark. Let's see if Aaron got second. Yep, Aaron is just too strong. <laughs> yeah, and Lacomar doesn't like it. So they they are having like um, it's already the second situation they have in this heat. And that happens when you're in the water. It's not just uh, peace and love for sure. Um, you know, some some of these things happen you don't see because someone is, is surfing. But you know, in in the heat, there's a lot of this going on. There's some games as well. She when you used to play some games in the water, you you used to be a psychological comp competitor. What what's your what's your secret? Well, I, I used to talk a lot with other competitors. I think that's something that really annoys everyone in the water when you're competing. Um, but yeah, maybe. But what would you say? Would you think about what you said? Or you, you were just like, I'm going to distract them a little bit? No, not really. Just speak a little bit. Not really with any intent no? of uh, distracting. Not no. even an unconscious intent? No. Maybe. No. During the interview, we saw Francisco Ordonez on a good-looking left there. Yeah, this, this wave is going Look to at this. mount up. And bang! Ah! Damn it. He needed that. Then this was during the break as well. Marco, a nice cut back here. Uh, waiting for the wave to build up and bang nice I actually thought turn. this was going to be a bit more than a three well uh, the wave was just a touch smaller than 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 the than the usual and uh he had the leap turn on the inside but the wave wasn't huge on the inside as well so uh, i think most most likely the score didn't go as high because of that and there you we saw a bit of a, an, a, an encounter again between Mark and, uh, and uh, Aaron when Aaron finished the wave. As we see live action, bang! Ooh, yeah, a lot of bumps there. Bumps and lumps, really hard to deal with that last section. I was speaking to Guilherme Ribeiro. And uh, as we see live action, I'm gonna hold that thought. Francisco Ordonez, bang! Nice finishing turn there. Can he make it? No. Mm. Uh, I was speaking with Guillermo Ribar before coming into the booth, and uh, he's going to compete really soon. And uh, we were talking about how hard it is to make that last turn because there's not much water. Uh, mm -hmm. You come from deep water to really shallow water, and uh, and a lot of power there on the inside. You cannot maybe tell by what we are seeing, but there, this moment here, it's just like you, you can stand up there and uh, you've got you've got your feet on the on the sand. So uh, all that water moving towards the outside and that uh, be, being so so uh, shallow. Yeah, the, the water just, yeah, there is is like moving going out, yeah. moving a lot and so, shallow. So and it's very the shallow. Worst. And as you're saying, it comes from like. It, Deep to to shallow shallow sands very quickly, so that makes all that energy pump up uh, and makes that inside section very hard. Everyone has been falling uh, on that in, inside section, but there's you know the bigger guys might have some advantage uh, advantage in, in these days because they're they're just you know they have. Um, they're a bit more solid because they're more heavy. Um, uh, they, you know, they don't get as affected if, as you if you weigh like 50 or 60 kilos. And Iron Strong is going right. Second turn, you know, it's rare a, a, a wave with more than nice. two turns. So he's going to the fifth turn. Let's see if this wave still has that last section it doesn't look like a good option to me to go right actually yeah, looks looks nice looked easier to serve but on on the Longer. inside on the inside it's even harder than on the left to finish if if um, there's a end section yeah okay. exactly look at this one just a quick check up turn bangs off the lip i, I really enjoy this turn tight in the pocket just a, a kind of a soft wave overall, but nonetheless, it's um, the best score of the Itze. So 3.23. And when you see names like this on paper, and it's like this, you never thought with 15 minutes to go, someone in the lead is going to be with a five point total.
after almost 15 minutes of it. Right. Yeah, well, it's very challenging out there. Um, as you're saying, look look at the current now. Look at the ocean moving yeah. to the to left the side of, of your screen. Uh, it's, it, you can't really look um, identified from here, but I think the current is getting stronger and stronger as well. Look at that, a lot of water moving, <laughs> it, it's kind of like a painting, you know, angry ocean. Yeah, it looks really hard to actually understand what's happening and uh, what's a good wave or not. Yeah. So. And that, that for me is like the worst in competition, is that you don't know, you, you either trust in the ocean, you, 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 because in these days when it's that hard to, to actually identify what is a good wave and what is a bad wave, um, yes. you really, you, you know, you fall on intuition and you fall on all those hours you spent in the water um, and something might tell you that that wave has potential. Um, but it's really, it's you know, it's not something you can actually see. Something you have to feel if that is will be a good wave or not. Uh, but that's also the, the beauty of the sport. It doesn't solely um, uh, is based on you know technical uh, knowledge or there's there's a big part of of intuition in our sport. Yeah, and uh, a bit of luck as well. And uh, yeah, I think today it's most likely, as you said, intuition and a bit of luck. Uh, I feel like when, you, when you're taking off, you don't really know if it's going to be a good one or not. So uh, yeah, that, that's a big part as we see live action. Francisco Ordonez, nice snap off the top. And another one. So nice wave there by Francisco. Uh, really enjoy the combinations there. Yeah, nice combination. Um, Francisco Ordonez is uh, a big Portuguese hope for the future. Let's see. Nice first snap with a nice little spray. Um, I do think that uh, it will be um, an important way for this uh, situation in, in this heat, so he will improve um, his situation. But in order to secure his spot, um, both him and everyone else, they have to do more than, you know, threes and fours. Um, and that requires bigger turns, bigger moves. And uh, Aaron Strong is looking at just that. Let's see if this one has that inside section. It looks like he's going to build. It's crazy how Aaron actually, actually readapt instantly when it, bang when you understand the 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 the, the potential on the left sword there i just love the exclamation point there at the end of the turn yeah i think i think he like he took his hands to his head you reckon it's like oh my god i finished this probably nice carve there Wait for it, cleans the nose, like just a quick, I love when surfers in between turns, this is, uh, they do stuff. But this was a very nice turn, this was this. Where, where the money is, and now here, <laughs> yeah. we love that. <laughs> he went to, uh, let's, let's see, let, oh, I love Thank you. a Reduction. slower motion. And now, that. Wait, wait. <laughs> that is epic stuff look right at, there. Look at him. Oh, nice one. Nice way And by also, Aaron. he went, he, you know, I think he he knows what, how to twerk because he how he went twerk. like really, really <laughs> um, <knows> low. <laughs> And so um, that will come in as a very nice score for Aaron Strong. And we are now going to, to take a little break. And we'll leave you here again with this big turn from Aaron Strong. We, when we get back, we'll have all the action. Stay tuned. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. 
Call everyone, set ambitious goals and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test, ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. And we're back. Um, we, we already have that uh, score from Iron Strong locked in. It's a, a 4.5, um, which uh, puts him in the lead. So small scores for everyone. Um, at the moment, the situation, uh, as, as you can see, we have Iron Strong, Ordoñez in second place, Mark Lacomar and Tim Biso in third and fourth, but they need low scores to advance so Mark Lacomar needs a two points to advance and Tim Biso needs a 4.5 so everything is pretty open at the moment nine minutes to come and yeah slow slow hitting them in, 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 in terms of uh, in terms of score as you see Maxim and uh, Laupolitien getting ready for uh, the next seat what a great matchup with Martin Fortz and Paul Cesar Etienne. Uh, Paul Cesar Distangue. Uh, most likely three French against one Portuguese. Yeah, just, just like this heat. Uh, three, uh, not French, but... <laughs> Eight minutes and 30 seconds now. Team Bissot with the priority, not anything major on the board there yet. And uh, with eight minutes to go, um, this is still yet to gain kind of a rhythm there. I feel like they, they, they're just a bit lost. Timothy Bissot is. is um Splashing in the water, something, something's going, uh, something's going on. I'm not sure if that 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 is related to some decision anyone made, or if he's just frustrated that he can't can't get waves because, you know, he surfed three waves, didn't yet reach the one point mark. And Lacomar here, is he injured? Yeah, I think he's. I is think that blood? No. What? No, yeah, that, that's just, you know, that's how rumors are created. He's just turning around, probably, because there's so much current that he doesn't want to paddle. I think he got caught by the current there and was like, I need to go around because, uh, you know, if I am to do well in this contest, I'm still going to surf today. And, you know, I got to get moving. So there he goes. He's going to... To go around, um, those rocks can be surfers' best friends and also uh, swimmers' worst enemies. So it depends on, on which which of these two you are. And Francisco Cordoña is here. Let's see what this wave has to offer. He's in second now, Iron with that last one, 4-5, goes into the lead, so an expected hit score total, but looks like the waves are hard right now, Zé. Yeah, really hard. I think when when the tide starts coming in, um, we, will, we will have um, better waves, also that inside section will, will be not easier, but there will be more water and we'll make that uh, a bit better. And Francisco Ordoña here, Chico, nothing special. Yeah, he was just trying to figure out uh, if there was a um, end section and he couldn't fight it. So he decides to um, not go into that last turn. So yeah, he stays with the 3.2. He needs to get rid of that 1.87. So a really, really slow eat. Uh, on our hands right now, really hard uh, for the surfers to identify waves with potential. Aaron Strong, though, I can tell you that. Strong, yeah, he's yeah. 
I can tell you that what he's done on this seat is really special because he was sitting on the left and he understood that there were not many lefts anymore and he moved to the right and both of these last two scores he got were on the right so yeah uh, Aaron uh, strong performance um, smart surfing uh, also he's not one to be shy when he, you know it doesn't he doesn't really care who he's going against he's um, he's very uh, you know brave in that sense he just he's really motivated to go and to to pass heats and here we have Timo Tibiso, one of surfers, uh, one of Europe's best surfers, like by far. Uh, he's been compared to Walkie, for instance, on his backside. He has beautiful, beautiful surfing. Just not always puts it together in competition, but Aaron Strong here on oh, what happened there? Yeah, was that like part of twerking dance? When, kind he, of when he was pumping the board, uh, the back foot just uh, slept out of uh, the the deck, and he fell. So unfortunately for him, after that big snap off the top, he couldn't uh, keep going. Yeah, a lot of bumps as well. Like yeah, look at but it looks to me like it was part of also like a twerk exercise. Let's see. Uh, it, it, get, it can get really sketchy when you do that, especially on floaters. Um, you can get most many surfers get injured when the front foot stays on the board and the back foot sleeps off. Like, look at that texture. If you're a surfer and you're in the wave, this is the texture you're looking at. Everything is like messy and bumpy. And you can see all that water just traveling around that inside section. And, you know, it, when you're in the wave, it's not very, um, not very good when you look forward and you see that. Yeah, it, it looks like with the tide uh, going out, um, it's getting a bit harder now to really identify the, the good ones. Uh, we can see by the scores as we see the recaps. Eh? This was Iron. Started off with a 3 2 3. Uh, as I said, he identified a bit of more potential on the rights and uh, he did a good job on that. Um, nice readjust on the reading of the seat and uh, making the most of it there. And this was Francisco Cordonio with a 3.2, nice snap off the top. And another one, nothing crazy, but uh, solid surfing there by Francisco. Here, Iron again uh, with a nice carve. He identifies there's a big session, big section coming his way. And he goes for a big turn here. I love the expression of the body, making um, the judges uh, see that he made that turn and that turn was difficult. And uh, look at that section, that was really hard to make so um, really good job there by Aaron to make that 4.5 with two minutes to go he's in the lead so that wave was really really important at the point of this uh, heat and with the heat we've got on our hands uh, we know Francisco Ordonez has priority he only needs a 4.53 to go to first uh, Mark Lacomar only needs a 2.05 uh, so Mark He's going to go on this one and uh, try to make that score happen. Looks like there's a double up. Let's see if he can finish this wave off. Quick turn there. Uh, needs a 2 0 right there. Is that enough? I think it is, but uh, Francisco wants to better a 187, and he might just do that. It's a small wave, but if he doesn't fall on this last section, which he doesn't, it's a complete wave. So he will improve his score. He will leave Mark Lacomar leaving more and needing more than a 208. And it's possible that Mark goes to second, but then Francisco moves to second back. <laughs> but we'll, we'll let the judges take care of that. And Timo Tibiso still not finding his feet at all, which is. You know, it, which is a shame, but we have uh, the replay here. Yeah, quick cut back out the back. Uh, there's a, a bit of a, a snap here, another one. Nothing really, really major. Uh, but he was able to finish it off here on the end section. Bang. Nice turn there. So, uh, yeah, 
Uh, just a, a overall wave that helped this cause, and this was Mark's wave just behind it. Ah, no, this was again. Nice carve and another one. So a two for one there for Mark. Ah, doesn't, doesn't ride out of the last one. He doesn't make that last turn, so uh, I don't know. There's a few scores to come in. There's the wave of Francisco and two for Marco. Uh, I feel like Francisco, uh, Francisco can get the nod. He needs a 2.5 now with that last wave. Let's see how it pans out, um, this last one from Francisco. I don't think uh, Mark is going to better that 2.7 he got before uh, I don't know if that last turn was a make or not but let's wait and see so nervous moments here for Francisco Cordonias and Marc Lacomar Francisco Cordonias gets a 3.33 so back into second and now Mark with that last one needs a 3.5 and he's not going to get it so well done to Aaron Strong and Francisco Cordonias they are through the next round, Marc Lacomar and Timo Tebiso, both bowing out of this competition with a bit of a shocker result for them. And uh, this man uh, it's uh, well and truly happy, right there? Yeah, definitely. That was an upset, as we call it. Uh, Marc and Timo Tebiso stay here. And we will stay here, but on a commercial uh, break and when we get back we'll have another great hit stay stay by Na vida há sempre algo que nos inspira O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios Juntos partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro Milênio aqui consigo It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Welcome, welcome back to Caparica Surfest 2024. In the water right now we have Leo Politian, Maximo Suno, Paul Cesar de Instagram and Martin Forge. And uh, joining myself on the studio right now is Flip Jervis. Flip, how are you feeling? Are you happy? Talk me through your morning. Yeah, I'm pretty happy. I was I was out there with David Raimundo on the on on the trekking Chavez heat. Every Portuguese was pretty much looking at the ocean because it's a very important heat for Joaquin. And also, uh, I spent half of the heat before coming here um, with David Raimundo also looking at uh, Francisco Ordonha's heat. It's very tough out there, very challenging. We already had a couple waves. Maximo Seno starting off with his half the top. It's going to be just a 2.83, uh, but good to find this rhythm. Uh, one thing uh, we noticed out there is just it's so hard. There's so much water moving, and you want to put scores as fast as you can. And you know what? Uh, I'm not sure if the Zef Ferreira's theory keeps on going, because last hit uh, we didn't have... The, Two digit total point of the first of the first place didn't get through with two digit two, two digit uh, total hit score, but you know what? It's tough. It's rippable still. It's a bit harder to find that it was than it, when it was high tide Chico, but yeah, we have to keep on going. There's still a lot of hits going on. Um, it's gonna be a long day, I think, and and 
yeah, we, we're going to have a few opportunities every now and then, and we're going to see some big scores every now and then. But for now, you have to have the, the notion that you, uh, it's not going to be scores with 18 points uh, or score total. It's going to be a low, low fair scoring hits because the conditions are kind of challenging, as we see Martin Forcha for his surfer. Not, not going on that one, unfortunately. But, Chic, we have to keep going. And I think it's going to get better throughout the day. The, swells, the swell is dropping off. You can definitely feel it. Um, there's not too much wind still. Just that, that little um, rip ball is still going. And now, uh, standing by with Claudio Pin, we have uh, the winner of the last hit. Iron is so strong. So take it away, Claudio. Even though the conditions are really hard out there, Aaron still made it to the next round. How does that feel? Yeah, it feels amazing. Uh, couldn't really figure the right spot to sit, but I managed to get a few. And yeah, uh, pretty happy with this one. Can you tell us a little bit about your choice of boards today? Uh, well, I have my magic board that I've been surfing in the last few comps and it's been going well. Even though it's a bit bigger, it holds, it holds pretty good in uh, these tough conditions. Congratulations. Thank you. you. And we are back with 25 minutes to go. Uh, everything stands by the same. Flip, I have a quick question for you. What did you have for breakfast? Uh, you're, you're kidding me, right? <laughs> no, I'm not. I want to know. Now we woke up super early as we see Martin Forge looking at this double up. Will the wave hold something for him? Unfortunately not. Just an in and out. And. Uh, yeah, we had a couple waves. Uh, <laughs> we had a couple waves. Uh, it's it's not easy out there, Chic. Um, you know what? How as a surfer, not you because you don't compete anymore. But uh, back then, when you were, used to be a competitor, how do you stay motivated to to surf hits and and make sure you get through some hits on conditions ch as challenging as this? Well, I think um, if you look past the last few days of contest, today looks the most beautiful one. So that's a progression in terms of uh, motivation. If you pass by the, the rounds before, you're feeling great today. And uh, this is Martin Ford, so a nice double up section there. Throws the fiends, Flip. Yeah, very right. technical maneuver by Martin. We know how ca he's really capable of doing those big turns. It wasn't an explosive turn with uh, a lot of water coming from that turn, but he has that technicality on it. And uh, really, yeah, Martin is one of the new up-and-comers from Portugal. We're going to check you the replay. A little double up, goes around the section and hits it hard. That was a really, really nice turn. Very technical, drifting the, the pins on that one. We're going to see here the drone angle again. She, he waits for the right moment to attack the leap, pushes that back foot, a little bit of a drop wallet in there and very, very good um, turn by Martin as he's going to try and back it up straight away. Uh, that's very important today as we see him going. Unfortunately, he didn't have the momentum to attack that leap. But yeah, today it's very important to stay as active as possible because uh, sometimes you think you're having an opportunity and the wave doesn't provide, but any, sometimes the, the opposite happens. So it might as well just stay very, very active. As we see the blast of blue, she uh, four points. Yeah, four points. Uh, he deserved that flip, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. I think he had the, the, the pizzazz, it was technical. He showed something different. Yeah, that's right? true. Yeah, we haven't been seeing a lot of technical uh, maneuvers since the starting of this contest, because obviously with this with this kind of condition, it's always a bit harder to go for the air of Drift the Tin as the, the Drift the Tail, as we see Leo Politia, nice carving, Bang. trying to a second off the top and Bang. puts another one very vertical in there. Very good surfing by Leo Politian, a big surfer. You can see he likes these kind of conditions, right? The board looks good, he's super fit, and he managed to find a wave that allowed him for, to go for a three-turn combo, so that's something we haven't been seeing a lot, Chico. 
interesting fact is he's always one of the standouts every event wow. and uh, he's really good on his backside so i love this last turn he gets i was really not hard. expecting this <laughs> the wave looked like it was just finishing out of nowhere he managed to put that board very vertical a nice first snap second hit off the top and out of nowhere just attacks very vertical on that that's got to be the best wave of this hit so far even though look at this chic. that was a really good technical maneuver but check this one very 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 vertical very technical very good turn to finish it off so six points for the suffering white as we see he's gonna back it up on a nice looking wave straight into the leap and he's gonna oh, a little bit of a rocket in there chic what happened he just disconnected from the board board one wanted to slow to listen uh, checking the the board there. I it's think it was just a wax issue. <laughs> Probably. I think, yeah, I don't think it was like. But he's something. wearing boots, actually, right? Uh, yeah, good call. Maybe. I'm not sure. But yeah, the first one was great, though. Um, I feel like he's on the rhythm. Six point for the first uh, one, and this last one, the first one was sick. It was really tight in the pocket, and the wave was a, a bit a bit bigger. So, this was the first one, I think. Yes, yeah. is the six point. The, yeah. the wave was small. Oh, and it he, was, and he had a six mm -hmm. just because of that last turn was was yeah. really dynamic. It's the whole thing, the combination. This is that was the replay of the, the second to best. Um, we still don't have score, but starting off as you see, she, even though he fell on the second one, check out the score. It's going to be a really good backup for Leo Palitien when we have 19 minutes remaining, 4.47. So that just puts him on the first place. And on the double digits. On the double digits. So <laughs> if Zepreda is right, Leo Palitian will get through this heat. <laughs> so we're just, gonna, we're just gonna have to wait and Can see. Can he leave the water? <laughs> I think it's a little bit early. By the stats. <laughs> By the stats, he could leave the We've water. We've got an, uh, uh, um, analysis guy here with us. Zepreda, he's got all the papers. And um, he's just got the feeling of a guy that analysis yeah, numbers. But, uh, 19 minutes is still a long time. I won't risk it to leave the water right now. <laughs> I'll try and back it up and even try and improve that six point. As we see him just trying to work that wax off, just to make sure it's scratching a little. This is a 447 chic, that first turn. Bang. Oh. Right in the pocket here, the front foot slips off. <laughs> no, he's not wearing boots. I just saw it now. So. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the wax might get a bit hard to, as we see, live action. Martin Forge, I'm going to hold that thought. Trying to work his way through this wave, finish it off. Bang. Oh, nice. Nice stylish floater. Yeah, it's I think that's such... something that the family has style yeah yeah definitely it's definitely on their genes even his twin brother as we see martin's father and all the portuguese contingent contingent looking at the boat look at that the ocean he was so nervous miguel i was because uh, he knows he wants to do well he knows he, he wants his son to do well as we see maxim up and riding on a not so much of a good of a good over wave um yeah martin Martin Chico is one of those surfers. Uh, it's just everything flows on him, and it's just it makes everything look super effortless. Um, obviously, his background coming from Irisada, just coming from Irisada with, with a dad like that, the biggest like local legend in Gorshus, and also in Irisada. He actually helps us um, with a contest in Ribeiradillas as a contest director and uh, uh, looking at the, the forecast and try to uh, helps uh, the contest directing to make calls. Uh, so that just shows how important he is to the to the surfing community. And Martin is taking it. It's taking it to the next step. Just because we all know that Miguel is a really good surfer, uh, but a little bit of a more stylish. And, and uh, not so high performance. We really like to see him going for huge carves and some nice barrels. And it feels like Martin just, it's a bit of an upgrade on his dad. Like Miguel 2.0, we, we just saw him on that four points, just drifting the tail. And uh, I've been surfing with Martin a lot as we see Leo Paul. Look at this drone view, we almost oh, hit that was, close. <laughs> that was so close. Wow. Do you reckon he felt it, the wind? <laughs> you heard it. 
drone. That's for sure. Drone. You heard the you, you heard the the drone going like. You gonna look for the drone? <laughs> Where's the drone? I'm gonna catch you. Imagine going on a wave and the, the drone just hits you, like as, uh, halfway uh, doing a turn. Have you seen that happen to anyone? No, thank, thank God. And I, I think when it happens, we all, everyone will know because it's gonna be a pretty big accident. Because <laughs> those... Uh, those um, wings. Yeah, those wings are so fast and they, they're super sharp. So it's never easy so it's not gonna be fun if someone gets with a drone but the the, the drone drivers uh they're getting better and better and and this guy that worked for us can we call them pilots yeah they're pilots yeah they're not drivers they're pilots drone pilots and uh, uh, and another thing have you seen the competitions they do on the drones yeah and on the fpvs as we see martin on a nice looking left let's see what Nice first turn, wave is going to wall up, big section on the inside, nice, a little safe in there, but uh, very good surfing by Martins, trying to improve on that 2.87, so uh, just, he feels like the, the, the ocean got a little quieter now, and it looks like this seat at least had a lot more opportunities, Chic. we have seen some nice scores, that was a little safe, unfortunately for him, he's gonna, not going to put the score. Up, up there in the the sixth range or something like that, but that first turn was really good. He could have exploded a little, a little bit more in there, and she. Yeah, maybe that last turn, uh, as you said, he wanted to play safe, baby. No, just a touch safe, but the first, the combination of both of them were great. Uh, someone that has been a bit lost is Paul Cesar, flip, right? Yeah, uh, it, it feels like it's gonna it's gonna be happening throughout the whole day. We saw Team Beast on the last hit just struggling to find a good one. As you see, little Paul at the end keeps on attacking those vertical turns on his backhand. So very good by Leo Paul at the end. Do you think he's gonna improve on that 4.47 uh, with that just one big turn? Um, as we see the replay sheet. Yeah, I think so. Uh, this was a bigger section and uh, he blows the fins out uh, with control. So, yeah, I think it's going to be better than the 447 as we see Jason Aparicio. He's a very emotional person. He's, he, he likes to show his, what he's feeling and likes to show uh, his athletes and his surfers on the water that he's happy or he's sad or very emotional, very very pure kind of kind of kind of coach. Uh, every once in a while, we get him on the, on a couple of interviews, and it's always nice to hear to listen to what he's saying and the way he approaches his athletes. It's it's a different kind of approach. And now I think we have uh, Francisco Pereira, the coach of uh, Martin Forge, to give us a quick information on how the is going for uh, Martin Forge. That's right, Chico. We are here with Francisco Pereira, the coach of Martin Forge. What's the approach for today? Uh, just having fun. The conditions are super hard. So I just told Martin, try to find opportunities, give yourself some chances, and put your surf, show off your surf. That's what we want. Martin is one of the Portuguese promises. Uh, what have you been working on and what do you think it's reserved for the future for him? I think if he wants, he, he has a great future ahead, but he, he needs to keep like focused and consistent. But right now, we're just trying to keep his passion for surfing, uh, travel a lot, make him score good swells and have fun. Because I think like if you push too hard as a young, uh, because he's super young, if you push too hard, he might quit competition or something. So. Just try to make him keep passionate about surfing. How is it? How do you help them, uh, these young surfers, to deal with this pressure in this first part of their career? Uh, I think it depends on the character of each surfer. In Mart uh, uh, speaking about Martin, I think it's just make him catch good waves. Like if you if you chase swells with him, if you keep him surfing really good waves, he keeps super motivated about surfing. And when the competitions have good waves, it's super easy for him. So we go on those competitions. If it's not so good waves, we avoid the competitions at the moment. That's how we try. The conditions here have been a little bit challenging. How did you keep him motivated to come and? Uh, uh, in this, in this case, it's super easy because it's it's kind of big and heavy, and Martin loves this kind of condition, so it's a bit harder to motivate him when it's small. 
So like this, uh, it's easy. Thank you. Yeah, very nice uh, feedback coming from uh, Francisco uh, with, a, with a couple uh, very interesting points, Chico. It's very, very important to make sure kids don't don't get um, don't lose that passion for the surfing and just to make sure they they keep on getting good waves and 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 score good swells uh, do you think it's a bit of a pressure when when they are super young and people just want them to make eats and want them to make sure they they get successful straight away because sometimes it can it can play against you yeah most likely it can play against you we've seen in many other sports like when you get uh, a bit uh, pushed to do something sometimes you want to avoid it so yeah I, I feel like if you don't push someone to to do some something that they don't want they end up doing it because they want so I feel like that's the opposite but yeah as a, as a kid as a ground Martin is really young uh, he's got all the desire to actually surf all the time any oh, conditions yeah. so I, I don't feel like he's on that point uh, of, uh, yeah, Francisco, about, Francisco, about the passion. Francisco said that it's hard to motivate him uh, when the waves are small, uh, but but that that's part of that's part of surfing, uh, especially on competitions. Because sometimes you get some really really grindy conditions. Yeah, although there are some grindy conditions, we've seen everyone reaping. Leo Politian is in the lead. Martin Forge is getting through. Luis Diaz is going to be in the water next. So stay tuned for more action at the Caparica Surf Fest 2024. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. Welcome back to more Caparica Surf Fest. We've got eight minutes to go. Everything remains the same. During the break, we didn't add any waves going on. So this is it. This is our view. The drone shot of uh, the town of Costa de Caprica. It's That's a, looking, a good looking day, Chico. After all, after all these uh, straight, windy, rainy and everything, as we see Maxim up and riding, nice oh, vertical, wow. strong hit off the top. A little bit of a smaller wave but still very good turn by Maxime. It's a very cool day, not too windy, no clouds in, no clouds on the sky. And it's a, it's a national holiday. It is a national holiday, it's Easter holiday. As we see Martin <laughs> just mistiming that, that session and uh, pressing the eject button on that. But we're, go we're gonna see Maxime improving our situation with that, wet, with that wave. Uh, so he's gonna try and put a little pressure on Martin Fortz, unfortunately for us, but uh, Maxim really wants this result. Uh, it's probably more important for him than he actually is, as we see Martin Fortz up and riding, goes off the top on that one, comes around the section, and we're gonna see him just eject him. <laughs> a little, a little up and down in there. And Chico, look at this turn, Maxim. Vertical, very good bottom turn, just attacking, putting the board just straight vertical, and it's gonna be a pretty interesting score, Chico. Yeah, 4 1 0 uh, for this last one of Maxim. So Maxim gets a bit closer to Fort, now he needs a 3 8 7. 
So, with six minutes to go, let's see if Martin can survive to this one. Uh, he, Martin only needs to improve on a 3.97 as well. So, I, I feel like it's going to be a really tight hit until the end, but having guys like Paul Cesar and Maxim uh, needing such a low number, it's really dangerous, as we see Leo Politien with a quick snap there and a finishing third. Oh. Double up section again, quick turn off the top and a finishing. Oh. So. Uh, unfortunately going down there. Yeah, Leo Politian catching some of the best waves we've seen all morning with a lot of quality, a lot of potential. Uh, he already got some really nice left-handers and now out of nowhere catching a rare uh, right-hander that allow him to go for multiple turns. So, uh, yeah, he's reading the, the ocean very well. He goes around the section, a lot of water moving there as you can see. And this wave looked like it was not going to offer anything, but out of nowhere, big turn on the back. Back. The wave just doubles up again. A little bit of a fun climb there. Unfortunately, didn't have the momentum or the speed to attack that finishing turn. Uh, but this one, very good. Drifting the fins, goes around the section. Hits it one more time. A little bit of a fun climb here. A little bit of a mistake for him, unfortunately, because he, he would definitely improve on, on his situation with that, uh, with that 4.47. But unfortunately, going down is just a 3.5. So, um, as we also have another wave coming in for Martin Forge, we had a wave for Maxim Chic, who was not enough to go to second place. So, 4.1. Yeah, let's see what Martin did on this one. Uh, is he going to improve? Oh, wow. that's a really good turn. Does he get it? He does, right, right in front of the whitewash. So very good turn by Martin. We're still waiting on that one. He wants to improve on a 3.97. What do you think? Yeah, I think he will improve for sure. That's the best turn he has done all heat. So uh, he will improve. Uh, and uh, if he does, Maxim will need a touch a higher more. Higher score, yeah. Yeah, so uh, interesting to see Martin putting um, the past, one of the past event winners, Maximus No. Oh. Wow. Paul Cesar waiting almost 25 minutes to catching a proper wave. He actually did one of the biggest turns off this hit so far, but the wave didn't have that finishing turn that you need to, to get those big scores. It's going to be interesting to see the replay of that first carve. That was a really good one. Yeah, that first car was beautiful. 4.5 for Martin Forge now. Maxim needs a 4, 4, 1. So Maxim needs to do his best wave so far with 3 minutes and 50 seconds to go. There's not a lot of time. There's a few opportunities, not too much as you see Maxim looking at this one. Shiku, nice looking left-hander. What is he going to do? Attacks very vertical on that first one. Is he going to have a finishing section? He is. Another... That, that just shows a lot of experience, a lot of commitment, and it's going to make it pretty interesting for the last three minutes of this heat chic. Well, I think he got it. What do you reckon? He needs a 4.41. Let's check the replay. Comes, comes to the bottom turn. Attacks vertical right on the shoulder of that wave. Comes around the section. Nice cut back. Waits for the finishing turn. Martin looking from the back. He knows. He sees a lot of water. A lot of water coming from those turns. Um, yeah. How about this carve, Chico? Yeah. Paul Cesar just showing a little bit of a frustration. This carve. I want to I wanna know. Look at this wave. Oh, <laughs> that was one of the biggest turns we've seen. Unfortunately, the wave didn't have that finishing turn that we like to see. And also, I think Paul would be very happy with a finishing turn. Just unfortunately, just a 2.57. If he, if he had a finishing turn on that one, that 2.5 would be a lot higher. Chic. Yeah, that's for sure. That turn was beautiful, as you said, with a lot of drive. He had a lot of speed, as we see Martin Forge here, live action flip. Yeah, he's trying to improve on his situation because his life might be in danger in Maxim's last wave. He comes around the section, he attacks it vertical, push that back foot, and fortunately he goes down. They all know that Maxim might change the situation in that one. Ordoña is looking at the scores there. Uh, Martí's dad, Miguel, look, looking a little bit nervous. Yep. 
Chigo, Maxim Zwaif is out there, 5.07, goes to second place with one minute and 45 seconds remaining. That shows a lot of experience by the surfer, the veteran surfer, Maximo Senua, just waiting and trying to find these opportunities. He's gonna try and improve his situation as he's looking again for another wave, Chigo. Yeah, this looks like a good one. Nice double up, nice turn off the top. And if it's another one, that's so two for one. That's exactly how you change up a heat very, very fast. He knows he needs those scores. He wants to improve on a 4.1. He needs a 5.41 to go to first place. Uh, he might improve in this situation with this last wave. We're going to wait to see the replay. Sheik, what do you think? Is he going to improve on his situation on that one? Well, I don't know. Uh, I feel like Bayes on that last turn, probably by a bit. Uh, I feel like the 4 one zero was a really clean turn, yeah. But I don't know, judges have been loving this last... Uh, Those finishing turns. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, the transition between the first and the second turn with 40 seconds remaining. He improves in his situation, 5.1, best wave of the heat as we see Blum. Leo Politian absolutely smashing. It feels like he's surfing on another place. He's catching some of the best waves of the morning and surfing, surfing them really, really well. So Leo Politian, uh, even though Maxim got a little closer, uh, we want to see the replay as we see Maxim feels like he woke, he had woken up a little bit too late for this, a little bit late for this hit, but he managed to stay composed and, and get his scores. And right now he has that second position. She, Two surfers with the highest singles, the highest totals with um, two digits on a, on a score total. So they both gonna get through. So Zef Freddy feels like he's still going strong on his on his um, theory. Yeah, technical analysis on point by Zef Freddy. Unfortunately, here for the Portuguese crew, Martin not making it. Miguel a bit disappointed, but uh, he's gonna work. I think he did all right. He didn't, he didn't do too bad. He served really well. Unfortunately, Maxim got some of the best waves of this hit, but I think he actually did really, really well in there. They should be happy. He's a young kid. Uh, he still has a lot of time to improve, a lot of, a lot of surfing and a lot of contests in his life. So this is going to be just one more contest. Jason Paris getting, trying to get a little a little prayer for uh, Thiago Carrigi, the first, the leader of the European rankings right now. So this is the scores, Leo Politian in first place, Maxim in second place. We're gonna go on commercial. We're gonna be right back with more action right after this. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test, ride the future. from Caparica. We're rolling on through here, final event of the QS season. And blazing sunshine, bringing solace and respite from a storm, a brutal storm that's battered this coast. Who's gonna shine bright out in this heat? It's a toughie. Three tricolores of France being flown by the likes of Thierry Garrick, 
Sam Peter, Tristan Gilbo, also out of the Canary Islands, a ripper, a powerhouse goofy in the form of Luis Diaz, a great looking quartet in the water. Meanwhile, speaking of power, another surfer, rep in France, Leo Paul Etienne, blazed his last heat. Let's go and hear from him. Yeah, we're here with Leo, who made an impressive 8.17 with these conditions. Can you guide us a little bit through that wave? Yeah, I'm actually I'm pretty stoked to end up the heat with the 8 point. I start the heat with a six point, it made me confident. I got a backup straight. And then in the middle of the heat, I was kind of lost, kind of, kind of lost trying to get the waves. And uh, I managed to get the eight, eight point at the end, like the, the last minute. So I'm pretty stoked because kind of, it was kind of hard to, to find this wave. What was your approach in terms of position? You got a little uh, moment of the tide that was quite challenging. How were you dealing with that? Yeah, we had the strategy with my coach, it was stay away from the current. That's why I did that first. It worked because I got a six point, but then everything changed and I had to, to adapt my strategy and uh, it worked at the end, so it's cool. Congratulations. Thank you. Back to you. Thanks, Claudia. Great job there from Leopold, showing that there are excellent numbers to be had out there, Philippe. We maybe didn't really see that coming, but he's looking great. Meanwhile, this is Luis. Nice first snap off the top, comes around the section, finish it off on a weird looking finishing turn, but very well done by Luis. 4.67, it's a good way to start. Uh, we, we have been seeing a lot of four point on those backups. Paul, and uh, that's got a that might be a good backup for Luis, but look at this hit. I've got a question for you. Stacked. Yep. What about going out the back on low tide? Is that worthy? Is that a good idea here? The, we're surfing the inside reef on. What about going all the way out the back? What do I you think, think it, if it was like two foot, two to, two, to, two to four foot right now, surfers would be surfing out the back. Yeah. But I think it's like a little bit out of, out of control. Even, even getting out there, uh, as you can see, it looks kind of messy. A lot of water moving. You could get a score, but you could get lost as well. Yeah, you can you can go there and go for a big turn on a on a huge wave and get an eight, an eight points. But it feels like it's a bit more safe here on the inside, as you see Tiago uh, on his first wave. Two turn combo, smaller little insider, but still very technical, very smart surfing by Tiago. Absolutely blazing on the QS this season. Number one in the rankings right now. Going really good. We've seen a couple of surfers fall out as well of those top dogs already in this event. So all sorts available and a chance for him to nail down that number one spot. He gets a good result here across the Capri Car final event of the season. Curry with a couple of quick turns there. Let's have another look. Yeah, nice style, nice first cut back, comes around the section and puts the point Second up there, pushes that back foot just to make sure there's a lot of spray coming out of that turn. Uh, yeah, very, very well done uh, by Tiago Sometimes this way there's so much water moving, you can go play, you can play against you while on, you're actually surfing. You can feel a lot of water going against your board and uh, Tiago did a really good job, 4.17 on that one. Curry's campaign. It's been a long, long season on the QE in Europe with event wins chalked up. He's feeling confident coming into this one. Very well prepared and dialed in. As we see, Sam Peter now, great looking way for Sam, really nice. And a third, that's really good surfing. So he's already picked a gem in this. Felt like, in terms of the wave, the cleanest, the most open face wave we've seen so far in this heat. Meanwhile, Karik, what's he got? Air reverse, he'll nail that. And what he's got is technical ability, and he can do things like that on a really a, a not much of a wave. So it's small and it's it's chewed out by this rip. Doesn't matter when you chug a Karik, when you got that in your locker. Yeah, that's the thing about these kind of surfers. They, they can pull these tricks out of nowhere and conditions really hard. And uh, as we see, the wave didn't have a lot of potential, but he knew what he wanted. You could see him straight away just preparing that air. That air. Um, he did really well. It was, it's not easy to surf these kind of waves and do airs, as we see. 
Sam Peter, a nice combination of few turns, first snap, second carving, and then finish it off as a bit of a smaller wave as well. So I think, apart from Thiago's uh, air reverse, I think it's going to be pretty much this uh, around the same, around the fours and the fives for now. And mm. um, do you, how do you think that Thiago's uh, air will go? It's it, like complete two different, you saw like three turns on a running wave from Sam and then just one big maneuver from Chuck. We haven't seen loads of airs in this event. It's the second one that I got there. Okay. We actually yeah. had one we had, we had it's one by a good the surface. It's technical. Like, yeah, as you see. Just hang up on a huge turn on the on the outside. So that look at this. His technique is so flawless. His style is so pristine. Just pushing that back tail. Perfect timing. Surfing on his booties. He's used to it. He comes from a very cold place in France. <laughs> so he's very used to surfing with booties. And yeah, so every surfer will have a proper um, backup or even a proper score on this first exchange. So 22 wow. minutes remaining, there's a lot of action to be unpacked. Yeah, when, when you get down towards this low tide and it is trickier, it's smaller, you, you kind of want in a heat people to get scores early on. Things can get weird if no one's putting much on the board, if you're seeing incomplete rides and you're in the ones and the twos, it's kind of, you get a weird energy to the heat. I think already just the fact some of the surfing we've seen so far and this is kind of it's going to like this one it's going to give everyone a little extra kick because they're all going to know they're going to have to find some quality out here it's only two of this four will make it through five eight three for peter for the three turn combo on a smaller wave it was just a runner and the flow that he had i think where a lot of that score came some nice spray as well so a good number for him Karik's going to get a number, a good one, for his air. And they reverse down on the flats and nailed. And then Gilbo blasting the fins through a meaty section, a heavy one. We've seen a lot of people go down hitting that end section. He didn't. He was good enough to finish. Karik, meanwhile, slash off the top. It's quick. And he just slides and spins out. So that'll be a throwaway for him. But we went for a good number coming in for that air that he did previously. That already his fourth wave. So he's busy. Yeah, I think uh, one of the one of the strategies for the for today it's exactly that. Don't stop. Try to find your opportunity. Stay busy. There's a lot of waves that don't look like anything, and, and they might provide you something. And uh, that's what we've been seeing throughout the whole morning. Surfers doing a lot of waves. There's a lot of water moving. A lot of opportunities. Some better, some worse, but still. Um, as you see, Tiago's curve, Tiago's wave, 6.67 ball, so that's one of the highest scores of the whole morning, and it's the highest score of this heat so far, so um, very good idea going for the air there. Yeah, this the confidence on him, the execution, the technique, here we go, back out now, Tiago, heavy section, oh. really late arriving to that. He sped up off the pop turn and he, he needed speed to get into that lip. And that one really bottomed out. You can see that gargling kind of brown sand going up the face. Bottom just drops out of the way. Here goes Gilbo. Backside from him. And just gives it a little clip. And then goes back right for a couple of foam climb re entries. So a completion from him. He's a number for his opening right hand at 6 1 7. He'll back it up here. He has such a hard wave to read. He actually managed to do really well there. He didn't have a lot of speed uh, to attack that leap like he wanted, but still, he managed to. To do a turn and redirect, go right and get a couple of turns done. Look at this. Upside down floater. Uh, he didn't have a lot of momentum. He didn't have a lot of speed to land that turn. We also had this turn by Luis Diaz. He's going to land it. Unfortunately, going down. We know that the judges love these kind of turns. Unfortunately for Luis, uh, he, he goes down on that one. How? How do you describe Joe Curry? What kind of surfer is he? It's quite hard to really kind of, we'd like to say, oh, this is an air server, this is a power surfer. Like, what, what is he? I'm going to say something 
I hope he's not mis misinterpreted. I, I don't think he is because he has a Brazilian background, right? Yeah, yeah. And you can see, I don't know, there's something about him that you can see straight away that he has a Brazilian background. He has a lot of pop. That's something that Brazilians do have. He has a lot of, he's very light and very powerful at the same time. That's something that the Brazilians also uh, also have on the, their kind of style. They pretty much, every every server you can see to lead, it feels like he weights like 50 kilos and throws buckets of sprays and he has a huge pop and, and you can see there's a little bit of an inspiration in, in Tiago surfing that little Brazilian background I think that's that's absolutely incredible but it doesn't answer your question uh, he's a very complete surfer I think he's really good at everything and, and really good on really bad conditions and, and he makes something out of difficult conditions and we saw that he, he just landed an air out of nowhere and people are struggling to, to do turns he's doing airs and what do you think has been different about him this year in terms of his competing overall is it extra confidence is it is it the training like how has he been able to well let's just watch him and appreciate live action leader on the qs in europe a quick in and out yeah what's what's he been able to do this year? obviously his win hits would be the main, the main obviously answer. but for me to win hits uh the main thing about it just as you see here we're gonna be right back on that um it just he shows a lot of confidence, I think. He looks really calm and really confident at the same time, which is sometimes it's hard, because sometimes when you show confidence, you, you have a little bit of cockiness on you. And it feels like he's really calm, he's a really calm kid, and he, he trusts his instincts, he trusts his surfing, and it's paying off ball, because he's, he's in the first position right now, both in the heat and in the European rankings. So it's paying off. This one already offering good numbers that's way way outside and that is this big storm swell just unloading how far out to sea is that that's a long way out that's a long long way that's out. the bombing imagine, imagine how big it has to be to be to be uh, breaking out there as you see Trista trying to get a little back up on that 6.17 unfortunately the, that was not the way we wanted uh, Tristan just needs to to find that consistency. We all know that he's a really good surfer, but we haven't been seeing him a lot on those good results. I know he, he has been dealing with some injuries as well, but I think he lacks that little bit of consistency to, to get to get him on that top seven to qualify for the challengers. As we see here, the replay, a little bit of a weird wave. He had a lot of bumps and lumps on that wave. He managed to get around the section and hit the lip, unfortunately going down. So, 15 minutes remaining, everything remains the same. Tiago Karik in the first place. Tristan Gilbo is actually still in the second place with that 6.17. Unfortunately, his backup is only a 2.83. And right behind him, Sam Peter with a 5.83 and a 1 at points, and uh, Luis Diaz also with a 4.67 and a 1 point. So everything's pretty close. Gilbo way back in 25th on the QS in Europe. So he's going to need to go huge here. Going to need a result. Let's check out Luis Diaz now. The Canarian. A little chop down carve to set up a little double up bowl. Nice snap, loads of spray. Deals with a bit of wobble and looking for some steep face. Here he gets it. That was nice. A little bit off the back of the tail and it's really good to just make the adjustment and finish. And that was crucial for him. He's still on a one as a backup and he wants rid. Karik. Not much going on there. That was a really impressive finishing turn. And the whole wave actually for the least is because once again, uh, you just have to trust your instincts and find the right wave because apparently even though it's pretty challenging there's a few opportunities and Luis Diaz, sorry, Luis Diaz managed to, to hit three turns on that one especially the, the last one look at this uh, this is the replay of Tiago uh, just a vertical hit off the top and just a, a fast in and out but look at this wave Starting off really well, nice carving, set, just waiting for the wave to wall up, a little bit of a snap, and look at this, it connects through the, the whitewash and goes and hits it really strong. As you said, Paul, a little bit of in, on his back foot here, but that, that was exactly what he needed to land that turn, otherwise he probably could have gone down. That was very, very technical and powerful by Luis Diaz. I think it's gonna be his best score, because that finishing turn was absolutely 
massive. Mm, just look at these ratings here, looking at names in and around the top seven. We reckon it's going to go down to nine anyway, just by virtue of double qualifying. Cowley Vast at six, out. Gone this morning. Jorge Cousinet, seventh. He got injured, Didn't, couldn't surf here. Out. He won't be adding. Kai Odrizola, ninth, gone. Kylian Guerin, tenth, out. Guillaume Ribeiro in the, 11th. He's on the next seat. coming up in the next seat. What an opportunity for him. It's getting to that point now. As we see Thomas Dubier get ready with Jason Aparicio. Jason's had a good morning this morning. His surfers have been really competing well. Thiago Carrick's leading this one. Leo Paul Etienne blazed the last one. We saw Thomas Lede as well get through in a tight second. So confidence with Camp Appers right now. Dubier has got a great backhand. He'll be looking at these lefts. And looking at one low, but it'd be a tough feat. Andy Crier, an Olympian, heading to Tahiti for Spain in the Paris 2024 Olympics. And he'll be in that heat too. Also, Joan Deroux, he's going to the Olympics too, representing France. Guillaume Ribeiro with a shot, a shot, at climbing up the QS ratings. I know he's been dreaming of that day for a couple of years now, and, and but looking at that hit ball, <laughs> he's going to have a really, really hard job. Feels like a great level, though, these conditions. It does feel like you, you could kind of beat anyone. It wouldn't yeah, that's really, true. That's, you yeah. could, like, you could have Toledo and Medina out there. Well, these Ethan guys Ewing, will be, and like it just it, they still might be getting threes and fours because <laughs> the wave shuts down or goes soft. It's, it's not, you know, they're not gonna you'd be able to use their full repertoire. So it does feel like there's there's there's, there's, there's something bit, for everyone, yeah. Obviously, there's a little bit of an opportunity when when the waves are perfect and you can see the difference between the surf levels. Uh, as you said, you put Medina's and 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 Italo's and in these kind of conditions, and it gets a little closer because the, the luck factor, uh, sometimes on conditions like this when it's this challenging it's uh, it's a big factor the luck the luck factor it's a big one and yeah he's gonna have an opportunity he knows these waves better than anyone he grew up here so uh, I'm really crossing fingers for him to get through because I, I would love to have another Portuguese on the challenger as we see Tristan up and riding and trying to improve on that 2.83 Gilbo double up here what's he got just a little sluggish off the bottom, but nevertheless, it's fairly crisp off the top, and he'll want to finish. He won't get a finish, and I think if you just watching that over away from me, he's he's surfing within himself a bit. He's not trying to push too hard. I think that's a reflection on conditions. He he, he knows he doesn't need to overdo it. Yeah, but you can see that was a first car, but here he could have he could have attacked it a lot, but he got caught up on that bottom turn. Unfortunately for him. As you said, not pushing too hard, obviously, uh, because the conditions are really hard. Uh, but he needs to make sure he doesn't have those little bit of mistakes on the bottom turns, a little bit of a ball, bottles, catching the rail and everything. Everything needs to be pristine for the scores to come out. So uh, the wave has had quality. I don't think he did his best surfing on it. Um, we know that uh, Tristan is actually better than that, and uh, he surfs. He has uh, potential to get bigger and higher scores. Right now. Craig's been busy as he's ridden seven waves. He hasn't added to the first two that he got, but I tell you, he has added Luis Diaz six four three for him for multiple turns on the left connected and he's the leader now in the heat Karik second Gilbo we're waiting on a number he's, he'll, for sure he's improving on his 283 if he gets a 468 he'll move up Peter has a good number on the board a 583 so he's in that conversation everyone else has got sixes and he's real close just under the six for his high it's his low number to work on soon he's got priority he's quietly confident as well Sam Peter I think Let's check where he is actually on the ratings of Sammy. He's 17th at the moment. He is not a million miles away. Yeah, he, he still has a shot. It's a long shot, but it's still a shot. So uh, even we also have tricking shafts. The other Portuguese is in 14th position. Yeah, 15th. Yep, 15th. Got a great chance. He is looking relaxed. 
and so, he's dealing with a lot of back pain. Yeah, he, yeah. he didn't look like it earlier. I thought he, he served great and he looked confident. He looked a little extra kick of, of glory from his CT cameo up in Paniche a couple of weeks ago. He, he, he looked like he's having fun there and he's, he's up in QS and he's got not another opportunity here. So it could be some late drama on these rankings. That would be so sick. I would love to have it. Uh, two Portuguese, uh, it would even be better than just one. Uh, Does, having yeah, it does feel like Portugal feels like underrepresented on these QE ranks. You see all those French flags. I mean, it's, it's dominant. They're, they're, they're a powerhouse, but it, it's weird to see I'm not to sure not I'm see not, a Portuguese I'm not sure I want to get in that conversation. Yeah, it's just sometimes it's just the way things that you get that no, they are, things work out. You know? We've been trying to understand. I, I, I have a, I have that conversation with a lot of people, coaches and judges and everything. We tried. We're trying to understand why there's no more representation of Portugal on those challengers. On the men, because on the women's side, we're absolutely Dominic. dominating. Yeah. Uh, but for some reason, there's something missing on the on the men's side, and we've been having uh, obviously Vasco and Kikas have have been the main representatives. But it feels like we don't have someone on the Challenger series for a while now. But I'm really hoping he and, and Joaquin, at least one of them, I'll be very happy if they qualify for the Challengers. If both of them, especially Joaquin, is one of my best friends and I would love to have him on, on the Challenger series. And actually, you were saying that he doesn't look injured. I hugged him after he's hit and he, he, the first thing he told me, watch out for my back. <laughs> so the thing is, he is dealing with a lot of, I know he's been dealing with a lot of pain, but he's, he has such a strong mindset. Beware the wounded animal. <laughs> exactly. He has a really good mindset and he has been uh, just swallowing the pain and make sure he, he, he gets his opportunity because he's that close, Paul. That close. I don't, I'm not sure what kind of result he needs, but sitting in the 14th position and knowing that that's probably um, the rankings will be the top nine because of the double qualification. He's, he's on 2,200 points. If he wins this one, I get 3,000. He would go second. So. Uh, yeah, but if he wins the event, <laughs> you got to be going for the win, mate. He's in the round. No, of, obviously, he's yeah, yeah, around yeah. the 16. So that quarter semi, if he wins his next four heats, he's going to the chance. Yeah, series. that's for sure. Yeah, look at it. Four heats is eight waves. That's how apparently how, Ke <laughs> apparently that's how Kelly does it. <laughs> that looks apparently so easy. Later in his prime, would say I need eight on finals day. Uh, he'd be, he'd be had a cool oh, final really? heat, and it's said, Belly, I need. I just need six waves. He would literally just go. I need to catch six waves today. Oh, that's and that a the great mindset. That's apparently. a great mindset. Instead of uh, instead of wondering, I, I still have four heats now. I still have six I've waves. I've got six waves. To good that's waves. So and I'm, sick. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Really, I've done my job. I never thought that. I never thought of it like that. But that's why he has eleven world champions. I have none. <laughs> Is he going to win bells? That would be that would be a, a really uh, like no a fairy short tale. answer no but he's but doing it good. It would be a fairy tale. It would be a fairy tale. Watch him win bells is such a special event. Do you think he's gonna retire after he wins like a proper uh, championship tour again, or is he's gonna keep on going until nothing else? Because he, he's dealing with the hip. Um, a bit of a he looked fine the other day. <laughs> yeah. He wants to serve. Yeah. Um, he looked fine. He wants to serve the seat at 80. So that's. I, uh, do, do, after does he? Cut right. though. So, okay. uh, so he needs to make the cut. And but when he's not you, going to. When do you think he's, he's going to retire? He's not going to make he's the not. cut. Uh, I think he's going to retire this season. All right. Championship tour. Who knows when? Who knows uh, yeah, because when? he's going to be a dad as well. So he's going to he's going to put his his point on the uh, We're going to go and recap. This is Luis Diaz. Starting off really strong with this two-turn combo, a 4.67. I really like that first turn, and this guy just putting a little bit of a difference. Going for the air, we haven't seen a lot of airs. This is a 5.83, so clean. But this guy, look at the finishing on this wave. Nice first card, setting it up to put this snap on the top, and then goes around the flat section and attacks this one with a lot of strength, a lot of speed, a lot of power. And that just gave him the one of the highest, uh, the second highest uh, wave of the seat, a 6.43. So best wave of the heat so far is a 6.67 by Tiago, that little air reverse. Um, but Luis Diaz is looking good. Yeah, looking, yeah, looking really good. It's just Karik during the recap, mate. Just, uh, small 
finishing turn. Flora re-entry on that one. I don't think he's going to improve any situation. He already has nine waves, Paul. So, as he said, very active. But yeah, it's a, just a clear sign from him. He's not resting on his last wall. What's we got here? Gilbo. Waha. Nice stab. Vert. Backside. 12 o'clock as he puts it up. Looking still chasing for six eight the requirement four on the clock for Gilbo and work left to do still to try and stay alive here. But yeah, Karik's strategy is just be on everything. There's a wave out the back, just chewing through, and then it reforms. Improve on his situation with this finishing time. As we see, Tristan a little late on that one. He did really, really well. He's still waiting. He needs a 4.94 to go to second. So this is going to be some really tense and exciting yeah. three minutes and a half. Chargo back in the lead. So it just goes to show he was just desperate. He, he knew the backup wasn't great. The four, he, he wanted rid, and he, he's improved it. Not by loads, but that makes requirement harder for Chase and Surfers. He's back in the lead right now. It's Chargo Kerik. That was so close by Triste. He needed a 4.94. He got it. 4.3 so that was a really really close call and i think we're gonna have all the surfers it's it's pretty packed right now we haven't seen them spread out throughout the, the beach and right now they're yeah. all sitting on we, top of each other sam peter's had priority for, for a while he needs to, he needs to use it he's got a 583 needs another number 528 he needs a bit of quality and he, he's gonna have to just try and find pick something here it's his choice of this lineup when they're all close together obviously priority is more of a factor and he is looking for a wave he will have identified the sort of opportunity he was he hasn't seen it yet so he's just let people go around him mm, we're gonna see luis diaz playing a little bit of a strategy here with two minutes and a half remaining he's gonna be sitting on top of tristan but he cannot forget about sam because sometimes when you they ha, they, uh, this happens a lot sometimes you get well, on these four man hits you get so focused on the third place and you leave the guy in fourth, uh, just chilling and relaxed, and not of nowhere anything can change in a minute. So he's got some airs on him as well. He's got exactly. plenty of pop. If he gets a little ramp, expect to see him do whatever he can do to try and get that number. But he's just going to have to continue to be patient here from above. It looks kind of peaceful, relatively relative calm compared to the drama and the action we've had from the ocean, but. We don't want a becalmed ocean for surface chasing numbers. The likes of Gilbert Peter, they need scores. Thiago Karik with his busy, busy approach. Those nine waves, good enough for the lead at the moment. Peter, when you paddle out, when you watch horizon, then you turn around and paddle back in, generally speaking. These aren't good signs for him. He's in a bit of a hole here. He needs to ride a wave. He's checking the watch. Meanwhile, here goes your heat leader, Karik. A soft wave with a clip for a first turn. And then it goes for a flare up above the lip, but maybe not quite the speed or the magnitude in terms of energy power from the ride to get a finish. That'll be wave number 10. We'll just be throw away. It's still Peter at the back with priority, still needing a 5-2-8. It's going to be tough with 45 seconds remaining on this. It's gonna be an interesting last 30 seconds. He's gonna is Sam Pitti gonna have an, an opportunity? Is Tristan is Luis Diaz <laughs> leaving Tristan alone? Where are they actually? Should we, yeah, they've gone deep, haven't they? <laughs> so Tristan tried to get away, he's gone south, and Lewis has gone, yeah, okay. I'll go with Vamos. You. And he's he's right over there with him. Meanwhile, Peter's seen something, he's paddling, he's got 15 seconds. I don't know if he's going to stand up again in this surfing competition. Let's see. Maybe he'll have to try and get, I don't think he'll really get on this. He's, he's going to get left behind and that'll be it. And he, he's annoyed. He just couldn't find a wave. Oh. And that looks like it will be Karik and Diaz. 
And you can see how close they were together. You called it, mate. But Lewis will stick with Tristan Gilbo. He had the lead over him, and he had a priority advantage as well. And he covered him, and he did it well. Chuck Carrick maintains his stellar form on the QS in Europe in the final event of the season. Lewis Diaz, he's got something to say as well. Good surfing from the Canarian. More live action from Costa de Caparica, a banger of a heat. We're going to bring in Zay Ferreira as well to chat things through. Stay tuned. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Fest 2024, having a look at Heat 6, round of 32, Joanne Duroux, Guillaume Ribeiro, Thomas Dubier, Andy Crier on Paul Evans joins. Very happy to say by Zay Ferreira. How do you like this matchup? Yeah, it's great. Thank you for having me back here. Um, nice, nice image, by the way. Yeah, um, great heat. I think there's there's no easy heat from like in, in this phase at the moment. Um, big decisions uh, here, especially for Guillermo Rivera, if he wants to keep his campaign to to qualify for the challengers alive. And Jean Drew doesn't waste much time. Yeah, busy already in this third wave for Joanne in under three minutes. Couple third of, wave. Couple of wiggles wow. on the backhand. He got a one early on. He got a four. Prior to that, he'll get another score here. Here goes Ribeiro. What's he got? Nice. Good speed turn. And then, again, wow. Big section, big turn, wow. nails it. Very nice. It's it's incredible how, like, the, the wave didn't look, you know, good, but it was good enough for two turns and actually pretty big turns. Just watch the replay. It looks like, like a really small wave. Bangs it, nice spray. And then, nice finishing turn. Yeah, crucial. He got out in front of it, didn't he, before that explosion. Whoa. Good speed and spray. And again, late to that. And as it blows up, he gets out in front. This was Duru on the backhand. Yeah, I think this was his four points, probably. Um, the one we, we were in, in the commercial break. His last one, though, 283. So this is his best little blow tail. Juan de Rue been in, in the game for so many years, been in a CT surfer. Um, great to see him. Picking him up on the end of a left there as well. That was a fifth wave. Let's go here from the winner of the last heats, number one on the ratings, Tiago Carrick. That's right, we're here with Tiago, the winner of the last heat. Tiago, how is it out there and what was your approach in your heat? Yeah, it was very hard. <laughs> Every day is very hard. But uh, I just wanted to keep busy, busy and uh, catch a lot of waves so I get more opportunity. And luckily it worked out. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you're riding today? Um, I'm riding uh, Cabianca. He's been making great boards for me the last few years. And uh, it's a 510. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Back to you. The smiling assassin, Tiago Carrick. He looks calm, relaxed, doesn't he? Yeah, um, pretty, pretty nice vibe, chilled, moderate. 
um, but actually it didn't show in his surfing because it was quite the opposite. He was going to the air, uh, explosive surfing, and I have the impression he, he like evolved a lot the last few years. Yeah, he surfed as a wild card in Panish in 2023, and he surfed on that massive day where it was, it was uh, I mean, sort of death closeouts, basically. And he packed a couple, like he, he, he surprised quite a few people with just absolutely charging it. He's got that in his game too. Doesn't seem to have a lot of nerves on the big stage. And exactly. He should be confident here. He's, he's kind of the challenges. He's, he's in first place. There's no way he's going to get overtaken by eight surfers. We reckon it's nine spots with the double qualifying going on with challenges. So he's good. He's, he's, he's heading to Challenger Series, and this is essentially a warm up for him for Snapper Rocks at the moment. He's looking good in this one. He'll be focusing on another win. The cost of the Caprica, that'll be tomorrow. Final day. We'll be finishing event today, so it'll all come back for Saturday. Easter weekend here. A lot of festivities. And um, the weather's had a little bit to say about some of those festivities so far this week. But so far, it's looking delightful. And I think a lot of people are just relieved to get out of the house, mate. Yeah, um, people came in for a bit of sun, a bit of vitamin D. Uh, of course, the, the contest. A bit of QS. A bit of QS, oh, exactly. A lot of QS. Vitamin Q. <laughs> mate, that's good. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. A bit of the Q. Wow. It's good for you. Yeah, you that could be a tattoo, mate. That, yeah, you, you, vitamin Q. Yeah, yeah, I really like it. Andy Criere. No, Thomas de Bier. We oui. Here he goes. A little pump on the backhand. And something of a nooner from him as he stabs it up to 12 o'clock. And he'll get a finish. It's it's. We've lost about a metre and a half in terms of wave height just with the low. And the fact that that rip is chewing through the swell. Guess what, though? Tight's going to bottom out, turn, come back in. It's going to pump the stuff. It's going to be big. There's still some heavy sections, as evidenced by Andy Crier. Yeah, and the surfers are now dividing into two peaks, mostly. Um, uh, one peak a bit more to the right and one peak a bit more to the left. Now that the tide is like pretty much dead low. And as the tide starts coming in, I think the surfers will group up in just one of the peaks um, and it will be easier to surf. But let me just tell you, like, I really like, there's three surfers I really like from France from this it's not the new generation but it's fairly young generation it's Thomas Debierre, Justine Becré uh, and then Tristan Gilbert they they are like the three of them really good rail surfers um, really solid on on their feet uh, Justine Becré was in the challengers last year uh, Thomas Debierre maybe as well I'm not completely sure but I'm sure of one thing he rips um, and um, interesting to see, but... Here goes Guillaume. Bang, first turn, plenty of spray, and he winds in for a second good, surfing again. So he's been patient. He got a five for his right-hander, two turns, and then three on a left, and a good choice of wave. You saw other people just going on in between ones, waves that went into a hole. That one was a, was a legit runner from him, and he surfed it well. Yeah, two turns, nice one, a lot of spray here, straight to that bottom turn and finishes off strong. So smaller wave, but I have the feeling like the best waves now are a bit smaller. Very technical on, on that approach, so he's, he's uh, surfing a smart heat ball. 4-5 in from the panel, he's in first place, he's leading Joan de Roux. Guillaume Ribeiro with 9.5 on the board from two waves with loads of time. There's that rip, looks like a river. Just really does, huh? Taking surfers out the back, so they've got to paddle with their nose pointed back towards the tower, towards our contest set up here at the Paradise Beach on Costa de Caparica. Looking a lot more like it's its name. Today, yeah, it's, it's yeah, making justice to its name today, at least outside of the water. Inside, well, it's just, yeah, you never know. It, it depends. If you're on the two first places of of the heat, it, you can call it a paradise. But yeah, look, look at that current now. It, it's just pushing because of the tide, and it will surely come down when the tide starts uh, filling in. I wonder what the rule is on QS with, are you allowed to take an anchor out and just drop that? So you can just hold on to it to yeah. rest? Are you allowed to do I, that? You know, actually, that's not in the rule book. 
So it is it is allowed. As at, at, at some some point, like I had this conversation with with my coach, which was to to take like a, a little. Um, oh, let's just. Oh. Yeah. Yummy. Him. But it was like a little headphone. Um, to go in the water with it, and when you're in competition, like your coach can speak directly to you. It's different from an anchor, though. It's different from it, yeah, an anchor. Yeah, it's not the same. Yeah, yeah. Also, it has to be like a special anchor because you can't surf with it in the wave. Mm, well, right. you let go of it then. Yeah, but yeah. What I'm saying is, you, when you get back to the line, you grab the rope and then you'd have to paddle. Yeah. Oh, Oof. free air. Ouch. But that, that used to be an anchor like that in Krikavilj. Right. Yeah. And when it was a lot of current, like you, you, you go to this anchor and you grab, you grab to it. And, and it was actually great because everyone would uh, have to pedal a, little, a lot. But like, yeah, it, it's true. It's, it's true. There was an anchor. I would quite like to see. Whoa, backhand attack from Dubier. And it's complete from him. He makes it. He likes it. Going to get number for Dura as well. It's just a throw away. Tell quite like if there's a rope attached to the anchor and he saw all four surfers and according to priority they all had to hold it in a line a bit like tug of war and the one on the end would be the one with next priority he'd let go or she and surf yeah, and you'd, exactly. then you'd shuffle down the rope a bit and you'd paddle back and grab it nearest to the bottom according if you're fourth priority what do you yeah. think yeah i think so yeah you, you you'd have to hold some time underwater though um at least the, f the first guy um, so but yeah, good, I, think, I think that's a good idea. Somewhere in Brazil, in the south of Brazil, I think there was a beach break with a lot of current and, and surfers used to grab those fishing nets always, buoyed down, and they used to grab, they grab a hold onto the nets between sets because yeah. there's so much current. It's that there's there's you know, dangerous. creativity to to be to be put in the water actually. An anchor is a good idea. Um, what else? In, in days with current, I don't know. Maybe, maybe even like for big days, just having like a protective shield when you fall off a wave. Like you click a button and there's like a protective shield. Yeah, like a little bubble. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Interesting. And then you can like instead of paddling, you you, you run and the thing starts <laughs> running. <laughs> You can't stop progression innovation. You can't stop Andy Crier on left-handers when he's belting the lip like that. In fourth at the moment, though, a couple of ones. That'll be better from him. Is it the five he needs? Not sure. We'll know soon when our panel of five expert professional surfing judges assign a number for Andy Crier, who is representing España at the Olympics in Tahiti. How's he going to go down there? I think I think well because Andy's a very dynamic surfer. He's not um, not afraid of the big waves. He he grew up in the Basque country uh, in Saint Jean de Luz, but he's very used to surfing Osgore. Um, as he always not always, but I think he started by competing for France. Yeah, he did. Not, yep. Yeah, right. Correct. Um, Fact. And and then um, changed to to the Basque Country, but here's the replay of Joan Drew's last wave. Nice first turn, a lot of um, a lot of speed there, and then Andy Crier did this. But yeah, I, I, I feel Andy Crier in, in Chopu can be um, can be a, a good surprise. I think he's been there actually. I'm, I'm not I'm not sure, but like. Yeah, I'm sure he's, he's, he's very good in, in barrels, good in big waves. Spends quite a bit of time in Canary, surf really well in Kamal class. Exactly. The invitational tube riding event, El Kamal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he can ride tube, this guy. All right, here we go. Yeet leader, Ribeiro, bang. Powerful snap. And again, nice. And similar from him, that's what we've seen. He's keeping his speed between the turns, he's comboing up. He looks confident. The crowd love that. And he looks like he's got some fire in his belly right now. For sure. Crisp surfing, active, um, a lot of speed. He's, you know, ready, ready for what comes. Let's, let's see this replay right here. Choosing the waves wisely as well. You can see that local knowledge paying him to some advantage and two nice turns. He wants to better that 4.5, like tight wave, but he surfed it nicely. So let's see what the judges think of that. But what do you think? 
I think he surfed the absolute maximum at the potential of the wave. I don't think the wave had loads of scoring potential. But it was good surfing. Oof. Getting loose as a goose. Releasing that tail. So Duru, busy as you like in this. That's wave number seven for Joan. And this is Thomas de Bier. Yeah, looks good. Nice turn, but just the one. I think he'll, he'll need to put two turns together or at least make one bigger turn to get out of that four point um, in three point range. Especially because this heat is, is, is starting to heat up slowly. But nothing changed with that last from Guillermo. Um, and yeah, the ocean now just gave everyone a, a break. This, this is a, a rare image, right? <laughs> Teresa Bonvalo. What's she thinking? She's, um, she's like, I'm going to like eat my opponents alive. Um, but also, um, she's thinking, uh, should I have a Tostamista now no, or later? No, not before a heat. What am I going to no. do? Maybe I could just eat like pumpkin soup. A pumpkin soup with little, some chia seeds. Just a little dish of, of soup, I would say. Exactly. You leave the bread. And yeah, put a little. Don't want to be full, do you? Don't want to no, be too full no. for surfing. No, you don't. But yeah, it's always a dilemma in competition. It's one, of, it's one of Shiko's problems, wasn't it? Historically, yeah, that was he would his get Achilles. really hungry before a heat. Yeah, yeah. And he'd say, "Should I have a toast of Mister?" And he'd actually decide not to have one because he'd have two. <laughs> he'd have two. He'd have two toasters and um, and some and some fries. Maybe a little bolo da rose as well. Yeah, and then it's the the list goes oh, on. Oh man, uh, Shiko. There if he, he is, was, if he's got short, so he's the, for a little it's this one. You know, this is this is Shiko. <laughs> Kids are loving it. Family fun on the beach here in Costa de Caparica. It's not a surf competition. It's a surf fest, and we are having all sorts of festivities go on on this beautiful slice of coastline. Now that the sun's out, it's a holiday. It's well, it's been the Holy Week. It's Easter weekend. It's massive. So, come down the beach, enjoy it, soak up the vibe, check out the best surfers from across Europe going at it hard for a spot on the challenges and a chance to get themselves the championship tour in 2024. Let's see, we're some way away from that though. We are in the round of 32. This is heat number six. This is Costa Caprica, the famous promenade, the boardwalk where there's a strong jogging scene, good biking scene. I've seen some some of those like one wheels and your electronic skateboards go down, your little blade scooter things, whatever they're called, all sorts of wacky craft going on. Or just put one foot in front of the other and just walk, mate. Yeah, exactly. There's But there's longboard, there's surf skates, there's like, yeah, if, if there's a, a new weird thing, <laughs> You, you, you'll find it here. Do you do much surf skating yourself? Do you wiggle furiously? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. actually. Um, not surf skate that much. This is uh, Teva Bushua getting ready for next heat. Yes, it's that as who's coaching him. But actually, like the best thing I've ever tried, I've tried it once and then I never saw it again, was like a skateboard and it have uh, it, it had like, um, what, what, what's the name of the the, the, um, the things that hold the, the wheels on the skateboard? Trucks? The trucks, yeah, yeah. exactly. The trucks were like uh, um, half, it was, it, it did like an U, right, 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 yeah. It was a half a circle and then it had like eight wheels throughout the mm -hmm. whole thing. Yeah. And so, <laughs> <laughs> it, it really, it really allowed you to, to yeah, put rail. There's a popular expression, you can't reinvent the wheel, but it seems like you can reinvent yeah. the skateboard because it seems there is, it's almost limitless, the um, the energy and the zeal that different people have for trying to come up with different versions of yeah. the skateboard. I mean, 
How many more iterations are we going to see? There's all sorts of different stuff you can do to skateboard and hey, you know, whatever what, you're what, into. Like as long as, as long what, what as what do you think will be could be like a next crazy thing based on AI and skating? It's got to be the hoverboard from Back to the Future. Where there's nothing touching the ground, surely. Nothing the touching hoverboard. the ground. Yeah, the hoverboard. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, got to yeah, be yeah. that, mate, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Magnets yeah. or something, or yeah, yeah, AI or who knows, just just hovering. Yeah, that that will that would be cool. That will change the world. Yeah, yeah. And then you have the protective bubble if you fall as well. Because, yeah. Let's go and hear from our roving reporter, Claudia Pinto. She's in the Almada stand. Exactly, Paul. As you were saying, this is a festival and everyone can be part of it. Camera de Almada is here promoting surf lessons free for everyone who wants to join. You just have to come at 11 or 4 p.m. and arrive half an hour earlier. So anyone that can join it, that wants to join, just come here and speak with our dear... Uh, Paula. Paula, and she'll take your name and then you can come and enjoy the ride with us. Oh, this is great news. Thanks, yeah. Claudia Zay. Have you got your wetsuit, mate? You could probably borrow one. What? Yeah, I will, I will list for Which the one are you going to sign up the, for? The 4, 4 p.m. Okay. Yeah. Just just because. Hey, we're going to hold you to that. We'll send a roving camera down. Yeah, you have the drone filming me. Long board. Um, I'll, I'll even go without a wetsuit. Just. Just the shorts. Big talk from yeah. Ferreira. Okay, so the board short surf lesson this afternoon at the Caparica Surf Fest. Zay Ferreira, he's going to strip down and brave the Atlantic all for the love of the sport. Three surfers in the lineup. Can't see Joanne Duru. Where's Joanne? Where's he gone? Yeah, I think oh, he there is. he is. Heard you. Say his name three times and like the devil, he appears. Joanne Duru on a left hander with. A bit of oomph to it, Ta tags it, still going. Again, off the lip, squeezing a bit of juice, a bit flicky, not his usual kind of power and emphasis in his turns, but he's rallying and he's trying to get out the fours. A long way for Duru. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of maneuvers, but nothing big. Um, Duru obviously known for big turns, rail surfing, so, he kind of sets up for something to come here. This wave uh, picks up beautifully, actually. Does that turn and then finishes off with his two turns. So he wants to improve on the four points. Let's uh, wait for that, for that score. Waiting for a number four. Second place, Joander. If it's north of a 478, we'll get a first. First occupied by... Our Portuguese surfer, Guillaume Ribeiro, at the moment, leading this one. It's still in single figures. As we look at a lot of water moving, just being ripped off the bank by that current. Surfers paddling to stay in position rather than trying to position for waves. Just trying to get not too far out to sea. There are a couple of options slightly deeper. The main part is this rip bowl left that goes in towards the jetty, but there are rights off it as well, and there's a secondary peak in the middle. It's pretty random in there. The safer bet is to stay next to the rip, gauge a bit more where you are, a bit easier to see when the set comes through, but with the low tide, everything in play, really. It's going to be big this afternoon when that tide comes in this morning. It's solid first thing. But um, let, me, let me add to that. Guillermo Ribeiro has... 2,700 points, yep. roughly. Um, and Kai has 3,400 points. So there's there's roughly a 500 point difference. Guillermo has to do a, a nice result here, very nice result. Um, to get to the ninth, ninth place. Dura goes to second, gets a 4-3. And goes to second, so his experience tells him to keep catching waves. Nine of them he's caught, and he's chipping away at the score. He's not looking for eights and anything huge. He's realized, you know what? To get through in second in this, I need to post numbers. I won't get scores sitting in the rip and drifting out the seas. What happened to Sam Peter in the last heat? Here's Andy Crier, uses priority. Nice, gets the drift, and he's feeling it. Yeah, big, big turns, although the, the wave was small. 
Um, it was like he was still when he was uh, doing that turn. A lot of water. Let's let's watch that again. Smaller wave, but it seems like those have been paying off. Beautiful, uh, beautiful terms. Simple, simple surfing. But look at this. What do these arms and fingers mean at the end? What does that mean? I think it's is that like a spell, like Harry Potter, as he yeah, 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 sending sort of bolts of lightning. Exactly. And now in his head, he's saying Harry Potter, Harry Potter. <laughs> Yeah, no wand, but you don't always need the wand. Yeah, four three three for that. Finger finger wand from Creer. It's a little bit of magic. It's not quite the stuff to get him into second though. But he's brought the number down. He needs a four seven one. Debier drops to four five on the clock. A tight nervy heat. No one going north of five points in this one. That was the very first wave ridden by Guillaume Ribeiro. Creer ain't done yet. Chin on the stringer, paddling, scratching, and just having to push through so won't get an opportunity there but he'll just keep catching ways and he needs to yeah he, he needs a four seven one it's not a small score for today it's it's like uh, you, you know you, you you still have to to do something to get a, a four seven one and Thomas de Bier, bit of a shocker um, he needs a, a five two three everything is opened but uh Let's recap it. Exactly. Um, Guillermo Ribeiro, it seems like he did everything in the first, in those first two waves. Um, surfed them really well, smart surfing. Uh, I think that local knowledge comes a bit into play as well, or he's taking advantage of it. I really like this wave, although it was not as big as his first one, but surfed it very well. Drew here, our second place surfer. Nice layback, strong turn, but um, yeah, then just these small turns to, to finish that off. And there, Joe, there is something of the Harry Potter about Andy Creer, isn't there? Is he the most pottery surfer on the QS in Europe? Meanwhile, Dubier, what's he got? Comeback wave. But he needs it. He needs a 5 2 3. Whoa, that was nice. Is he going to make it? He is. Yep. There we go. That's more like the Thomas Dubier we expect to see. Beautiful, beautiful surfing, actually. It looked like a different day, carving. You know, how relaxed was he on that wave? Because with these waves, the, 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 the ambits that surfers have, it's like, I have to do everything really fast, but he was like cool, calm, collective. Look at this, even then Ooh. bangs it. It was off the white water rather than off the lip, though. That, you know, it wasn't, but it was great surfing. I think this will be the best wave of, of this heat. All right, interesting. With the panel, that's the number. Could he put a bit of threat on Duru? There's still three minutes, so Duru's got priority. I reckon he'll get another wave. He'll go one for sure. WF 583 gets exactly the score required. It is the best wave of the heat, as you called Zay. He goes to first place with that. What a way to turn it around. Bad news for this guy, Duru. So he'll want to get going here. If he wants to make it out of this heat, which he does. 478, the requirements. Two and a half minutes. Crier looking for 517. We think he's the pottery surfer on the QS. The what, pottery is. That's, that's a nice oh, That's a nice slash. Who, who else have we got on the QS that's quite pottery? Um, Adura Maxime. Adura Maxime. Adura Maxime. Maxime. Imagine little glasses on oh, him. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's nice. Little glasses that's, on Adur. That's a nice. And the school nice. uniform. Yeah, yeah. Um, Slytherin surfer, uh, Slytherin team, or Gryffindor? <laughs> I'm gonna go. What's the other one? Um, uh, something pot. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Actually, they're so like discriminated. The other teams. You, you know, no, no one even even knows the the the. the Duru is Slytherin. Duru is Slytherin. Yeah. Uh, Andy Crier is Gryffindor, you know, I, I have to say that. Um, who else? Uh, Aaron Strong? Yolanda Hopkins, where is she from? She's Gryffindor, sure. Gryffindor? Oh, big wave from Andy Crier, nice first turn. Doesn't, uh, doesn't ride out of that one. He Ravenclaw. Ravenclaw. I reckon, I reckon Hopkins is Ravenclaw. 
But there's four or not? Yeah, I think Thomas Dibier might be a Hufflepuff. 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 <laughs> All right, live action here, a minute to go. Duro needs a number, four, seven, eight, good wave. Oh, ouch, nasty. Not what he wanted. Not what he wanted at all. And the magic so far, he's gonna need to try and find some. Oh, and he looks a little bit, that one, maybe that one hurt a bit. He's gonna bring this in here. De Beer. He'll just about hang on to that somehow. I mean, he almost disappeared. He went underwater. <laughs> he looks knackered, mate. He's feeling it. Yeah, Dura says, well done, you got the number. You nailed it. Derby, yeah, bang. Yeah, um, just trying to secure that first that first place, but as of now, it looks like it's Guilherme Ribeiro. Unfortunately uh, for him, Joan Duru couldn't really pull it together. It's hard to go for the air on that section. We saw one from Tiago Carrique, which was really nice. But great effort from everyone in the heat. Yeah, get, get him from fourth to first. I mean, that just shows you the cool head on the shoulders of the likes of Thomas Dibier, who is struggling. It's easy to get rattled and a bit annoyed, maybe frustrated, start questioning things, tactics, whatever. Mm -hmm. Nope, didn't do that. Kept his head in the game, got into double figures. Got himself the win. Yeah, exactly. yeah, Well done, that man. So, Camp Aparicio are going from strength to strength. They've been dominant this morning. I think all of surfers from that squad have made their heats. We'll keep rolling here. We're going to check out Luan Nog, Afonso Antunes, Steva Bushka, Charlie Kivron. That's coming up right after a quick commercial break. More live surfing from a sunny Friday morning. Costa Caparica, real soon. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals, and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente, ao seu lado, na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui, consigo. Welcome back for the seventh heat of the round of 32. We're getting um, tighter and tighter. The heats are starting to get harder and harder. Everyone is on the rhythm in this phase. Charlie Kivron, uh, that's, uh, that was him surfing. Let's present this heat then. Luan Nog, surfer from France, and Charlie Kivron also for, from France. Afonso Antunes, natural uh, of Santa Cruz in um, it's close to Irisara for for the ones who don't know and Teva Bushwaga for from Morocco so nice um, nice heat it has been just that uh, all about nice heats the surfers have been really um, been able to put on an, a good show uh, even with these conditions it looks like the waves are going to get better with that tide coming in. So we have a lot of action in Caparica Surf Fest. And at the moment, we are ready for the winner of last heat. He's with Claudia. 
Tomas, can you tell us a little bit about your strategy in your heat? Uh, so I knew it was going to be hard, but I didn't know it was going to be that hard. So the strategy was to stay uh, um, just there, right there in front of the pier and uh, try to get as much wave, getting some scores, but it didn't work my way at the beginning. So I didn't have scores until the last five minutes. And I was like, okay, let's change the strategy. So I moved uh, a little bit more south and uh, I got a right. I, don't, I didn't know where it came from, but it came from me. And uh, I did my first score, 583. So it put me in the second place. And then at the end, I knew I had priority and the guys didn't needed the score. So I went down uh, back on them. And then I got uh, my backup and I went first uh, at the end of the hit. So uh, the strategy changed during the hit, but walked up my way at the end. So I'm super stoked. Can you tell us a little bit about how what you saw on that wave, what were the emotions you felt when you saw it coming? Uh, I was not stressed. I was like, if a wave can come for me, uh, I need to do the job, you know? So I saw some rides this morning. Uh, uh, Aaron Strong got some rides during his hit. And I knew I was at the, at the same spot uh, approximately. So I was like, okay, just go for it. Don't fall and uh, do your job. Congratulations. Thank you. Very nice, Thomas Despierre calm and cool um, he knew he had a chance but he took it it's not easy sometimes when you're you know when there's so so a few time to go to be so calm and this is the replay of the last wave and the first uh, wave for Charlie Kivron 283 um, and so yeah um, well done for Thomas de Bière. Uh, managing stress like a big boy and Luan Nog here on his first wave pretty much walking on thin ice there because the wave is almost finishing but nice finishing turn nice effort from here and all, also relevant to mention that Guilherme Ribeiro the Portuguese surfer keeps on this competition keeps alive his hopes to qualify for the challenger series he needs a, a very good result i'm not 100 percent sure of what he actually needs in terms of results but i would say um, either quarterfinals man on man or semis um, maybe in the fi even the final but definitely a good result but this is happening right now it's a 383 um, the wave was almost in existence at the end there but it was very well uh, very well served he really uh, took advantage of every little part of this wave milked it and after that we have we have this way from Teva two turns no just the one that was a two five seven so nothing very big and he just was off balance there as you can see this current is still pushing a lot. Uh, Thomas was saying he, he, he knew it was going to be hard, but didn't know it was going to be that hard. But that's how it is. Sometimes you just have to adapt to what you have. The conditions are the same for everyone, um, which is, you know, the fair point of the game and yeah there's there's you know some people call it luck some call it intuition some call it a lot of hours in in the water but truth is there's some guys that just guys and girls that just catch the best waves and this is a good wave as well two turns for luan no he's been uh, fairly active in this heat making uh, good choices and charlie kivron uh, ooh, does does he make it no um, he's been the, the the more active in in this heat. That was his fifth wave. Um, one one thing we can't complain uh, we can't complain of is lack of action because we've been having back to back waves, back to back surfing, um, and again, Teva Bushwa Bushwa. Can see 
the beautiful rocks of Costa da Caparica. And how big is it outside? Because uh, the surfers are, are, you know, surfing the reform area. And I would say it's like, you know, good eight feet, eight foot uh, on the outside. Actually, we had one surfer, João Maria Mendonça, uh, um, on, on, on the previous day of competition. He started his heat on the outside. And I was actually wondering if someone is going to take that that risk. Um, but really, I, I would only think that would be possible if there was a jet, jet ski assist for everyone, because it's really solid and messy. When the waves seem like they're exploding in um, slow motion, it means that the, the waves are big and they look like that. Teva Bushuba, this was his last wave, did well to finish off with a nice splash of water. This is Justine Becré, one of the best European surfers. And um, this is the replay from Luan Nog. Let's see what, um, what the judges think of that, but might be one of the best waves, very vertical bit of fin release there and and so he will be well recompensated maybe the best wave of this heat and I'm delighted to welcome back Paul Evans in the booth for the last 20 minutes of this heat, which has been very active so far. Yeah, busy start to this one, isn't it? And there's a lot at stake now. We're getting down to that stage of competition where 132, get out of this into the 16, and it's keep a result for some surfers in that crucial hunt. The likes of Charlie Kivron going good on the QS ratings. He's flying pretty high. I want to keep that dream alive. Though. He has to give way here to David Bushka. He'll just slap one in the face. Keep Kivron off the wave as well. Bushka still with modest numbers, threes and twos. Here's Charlie. What's he got? He's going to try and punt here. There he is, a little flat spin. It's smooth, not massively high, but it is a completion, and it will be an improvement for sure on his score. Haven't seen an action yet from Antunes. Not yet. He's been patiently waiting for for some some wave, which hasn't actually been a strategy that has been paying off, as we have that air again, like a ninja air. It was more of of a trick, and. Teva here hits it well, but just not a lot of space for a big surfer to uh, to do good turns in that little uh, left left bank. Um, but one has to do the best he can with what he has. And Charlie Kivron, he's going to the to his eighth wave, and very active. I th I'm not sure if there's a limit of waves i think actually that that you know that used to exist a lot 10 wave limit 12 wave li limit 15 wave limit i think that doesn't exist anymore i'm not sure if there's a limit of of waves you can actually catch because i remember surfers having to come out of the water because they surfed more than 10 waves um, first wave for Afonso Tunis and just that one hit He's been fairly confident throughout this event. More, more mature, some say. Um, truth is, he's a, a great surfer. Uh, been, been, been out here for a while. Gone through a few phases uh, in terms of performance and results. And he's now, it looks like, on yeah. a good face. It's going to feel better, isn't it? Just this turn, just getting involved in the event, really. He's heard surfers build up scores around him. That's not what you want. He's waiting a while. You don't want to wait. I don't mind the patient. You don't want to be too patient out here. It's probably low scores going to get it done. Looking at numbers, last few heats, you're seeing second place get through with eights and nines. So just get involved, mate. Roll your sleeves up, get down to biz. And that's what he's done there. And crucially, after you wait that length of time, what you don't want to do is go incomplete. So a good turn with some. Some aggression at the lip, and crucially right now of it. Yeah, here he goes again. 
let's see, just one nice turn and then, um, yeah, nothing special, but completely agree. You have to uh, get your hands dirty in this in this uh, in these conditions. Just going for it. Um, you never know what can happen in in the wave. So a 3.9 in that first wave for Afonso Tunes. This last one won't be um, won't help him that much. But low scoring heat so far. No one has made better than a, a four points. And with 16 minutes to go, all the surfers are pretty much in the same pack, waiting for that wave that will change their lives in this heat. All of them together, it looks like Charlie Kivon. His, his style, I always find, found it was like a, a bit like Dusty Pain. It was like, maybe because he serves Volcom as well, but I always thought he had a beautiful style. And just like Dusty, Dusty did. And one Noakes here goes vertical. And again, and three turns for him, so smart surfing. That's Gryffindor style right there. A little bit of Hufflepuff? A little bit of Hufflepuff? I don't know. I, I, I don't have to put the the big hat. <laughs> the conical hat? The wizard cone? <laughs> Loan Noak. He is a little bit pottery as well, isn't he? There's something. Yeah. Maybe it's just because he's young. Yeah, I can yeah, I can yeah, I can I can see him with a wound. A wound? A a wand. It? Wand. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, but like cool, collective, you know, not afraid of Voldemort. Um. <laughs> uh. Then again, a force of force in that last one. Unfortunately, he's looking at his board. What happened there? Doesn't look very happy. Doesn't look happy. He wants a backup. Oh. Looks like it. It's it's weird because he was uh, you know complaining but not really making his way to the beach. But the board doesn't look broken or anything. But he's uh, yep not very happy. It looks. 13 minutes to go, still has plenty of time. Mm. Second board wasn't ready. So this is Tabor's last wave and just nice flow really, I think, the takeaway. And when you got that flow, you bring it down, you get a final section, it all just sits up for you. And then you get your timing done. So this is what happened to Fonz. Let's see. Let's see. So maybe at the end there, something happened? The, the, last board, the board didn't look crisp. Fine before that, yeah. right? Maybe he felt something. So either he damaged on that last turn or he, he felt something during the ride. I've seen a couple. Look at the map wagering by Charlie Kivron. He's, he's on next wave will be wave number 11. He's been so busy. Still in third though. Still hunting a number. Wow. Big boat coming in. Is he in between the waves? Maybe not, but like actually I've been thinking about it. It's a it's a um, rough day for fishing. Yeah. Yeah, that boat, that's a big boat. It's been moving up, it's moving about a lot. That's a five meter swell. That's Afon Zantunes, he's in the, he's in the rip, he's getting back out the back. It's a bit rattled on the beach, didn't he? He's a frustrated, he needs to keep his head in the game. No one's got good scores, really. Although that last number of tape is decent. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, just like last hit, you can go, go to first place really quick. We have Iago Dominguez looking, looking light, looking um, focused, happy. He's got his opponent 
uh, op opponent right on his back. Uh, Justin Becré. He's also um, he's he's being coached by. Um, I don't remember. As Bushka. As Bushka. Is that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And he was on Ramsey's corner for, for some time yeah, as well. Yeah, Ramsey not, not using the coach this year on the CT. He's just doing his own thing. Hmm. And doing well. Um, some surfers, when they don't have a coach, you know, it's 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 different. But Ramsey, that rep recipe he's using is, is, is uh, he's working. So, no bells last night, mate. No bells last night. Who's going to be on today? What's what's the call? Uh, yeah, actually, I I didn't see the forecast, so I'm I'm, I'm not one to to say. I think Jervis will will have a a wise word on that. Or just a word, anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's not put too much pressure on him. <laughs> There's some rip out there, mate. Yeah. It's, it's pushing and pushing and it's taking a while for the the tide to fill in it, it it's just really hard to surf at the moment you know small waves what do you reckon what do you reckon going to the outside just for one wave yeah don't do it no no maybe not anyway while we wait for this tide to fill in, we're going to do another little break. And when we come back, we'll have all the action. Stay with us. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. Here we are back at Costa da Caparica for the finishing minutes of this heat. It looks like we had some surfing. Um, it's impossible that we don't have surfing pretty much in, in the breaks because there's so many waves coming um, that we usually always have some replays. It looks like the situation um, is not so different from when we left Deva Bouchoua first place Luan Nog, uh, Charlie Kivron and Afonso Antunes but it's still anyone's game small scores um, for every surfer to go to both first and second place and um, uh, Charlie Kivron already already with 12 waves that's uh, you know uh, something you don't see every day um, this current keeps on pushing and yeah this this is like you know, a day like today, I would say, is like going to the Chamber of Secrets and discovering there's a big snake under those tunnels or, or something like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or maybe the forest where, We're, you know. <laughs> it's scary. We're live from the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. 
And yeah, there's 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 scary things about it at night. Would you go in those woods at night? No chance. No, and, and like hey, in France, you you always have those big pine trees. He's, here's uh, Hans Adriazola getting ready with Zesiabra. Yeah. ADP stuff for tomorrow, crew. Exactly. Um, You're working on that project, mate. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, me too. Yeah, you too. Great times. Always working together. Um, and for some tunes there with a uh, nice slash there, but nothing, nothing special. Uh, three eight four. That's what he needs to advance. But time is ticking down, and they have to. You know, start putting some something on the board. Uh, Tiger Carrick's a raven claw. Do you know why? Raven claw. Do you know why he's a raven claw? Uh, also Apart because from the, the black hair, because of air. The, the essential uh, element is air for raven claw. I, w I didn't know they had uh, elements. Gryffindor's fire, Hufflepuff is earth, and Slytherin is water. Water. Really? Yep. I'll, 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 um I would connect uh, Slytherin with fire and Gryffindor with water, actually. But, but yeah, also like Snape was from Slytherin and he was a good guy in the end. Really which good was guy. like the yeah. best guy. Yeah. Yeah, he was great. Nice, nice cast that really, really um, had an impact on a generation. Great series. Didn't over push it. Maybe a bit, but um, great, great movie. And Alan Rickman was was played Snape, didn't he? Sadly died in 2016. Oh, he did. Brilliant. One of my favorite actors. It's just definitely amazing. Did so many good stuff. I didn't know he died. Um, but in this heat, um, we had some action as we see live action from Afonso Tunis. Nice bottom turn, a lot of space. This is his best wave so far, 384, that's what he needs. It's possible he made it and Teva Bushwa, Bushwa doesn't, uh, doesn't wait around. He will try to um, secure that first place. And, uh, Alfonso Antunes there as we see what what do you think? Mm. Really good. I, you get, sometimes you get frustrated, go a couple of ways. You find a good outlet for it. It's what he did there. And this way, by contrast, not quite the impact, I would say, as the previous one. Nice finishing turn from Teva. He was already in the lead, but Afonso, that would be a key number for him. It's not a big one that he needs, 384. It's not a big number, and a late charge from him. Remember Thomas Dubier, what he was able to do in that last heat, fourth to first. Let's see where he goes towards his 384. He's got nothing really on the board so far. Tell you who else is really struggling, big surprise. Kivrant's ridden 13 waves. He's still in third. Wow, how does that happen? Well, um, I don't know. Actually, 13 waves is is a lot of opportunities. Uh, maybe in even in this mess, um, there's some waves that just like tell you they can, you know, you can go for two turns or at least one good turn. He's surfing really well. Uh, you can see he's loose uh, and confident, but. Um, Really not able uh, to to find that that good turn, but Afonso did. He's now in second place, four, five, seven. Um, his corner is happy. This is his brother. Uh, his brother is in the rock band, actually, or used to be. He was also. Uh, he was also surfing and competing, but then he was just like, I'm just going to sing and, and play. Um, Charlie Kivron now with that try, but unfortunately, he has a beautiful painting on his board as well. But, um, He's having a nightmare in this seat. Nightmare. He's having a nightmare. So wave number 13 for him. That's Charlton. Exactly. Historic surfer in Portugal. Uh, he was national champion loads of times. He, he was like this smooth operator. Um, great competitor. 
No. What does that mean? I think... Stay where you are? No, I think... McDonald's? Uh, does that mean uh, McDonald's? The Golden Arches? It, yeah. Um, don't have the apple pie because it's hot. <laughs> then the inside is too hot. Or just wait. As if anyone's waiting, mate. As soon as you get in that thing, you're inhaling you it. put it in. A couple of tokes mouth. on that. <laughs> straight down. <laughs> it's like molten lava in there, isn't it? <laughs> it's crazy. It's hotter than the surface and of the sun. And even if you open it, it takes like, <laughs> you know, minutes for yeah. it to, to, to be eaten. Do they still exist, the apple pies? I, I think so. I think so. But I'm, I'm sure McDonald's had, you know, was... was um, had some legal stuff because I'm sure someone got uh, burnt in their mouth just like a lot of times and Teva there falling yeah the only, the only species that could really eat those were dragons because of the, the fire resistance that they yeah. naturally have in the esophagus yeah but everyone else just really struggled <laughs> a fossil you can hear the crew in every wave. Yeah, tight, nervy one, this. It's, it's, it's up for grabs, isn't it? I mean, look at the numbers. Look at the requirements. They're really low. It's just get away. Two turns, comboed up. You're getting high fours, fives, etc. And tunes here, just keeping Luan off this wave. That was the key part of it. Whether the score is an improvement or not, it was Luan Nog, who did have priority as well prior to that, didn't he, the Frenchman? Well, here goes Charlie, He's trying everything he can, but this is a serious tentative. Mm, but I not what he wanted, it. Nog, was it? Yeah, he's, he's annoyed. And I don't know how he missed it. He had prior there. I don't know what. He, he didn't. He just couldn't get on it. I guess. Yeah. Nice one. This 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 is a, an important step for Alphonse Antunes. Um, he will be now in the round of 16. That's a good result for him. Um, he needs it as well. You know, every surfer does, but. Um, Afonso is now uh, maturing, and so this result is also saying, look, you're doing your work, that's paying off, you should continue in this path, uh, and usually results give you, you know, confidence, and, and, and they basically um, tell you if you're on the right path or not. Um, and uh, he is this... Uh, this surfer, this sir is as well, Teva Bushugwa, first place. And those are the official results. We are going into the last heat of this round. When we come back from a little break, come back with us. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. Welcome back to Caparica Surfest 2024. 
Run of 32, eat eight in the water, and Zodrio Zola, Iago Dominguez, Justin Picret, and Adura Matrian. Joining myself chic by chic. Paul Evans again. Uh, Paul Evans having a long day at the oh, office. Oh, mate. <laughs> the back's hurting a bit. All the carrying I'm doing. Yeah, you, you, yeah. Uh, you're always good I'm at that. bearing a heavy load. What are you thinking about? Ooh. What do you, are you thinking about the waves, Paul? Uh, it, it's low tide right now, dead low. It's, it's, it's pretty bad. Like, it's hard to find numbers. You've seen the, the scores have gone through the floor. We're, we've seen surfers get through with like two fours, and that's not a reflection on the surf, and it's just a super low. But you know, it's going to be good and big later. And this is wow. straight off the get go. We hands Audrey Zola, the Basque, and getting a quick start. It doesn't always pay off though. That last one, Charlie Kivron got 15 ways and still couldn't get out of the threes. Well, uh, I was looking that um, up close. Uh, there on the rocks, and uh, mm. I tell you what, it's. Did you have a nice break? Yeah. Uh, bang! Oh, Iago Dominguez there. We know he can throw some big airs. Yeah, and I had a, a quick break. Um, uh, Un unscheduled break, but yeah, yeah, it was yeah, unscheduled, but, uh, but still. Yeah. Kind of sometimes, sometimes they're the best ones, <laughs> aren't they? <laughs> they're the best ones. Oh, and you're not really allowed to be on break, but you just are. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking the rules. <laughs> but yeah. It's all part of it. Yeah, but uh, look, um, I kept my eye on the, the, <laughs> That's <laughs> the eats. That's good. And one thing yeah. is for certain. Yeah. Uh, I was standing on the pier there, right. sitting right next to the waves. Looking into the left. Yeah, just imagining there's a different scenario in the water, but it looks really hard out there. Like, seriously, uh, there's a lot of, like, A-frame peaks going against each other, and they're trying to identify what, what what's uh, actually wave to score. And uh, a guy upper riding, now blue. Nice carve. Here, really quick surfing. Iago Dominguez surfed really, 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 really well. And this is White, Justin Becret, one of the standouts of the round before. Always surfing strong with turns like this. Really composed. No fear at all of falling. So uh, Justin there. Just a quick start. I don't think it's going to be nothing major, but. On the last round, he looked on fire, what Paul. What toppings do you think he puts on his acai bowl? Well, let me just have a Chia double check. Pudding? Yeah, pudding chia, that's for sure, with carves like that. Mm, this sounds more like pasoka. And with the last turn, I would say powder milk. Yeah, I feel like he puts powder milk. For a heat? Mm. I'm saying bananas. Get those electric Yahweh looks uh, more quick. Look, Co inside. Coconut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Adur, what do you reckon with turns like this? Wham! Strawberries for sure. And another one. Strawberries. Yeah. See, he's whippy. He's light on his feet. He's, he's sprightly. He's got loads of energy. He'll need more of that, though. And a guy that was light on his feet and uh, throwing buckets of water is standing by with Claudia Pinto Teva Boshkua, the leader of the last seat. That's right, Chic. We're here with Teva, surfer from Morocco and the winner of the last heat. How does that feel? Of that, even though the conditions today were are challenging, you still made it to the next round. But it's hard for everyone out there, so we we all try to to get the best wave of uh, during the the 30 minutes heat. So. I was able to, to catch one medium, I mean, one five pounds, so I'm happy with that one. And after it's hard for everyone, so happy to make it. As far as positioning, what was your strategy? We saw during the last couple hits before mine, there were like the current, and in the current, sometimes there were some, uh, some left. So I tried to, to stay in this current and wait for the big set to come in the, the current and create a, an opportunity to, to have a good left. So I'm happy I had it. I had it so. Can you tell us a little bit about your choice of surfboard for today? Uh, I choose one of my best boards I had uh, since a really long time. Uh, thank you, Jayas, for making those really good boards. It's the normal size, six zero and a half, round tail. 
give me a little bit more more drive during the, in those hard conditions with the, without the more much power in the wave. So I'm really happy to have the, this board and it's working really well. Congratulations. Thank you. Tev Bush were there talking about boards. How important is the equipment for these conditions, Paul? Like I feel like when the waves get hard, the magic board stands up. I feel like when the waves are good, it's just like all oh, kind of the same. Get good waves, the board feels good, but when the waves are really bad, I feel like you can really feel what's a magic board all about. Yeah, you're going to need those little differences, aren't you, basically? I think that's fair to say. It's all going to come. When it comes all tight, all the scores are bunched together, a lot of fours, really similar sort of stuff. It's those tiny little variations and just a bit more pop out of the board, something of a little bit oh, lighter. we haven't talked about pop. Mate, now seems like a good as time as any. I think we're going to get a few quicker. Whoa, hang on. What's going on here? Base jumping with Matthew McGillivray. No way. Is he going to open the this parachute? Is called, this is called proximity flying when you go really close to the land wow. when you're base jumping. Love this. Look at him. Going quite slow, though. <laughs> Elisiato doing a, a That's because nice... of the onshore, mate. He's actually going like really fast. Can we see his face? <laughs> I would love to see his face like really quick. Just throwing a shaka. Look at this. We'll give him the camera. This is incredible. Beautiful shot there. Bang. Quick surfing. And a quick wave as well. So <laughs> quick turn, quick surfing, quick wave. Uh, I think this will be the best one of uh, Iago's uh, with 20, 20 minutes to go. Uh, Iago Dominguez. Yeah, he's, he's just got loads. I think so. He's vicious. He's aggressive. He's radical. Just didn't really get a chance to do anything else there. Just the one quick hit and that was it. But Cray, this was during the interview with Teva. And he's got loads of drive. He's on a low line there, though, and it just the white water grabs him. He really wanted another section. He had speed. It just ran away, and he never got a chance to open up. And again, it's going to keep his scores. And we talk about the bunching. We're going to continue to see that. Here's a paddle. Yeah, live here. Ants going off the bottom, off the top. Well, he got swollen by that section. He stood up the way was like one foot and the section he was against was like four foot. It's one of those ones that makes your ear hurt, isn't it? You come yeah. up one side of your face, it's quite red. Like the rib, is ringing. the rib. Yeah. <laughs> you just go like... <laughs> Ouch. He seems fine, he's all right, he's strong. <laughs> yeah, he, he is. he's young. Uh, I saw him getting ready for his seat, doing a nice preparation with Siabra there. Uh, he means uh, business, he's focused. I just feel like he can do a lot of damage as we see a really good wave for uh, Zustan. Uh, wow, nice f float there, trying to get around this section. There's a lot of water in the front, but now he's good. Big turn to end this wave, probably here at the end. Oh. It's so hard to find like a clean face to actually make a proper turn. But I think it will improve on that 2.33 as we see Ase Bushku. Wow. We see that we saw there Ase Bushku doing a bit of a debrief about what he's seeing in the water. He's training Justin Bicre. As we see live Adur finishing up his long left. That turn there from Adur looked good, Paul. Yeah, I mean, he's just a firecracker, and he any sort of conditions, he's just all over everything. Look how much ground he covers. He's just everywhere on this thing. Bang. Banks off the white water, goes back left again. So he's already gone in four different directions. That's a massive turn. And sometimes it's just about almost creating the opportunities yourself. So this way, it's a, was it a right? Is it a left? I mean, I don't know. But all I know is there's all sorts of spray buckets being ejected off his board. This is a bigger wave. It's just this bit that made it weird for him. He had to be really patient here. And then he had, I think it was hands as well, ducked up. He had to wait for that. And he stuck with it. And he got a double up eventually, but even the double up got weird for him. Like just I that crumble in front of him. Yeah, the double up got the double up of the double up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he kept doubling so it's really up. really well served in terms of like, it, that was a hard wave to surf, but it's not going to be a lot of points for him. That's his mate. Nanook watching on. 
Nanook surfs really well, actually. Yeah, apart from the Caribbean, yeah. yeah. I've seen him surf in Erisera, uh, really good mates with Zustad. They travel together all the time, really good mates. As you see, Hans Odriozola up riding, quick snap, and bang! Nice wave there by Hans Odriozola. I think this one is going to be his best one so far. Uh, Two-turn combo, really quick in transition, and the man himself, again, looks like he's got a really good one to hit off the top. Oh, got stuck on the lip. Maybe went a bit too early to that one, but uh, nice. Sometimes fireworks do go off early. That's why you should never approach them once they're lit. Wow. <laughs> He never stopped to amaze me with uh, with uh, phrases that I, I could never imagine. Never I would listen during it. a QS <laughs> with low tide oh, in Costa de Caparica. Yeah. And uh, that's why you... Wow. Talk me through this wave, Paul. This was so fireworks. Just furious, I would say furious zigzags, and it's what he got on the last one, and it paid off for him. And that one there, just a bit too much. So he puts a lot of tail into that turn, but he, he stays high. And then he gets done. Andrea Zola, though, keeps the board loose and liberated and free. And because of that, and because of the speed, he gets a completion. Nice. Yeah, that wave was great. Uh, Adur's wave, 6-6-7, six, six, one of the highest scores we've seen all day. So judges loved uh, that right and left transition all the time. Three lefts and two rights, wasn't it, that way? Yeah, OK, it's, it's, it's worth it, yeah. the 667. Yeah. <laughs> He caught like four waves of the same wave, so we understand. But um, but yeah, that turn, pushing the fins out, uh, getting a bit loose on that section showed a lot of commitment. So judges really appreciate that. As we see, tension on the beach. People are coming from all over from Portugal to see the action today. First day we saw the sun, so uh, sunglasses are out. Everyone is out enjoying the action, and uh, that, that's actually what Costa got us used to. So seeing a lot of people on the beach is something that we love about Costa. And today is going to be, it's public holiday, so we're going to see a full beach uh, for sure. Um, during lunch and during the afternoon so it's an extra for our athletes to perform don't you think athletes like to have a full beach ball yeah definitely for sure and just you know in terms of the energy you're gonna need a lot of it today like it's, it's tough it's been a tough week it's draining being there in sort of howling on short condition you're gonna need to bring that energy and the crowd will bring that and support the surfers as we see Iago here with a quick wrap there nice style really compact uh, he, he gains a lot of speed out of these bottom turns another one really on the pocket and he finishes it off really well so really really nice wave here by Iago I really enjoy the the reps he's got a really nice style really technical approach on the leap and uh, on the face of the wave and that he, I, I felt like he was patient on this wave. I really enjoyed the patient. I think I enjoyed it as much as you did, mate. It's, it's a flat wave. The surfing's really flat here. He's struggling, really. He's really lateral. And he's struggling to sort of make an incision. It's a nice combo at the end. He, he kind of saved the wave of this last section, I felt. And it was back quick. there, but I just think he just looks sluggish. I don't know. I really enjoy the end, as you said. I feel like at the start, uh, you're right, but the work he has done on a really hard wave, I just feel like it's all based on his talent. Look at his carve. Yes, nice in style in the pocket and the end turn. Uh, I had, he added a bit more. So those last two turns, this one, tight, jam in the pocket, compact. And that was cool. Yeah, it was cool. Like I like the transition of the carve. He got really low on the board and then the style into the last turn. I feel like that's a goofy, you know, like. So uh, the last turn, uh, the last wave, 4.6. So judges liked it too, based on the conditions, that's he quite a good score. The wave. For 4.6 on that is like an 8 on a kind of a, on good waves, because <laughs> exactly. he seriously surfed that fully to its potential. And this is Adur, uh, uh, caught the rail there, a bit of a fall, uh, as we see. More waves out the back, 13 minutes to go. So we have Adur with the highest single score of this seat with a 667. That wave was uh, the wave we saw four waves in one wave. Um, and uh, Justin in second. But every, everyone is really tight on this seat. So 
as I'm speaking, I see Justin trying to run, uh, Anz trying to run away with this one, with turns like this. <laughs> he for sure will. That turn was beautiful. Let's see how he can finish it off this wave. Uh, pumps a bit to gain speed and bang, another one. So quite a long ride, Paul, but that turn in, in the middle of the wave was great. I feel like this is going to be probably his best wave so far. It's two really similar moves. So this turn that he does here and the last, the next one that he sets up for, that's a really similar one to that to finish as well. The crucial thing for this wave is it was in deep water throughout. He actually stayed away from trouble in that when the wave closes out, it's, it's massive and really heavy. He kind of stayed away from it. That actually helped him. It seems like a strange thing to say, but that next bit there is what he didn't want to surf because it's kind of unsurfable. It's full low tide. So just by that little distance between the channel, this rip bowl left and where he was able to keep that speed. I mean, in terms of being in the pocket, that's exactly where he was the whole time. And he stayed light on his feet, quick and nimble. And it is just about squeezing whatever opportunity you can. And you feel that's exactly what he did there. This was Bacre, a replay of him. And that is sort of indicative of, apart from his first wave, the ways he's had, he's had so much white water on his way. So that the real contrast in Hans's way that stayed in the pocket, kept kind of reforming for him with a little short lip. And Bukhre was just white water all around him and that's going to keep his score low. Yeah, uh, quick. I think that you said it, it's actually uh, really well said. Is that hands on that? Yeah, Paul, the last turn, he, he avoid trouble. So he made it happen five to seven, and uh, that's a keeper. And that's really important for the moment of the heat. I feel like this is going to be one of those seats that it's going to be uh, really close uh, until the end uh, in terms of scores, as we see the replay of uh, Anne's wave. And yeah, as you said, I like this one, really tight in the pocket. And this last turn, uh, he avoid trouble, and he did the turn before the explosion. So uh, he played just a bit safe, but you gotta be safe when you're competing, and uh, he did just that. Yeah, it's not 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 the conditions to be taking risk. You, you don't need to get eights. That's kind of clear. Like you're gonna get out of heat here. You know, even self as in first have actually been in single figures the last few heats. And getting through, and even in second is a couple of fours generally will do it. Maybe not quite so in this one, because we are seeing some better scores go through, but you don't need to try and go mad. And I think playing it safe for once actually a pretty good idea. As we see live action now, Anz again. Uh, he's keeping busy. Uh, quick carve here. Waits for the wave to build up. Nice snap. Really stylish approach by Anz. And a finishing turn. Wow. Gets really vertical there. I don't know if he will improve on the 443. I don't think so, but let's just see the replay and uh, maybe have a close look on it, Paul. Yeah, I, I, I don't think he will either, but you can't tell what the wave's going to do when you're out the back, so it's just about keep catching waves and see what happens, and that's what Bikray's trying to do here. Yeah, it's the stand having a bit of trouble to find something in the, the mid range, trying to find himself out there. Uh, as we see Yago out the back as well. Justin, though, oh. wow. Can he make it? Oh, yes. yes, please. And out the back, Yago, bango. Nice. Oh, ooh. ouch. That looked awkward. That was really awkward. He did a really, really good job on not like hurting Anzo Drozola. The question, though, is, is that a paddling interference? No, the answer is no, definitely not. No chance. No chance? No. And if it is? Well, it isn't. Okay. But if it was, he'd lose, he'd lose half of his backup score. But he's not going to... Because Iago was like, he had priority and he interfered on the scoring potential of his wave. Uh, he didn't have a choice. You're allowed to exist. There's nothing wrong with just being there. If he, he, Where else could he have gone? Yeah. No, that was fine. There was nothing wrong with that. That's all good. Great info here by Paul. Paul is certain of uh, not I'm being positive. an interview. Yeah, thanks, Paul. For I've never been more certain of anything in my life, Chico. Okay. So where do you want him to go? <laughs> what do you want him to do? I don't know. Just, just exist. Just get his at yeah, the just, atoms, I, I, the I, atoms I, that make up his body. He wants to stop I'm spinning. I'm just debriefing a situation, Paul. Like I don't, I don't want to be right or wrong. <laughs> I'm trying to talk with you. <laughs> That's what relationships are all about, isn't it? It's not, it's not being right or wrong, it's just 
vibing off each other and bringing the best out of each other. Yeah, as we see the double up again, is it, Paul? I'm <laughs> just kidding. You said it, it's not. Okay, unfortunately for Iago there, uh, that was a, a good looking wave, I thought, but uh, this was Justin. Uh, this was Ants before Iago's wave. Nice carve here. Let's see if he can improve at the 4 4 3. Nice carve here. And the last one, I think, was the, the money turn here. Bang! Really quick, tight in the pocket, jumps and um, makes it happen. And uh, I feel like the last of Justin is going to be his best one so far. That last turn was huge. Yeah, it was, that was massive. He needed that. It, it came right at the end of the wave, and that sort of testament. He's had a couple where he stayed with them, and you think, well, oh, maybe kick out. This has not got a lot, but looked like it paid off that time for him. As we see live action, nice carving, uh, tight jam, one's up off the bottom, and oh, the wave just disappears. So he couldn't really um, get nothing out of that uh, section. And then we have six minutes to go. Uh, everything is really tight. I feel like with the talent we have on end in the water, anything can shift out of nothing because um, yeah and just got an interference and uh, I was right so thanks Paul it's not for about being right mate it's yeah it's just about right. being a debrief <laughs> and it's just not about uh, being right Chico okay. yeah, I was what do you want me to say <laughs> where, where, I'm really surprised at that where where, where, where do you want him to go <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's just important because Anz was on a roll and I feel like he was on such a good rhythm at this event and losing by paddling out is just something that uh, it, 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 it's really hard to deal with. So Anz with the priority interference, um, the paddling interference, paddling out. So uh, I think when you don't have priority and you're pedaling out and the one that has priority is coming on a wave, you need to avoid him. So um, this is uh, just a quick snap there. Winds up off the bottom and bang. The wave got really weird here, but he was able to finish it off. So. Yep, Justin there with a, a long wave. The wave before is looking like his best one. And this was a replay of Iago, the wave that just completely disappeared on him. So Iago couldn't really do anything else here. So, yeah, he just kicked out. But last of the one before of Justin, 573. Uh, Justin that was kind of like trying to find himself on this seat, jumps into the lead and. And with a paddling interference goes to fourth. And um, let's just have a, maybe another look at the interference if we can. But yeah, now for now, just uh, in the lead, I do it in second with that 667 and a really low backup score with the 277. Yago, and uh, let's see the interference again. So uh, I want to see there it was a bit of a rule change with this, wasn't there? After what happened, he had time actually to paddle to the left. Okay, he had it. He actually had time to pedal to the left to avoid like not being on the I line. Mean, of the he, had, he could have turned around and w gone in on the white water as well. He had time to do that, but I mean, he's just paddling out in a straight line. Oh, live, big turn off the top. Looks like the wave is, is just going to disappear. Just a, a quick turn. I think he will improve on that 277. But yeah, as you said, like. It's a tricky one, like, yeah, you could have just turned around and go on the white one. In theory, yeah, it's everyone like, could do that on every wave, just just turn around and go in, but... But yeah, it's just a hard situation, like... And uh, bang, off the top, 3.3, so I do jump, not jumps into the lead, in either the 3.73. Uh, so all sorts of things are happening on this seat. Really intense one, I think it was the, the most intense seat we had. So how's he going to react, the youngster? She goes, my question for you. He's, um, yeah, he's got a priority. He was surfing pretty well. He was in a strong position. He's lost all of his backup score. He needs basically a 10, so uh, I don't know. I think he will, if he loses, for sure, uh, he will uh, come back from this. He's really young. He's probably the best of his age in his category uh, from Europe, so he'll be back. And just uh, here, finishing it off really strong again. Oh. 
on a really hard section to make. So just that for sure will improve on that 467. Yeah. There's the intensity. Look at the game face from Becray there. He's breathing, he's sucking in oxygen, he's feeling it. He's yeah. He's in the battle, he's rolled his sleeves up. He had, a, he had a crap start to this heat and he's come back strong. Really hard hit for just uh, He started off really slow, as he said. And uh, this one, I love this last turn. He put everything on the line. He, he just sort of feels that he knows he's going to get oh. a double up on the inside. And that is super technical to go to just tweak the board in the lip like that is, is good with speed and control but then when it bottoms out and you're going from a fat slopey white water to just suddenly like a double up on kind of almost dry sand very impressive yeah really hard to make that one the dry there's not much water there and uh, to make that turn was uh, really really technical uh, as we see two minutes to go Paul and uh, as I said, anything can happen on this seat. We saw just turning fourth, as we see the replay of Hans going for a third, back foot slips off. So Hans uh, couldn't do much there, but uh, I just felt this is one of those eats that anything can happen. There's so much talent in the water. Nice snap here by Adur. Um, waits for the wave to give him the reform, pumps the board. And I, I feel he can get something again. He's waiting, waiting, waiting. And there you go. Nada snap for Adur. Can he finish? With, yes, he can. So really hard wave to surf. Adur made the most of it and looked really good. So three turns on this wave. He needs to improve on the 3.30 and only needs a 3.7 to first, as we see live action now. And on the wave, nice. Snap off the bottom, off the top, floats it, and wow, it just does a huge float over a huge double. Very nice, I like it. It's not going to be the 10 that he needs. Oh, it's just like a big disappointment, uh, disappointment for him. For sure, he was on a, on a roll on this hit. One of the standouts on this event, in my opinion, he was on a roll. And uh, to lose like that, it's just always like... It's a learning process, though. You, you know, you, you get this early on in your career, and you, you know, you won't do that again. Yeah. Do that or will do you? what? <laughs> paddle, paddle out, out. after a wave <laughs> in a straight, completely straight line. Yeah, just paddle out and yeah, learning process. It's just hard, hard one. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, and unfortunately for for him, I, I, I thought he was on a roll, but yeah, five eight seven for Justin in the lead and Adur uh, trying to improve with this last wave. He needs to improve on the 3.3. Can he get the 4.93 to go back into the lead? I don't know. I'm not a judge, but uh, he did a good job. That's for sure. This last turn was nice, crisp off the top and uh, he made it. So that's it for this hit, Paul. Um, a lot of things happened on this one, Paul. Mm. A lot to debrief. Yeah, my key takeaway, this guy, Becray, right? I yeah. just think about tenacity and that grit that you kind of need as well. And it's not his kind of conditions, you would say, probably. It's, it's, it's scrappy, it's grindy, it's not very good. And he just backed himself. And to look at his numbers, I mean, it's a big total for him. 11.6 is, is really solid. Yeah. And how he managed to get that amount of quality from... Those poor conditions really, really impressed by Justin. And I think that's a little kind of a warning sign for other surfers heading to that round of 16 that Bukray is up for the fight here. Look at the sportsmanship of uh, Enz. Did the, uh, the, the paddling uh, interference, comes out, gives Enz shake to everyone, and he's like, good job. That sound, that, that's really mature from him. So can't wait to see more action. We're going to be... Right back with the woman in the water, round of 32, eat one. And uh, I tell you what, there's some big names eating the water soon. So stay tuned for more Caparica Surf Fest 2024. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it, make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test, ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio 
está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. Welcome back to sunny Costa da Caparica, Caparica Surf Fest 2024 is live and we've got good news for you, Eat One, round of 32 of Woman, eat the water right now, so can't wait to see the action, joining myself Chico by Chico on the booth is Zé Ferreira, Zé Ferreira, you look happy, you look composed, you look stylish with your green socks, how are you feeling? Feeling very well Chico, thank you for that. I, I just love that you double checked the color of your socks. Yeah, uh, because I know you you, you woke up early. You you, so. you woke up early, and I understand it's just hard to understand the color that you bring on your yeah, on your feet. You never know, but colored socks usually, you know, just, just they are trendy. Uh, they are trendy. Replay of uh, Teresa Movalo first wave. Yeah, let's look at that nice first carve, and then gets pretty much destroyed by. The, that wave, but you can see that the tide is filling in. The waves are a little better. And this is Tia wow. Zabrowski. Beautiful turn to finish that off. And this Hichiku has three Portuguese surfers and one um, one French surfer. And yeah, and uh, a French surfer that is happy because of his last eat win and he's standing by with the Claudia Pinti is just time to with the eat win. That's right, Justin is here with me and he looks really happy. <laughs> Can you tell us, guide us through your heat and what strategy you had today? Well, um, it was tough again. Yeah, there was uh, basically two spots. So the first, uh, the first uh, spot uh, started not working anymore. And I had the, the backup in, in mind. Uh, that which was the, the left a uh, bit more out the back. So I went and f couldn't really feel my legs, but uh, on the end turns, I did the job. So I've like, I held on to my legs and made it. So I got a couple of scores and made it again, happy. Sometimes it's hard to get a strategy and then reinvent yourself. How do you work that on? Yes, well, uh, it's all about adapting. Uh, the ocean is very, uh, very well it, move, it moves all the time especially with the tides here and the, the big swell it can it can switch uh, from one spot to another very quickly so we've just got to stay adaptable and have many plans in mind not to be a uh, like in the rush or cut by the the moment you know gotta stay on top of things yeah congratulations thank you happy man there just time be credit what i eat he actually reinvented himself uh, a lot because he was kind of behind the eight ball the whole time and then he turned around the eight on the second half of it so great job by there by Justin and now in the water we had an interesting situation again uh, Teresa was going left without priority and then Maria Salgat had priority and went on the same wave uh, I don't know if that's enough to call it uh, priority interference but uh, let's see what happens in the water. And uh, this is White again, really stylish surfer from um, France. Just a quick hit off the top, a bit stuck there on that one. Not as good as her first one. So uh, I don't think this will go into her top two uh, at the end of this one. And uh, with 40, 24 minutes to go, a lot of waves still to get scored. 
by our judges and this was the replay yeah nice turn actually a bit of a weak turn but here this wave looked better nice first turn and then beautiful second turn let's see if um, the judges see some uh, interference in terms of potential that was a very nice turn as well I, I, I don't think there was any, 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 interference. any interference I think she 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 jumped quick enough and this was the last of red going against a big uh, right hander but that turn of Teresa on the last one was really strong um, and I the, think and the turn of Maria Salgado was really and, and, strong and as well. And the turn of Maria Salgado as well. Yeah. So the, the scores will be more or less a, a bit a bit of the same. You know what? I feel like it's not going to be called anything because Maria Salgado actually took advantage of uh, the potential of the wave. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I didn't think it interfered with the potential to the point where you say... Uh, yeah, that, she that's couldn't perform. She yeah. couldn't perform. Yeah, but it was close. You know, I'm uh, sure. Oh, I'm, I'm sure judges thought of that. What's the probably probability of both of them do the best score of the on the same way? Yeah, that's 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 <laughs> one that's rare. One right. Yeah, that's it's rare. really rare. We've seen it like a couple of times, like Matt Wilkinson and Kelly Slater in Osegor uh, a couple of years ago. Like Kelly did a huge air without priority be behind Matt, and Matt went in the front in the front of Kelly and did like a as well so uh, it's just like it's just like uh, it happens but it, it's really rare so 6.4 for Teresa 6.33 for Maria they almost matched the same score on the same wave so nice job by them That that's actually really big numbers for a day like today is it? yeah um, again almost double digits let me just uh, point that out um, but for sure, a, a 6.4 in a day like this, or a 6.33, is, is a keeper, for sure. And possibly your best wave of Has that. anyone lost with double digits this year? Yes, event? yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, you checked? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm saying the probability okay, of okay. passing with double digits in usually these kind of competitions, it's around 90%. Okay. Um, also, it's more probable the, the earlier the phase is of the contest. Obviously, like in the day, like to in the finals day, everyone will have double digits because everyone is on a roll. That's onto the onto the finals day. But but still, um, I, I you know what? I, I will I will do the math, and I will actually give you the. Um, the information. The information. I'll do the stats. Oh, this wave looks great. Looks like a frame left. They were a bit behind there, the peak. So 20 minutes to go. Who do you think is? Uh, who, who's the highlight reel for you in this event until now? The guy, the guy or girl that pops right into your mind, and you think, "Wow, that turn really, really made myself think this guy serves really well." Okay, so um, a moment, just a moment. I don't want to like eat or just a moment. Like it can be Paul Evans just having a walk. Um, yeah, Paul Evans having a walk is 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 a nice moment. Um, I'm gonna give you a minute to think about the moment um, as we see. My one was um, Aaron's eat. I really enjoy uh, uh, no, oh, not the, this one, the one, the uh, one before, okay, but the one before. I, I really enjoyed uh, that moment. I just felt like RNZ was um, a point of difference. Felt like he was really in tune with the ocean, and I think he made everyone really flip their minds about. But it was surfing. strong as well. Yeah, it was really strong. We're 19 minutes to go. Teresa Bonvalo with a 10 point total. 10 point. No, no, but 10. Zero, zero, zero. So that's beautiful by Teresa. What a number. So yeah, and, and, and Teresa is in, in an in interesting position where she almost qualified um, two years ago. She came in, um, she came in fifth place. Um, uh, I 
think, yeah, the fifth place or, or at least the last place that doesn't qualify. Um, she had a, a great campaign, a great struggle. She went to the final, um, then she couldn't really uh, uh, win to the only person that could uh, st steal her, her, her place on tour. Everyone in Portugal thought she was, you know, almost guaranteed. And so Sophie Por Portugal, Portugal never had a, a Portuguese surfer, um, woman surfer on tour. So that would be historic. Um, but it's, you know, for the person that's doing it, it's so, so hard. You have the pressure of a whole country. You have the pressure of no one ever being able to do it. And she became so close that I feel that she needed like some time to rest uh, in the last year from from all that pressure, from all that uh, work that was, um, you know, uh, work for like Hercules. It was really. Uh, as you can see, how are the conditions are. Uh, as you can see. But now she's coming back, and she's um, surfing really well. Um, a lot on the rail again she's uh, she, she's very composed uh, as always so we're, we're we're expecting with enthusiasm Teresa Bonvalo and uh, other Portuguese surfers that have been um, delivering the goods as you can see the drone shot of how are the conditions are right now Looks really messy out there, Zé. Looks really hard to, to navigate through the ocean. Looks huge out the back. On the inside now, there's a lot of rip. Lumps, bumps, wedges. It's just really hard to find yourself out there. Beautiful drone shot, as we see. Kids playing on the beach. Sun is out. And uh, everyone is out in Costa de Caprica right now to see the best surfers in Europe. Seven men will qualify four women will qualify for the challenger series and uh, that's the dream before the dream so you gotta gotta do the dream before the dream gotta make it on the challengers to make the big dream happen make to the city make it happen that's the main goal of all of these all of these athletes right say you once thought about making to the tour say and uh, you, you actually worked for it a lot and uh, you couldn't make it, but I think that's that's part of uh, a career. Sometimes you can make it, sometimes you're not, you, you're not making it. So you just got to believe and work as we see live action. Why? Taya, quick carve there. She's really quick in transition. Wow, that's really tight in the pocket. And another one. Wow. Wow, she has a beautiful surfing very loose yeah very stylish um, and she's evolved she grew a bit from from last from last years as well so she has a more mature surfing let's watch this replay right here so she goes to the bottom nice first turn a bit of a slash and then here stings it and then this one <laughs> is very nice I think the judges will like that it was a smaller wave though but yeah but the, as you said so loose I love the back knee technique like letting the board flow you can, you can see she's comfortable like letting the tail out yeah. uh, and uh, that's something I love to see when when someone does just like puts the knee the knee the inside knee down and let, let the fins free and I think this is going to be a really good score for her, 5.77. Seven, seven. I thought it, it, it could have gone a bit higher. I just felt the technique there was something special there. Yeah, that was, um, I, I think, because the wave wasn't wasn't that big. And so compare, compared to um, Maria's and Teresa's waves, the, that wave is, was a bit smaller. And also, although the turns were very technical, they weren't as explosive as as uh, the other turn so uh, that's a possible explanation for Tia's wave um, to be a bit lower um, but she's definitely uh, with with her surfing on point and if she catches a, a better wave she'll she'll make this heat go on fire um, I, I, I just felt like 
for the conditions that we have, sometimes it's more difficult to connect three turns on your backside with that technique than just a final turn. Like, yeah, well, like a straight have, final turn. We have been seeing, you know, you know what I mean. We have been seeing a lot of uh, a lot of good waves with just one, uh, good scores with just one turn, because the the wave is bigger. There's more risk involved, and I think the the, the judges have been rewarding that over like over a lot of turns. But but oh, you, oh. you don't feel like the work you gotta do to connect those three turns are sometimes in terms of uh, technical uh, side, more, more more hard to do than just the, the uh, final float on a sip section? Yeah, it's both are hard. Um, no, no, they are, but both, both on are an hard. ocean like today, to no, connect two actually, turns, it's like Actually, I think if if you do a big turn on a big closeout, like yeah. a strong closeout, I think that's, that's harder than like three smaller turns on... Um, on a, on a smaller wave. wave, although technically it's it's still hard, obviously, and what what Tia did was um, was great, but but still, I think risk is something that the judges have been really recompensating on the criteria this event, um, and that's uh, yeah, that's a possible explanation. But if you do what Tia did in a bigger wave, in a more risky wave, then the score would jump up for sure. Nice analysis there, Zé. 12 minutes to go. Tia is in the lead. Uh, Teresa Movalo sits in second, hitting a 4 0 4. Started off strong with that 6 4, really quick, and uh, blowing the fins out. Uh, Maria Salgado with that huge uh, turn on the right, 6 3 3. And um, I think we're going to see some fireworks in just a second because we're going to go for a quick break. And we So stay tuned. For more action like this in just a moment. It's good to try. Even when something seems to make little sense, put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals, and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio. Aqui consigo. Welcome back to more action round of 32 E1 of women's round. He is in the water and uh, we've got some big names in the water right now. And training myself, I have Zef Rede, Zef Rede. Long break. We had a long break. We had a, a bit of a debrief. And uh, one thing is for certain, we're going to see fireworks at the end of this seat. I just feel like they're going to catch a few more waves and we're going to see some big turns there. Yeah, also, the situation now, Maria Salgado still only had that one wave. It's the best wave, the second best wave of the of the heat is a 6-3-3. Teresa Bonvalo now up and riding. It looks like a soft wave. Let's see if this wave can reform and offer some, uh, some potential there. She got a bit off wow. balance. Now another one and nice. two. 
very nice turns. Um, she wants to better at 3.6. I think that is possible. But again, smaller wave. And now, Luas Cudeiro, a promising Portuguese surfer. She's, she's a reaper. She's from the south, actually, but she's now living in Irisar, if I'm not mistaken. She traveled, uh, she, she came to live uh, all the way to, to Irisar to train and get better. She rips. I've seen some clips of her, and uh, she's got an amazing style. Having a bit of a shocker ear at this heat, but uh, I've seen the last few clips she has posted on Instagram. They look great. So, really talented surfer from the south, as you said. And Teresa, you're a bit behind this one, Zed. Yeah, on this one, she was a bit... Uh, the rail caught, so she was a bit... But then here, nice rhythm. Two nice turns. It's a 4.2. Betters her score slightly. And but yeah, Shik, I, I agree with you. This will be a tight one between uh, these three surfers. So Teresa Tia and Maria Salgado. Um, Anna uh, Lua is is still in the mix, but um, she didn't quite found her feet yet. And I, I think we've we've got a, a sideline on the sponsor village of Milenio. I think Claudio Pinto has something to say about it. That's right, Milenio BCP is the official bank of Caparica Surf Fest and also the sponsor of Teresa Bonvalo, the surfer who's in the water. And here we can get um, custom made keychains. I felt free to get some for forecasting, broadcasting. And also, uh, you guys don't need to come here, but I think Chic by Shiku, I found the perfect place for your next sketch. I suggest that it would be um, surf booth, but surf booth. I'll give that to you because you're much better than me and much more creative. So I'm sure you'll come up with some great idea. We're waiting for you right here at the Millennium Recipe. Thank you, Claudia. I can't wait to get into that barrel. I think it's the only one we will get today. So uh, I'm going to be there right after this. Um, I'm going to take my, my, my friend Zephyr with me because I think Zé doesn't get barrel for like five years now. So, Zé, what do you think? I think I went to Look Super Tubos. Barrel. I went to Super Tubos the other day and I got shacked. You got shacked? <laughs> I got shacked. Where's the clip? It's, I'll show you. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> if there's no clip, there's no... The truth I'll is, actually show you. It's a myth. You're is, talking about yourself. Is that from 2012? <laughs> You're talking about yourself. Six minutes, I wasn't there, that's for certain. Uh, six minutes to go. Uh, nice sponsors, village right there. Uh, Claudia doing such a good job on the sideline. Uh, and uh, yep, Zé got really barreled in Super Tubos, it's true. Uh, if you want to follow Zé on the socials, he's freaky funk. Uh, he puts up a lot of cliff surfing and uh, Zé Ferreira. No, uh, really not. <laughs> I know, but I was just uh, selling you, Zé. Yep. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. But. Anyway, <laughs> let's get back to this heat. There's a situation here. What? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so basically, <laughs> Teresa, Teresa oh, just, she, she threw herself to Tia. Um, but yeah, that, that does look like um, a priority from Tia. She didn't have the priority on that wave. She had third priority. Teresa had second priority. She wanted to go right, although that wave didn't have a lot of potential, Sheik. What do you think? Uh, Need to see it again, probably. Well, I think uh, Teresa was just probably trying to force a bit there, the issue. Bits, yeah. Because, like, she was not even trying to surf the wave. She was just trying to... Go after her. Go after <laughs> grab her jersey and say, ha, ha, ha. Gotcha. But, but that's part of competition. It is. That's she's part of competition. That's, she's play, that's she's playing the game. She's playing the rules, not even the game. It's the rules on the rule book. So she did a good job on that. Let's see what the judges think. Taya shouldn't actually paddle on that wave. And Maria Salgado started off so well. She needs a... Let's watch it. Oh, uh, she got the interference. So Teresa here having a paddle on this one. Tie it with a quick cutback, and then, then she decides to. Yeah, uh, well. Yeah, unfortunately for Tia. Is this. Um, do you think this is a game plan with Maria? 
Yeah, that's an interference. She was trying to do a foam claim, actually. Yeah. She was not trying to go after. Her. Like she try, she goes for the foam claim, and then when she sees her board, she throws her board away, and it looks yeah. like she falls obviously, over. Obviously, obviously, if 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 someone gets an interference. No, no, no. Uh, th that's maybe something on the system. I don't know. No, that's not something on the system. It's her second best wave. And the last wave doesn't count, so she only has. One oh, okay, wave. got it, got it. Thanks. Sir. Yeah. And this is Teresa up riding. Maybe you should refresh. But uh, it's Teresa. Nice first turn. This wave looks like it's going to open up. She has has been choosing nice, nice waves. How good is the painting? It looks great. How good is that Maria Salgado is in first, is in second place with just one wave? Yeah, she's having the heat all over life. Uh, and this is the replay of Teresa. I love the painting. It looks really clean. Uh, the board looks magic, the, the true reckon. Yeah. She I looks reckon. like she has a lot of speed. And uh, I know there's a bit of a fall there. But the first turn she had, that 6.4 was massive. So uh, Taya here, unfortunately, uh, with an interference. But her surfing really surprised me. I think she's got really, really good technique and style. She still has a chance because she, she needs a 6-3-3. But truth is, as soon as Maria stands up and does something, that She needs score, a bit more, yeah. Yeah. It's so hard to do a score like a 7 or an 8 points in a day like today. Uh, there she goes, Maria. This will already give her like a 2 or a three, so this will make pretty much things impossible for, for Tia now. Bang! There she goes, Maria is a very smart competitor, doesn't fall much. Um, there nice. she goes, nice wave, simple, clean, nice surfing from her. Yeah, I really enjoy seeing Maria Salgat surf, I, I really like her technique on the backside. And on the front side, uh, I love her style. Look at this. She, she's got always such a good reading of the wave, right? Uh, I just feel like she's always on the, the sweet spot of the wave, surfing the wave throughout the pace of the wave as well. So, And uh, the foot positioning, uh, it's really good from Maria. So nice job here, my Maria. Uh, putting a backup, she needed that. Uh, not. I don't feel like she's in danger on this hit, but... Uh, this was the replay of um, Tia. Nice carve out the back. Another uh, white water snap winds up again. Nice style. Like I really enjoy her style. I feel like she's got really good technique and style, and she looks really young. So I feel like she's gonna learn from her mistake on this one, and uh, she's gonna come back from this. That's for sure. And uh, the last one of Maria Salgat is coming in, and it's going to be around the tree range. So now Taya needs a 9.7, and uh, Lua Shkudar needs a 8.7. So quite an impossible mission for both of them there. Yeah, with one minute to go, it's fairly improbable that either of them get through. Um, but uh, rightly so, both Teresa and Maria Salgado played a very nice and smart hit. Teresa in a mounter of white water. And this wave looks like it's going to open wow. up. She fades. And nice carve. Beautiful carve. carve, really on the rail. And oh. unfortunately, just catches a little bump. Uh, it wasn't even a bump, I think. Uh, the f you know a lot of wave running in that wave and she just slipped no not not enough rail on the water to checking your fins out that turn is beautiful that beautiful yeah it looked like one of your carves and you were 12 were very very well known by that still are Shiku still carving Look very, at this. very well Look at this. Wow, a beautiful back arm rotation, everything in sync. And those falls are, are dangerous because the board is in front of you. And, and then you go with the wave and you, and and you and eat the board. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I hate those ones. And those are the worst because you don't know if the board's going to hit you or not. You're just I like think she, she, she actually was looking at her hand, right? 
So it win for Teresa Movalo. Yeah, she's looking at her hand, but maybe she hit the board actually. So nice hit by Teresa Movalo. Maria Salgado gets through tie with the interference. Unfortunately, Luis Kudera as well. So stick with us for more action. There's some big names hitting the water. Stay tuned for more action at Caparica Surf Fest 2024. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals, and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente, ao seu lado, na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. Welcome back to Costa da Caparica. This is, uh, help me out, Zé. This is, used to be a prison. Yeah, this used to be okay, a prison. I don't remember the you name. Could, so. It's Bougiou. Yeah, Bougiou. And you Look could at the actually, right -hander. You could actually walk in the low tide from around Carcavelos to here. Really? Like Those 30, 50 years, years ago. ago. Okay. My uh, mom used to do that. We are back at Praia do Dragão. Costa da Caparica straight into the heat as we see Sara Leitiaga, the French surfer, catching this huge turn. Is she gonna land? Unfortunately not. Uh, we're here. It's sunny. It's holiday. It's a national holiday. Um, it's Easter Day. It's Easter Day. No, Easter Day is Sunday. It's Sunday. Yeah. It's Easter it's Friday. It's just a holiday. Yeah, it's, it's just, just a, yeah. It's Sister? A, it's a Christianity holiday, I think. Um, I'm gonna... My name is Flip Scherwis, I'm here with Zé Ferreira and we have Eat to Round 32 in the water, Mafalda Love from Portugal, Alice Barden from Great Britain, Sara Leitiaga from France and Elena Berrou from France as well. Zé, how did you find this turn? Unfortunately she went down but it could have been a good one. True, um, didn't ride out of that one, it was a bigger but we had a few waves ridden. This is Elena Vero from France. This wasn't uh, anything special. We had the drone there with the bird's eye. And in the flip, we have a previous winner of this contest in this heat. Yeah, we got uh, Mafalda Lopes. Uh, she won last year. She was definitely the informed surfer last year. She made some of the best scores of the of the contest and I'm pretty sure she want to go back to back on it because I know she uh, she didn't start off the, the year pretty well on the national on the nationals in that last weekend so she wants to put a good result here I'm pretty sure of that yeah for sure Mafalda Lopes no stranger to these waves and to these lefts um, I actually was happy because I kind of jinxed her her victory last year as I was talking about her in the air, she's one of Portuguese best um, aerialists and she did just that, which helped her to win uh, and that was great, that, that was a great moment um, when, when a local surfer, a local young surfer wins in front of his, uh, her home crowd in, in this case is always a, a joy Obviously we have on the, on the, on the screen Alice Barton, she's she started off her campaign pretty well. Um, she's looking forward to try and qualify for the for the Challenger Series. I'm going to check the rankings just to make sure in which position is she, uh, because I know this might be a very important. Let me see. She's in 11th, so not an easy task for her, because um, on the girls it's only the top four that qualify for the Challenger Series. So. Right now, the Portuguese contingent looking pretty well. We have Yolanda Hopkins in the first place, Jani Echebarri in the second place, Tessa Tyson in third place, 
fourth place Treza Bonvalo. So Treza with a bit of a chance there. Uh, who's, getting, in, who's in the fifth? In fifth, the you have Nadia Rostab. In sixth, you have Camila Kemp. She's, she's looking forward, really looking forward to try and, and qualify for the challenges as well. I know I know she didn't go to Figueira da Foz for the nationals because she won, really wanted to focus all, all of it, her attention here in Costa da Caparica. Um, so Camila Kemp has a little bit of a shot as well. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Mafaldi's in 10th, so she also has a shot, obviously, uh, as we see up and riding Sara Leciago on a nice looking left. A little bit of a mistake there, the, not the right approach. There's a lot of water moving. Uh, the tide might be switching. I think it was 10.30 low tide. So we're going to probably see a little improvement on the conditions on the uh, throughout the, um, the afternoon. And you can definitely feel the swell is not as big as it was in the morning. It's dropping, true, yeah, true, dropping true. a little. We have a little bit, um, a little bit more of uh, wind, but nothing comparing to what we had the last couple of days. So uh, rippable conditions, not easy, as you can see, a, bit, a little bit challenging, hard to read the lineup, but we already some, saw some really nice scores and some really nice waves this, this day. So I think it's only going to get better from that as we see stack it after stack it from now on. Yeah, and um, and also so many waves ridden in, in each heat that that, that has been a, a common denominator between between all the heats, and yeah, the waves, the conditions are definitely improving. Um, a lot of current. You can see all the surfers are pedaling to to the right and to the inside. Oh. Um, that's messy, but this is is pretty much like a, a ripple current left. Yeah, who's who, who found herself on the on the ripple left hander was Teresa Bovalo, the winner of last heat. Claudia, how's she doing? That's right. We're here with Teresa. Teresa, great positioning in your heat. What was your strategy in the water? It's so difficult out there. Uh, I think, to be honest, I don't think anyone has a proper strategy. It just like just feels like so much whitewash. I would say I surfed yesterday and the day before it was actually easier than it is today. I think with the stronger wind the other days, it just like kind of calmed more the, 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 the waves and today it's just like so messy. But I mean, we, we all have the same, uh, same conditions, so we just try to do our best and try to find the best waves and try to sneak a few turns uh, when the wave uh, actually gives you that. So. Yes, I'm happy to make it and to get in the next round. Talking about your position this year in the ranking, how does that affect your mindset and how are you working on that? It's always so tricky, as I was saying, I was uh, surfing the whole uh, Challenger series and you have to do at the same time uh, the QSs and to schedule your schedule, it's super hard because then there's cancel events so right now I'm only with the uh, two events counting. This is my third and it counts four, so I'm not going to be counting one, one important event. So this is what I got and this is what I'm going to do. And I'm here to, to, to do my best and enjoy the ride. Congratulations. Thank you. Mm, very interesting um, interview by Teresa. I didn't know that, uh, that she only has two, two scores uh, on her board. And she's gonna she's gonna try and qualify for the challenge with zero points counting. So at least one of one of her scores will be zero points on the ranking. So that's not that's not something you want, obviously. But that just shows us how good she has been throughout the whole year because she only has two stops and she's sitting in fourth position. So anything she's gonna score here on the on this contest will improve her situation on the rankings, and that's really important. As she said, uh, she really wants to do well, and but she's trying trying not to overthink it and just enjoy the ride. It's something that we have been listening for the last couple of years, and it feels like the mindset is a little bit more on the enjoying the, the ride and instead of being extra and too focused. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, uh, it's cliche, but, um, but it's true. It's about, um, uh, you know, about the process, about the, the walk, not, not the end of the walk. And, and I think the, the surfers, 
uh, and sportsmen in general mm -hmm. really have to turn on that ship of like let me enjoy what I'm doing uh, because if they are too focused on the results usually it's not um, not a good strategy especially if we're talking about long-term strategies because these surfers especially in surfing it's so hard you have to do all these QS's in in these in, in hard conditions sometimes with um, not the best, uh, you know, financial conditions as well, especially these days. So you really do have to enjoy what you're doing. Um, then in the end of the day, even though it's it's an expensive sport, it's a, a hard one because you lose a lot and you only depend on yourself on the ocean. As we see, Sarah Chiaga, nice cutback, waiting for the wave to wall up. As we see, she's riding through the inside. She's going to have probably that finishing... What's that? Uh, I think she bro she has a broken board or maybe a, a, a buckled board. I, I think, think that's I, a sign. I, that's I, the sign I, for it. I think she was like trying to um, yeah signal something. Let's try and understand what ha what's happening. As we see, Mafalda Lobs on a nice looking left with her front foot a little bit injured. Nice. Wow. Oh, unfortunately, so beautiful. She goes what a pop. On that turn, she's so talented. Rodrigo actually, he, he used to his his coach, he used to be he used to be our coach there, yeah, Rodrigo exactly. Souza, and he actually told me something about Mafalda last year during the during the contest. Yes, it's a board change. It's, it's probably a buckle change, a buckle board. Uh, but as I was saying, Rodrigo last year told me something about Mafalda there. Uh, that you found a lot of yeah, because uh, a lot of us actually trained with Rodrigo. And he told me that she was one of the most talented surfers he ever trained, he ever coached. Yeah. He says something like, she can do everything. Yeah, tec technically, it's one of the most gifted uh, women that Portuguese surfer has ever produced. But yeah. the consistency is lacking a little. As you see here, uh, she's trying to trying to get rid of all those bumps and lumps and puts the this. board really well but a lot you of know, pop there yeah that's a, that was a little bit of a, a, a wave in front of her as we see Sara Lechiaga there with a buckle board here <laughs> she felt it midway through or what yeah well I'm not sure if anything happened to the board or if she literally wanted to change it because she didn't feel feel good with it it doesn't the, the board doesn't look good you know and surfers sometimes change boards just because um, they understand they didn't do the best choice and it's not always because the board is broken right sometimes yeah. it's just like okay maybe the, the, I'll, not the I'll right be equipment. more comfortable yeah, yeah. exactly uh, and it looks like that was the case she's still in first place although flip uh, scores really low in this seat with 17 minutes yeah it feels like the girls have been um Finding the rhythm uh, on these conditions, as Teresa said, it's really difficult. She said, she actually said something interesting. It was easier with the winds yeah. and with the bigger ocean. And also, and she said, no one, she thinks no one really has a strategy. Yeah. And, and, and that's true. I think the strategy <laughs> in the day like today is like try to go survive, in the water yeah. and catch every wave you can. So maybe you'll find an opportunity. Yeah, make sure you don't make a priority mistake. Make sure you don't make um, any mistakes and make sure you you take take care of your opportunities. As we see here, Flippens also up and riding Alice Barton. Nice cut back waiting for the wave. Unfortunately, once again, nothing major in that one. Um, a 2.17 just that just puts her in the second place as we see my father looking at something she decides not to go it's so hard to find the good ones out there Zach, because you can see there's so much water moving the girls keep paddling non-stop it's so hard to be on the right spot because there isn't actually a right a right positioning right as yeah, beautiful see. style here from Alice Barton just having that knee bended and yeah very beautiful stuff from Alice Barton that's not going, going to be um, a huge score but you can see she's in tune with her uh, her equipment and yeah as the amount of current here this you know it's like a ferris wheel you, you know you have to keep on catching waves otherwise you're going to um, you're gonna lose your position yeah yeah but if you get stuck on the current and and we heard I'm trying to remember who said it 
but the only stra it was uh, Jean-Paul Etienne. He actually saw, uh, said that the, the strategy with um, Jason and Paris we stay the stay the hell away from the current because if you get stuck in the current you're not going to catch any waves. Yeah, uh, and uh, it worked out for him because he actually made an 8.17 and yeah. a six point. So it actually he, worked out for I think everyone in in Aparicio's. Um, yeah, they they've been doing really well this contest. Yeah. And, uh, last year was like that also, and because he had Marco Mingo yeah, winning. Exactly. Uh, but this. They all feel pretty comfortable in these conditions. I think even the French surfers have a lot of these days, days like this, onshore and messy on a rip ball, and and we know how capable they are. And and obviously the surfers from the Caribbean, they also have a lot of wind, uh, warmer water, uh, <laughs> but still they all very used to these kind of conditions. And most of all, they all seem super happy and focused at the same time like true uh, and that's exactly what we we're talking about you you need to enjoy the ride and enjoy what you're doing because at the end of the day we're lucky with the sport that we have because obviously we lose a lot but we travel the world we travel through yeah. europe you, we see For a lot sure. of places we spend a lot of places on a different with different cultures, different people. Right now we're in Portugal. We already have uh, France and uh, a bunch of other, uh, not a bunch of other stops on tour. So, um, yeah, surfers are very fortunate. It's it's just um, you're fortunate because you get to know the world. You get to you know you are put in situations in very tough situations. Mm -hmm. From a young age, you yeah, know, and you, you, you have meet to meet a lot of different people and all, a lot of different people and a lot of different cultures. I think that's pretty amazing. Yeah, for sure. We're but gonna, it's not all, only dreams. We're gonna go on commercial right now. Let's see if the girls can find uh, a little bit of a rhythm on that one. Uh, look at, looking at this amazing day, we'll be right, right back with more action. Stay tuned for after the break. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. Welcome back to the sunny holiday. Uh, it's uh, Easter Friday. Um, it's a, 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 I don't know if it's a holiday uh, anywhere else in the Christianity world, but here in Portugal we have a, we have a, a holiday and it's sunny skies. It's not amazing, but it's contestable. It's fun. Uh, the surfers are getting through. There's some high scores on the board, and why not keep going? The tide will get higher. I think it's gonna mellow out the conditions a little. The swell is dropping. The wind is pretty calm. Ze. Uh, we couldn't ask for a better. Obviously, the, the conditions of the waves could be a little bit better, but look, it's sunny. We have been struggling with a lot of storms and a lot of wind, and it feels good to have a day like this. Yeah, as we have Mafalda up and riding. Nice looking Beautiful wave. little cutback. This wave looks good. Let's see if we'll open up, give her some room to work. This is it. Here, this is it. The important nice. turn and very nice. You can Mafalda. see all the Portuguese crew yelling yeah. and, and clapping at the back. Yeah, uh, that's the best wave of this heat so far. Finally, um, great wave choice and great surfing. Very, con very composed, very calm. 
as we see, this is, I'm not sure who that is. It's probably Mafalda family, yeah? I know it's family, as we see, Alice Barton on a nice, nice looking left, dealing with the bumps, dealing with the current. She's gonna try and hold on to the inside. Unfortunately, the wave had a huge close out with a little bit of a weird face on it. Uh, nice call by Alice Barton, as we're still waiting for Mafalda score. She needs, a, she only needs a 1.97 to go to, to second place. What do you think? I think she'll go directly to first, to first place. Yeah. And as look at the amount of bumps in that wave. Um, she waited, waited, but then she decided, nah, that's not for me. I'm going to look to something different. But here is the replay of what is the best wave of this heat so far. Two turns, two carves, and then the money turn. Ugh. That inside, not hard to, not 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 easy it to. It was not an easy section. She didn't have a lot of speed and a lot of momentum. I, I think she technically was really really good. The yeah. timing was perfect. She just waits the right moment to put the board there. Shiku would say that would be a meaty section. <laughs> I, I, don't know. I usually say it's not a meaty section, but it was not an easy one. You can definitely see, and she almost left her, her weight a little bit on a little bit on her, on her back foot, but she did really well. And that's got to be a really good score for Mafalda. I think she's going to be happy with that one. Rodrigo will also be happy with that one. With nine minutes remaining, we keep on going, just waiting for scores. It, it will be interesting to see if uh, Mafalda actually wins this seat and we can get her on an interview view try to understand what's happening with that front foot because you, you can see it's taped up uh, so she's probably dealing with a little bit of an injury I'm gonna try and, and understand what happened there she, Zay, look at the score I Seven think that's point the best three. not the best but maybe one of the one, best waves of the day it's probably the second best wave of the day I think we have the eight points of, exactly, uh, of exactly. uh, Jean-Paul Etienne and uh, now we have a 7.33 from a father Lopez show that's exactly what the judges want to see they want to see nice clean turns and big finishing moves yeah, exactly, um, and that's what why they scored it like that. So she she ticked all the boxes, uh, two turns on the outside, and then did well on that inside section, which has been rewarding um, the surfers so far. And she moves straight into first place. So that the, the the heat is also a low scoring heat so far, with with seven minutes to go. Um, so good for her. Now she needs to close this off with something else. But the the fight is still on for for you know for everyone pretty much. Yeah, exactly. Even for my father, she's not safe. Yeah. Uh, her backup is only 1.73, which means that all the other surfers need. Uh, yeah, Sarah Lichag actually needs a 6.224 because that 7.33 is actually really, really strong. Uh, as soon as she's going to improve on that on that backup, uh, that requirement for the second for the surfer in second place is going to be a lot higher. As we see, Al is looking at the one. Unfortunately, the wave disappears. Um, as we see, Sada trying to. It feels like the girls are a little bit further out the back. And, yeah, yeah. And, they got and, pushed by the yeah, current as it, well. It feels like they, they got pushed by the current and, and they a little stuck behind the doubles, uh, the double ups, and that's why the, the waves every once in a while don't don't allow them to go all the way through the inside. Um, yeah, but you can really see the difference. So hard, yeah, you can really see the difference of the tide. Um, you now have an outside section and an inside section, um, and surfers can, you know, surf a more a longer wave. Um, as we see, Sarles Yaga here with a cutback, the wave dies out. So this is one of the things that between, you know, when the start, the the, um, the tide starts pushing in, you have a differentiation between the outside section and the inside section. Yeah, definitely. You can see that. You can see that Mafali is pretty pretty well uh, adjusted to these conditions. Uh, we know she's been living here. She was born on this beach, as we see. Uh, Elena Barreau from France, a nice cut back, a little bit of a whitewash on that face, trying to, showing a little bit of a frustration on that. Um, and Alice uh, wasting a little bit of an opportunity there. She only needs a 177 to go to second. So we have the Portuguese Hope and local hero Mafalda Lopes in the first place. 
Sarah Lechiak in the second place, Elena Berro in the third place, needing a really small score there, 2.07, and Alice Barton also re needing a really low score, 1.77. So these last five minutes, uh, I think we're going to see some fireworks because anything can change right now. I think Mafalda is the only surfer that is actually uh, kind of safe because of that 7.3. He ju just puts her on a different level. As soon as she's going to improve that, she's going to improve a situation and get further away from all the girls. So uh, very well, nice job for Mafalda. Uh, everyone got kind of late in this heat. Uh, kind of like the surfers took their time to find their rhythm and actually only my father found uh, a really good one so uh, with five minutes remaining we, we still I think we're still gonna see some of the best waves of this heat on these last five minutes hopefully so just the, the action the action yeah. can get a little excited yeah, exactly. That's the interesting thing of heats like this or days like this. Well, not for the surfers themselves or their their team, but for fans, because, you know, it's only finished when it's finished. And there's a lot of suspense and a lot of um, intensity in the last moments because there's points, um, there's points in play, right? There's money in play. There's, there's so much. There's, there's yeah. a lot of things here that... And also just that confidence, you know? As we see, yeah. Alice Barton up and riding on a nice looking left. Nice first cut back. She's going to be smart and try to... Oh, oh, yo, yo. oh she almost lost it there. Um, okay, that that's going to put her right in the mix. I think that she's going to improve on the situation and probably get away, get, get rid of that one point. The two three that she has, and maybe go to second place with that 1.77. A combination of two turns, I'm yeah, pretty sure, sure she's gonna she's gonna improve on the situation. That's her best wave so far. Let's see the replays, eh? Yeah, let's let's uh, little fade here, then little snap there. Waits for it, and then well, she's caught a little bit of balance, but truth is, she had a little fin release which the judges will like. And here we have Sarah Lesiaga with a first cutback. She tries tries to kill some cockroaches uh, with that pumping there, but doesn't make it to that inside section. And... Yeah, Mafalda with a different strategy from all the girls. She's trying to wait for the good ones uh, instead, in go, instead of uh, catching anything. It's a different, uh, different, interesting strategy. Uh, if there is a strategy, as yeah. We, yeah, as we said and, and as Teresa said on the last interview, there's no actually a strategy. There's not actually a strategy out there because there's so much water moving. But I think, I think, I believe, and I hope I'm right. Uh, it's gonna calm down a little with the tide pushing in. We're gonna see. It's gonna get bigger on the inside, not as not as small, but it's gonna it's gonna. I think it's gonna improve, and all that water moving, um, all that water moving will be will be calmed down as we see the last of blue, the second best wave of this heat so far, 3.67 puts it right in the second place and makes. Uh, Sara Lechiaga and Lena Barrow's life a little bit harder with two minutes remaining. Sara needs a 3.02, Elena needs a 3.97. It's almost a four point ride. So, uh, with conditions like this, my father holding to the priority. Will we see a, a different exchange as wow, we see? This wave looks look beautiful. Look at this. You that can looks, see she's a local, a local rider. She goes up and down. Unfortunately, she, I think she she opened up on the on the on the bottom turn a little bit too wide. Uh, if she cut it a little bit short, she would she would have a, a lot more speed and momentum to attack that finishing turn. Uh, she opened up the bottom turn so wide that she ended up going up there not not with not as much speed as as you want for a turn like this. We're gonna see the replay, uh, but that that definitely looked like a good wave and a good section. Yeah, I, I think she was just also a bit late to that uh, to that turn so nice bottom she turn lost it there and then she arrives a tiny There's, bit late yeah. there and, and ends up taking all that white water and not being able to ride out but she's still pretty safe she she goes again yeah she's being smart and trying to improve her situation and and get get it safe it's a victory lap people are already yelling and clapping so here she goes she she has such a a, a, 
nice expression on, on her face all the time, like very happy, um, very relaxed. Nice and first turn, and yeah. she's gonna finish it off. She's gonna improve on that 1.73. The scores are dropping, the judges uh, like it. It's a 3.37, so that just puts her next next level on that first place. Alice now needs a 704. Yeah, Mafal is such a character. Such a she character. She has such, such a good personality. She's she, she's really cool to hang around. She's really, really cool to hang around. Yeah, and one of she's those. She's gotta be happy. Yeah, one of those people that just like. Um, translate good energy yeah she likes in the mood anywhere she goes she goes and uh, everyone gets pretty happy and she's a smiley person she's always smiling and uh, she's got to be happy with that one this is for sure it is finished as we see her, her taped foot um, gonna try and, and ask Claudia to to ask her about her foot and what's happening as we're gonna go straight into the next hit. It's another stacked hit. Maud Lacard Fran from France, Kika Vazelko from Portugal, Alina Vast from France also, and Mirna Buelsma from the Netherlands. We just finished this hit. Mafalda took the win home. She she's still she's still on the contest. She's still at home. She's feeling good. Served really good. Alice Barton is gonna be happy with that one. It's not an easy. It was not an easy surfing hit. Uh, she only had a 5.84 of total score, as we see here. Sarah Leitiaga with a 4.53 of total score, and Elena with 3.70 with total score. So Mafalda absolutely smashing this hit. We're gonna go on a short commercial as we see these amazing views from. Costa de Caparica will be right, right back after this. Stay tuned for more action. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Welcome back to the Gold Shield Skate Action Zone. It's they're trying to. <laughs> you can see they're, they're drying off the the floor because they, we have been watching some really big storms. But it's sunny, and I think we're gonna see a lot of action on the skating, the the, the little skate park as well, uh, as we are in Praia do Paraíso, Costa da Caparica for the Caparica Surf Fest 2024. We have round of 32 of women hit three on the on the water my name is Philip Jervis I'm here with Chico by Chico uh, on this hit we have Maud Lucar, Kika Vazelko, Alina Vasti, Mirna Buelsman, Chico how's it looking out there uh, did you see the waves did you relax as we see surfer in white straight up and down yeah. oh, that, that, that uh, fall by Alina Vast was uh, a little sketchy she actually managed to, to land that turn somehow but then the dismount was was kind of weird um, yeah, Chico, how does, it, how does it look out there? Well, it looks uh, a lot warmer than the last few days. Mm. Uh, I felt some sun in my face and I felt rejuvenated to come back on the booth with you. So, as we see live action flip. Kika Vazel, we love, we know that she loves these kind of conditions uh. and she loves to go big. Unfortunately for her, going down on that one. But yeah, I know it's something that she has been working uh, throughout these last couple of years with Rodrigo. Uh, they don't want to. They don't want to 
safe turns. They want to go big in every single turn that Kika is allowed to do, and that's how she managed to get world champion, world junior champion. As we see here, what happened here? She why did she what, did she fell off? Oh, she did everything right. It was just oh, a really yeah. hard section to make. Oh everything was right the and, until everything was wrong. Like, but she did really well there. Uh, here, uh, a bit of a. Uh, a turn there. <laughs> that was so sketchy. But the, but actually, judges really like that turn by Alina Vast. 5.83 on that wave. Was Francisca's one like if she made like a 10? Uh, it, yeah, it was going to be a, a high 8 or something. Yeah, because that was definitely one of the best turns we see the whole day. Probably 9.5. Um, she had one actually once a year, last year or two years ago. She did a, a huge oh, we just did release. One, yeah, we did just one turn on the outside. I remember that was last year. And that was one of the best turns we've seen from both men and women uh, as we see a, a luna a lena vast Aileen. 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 Aileen vast sorry uh, you have uh, uh, an historical um, French with connection. Yeah, with Tahitians, especially. Kevin Bourrez, my Bourrez, good friend. Your good friend, Kevin Bourrez. And so you, you know... One how of the to, best in Europe, actually. Yeah, and so you know how to land with those names, as we see Mirna Welsmer from the Netherlands, nice little cutback. She gets a little stuck on the foam on that one, and she decides to leave. Um, as we see from the Netherlands, where do you think she trains, Shiku? I don't know. I don't think she lives there. No? No, no, no. Yeah, no. Probably not. M most of uh, like the Germans, uh, they all live like in Costa Rica, Italians as well. So they've got a mix of parents, like one from Costa Rica and one from Netherlands, and they end up like surfing um, in the beach of their uh, uh, one of their parents' um, houses. So Mirna, I don't know where she trains, but if she wins this seat, let's ask her where she trains. So if Claudia is listening, if Mirna wins, uh, let's ask her where she trains most of the times when there's no events going on. And uh, with 23 minutes to go, Looks like the waves are getting a bit better now, Flip, right? Yeah, the tide is pushing in. I think we're going to see that rip ball of left getting a little bit more water on it. And it's gonna not going to be as destroyed on the outside as it has been the last couple of days. You can see the swell dropped off a, a lot. lot since the morning. Yeah. We were watching 8 to 10 feet out on the outside, and now it's obviously still big. But but there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of yeah, the swell dropping, and as we're gonna go with the winner of last heat, the local hero Mafalda Lopes is up there with uh, Claudia Pinto. Claudia, how's she feeling? That's right, we're celebrating here at the beach. Everyone around us is cheering Mafalda, the local surfer from Caparica, who just won the last heat. Tell us, how you, how is it to, to win at home? It's the best feeling, like last year I was, I got my first QS win and I think it was the best spot ever to win a QS, like at home with all my family, my friends supporting, my coach, everyone. So I want to do it again because it's like no best feeling in the world. So I'm trying my hardest and yeah. <laughs> Talking about the heat, what was your strategy and approach? Uh, it's kind of hard. Uh, there's a lot of currents. The waves are not easy. So my, my strategy was to stay busy, even though I didn't managed to do it but <laughs> I was trying to but but yeah like it's super messy so I was just trying to catch whatever and do my best on the wave. We noticed you have uh, something going on on your right feet. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, it's just like a, a sprain so like last week or two weeks ago I was surfing here actually and on this left on this end sec section the, the board just came up and my feet was I don't know. I don't know how to explain it very well, but it's not really good. But yeah, I'm trying my hardest to, to make it better with my physiotherapist. And yeah, that, that's what it is. <laughs> Talking about the break here, where have you been surfing while the contest is not on? Uh, to be honest, I haven't been surfing that much, also because of the ankle. So I'm trying to rest when I can. And yeah, I think here it's actually like the best beach around because it's there's the inside. And I, I think the, the other ones are just closing out. So yeah. Is it an extra pressure to surf at home, to contest it? Uh, honestly, for me, it's like a motivation because I want to I wanna do good in front of my, my friends and my family. So it's like extra push and they're all cheering for me. And when I win, it's like I love to see them happy and happy for me. So, so yeah. 
and we want to see everyone happy. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, nice words by Mafalda Lopez. She likes to have people and her family around her and she feels super safe and comfortable in this speech. We had a, a lot of action uh, during the interview. We're going to uh, try and recap all those replays. She, this is this was, this was going to be a huge score. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, she just lost the, the, the control there at the end, but that turn looked massive. And this was Mod's uh, turn, nice under the lip snap. Uh, got really low on her on her on her board and uh, made it. And this was the six to three from Kika. Nice uh, backside turn off the top there for Kika, uh, getting those fins out and. Um, well, I, I cannot imagine where where that score was going to go. <laughs> the, the huge turn the that huge she did. Turn she yeah, did. imagine. 9-5 uh, uh, at least. Probably, like, yeah. Because was it was massive. the cleanest and the strongest turn I, I've seen in a while. And the, the girls, the judges adapting the, the, the scale a little because they know it's hard. So they're rewarding big turns. And as you said, imagine that one. It, it probably would have been one of the highest scores of the contest, if not the highest score of the contest so far. So. Um, and yep. unfortunately for her, um, losing the qualification for the Olympics in Puerto Rico, she had the opportunity there to qualify and couldn't make it. So we're still going to have two Portuguese surfers in the Olympics. Uh, Kika, not Kika, sorry, uh, Teresa Bovalo and Yolanda Hopkins are both qualified for the Olympics. So that's going to be pretty exciting, especially on the wave like that. I'm going to put you on the spot. Who do you think has the most uh, probability to win the Olympics at Tiahupo. Honestly, well, I think I top think, three. Of course, like I don't need a top three. You can give me only a top two. On the okay. men's side, I'm gonna go with uh, Gabriel and John John. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. If it gets big, and a third person that is really dangerous is Kaoli. Like the I brother think, of the surfer in this heat. Uh, yeah, I think I, he can he can do like a big surprise and shock the world as well. He's gonna because be like at home. he's he's so good out there as well. So those three are like the big big names. But you have more. The, the, uh, you have Jack uh, Jack Robinson, Shumbing, who is gonna be. You back ask me as three. Well. You ask me three. Like I, 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 I cannot, I'm not saying I cannot, the other ones I, are not good. They are Olympic surfers, so yeah. all of them can win. Obviously, of course, obviously. But I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like these are my my picks. Your like, picks. If there's an Olympic <laughs> fantasy pick, I would say like that's those three. Probably they are. So the I'm three gonna, of them tier uh, A, so I, gonna, could, I could choose only two. No. And on the woman's side, Honestly, I'll, I'll go you with Vain Fierro. Four. You have to choose four because it's a final of four in the Olympics. So, really? Yeah. Same. So it's going to be Medina, John John. You're going to put Vast in there. And who's the fourth one? João Chumbin. All right. I okay. think that he's out of this world in the barrel. Jack Robinson should be really hard as well. <laughs> Not in those kind of conditions as we see kick up and riding. Nice first snap. And fortunately, the wave closes off, but she might improve on that 1.17. And for the women, yeah, that, that, that's going to be an interesting one. They, they've uh, been charging. They've been showing some signs that they want to go with Molly. Molly Picklam. She did so well in the in, in the pipe, pipe event. Ridiculous. And she, as you see here, that, that was a really nice turn as well. She could, she, she's going to definitely improve on uh, improve on that 1.17. Nice, nice timing. Just nice. waiting. That was that was a really good timing of that turn. So you're going to say Molly? Who else? Vain Fierro. You said as well. Yep. Um, Vain. Um, and then um, I'm going to go. I don't know. Uh, hopefully, Teresa Movalo makes the final. I would love to see that. I know it's a hard task, but I would love to see her charge because I know once Teresa drops a barreling wave, she actually has a really good line on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She has and a real. She has been so if she has like the wheel to drop just a bit further, <laughs> I, I, deep, I'm not. A deep, a I wouldn't deeper, do it. Yeah. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> you went there already, so you know how, how I, sketchy it, the wave it's is. Just yeah. So it's you can get so scared out there. It's really. So, it looks like a close-up. You cannot see the channel. Like everything about that wave is scary. So it's oh, wow. you gotta have a, a lot, lots of courage to actually go on a big wave there. But I wouldn't go for sure, but if Treza actually decides to <laughs> say I'm going, which uh, I'm taking all my ads I have at home 
<laughs> of my head to her. I, I know she can do like some really, really nice barrels. So mm -hmm. I've seen a couple of clips of Teresa doing some really good How barrels. How about Yolanda? Yolanda has been working Yolanda, really hard on her. Yolanda, on her... she's yeah. going to charge so I hard. I think she's going to be my dark horse, to be honest. Because <laughs> she's yeah. going to charge. She's going she's gonna to go for it. She has been willing yeah. to get barreled for so, so many years. And I know she has been. Uh, every once in a while, we, when we have these salt swells in, in the part that we If grow, you talk about courage, surfing. first name yeah. is Yolanda. Yolanda should be really, really fun. But we're not in Tiahupu, we're in Costa de Caparica. It's a little bit different, the conditions. It's we're gonna not go on, flip. <laughs> we're going to go on break uh, on this amazing Easter holiday. Uh, in Portugal, stick with us. We're gonna keep on the action and see more turns like this from Kika Vazelko. Stay, stay tuned. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. Amazing setup from the Caparica Surf Fest 2024. We're here in Praia do Paris, looking at these amazing conditions. We have been dealing with a lot of storms. It's a little bit stormy still, but we have no clouds on the on, on the sky. It's sunny. People are out there. They're looking for waves. They're looking for the girls surfing. As we see, oh, look at the amount of water and current that's moving in. It's so hard to get get through. To the outside it's going to be interesting to see what the waves will be doing with the tide getting higher i think it's going to get a little calmer and that current is not be pushing or pushing the surfers uh, too much to the outside um as we see the, the girls just getting hammered the energy are, is pushing towards the inside already yeah you it can is, tell yeah, like yeah. they're uh, fighting to get their selves harder, back yeah. out yeah it's harder to paddle to the so, outside so the white waters we're gonna go uh, meet Claudia. She's with Rodrigo Souza, both uh, coaches, coach of Kika Vazelk on this hit and Mafalda Lopes on the last one. Uh, Claudia, how's Rodrigo feeling on this hit? That's right, we're here with Rodrigo, the coach of Kika. She's another big name in this new generation of surfers. Uh, what's the approach today? Uh, it's a very hard day, very tough, so. Uh, it's important to stay busy and create opportunities because you never know which one's going to be the good one. And so far, it's been, it's been working. Yeah. As far as Kika and her progression, her promising career, uh, what have you been working on and what's the, what's the next steps with her? Uh, we've been putting a lot of effort into the qualification for the tour. Uh, this year, we wanted to qualify for the Olympics too, but we couldn't make it. So full on for the tour. For 2025. Amazing, thank you. Thank you. Amazing. So, the goal is the CT. Shiku, I knew that already. She already has the world, the world title in the World Juniors. Uh, but I know that she really wants to qualify for that championship tour. Um, obviously, for the Challenger Series as well. We had a couple, a couple of replays. Nice bottom turn by Mod Lacar. Is she gonna hold on on that one? She will. Uh, we're still waiting for this wave, but that was a really good bottom turn. And we also had, we also had a wave for Kika again. Ah, this is the replay of the 5.33. That was his, her second best wave. 
And as you said, Chico, the girls are getting smashed on the inside. There's a lot of power coming in through the inside. And yeah, it would be definitely better as you as a local or a former local from Costa de Caparica. It's always better to paddle near the, the pier, right? Yeah, when it's this big, you, you gotta like just uh, put yourself near the pier to get back up. Uh, if you do like an in-between wave, maybe you can get yourself back out easily. Mm -hmm. But if you go all the way towards the inside and you feel the shallow, like the shallow part, <laughs> it's better to just go around because like when, when, once you need, you're in a shallow spot, you just know the rip is not gonna help you like go back out, and it's actually gonna push you towards the beach. And it's where it hurts the most. Yeah. If you get smashed on the on the shallow part. It's you gotta be, uh, and it's super tiring. You can see 30 minute hits on conditions like this can get really tired. Uh, if all goes well, the girls will go to go out again. Uh, also the boys, so they need to to make sure they don't waste uh, too much energy. They have to be smart. But with conditions like this, look, look at the amount of the water is moving on near the. I don't think uh, going near the rocks right now. It's the best option, Chico. Look at that. <laughs> There's so much water, so many rips and I think, currents. I think in there. you actually uh, it can go on foot most of the, yeah, uh, most of the way. Yeah, because it's still super the, low tide, yeah. Yeah, you can see they're, they're on foot. So you can walk a bit and then paddle at the end of when, when you lose uh, the touch with the, the, the sand. Mod uh, trying to go a bit on, on the left side of the pier. And Mirna, uh, she want to get closer to the pier, yeah. So yeah, to make sure she 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 can make it towards the outside. But yeah, the pier is actually really helpful. If the pier wasn't there, it was much harder oh, to imagine. You will be closing out for the whole. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like <laughs> paddling so hard to get back out. So the pier being a friendly to to have around when the waves are bigger in Costa. Right, Chico. Um, so when I was young, I, I used to be really afraid to get closer to the pier when yeah, it was bigger I because every, I knew because I knew the, that once I get there, I, I was gonna be go pushed the to outside. the outside, <laughs> and I didn't want to pretend I wanted to go. I wanted to pretend I was trying to, to get to, to the, the outside, outside yeah, but, but actually not making an effort to do it. So <laughs> and say to everyone, "Yeah, I couldn't do it," but yeah. everyone was like, "You didn't, you didn't even try." It. I'm like, what? I paddled for like 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So, yeah, Chico, uh, we're listening to uh, Rodrigo talking and, and they have the, the main goal is the, the city qualification for, for Kika. How do you feel like, obviously, for the women, it's a lot harder. It's only seven spots every year or five. Well... I'm gonna, I'm gonna double check that. Yeah, I'm gonna double check on that. But, but so it's a lot harder for the women to qualify. And do you think she got what it takes to qualify and and to to be successful on the tour? Uh, I think it's both difficult for uh, my little and woman to qualify. Okay, obviously, uh, I think if she can, yes, I think. Okay, and if she does, she's gonna do some damage. I feel like Kika has the tools to yeah to the waves, perform. the kind of the waves that the tour has. He likes yeah. the power. Yeah, she loves to get the the opportunity to to surf, and I feel like, of course, she loves good waves, and that's where her surfing excels the most. It's when it's really good and big. Uh, she, she's been absolutely ripping. I actually surf with her pretty much every day. I, wa uh, I watch her on the beach every day, and, and she has been working so hard. It's very interesting to see. Uh, you, can, you can see on our screens, mode made back up really faster than Mirna. Yeah, Mirna is, is yeah, Mirna is already paddling to this side, the left side of the beach. Um, yeah, so Mod Lecor with Mod with that last one, 3.67, that just puts her in the second place. Uh, Lin Vast is looking for a 2.51, so he shouldn't he shouldn't be that hard, but at the same time it's so hard to find a wave like that. Needing a score is always uh, worse than not needing one. So uh, <laughs> we've seen uh, over the course of uh, many years of watching competitions, guys losing needing like ones. Like I remember, it's almost more stressful to need it, to need a one point. More or less, yeah. more or less. If you need a nine, you know it's gonna be hard. But if you yeah. need one, you're gonna one be super like, stressful. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I just need a one point. Like, yeah. One minute thirty seconds. <laughs> you need a two zero one. Oh, it's, it's really the, stressful. It's the most stressful. Uh, the most 
stressful you can get as you see suffering wide looking at that wave a, a little 3. bit of 3.23 <laughs> With 50 seconds to go. With conditions like this. Ooh. Three, two, three, 50 <laughs> seconds to go is just like you need a 10. That's a, yeah. It's a 10. It feels In your like mind a 10. Is a 10. It feels like a 10. <laughs> I need to make something out of nothing. It's you need to claim the wave. If you, make it. <laughs> like, if you do like one turn, you cl you're claiming. Are you are you a claimer? Do you think I claim it's all part, the time? It's part of the game and uh, I claim no mostly because I feel tired. Like after the wave, like, made it, <laughs> <laughs> made it. It's just like <laughs> a, a, a health claim. <laughs> <laughs> I made it without dying. We're gonna go on <laughs> recap. She could let us through this one. Uh, yeah, we have been seeing some nice, nice turns by Kika Vazelko. Yeah, Kika is uh, on point today. Uh, big turn there. Getting the fins out, getting the rhythm going. Six to three there. Mod responding to that with a four, six, seven. Nice snap under the leap. I love the, the painting on her board. Looks great. Mod Lecard there with a nice turn. And uh, here we have Francisco Pesalk again with a backup score, 5 3 3 on this one. Snapping under the lip, just a quick snap. And uh, putting another backup score on the board. She's sitting in the lead, so feeling good. And uh, I think we had a wave from Ailina. Very, very important wave for I the girl in white. Bam. Nice first turn. Is she gonna hit it the second time? Vertical on that one. Is she gonna land? Oh, she's right up there. Oh, unfortunately for her, but still, that first turn is gonna put her right there in the mix. That was a really good one. Oh, she had a little double up in front of her, which make it a lot harder. She almost got it. Unfortunately for Eileen Vast, it's still. 4.47. She's in the second place. This this surfer in red uh, dropped down to third now, needing a 5.64. Life a little bit harder on that one. But Alin Vast with a sick turn. Imagine the the total score if she landed the last one. It would have been a really good one. Uh, I think around the seven Six, range. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that last one was really good as well. Really hard section and. Uh, Really tight eat on our ends. Uh, Mirna, a little bit lost out there, Flip. Yeah, you spoke and as about I say it, this. Yeah, as you say that, she, she, oh, she's showing a lot of frustration on the body. Um, it's not easy. Uh, she's doing a good job. Uh, it's so hard to find the good ones. You have to be, you have to read the ocean really, really well to make sure you, you get something um, with a scoring potential. So three minutes and a half remaining. Kika Vazelko in the first place with a total score of 11.56. And Eileen Vast in the second place with 10.30 of total score. Maud Lecard, the French surfer, in the third place needing a 5.64 to advance. And Mirna a little off the rhythm of this heat needing a 7.73 to to advance, so things looking pretty comfortable for both Kika and Alin Vast as the third and fourth need um, some higher scores and we haven't been seeing a lot of high scores throughout the day, so we know how, how hard it is, but as has as, as Zaya said on the last hit, he only finishes when it finishes, so anything can change uh, at any moment. Yeah, I feel like these are the type of conditions that anything can happen if mm -hmm. you get a bomb, suddenly you do a big turn and you're going to get like an excellent score, so yeah, with two minutes to go, I feel like anything can happen. Um, there's a lot of... Uh, there's swell out there still, Flip. Yeah. You saw the set out there? <laughs> the yeah. <laughs> you said, oh, in the morning was like 10 foot, now it's like 6 foot, and I just saw you can a see 15 foot wave <laughs> out the back. The thing is, you can definitely feel how powerful it is out there, because uh, we have a huge, a big, long period swell, which means there's a, long, a lot more power on those waves, uh, especially comparing for the first couple of days, and you can see there's so much water moving, a lot of power. The ocean is raw and yeah but still uh, manageable still contestable. Colors today, colors today don't look the same as yesterday they, they look don't a bit look, more raw like well, the, 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 the color of the water looks a bit more brown yeah that's because you've been you've been getting you've been getting two days of full storms and that normally 
it just brings drains all the all the bad things from the from the ocean and the and from the rivers just just go straight oh. into the ocean as we see looking forward she's already focused for her heat i think that's i'm gonna make sure that's a miti fiero so a miti a miti fiero you she's see this? looking this very style. comfortable and very focused this is our vine fiero yeah. she's looking very very focused and very concentrated for her heat it's gonna be in two hits from you know, now. You know, for a while everyone thought Aitor Alves was my brother, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I asked the question before. If she was Vieira, uh, Aline Vieira's sister, so. But yeah, she is, you're right. And Aitor Alves is not your brother. My cousin. It's not your cousin. I'm, I'm his dad. You're his dad. <laughs> 45 seconds remaining on this hit. It feels like an, anything. I think it's the heat is closed down already. We're gonna see Alin Vast sitting a little bit closer to Mod Lucar on these last 30 seconds. She has the prior the first the second priority. And Mod, she's still looking, trying to find a wave, trying to run away from Vast. Looking for something. She's repositioning herself. Looking, looking down the line. She's looking at this right hander. Is she gonna go now? Ten seconds remaining. A little bit of excitement on this one. Look, there's a little bit of a lump in here. She's not gonna go on this one. She should have gone and tried to go on this one. Nothing happened there. So Kika Vazelku. Portuguese carnage and very happy. Joaquin Chaves very happy for Kika. Rodrigo very happy as well. Miguel Matos also there. Um, we're gonna go straight into the next heat. We're gonna have some big names. Camila Camp from Deutschland, Paulina Do from France, Lucy Machat from the Canary Island, and Lilia Tebai from Morocco. Nice little Nice eat by Kika Vazelko and also Aline Vast. We're gonna go on commercial. Kika almost died in there. I don't know how she handled. We're gonna go on commercial. Stay with us. More action coming right after this. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test, ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. On the Costa de Capo Rica, high stakes for surfers on the qualifying series. Last chance cafe to get yourself up those ratings. Let's have a look at an Olympian in the form of Camilla Camp from Deutschland, Lucia Machado from the Canary Islands, Popo Addo from the southwest of France, and Lilia Tebai from Morocco. That's your quartet. Top two scores, two surfers will advance, two will bow out. This is Camilla Kemp and Straight down to business, Chico. Wow. 6-5 for this one. So two-turn combo. Woo. I love the, the connection in between turns. She got the first snap tight in the pocket, not pumping the board around, straight into another big one. So six surfing there by Camila Camp. And uh, this was Whoa. Blue Popo 
on a big wave. Wow. Oh, just mistimed oh. the section a bit there, but yeah. that section was huge. It was a good looking wave, wasn't it? As we see, Ilario on the parachute again, doing a really close call on the surfers. How's Camilla Kemp going to go at Chopu for the Olympics, do you reckon? I think uh, she's she, she can do well. Uh, she can get barreled if she has the courage. She says, today's my day, I'm going to do Eight foot west bowls over the I'm ledge. I'm going to go. If she says, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. I feel like it's a testament. Uh, that wave is really scary. I was saying that just a few moments ago. I feel it's a testament to anyone going out there. Uh, I've been there. It's really scary. So uh, anyone that puts themselves out there and actually make it happen, adds off. Let's go and hear from Kika Vaselka. She's standing by for a chat. That's right. We're here with Kika. Kika, how was it? Yeah, uh, it's really hard, but there's a couple lost ones and it's just super hard to be in the right place with the current, but I managed to get um, two ways just with one turn. But um, yeah, I, that's what I was looking for, just one big turn and I'm glad I, I did it and on to the next one. Earlier we were talking with, with your coach, Rodrigo. He was telling us the main focus now is the um, qualifications for the CT. What, what's the next steps? How have you been focusing on this goal and not taking the pressure? <laughs> yeah, you know, my, my dream since a little girl is to be on the tour. And it was amazing, the experience in Finish um, with the wild card. And it really made me just, you know, it just made me think that it, it really is where I want to be. And, you know, now I just want to focus heat by heat and not really focus already on the tour. And, you know, there's still the challengers ahead. And it's a really, there's a lot of level. So yeah, I just want to work on my consistency and get ready for the challengers. And how is it to be arm to arm with the surfers that are in the CT with this opportunity to take the wild card there? Um, how does that inspire you to be more motivated? Yeah, I've been looking to them since, since forever. And like, I just, try to take the opportunity and not be nervous just try to do my surfing and you know just try to be one of them so yeah it was really really fun and i can't wait to to be back on tour congratulations thanks thanks claudia and a very stoked kick of a selco she's onwards and upwards she'll come back for the round of 16 and look to go deep deep in this event she'll be looking for a win for sure there's plenty of top-rated surfers in her way, though. Let's remind ourselves where we are in this one. Kemp with a strong start, mate. 6-5 for the combo of two turns. She's on fire already in this. Addo, she got a 5-6. So after that first missed opportunity, Pauline not getting rattled. Found herself another wave straight away and already a good number. And it's going to be tough for the likes of Tebai and Machado right now. Here's Kemp having a look. She'll go this. No, she won't. Paulina, though, got a 5 6. Yeah, no, I just said that. I know, but uh, I think it's a great score for the day we have on end. And we're going to see the replay of Popo. So nice off the bottom, nice under the lip snap. And she did really well on uh, coming in before the lip. Secret double up. Nice. Oh. And the landing was sketchy. That Those double ups in front of the wave are really sketchy. She did a really good job on, on doing the turn and riding it down before the leap hits her board. So Pauline has a lot of experience. Uh, she's been around for a long time. We say this every year and uh, she's always one of the standouts as we see. Camilla Kemp with a nice hit off the top there. So a nice backup there for Camilla Kemp, Paul. Mm. Yeah, oh, it's an okay backup, not that good. Um, I want to keep this Olympic chat going, mate. How do you like, who, who are you liking from the Europeans who are going to, to Tahiti? Who, who are you fancying? I'll tell you the likes of Aristabe, she's in. Yeah, she's Camilla in. Camilla Kemp's in. Yep. Jan Teresa? Yanire Gonzalez at Chibari. She's in, no, not in. Teresa Bonvalo. Teresa Bonvalo's in. Yolanda Hopkins is in. in. Luana Silva is in. Luana Silva's not from Europe, though, but yeah. Sorry, I was who, just who saying... Who do you like out of the Europeans? Who, 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 
Who are you backing? Oh, in Chupo. Yeah. I said Yo get Yolanda. Her? I think she, she's, she's got the, the courage. What medal do you think? Uh, what medal do you fancy for Yolanda? Gold? Well, there's a big, big task on her hand. There's big names going, I think. I think she, she has the courage to make eats, that's for sure. Yep. If she ends up like winning a medal, that's, that's a good testament to her and a, a good job. I, I, I just feel like when it comes down to Chupo, uh, you, you're, you're talking about one of the most scariest waves in the world. So yep. it's, you're not competing just against the other competitors, you're competing, competing against yourself. Good. But actually, right. that's yeah. outperform something probably you, you've never done. What would you rather Most do? Most of them, it's the first time they're going there. What would you rather do? Get a medal at kind of onshore three foot chopes, get, maybe get a bronze, or lose in the first round but get like a nine at sort of eight foot west bowls and get the glory on live television around the world. What would you rather do? Yeah, the second a medal. One, no medal. Okay. Just because I, I just feel like actually having that vision for once in your life, standing tall on a huge barrel is going to stay with you like forever. And I never, the channel I never been in that position ever. So it might, the feeling might, might be the best feeling you can get out of surfing. Not an air, not a roundhouse cut back, nothing can beat that feeling of standing tall. Roundhouse is similar to getting about it. Jokes. <laughs> <laughs> really nice one, right? Probably if you have really a like whip it. If you have a twin fin, we're probably uh, nice roundy <laughs> and a little oh, nice on a rip bowl. A rip bowl left. <laughs> <laughs> no, but just a soft part as it sort of sets up. I had a quick chat with with Ramsey uh, in Peniche, <laughs> and he told me the story about him getting the courage of actually doing towing in Chopo. He stayed, he stayed like eight hours in the, in the channel and the locals were all like, yeah, Rams, you, you can do it, Rams, let's go. Like, you know, like how they talk, like they're really like positive and they said, yeah, let's go, Rams. And <laughs> Rams, he just telling the story about like <laughs> having the rope, this is yours, mate. And he's like, oh my God, it's my turn. He goes like, first time doing Tawin in Chopo. And then he just tells about like him thinking about he has the right line and suddenly he doesn't have the right line. And he's just like doing a huge backflip. And the last vision he has before getting swollen by a 20 foot wave is like the channel looking at him. And he said, oh, it was so beautiful. Like when I, I stopped listening everything, I couldn't hear anything, and I was just, just looking upside down to, towards the channel and thinking, what have I done? And then he's just like, you know, like how he talks, he just explained things really in a really funny way. Camp. And he said he got exploded. Oh, blasting, Camilla Camp. Oh, for a finish. There you go. But, oh, that. but hopefully no one gets hurt. That's the main thing. I hope no one gets hurt. And Chupo, every time there's a comp there, you you pray for everyone to just be safe. Just as, just as like pipeline and this is like one of those places. So Camila there making. Who do you like out of Bombolo and Hopkins and you fancy in Hopkins to charge it? Therese is good and hollow less. Yeah, I said that. Uh, we were having the same conversation before he came in. Yeah, I well, said, I, mean, I, I said it, so much. I said if Teresa has the courage to actually put herself out there, she has a good line and a really good read on yep. the barrels. Yep. Uh, I've seen her get some really good barrels in Peniche. And uh, I just feel like, yeah, Hopkins is, is going to be the standout for, for courage, that's for sure. I just feel she, she's got an amazing willing to outperform herself. And uh, where, where could you get a practice? For, where can you practice for chokes? There's not many ways that similar. Where can you get? Probably Ireland, Mullingmore. That's good practice to. Quite hard to score that wave though, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> like between now and and July. Yeah. Is there going to be a lot of Mullingmore? You got to go there actually, like a month before, Ooh, and try to look get at a this. Feel. Tepai with the speed and the section. Oh, I didn't like it. Probably a wise a wise choice not to try and hit that because that was a below sea level dredger. Yeah, that that, that section was huge. But yeah, training ground for that, just probably just just imagine yourself in the barrel. 
Just put a poster on top of your bed. Super 2 boss, can you go and train for tropes there? Get behind the section, back door some lefts. The pedaling you need to do, yeah, it's, not, it's, yeah. it's quite, well, I, I would say Super 2 it's really hard to actually get uh, behind the peak and drop on. Carcavelos? Yeah, Carcavelos is a good one as well. Just steep waves as well. All the steep waves you can surf, probably nice. But yeah, just get there before, like a month before, and train for like one month. That's the best practice you can get out there. Uh, I just feel like Triopo is one of those places you need to spend a lot of time there to actually be comfortable there. And uh, have you been there? Yeah. Yeah, a couple of times, mate. A couple of times? Love to eat tea. Beautiful. Stunning. Uh, you went there to commentate the event? Nah. No. Oh, just on vacation? Work. Work. work uh, brand work with uh, teams? Kind of? Yeah, like. just surf trips, you know? You know me, mate, I love a surf trip. Nice. Wow. Kacha. And another one. So, two turn combo here for Lilias Tebai. And uh, Lilias there with a two turn combo. Best wave so far to her. For her. So. 15 minutes to go and uh, I think she will improve on her scoreline with that last one so it's going to help her cause that's for sure 403 Lilias only needs a 265 right now and she's doing the run around here we can see on our screen doing the run around to get the rip near the pier so the, the rip is going to help her to get right back to the outside section and uh, as you can see, the ocean is roaring, looks still big. Uh, I think tomorrow is going to be the smallest day of the whole week. How many heats have you done now in a row? This is my fourth and I'm going to have two more after. Yeah. So um, I'm doing, a, how do you say? Punishment. <laughs> a punishment yeah. for the one I didn't do. Oh, Bang! I know. That was nice. So I mistimed the schedule and I'm, I'm, I'm being punished by my fellow colleagues. Yeah. That's the way it works. Have you learned your lesson or? There's no compassion. But have you learned? So you I, I just feel like there's no compassion for mistakes. Do you on feel the rehabilitated? Of course. I just feel so much better right now. You feel like you've paid your debt to society? Mm -hmm. I feel great. As we see Popo again winds up off the bottom and kapa on the pocket and uh, I think she will improve on that 107 she has so that's gonna help her cause that's for sure sitting in second place and eating that pack up she's back out there so really quick paddler Paulina Do and uh, Paul uh, I know I got punished I want to say sorry to you for uh, not being here when you most need it Mm -hmm. But what did you do on your pause of three eats in a row right now? <laughs> did you enjoy it? Had a little rest. Oh, nice. Listen to some music. Nice. Had a coffee. Which one? What did you listen to? Bit of a mix of stuff. Bit of hip hop. Justin Bieber. That bit of sort of. I, I, have, you, have you heard the new album of Metro Boomin? Really good, really good. Should you? It's uh, trending on Spotify. Thanks for the tip. 13 minutes and 20 seconds to go in this seat, which is being dominated by the Olympian Camilla Kemp. She's warming up for Pia Hupu with some lefts at Caparica. She's leading this one. Join us some more action from a sunny Friday in Lisbon. Right. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado. 
na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. Welcome back to the thrust and parry of high stakes professional surfing in Europe. It's the final event on our qualifying series this year and we are sending surfers to the Challenger Series. Who's it going to be? We'll know by probably this time tomorrow or possibly the end of the afternoon tomorrow, depending on exactly what happens. At the moment in this current heat, it's Camilla Camp who is streets ahead. It's Pauline Addo who's nibbling away at that lead in second. Lilia Tabai's had a little go. Where's Lucia Machado? I see nothing from her. This is not like her. She's quite an intense competitor, but I've seen nothing from her. She's having a nightmare, Chico. Where is she? What's she doing? Uh, I think she's lost. Uh, there she is. We, Look. We've seen, like, at least one surfer each heat getting completely lost out there and not finding anything. We saw Team Biso in the morning. Um, and uh, I feel like once you, you lose your rhythm in, tip, in this type of oceans, uh, you kind of can, can get, can be a bit hard to get back into it. But she's such a good surfer. I think uh, once she, she uh, posts something on the board, maybe she can come back. There's, there's 10 minutes to go. So with 10 minutes to go, you can catch a lot of waves still, as we see uh, kind of like a double up coming in. So hopefully she can put herself in a position to catch good one but you see like she's seeing way more uh, towards the left side of the beach and uh, Camille and Pauline towards the the, um, the right side of the beach and most of the scores have been coming from that right side so probably readjust the positioning might be a good idea I would say yeah if you you're in a separate part of the peak from the surfers that are getting all the points and winning by loads, it might be time to think, maybe I should go up there. Seems like <laughs> exactly. they're getting the sixes and the fives and I'm getting the ones and the zeros. So probably head that way, maybe. It'd be a thought, wouldn't it? Let's see. Or stick to your tactics and back yourself. Yeah, I think um, I think uh, she's sticking to her tactics. So she identified something that we are not seeing until now on the left side. And uh, yeah, she needs to readjust her positioning. Uh, she's really, she looks like she's further to the outside than the rest and uh, towards the left side of the beach. So maybe getting caught by the current there, Paul? Who do you like for the dudes heading to Chopes for the Olympics? Who are you back in? Uh, Medina John John Cauli. Toledo? Uh, I said, I said, I the think three. he might surprise lots of people. I, I said the three, three picks, Olympic picks just before. You? Yeah, What's Jack, Jack Robinson's no good at Chopes, is he? Rubbish. No, it's a four man final. He's, I said Chumbinho. He's not, yeah, but you, you don't think he's going to do well? I didn't say that. He's not very uh, good at left. You asked left me the battles. picks. Yeah. You asked me the picks. All right. Tell me your picks, four picks then. Okay. If you're on a line. Yeah. Jack Robinson lose first round, you reckon? No. I didn't say that. Well, you, you pretty much did. I, I don't know why you're so upset <laughs> about, about my my prediction when when you know what I know. It's happening on the city right now. <laughs> don't double question my my predictions. As we see the preparations of Hopkins. Oh, we've talked She's about an her. She's Olympian. She's representing Portugal. She's in a solid spot to qualify for Challenger Series as well. She's not messing about, Hopkins. She's not. She's never doing that. Oh, I love uh, the, the commitment she has to the sport, what she represents, the courage. Do you think Shambini is going to be back for the Olympics? Yep. I think so. Do you think the injury will affect him, his approach at all? Well, that's 
a question. Uh, yeah, it's a question. Yeah. What's the answer? I don't have an answer for that. Okay. Cool. Thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you're here, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we, we, yeah, obviously we, we don't know, you know, the details and all that stuff, but we wish him really well with his recovery. When? Who's your top three pick? Top four, sorry, it's the final four. Bang! Ah, Machado. Machado. Much better. What? What was that? Out of nowhere, fireworks. Machado coming back, flying. Back to herself, stayed on deep on the peak. Who, who are you backing? Let's let double check this last turn from Lucia. Bang! Throws best score of the eight so far. In your opinion, Paul? Look at that wedge coming at her. Bang! Blows the fiends out. That turn was sick. So, four man final. Wow. <laughs> what? Stop it. Stop it. That turn was sick. Nice one by Lucia. Yeah. That's got to be a massive score. I'm going Ramsey in the final. I think Kriere could surprise a few people. Jack Robinson. And John John. So two two goofies, two regulars. No Medina. A guy that made the final like ten times in the row. He's gonna lose in the semis, I think. Oh come on. With I who? Think Andy's gonna get him. Just at the end of their semi. Okay. Yeah. Imagine actually that happening. Oh, I am. I am. That's what it's my prediction, mate. That's yeah. You remember the, the, the octopus that predicted the Euros? Yeah. <laughs> like for a while. And the, the octopus predicted Portugal. He was called Portugal. Paul, wasn't he? Paul the octopus. <laughs> yeah. And he predicted uh, Portugal won. And no one was believing He's the octopus. He's literally the only organism in the world that thought Portugal going to win. Because they, really, the, they really stunk the place out, didn't they? The, they were terrible. What happened to, to England? Like first round? They lost penalties to Iceland. No, on the penalties, right? No, no, no. Like one lost. meal, a header. No, we just lost to Iceland. No, I know, but it was a header at the end of the match, I think. No, no, we were losing for ages. We had about an hour to try and do something about it. We just couldn't. <laughs> but this new generation is crazy. It's the best team you had in a while. Don't worry, we'll still get it. We'll still get it wrong, mate. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Don't you worry about that. Come on, <laughs> camp there, having a look, and not finding much. She's still in the lead, though. Strong lead. Machado score. You thought it'd be the high score of the Heat. Guess what? You're right. It is six six for her. So she's right back at the races here. What's not on her side is time. She's got four and a half minutes to find herself a three one seven. Is she going to do it? Oh, hang on. Better frustrate. Oh, was that happiness or was that a frustration clap? We just caught the end of that ride. That was Lilia Tabai of Morocco. What did she do? Uh, just a clap on her leg. A uh, bit of a disappointment there. Uh, frustrated not to find waves. So uh, Lilia trying to get back on on the on the right side of this one. I don't know. Just a clap, like, come on, waves, give me a break. I want to catch a good one, and mm. I keep catching just the wrong one. I can see wh why you might be a bit annoyed with that, but at the same time, I mean, you can kind of see that was a close-up when she paddled into it as well. <laughs> yeah, It's not as if it looked good and then suddenly disappeared. It, I thought the same. It looked quite straight as she paddled into it on purpose. Anyway, let's check out the recap. Heat number four of the round of 32 of the women. It's Camilla Kemp who is going to Tahiti to represent the fatherland, Deutschland. And she's blazing this one. Yeah, two turn combo, really tight in the pocket. Popo responding to that nice big snap under the lip. That was committed. So much control. And uh, Camilla Kemp doing the backup. Two turn combo again on the backside. One of her best um, skill, I would say. I like her backside. I think uh, she performs really well. And this was Lucia Machado coming back on this hit with a big <laughs> snap off the top, trying buckets of water, fins out. Lucia is on fire. Two minutes, 46 sec seconds, and she needs a score ball. Can she do it? Yep, for sure she can. Will she do it? It's another question. She only needs a three. That's, that's not a big number at all. But she's going to need to catch a wave. That's going to help her a lot. This is Popo. 
Bang! Nice turn by Pauline. 5 1 3. She improves. Now Lucia needs a 4 1 3. So this hit is going to be really close until the end. And is it the first time we're going to see double digits by three surfers in a while? Oh, hello. It's a boy. Oh, she's getting at this now, so this is going to be fun. This is going to set up that was nuts. An, an interesting finish. Good combo of turns. Where does this go? She needed a 6.7. Nice carve off the top. Comes off the bottom. Bang! Wow. That was technical, fast, beautiful. Love her style. Love the torque of the upper body. Compresses. Bang! Throws the fins out the back. Deals with the explosion and she makes it. I think this is going to be her best score so far. She's back on this one. Can she do the 6.7 uh, on this one, Paul? No. No, it's not going to get the 6.7. It's not the high score of the heat, but it's better from her. It's going to improve for sure. She's sitting on a 1 prior to that. That one is toast. It's gone. It's going to be erased and replaced by another number. She's going to bring her total right down. Let's see where it goes. She gets higher than a 4.03. She'll bring the total down. That was Addo, who just got a 5-1-3. So she's done two maneuvers in this entire heat. She did a forehand assault on the lip and a backhand floater. And those two maneuvers have been good enough for 10.03 points. This is your heat leader who's never really looked in trouble. Kemp, she'll bring this in. I don't think she'll threaten a top two. But Lucia Machado has priority. She needs a 4-1-3. She's got 35 seconds. Where? Is the Canarian goofy foot? Has she found herself a spot in the lineup? Bang! Camellia, as you said, uh, not worried too much about the the position she's in. Well and truly in the lead, surfing really well. What a great eat. Where's Machado? By Camilla. 13 seconds. Where's Machado? Where's Machado? Will she get a wave? Looks like not. Looks like we'll never know. And that'll be it all wrapped up. Well done, Camilla Kemp. And she's bringing the fire up from the ISA Games. Where she got herself into the Olympics. She's bringing it back onto the qualifying series in Europe. They all caught a wave, actually. Uh, I think the last one of Lucia is not going to be enough. So a one-pointer. So maybe a quick in and out. And the last one of Lilias Tebai. 5-1-3, so she jumps into third, and in fourth, Lucia Machado. Mm, just a case of too little, too late from Tobai, but a good late rally from her. Well done to Camilla Kemp, who just basically showed pay surf for heat. You, got, you get scores early, you find the best waves, you surf them with authority, and you come back to fight in the round of 16. We're going to bring in another great look at heat. Next up, we'll be looking at Yolanda Hopkins, Maria Diaz, Aimiti Fiero, and Ellie Turner of Great Britain. More live action from a spicy Friday of competition. Of course, the Caparica will be back. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test, ride the future. Welcome back to Caparica. 
The Atlantic Ocean's bringing us some lines, some power, some juice. Bit of current too. Let's clean up results of the last thing. Everyone got a wave at the end. Guess what? Things are exactly where they were. Kemp Addo advanced through to round of 16. To buy Machado, they'll bow out of competition here. We'll fly past Costa de Caparica. That's us, those white tents. That's our contest structure. And we're going to check out a brand new quartet representing France, out of France, Polynesia, Aimiti Fierro, Yolanda Hopkins from Portugal, Maria Diaz also of Portugal, Ellie Turner flying the Union flag of Great Britain. Meanwhile, Hopkins down to biz. Didn't get loads of that last maneuver, did she? She was sort of trying. Unable to really slice off too much from the wave. And expects a committed performance from her. That's what we tend to see. She'll be right up for this encounter. Maria Diaz, what she got for us. Can't really connect for a finish. Yeah. Let's welcome back Zay Ferreira. Thank you, mate. And did you get uh, something to eat? Yeah, some happy? sun. Yeah? Some food. Yeah, feeling good? Yeah, Chico was looking at my my food plate the whole the whole time. Yeah. I guess he's hungry. But yeah, well these girls are hungry for waves. And unfortunately didn't really try Maria Diaz to finish that section, but this lady Yolanda Hopkins, she's always up to trying, even if she knows she doesn't, she, she's not going to do it. And the bigger, the better. <clears throat> What's your favorite thing about Hopkins' surfing, eh? Um, what do you like the most? Definitely, definitely for me is the go for it she has. Yeah. You know, it's impressive. The can-do attitude. Yeah. And like, I, I will go. This, you know, she's like um, a little piece of steel. Not little, because... Yeah, she's a, she's like, yeah, a she, surfer made out of steel. She goes back in there for a medal at, at Tiahupu. What do you think? Exactly. For yeah. instance, in Tiahupu, she will be for sure one of the most, um, if not successful, one of the most courageous. And yeah. I think that will that will stand out in what? in Chopu. What would, if you were her coach? What would you change about surfing? What would I change? Hmm. I think it's Ellie Turner right now. Nice little opening snap. Oh, and a good finish. So, a combo maneuvers from Ellie. I liked it. Hopkins behind her. Look at this. Look at the paddle speed and a great looking way. Bang. Throws a hammer up for a first turn. The wave goes soft and she kicks out with tons of speed. So she's coming at this hard and fast. Yeah, you know, what would you do different? I would, I would add, let's just look at this again. Nice bottom turn, Bang. strong turn. So she's very strong. She's very... Um, you know, all that that we know she is. And this was also Ellie Turner's wave. I really like this turn here. Very so, uh, very um, loose and simple, but uh, effective. I would maybe add in a bit more of progression um, in smaller waves, in like fun surf. She's really good, like she has a great line. She's a strong surfer, rail surfer, barrels, big turns, right? Um, but maybe a bit more spicy in like smaller waves yeah. could help her in the how, in the CT campaign, in the QS. How do you do that? How do you add in progression? What, what, what do you have to do to do that? Is it changing boards? What, just yeah, changing your, well, your whole approach? Well, yeah, it's, it's a few things. Go skateboarding? Skateboarding and actually, yeah. Um, uh, skateboarding can, can help you with that. It's a bit yeah. trickier, but yeah, material but also investing a lot of time in like small waves and trying, just trying, trying, trying. Like it gives you a bit more looseness on on smaller waves. But it's, you know, I guess all European surfers, not all, but most European surfers are like better in better waves than in small waves in opposition to the Brazilians, let's say. Let's go and hear from another one of those top, top European surfers. One of the last heat, Camilla Kemp is standing by for a chat with Claudia. That's right, we're here at Camille Camp, the winner of the last heat and Olympian. How was it? <laughs> it was good, it was like tricky, very tricky. I knew it was going to be a hard one. Um, but yeah, I feel like I just found my rhythm in the beginning and then I had to kind of just uh, 
play the game a little bit and, and control the heat. And Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. I was a bit nervous in the beginning of this heat. I feel like um, I've had some good events. The past events have been good, so I felt like I wanted to keep the momentum going and I felt a bit nervous, but I feel like I... Yeah, I feel like I'm a, I did a good job. I'm, I'm definitely proud of myself doing this in, in some tricky conditions. <laughs> Having these good scores in a row, does that add up like some pressure to it? How do you manage it? Yeah, definitely. I feel like uh, pressure is always there. We always have to deal with it. But um, yeah, I've been having some uh, obviously very good weeks, but um, yeah, a lot of responsibil responsibility coming with it. and. I feel it. I felt it a li little bit before my heat, and uh, yeah. But I feel like I'm, I'm starting to figure it out, and I feel comfortable. I'm, I'm at home, so uh, I'm just happy to be here and happy to do another event. You're also having a very busy schedule these days. How is it for a professional surfer with this new re reality of having surfing in the Olympics? Yeah, it's crazy. It's. Um, I, I knew that the beginning of my year was going to be. Uh, a uh, very important one. Uh, our season began a bit earlier. We began in February in the ISA. And uh, yeah, luckily I, I qualified for Olympics, so everything changed a little bit. My schedule now is way busier than it was supposed to be. And um, yeah, a lot of hard work coming into Tahiti. So I'm excited for the whole road, the whole journey. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna appreciate everything that comes. How do you think having surfing in the Olympics is going to contribute for the sport? What does it? Why does it, it makes it different? I think it's so good. I think uh, it it makes our sport a bit more professional. Um, I know that from my side, our federation, the German federation, has been putting so much work into um, Olympic qualification and Oli Olympic preparation that um, yeah, I feel the weight of Olympics on my shoulders, but I feel like it's such a good thing and such a big thing for our sport and I, I know that um, the next generations are going to definitely benefit from everything. Uh, yeah, and I'm just lucky to be part of it. So. <laughs> Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Claudia. Great to view that. Good insights there. Camilla Camp. She always gets good into you, actually. Seems very, she's kind of switched on and knows like where she is and where she's going and all that kind of stuff. That's an important part of your career. It's not just about what you do after you stand up on a wave, but having the kind of big picture sense of things and then being able to focus in and go really small picture it. Just focus on your next wave. Interesting. Say she was feeling nervous there because she didn't look it. I mean, she looked very composed out in the water. So. You know, very different things going on in surface mines and what they're doing in the water. This was a beast of a turn from Hopkins. Yeah, she really um, went high on that wave as all that white water came, unfortunately. What's fell. going on there? It looks like Look, a tsunami. It's like a double. What is that? Those those waves like drag you forever. <clears throat> what about what what about you, Paul? What what do you think about the Olympics in surfing? What's the impact? I thought the last one had very little impact at all. It didn't make any difference. A lot of people were freaking out, saying it's going to do this or that. I didn't feel it made any difference whatsoever. In fact, if you if you were asleep at the time, which I was, you wouldn't even really know it was on. Bit of a weird one, wasn't it, in Japan last time out? I think it could be potentially really different this time. If they get really good ways, it could be the best thing that's ever happened in the Olympics, like the most exciting thing to watch, I think, if you don't know loads about surfing and it's big clean dangerous yeah, jokes it can, <laughs> could be like crazy or it could be head high on shore and rubbish and again just a bit of a damp squib so obviously i think it's all really going to come down to what conditions are like i think surfing's really hard for non surfing audience to understand i mean it's it's quite hard for a surfing audience to understand but if you're not into it you're just like what's what's going on why are they just sitting there why is nothing happening I don't get it. So it, I think it's obviously get it, but if it's crazy and big, I think you know the visions of seeing people getting you know crazy tubes, the drama of all that. I think that will compare to anything that you see in 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 the Olympics in terms of how sort of spectacular that will be. I mean, it could be could be the greatest thing ever from the point of view of the European audience, and obviously it's the Paris Games. The one bummer is the time difference. Yeah. So 12 hours behind, it, it's in the middle of the night. So, I mean, ultimately, if you're not a big surf fan, who's watching? You know, who's staying up for that? I don't know. But yeah. oh, contrastingly, if you're on another time zone, then great. Yeah. Um, I, I've never really got the numbers, or like the, the actual impact that's, that 
the, the Olympics had on surfing in terms of like people getting to know the sport and start following the sport after um, after Tokyo. Not not sure. Um, also, yeah, it got wasn't less a great. Less, surfing got less popular after Tokyo. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Conditions were like terrible. I think it was kind of close to this, no? Just Shiba. Um, really like, yeah, it was horrible actually. Um, but another point that kind of, you know, gets a bit on my mind is that there will be so many surfers to go to, to Chopu that never actually surf there, both men and women. That uh, um, I'm curious to see if like someone's gonna get hurt. I hope not. But there's a big chance. It's one of the most dangerous waves in the world. So let's hope for the best. It's an exciting season for surfing for lots of reasons. It's an exciting looking wave. This is Maria Diaz from deep to deep. And again for her, be a misfire. She'll jump off 17 minutes. 15 to go. Hopkins got a 4.57 for previous to last, and that's why that was that left. That one big turn she did. Other than that, it's nothing to really talk about. This one, we got. Oh, we do have a four for Ellie Turner. Actually, excuse me, that number's in for Ellie. Combination of turns on the right. Ooh. Was that an interference? Well, I, I'm not. I, I I got this wrong earlier. I the didn't know. I'm a heat machine, so I'm not, I'm not going to say much. Not going to call it. Nah. But you should try again. Change, change <laughs> your, you know, change the tide. <laughs> I got a 50-50 chance of getting it right, I suppose. Whoa, Fierro. A couple of turns from her. That's she, better. She's probably um, Vahine's cousin or sister. Even sister. Uh, three, three, three sisters. She's the middle one. Yeah, so much better. She's stuck in the in the small numbers prior to that. So 0.5, her highest. She'll definitely improve there. So <clears throat> Yolanda is very well positioned, right? I think she's in in the second place. Yeah, yeah, she's going good. But in terms of getting into challenges. Camilla, she's fighting, and if she uh, Camila Kemp, if she does uh, like a really good result, she's going in for Teresa's uh, spot. But the thing is, <laughs> Teresa Whew. only did two uh, two contests, so everything she she does here will will give her extra points. Uh, Hein Mita Fierro, nice spray in that turn. So cool wave. Let's let's see how much that is. Wait for that number to come in for Fierro. For sure, it's an improvement. If it's 4 6 or better, she'll threaten Ellie Turner. Here's Hopkins on a bomb. Oh, really nice radical vertical foam climb. But if only that wave had just set up a bit more for her, she would have attacked the lip. So it was really nicely served, showing really good control of the board on a tricky section but you just think what could have been if she'd got all that speed into the lip let's get another look here zay yeah uh vertical um, vertical way vertical turn too that was cool it's like that that's one of her strongest points she can take it bring it on but yeah she could have hit it a bit before although that's impressive it's that's really hard to do she it's impressive how she, she manages that. Ellie Turner there. It's like Ellie Ellie has a nice composed style. She she's doing everything with a lot of calm. I like I like her style. Yeah, you need to make those turns out. She's fallen off and you, you just can't. You, you, you gotta be sticking that. There's not loads of opportunities. Four servers in the water. It's a tough lineup. You're not going to get sort of 10 goes at good waves in this heat. You know, there's just not there's not 40 waves out there. Yeah, you have to make sure. And when the opportunities come, got to try and finish. Well, not try, but you got to actually finish the waves. So let's see 
how she goes about doing that with 13 and a half minutes remaining. She's got four in already. It's actually the second highest score of the heat. It's this one has lacked quality in all sorts of different ways. We are still waiting for that score for Aimee Fierro. And um, there is an interference on Ellie Turner, so the news gets bad to worse. She dropped in on Maria Diaz. Maria Diaz just straightened out. It took a while, right, for that inter <coughs> interference to to fall. I, I guess the judges really were like taking a good look at that, um, deciding if bad news for her. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Two interferences today already. Three actually with hands is. Yeah, I mean this is. Quite clear cut. Yeah, on a closeout. Those are a like. Nothing wave. Yeah. Shocking. Yeah, mounts up. Um, she will have a clear, th you know, uh, analysis. What was the other interference? So we had Hans paddling out. Hans. The one I didn't think was going to be one that was. Then uh, the one uh, that was made on Teresa Bonvalo. Uh, Someone made an interference on her. Okay. Now this one. And then Chico I was getting his red card for missing. Yeah, Chico had a, an interference as well. He got a double interference and yeah. actually got told to come in by the announcers off the beach, just paddling. Yeah. So he's on the naughty step. Yeah, that was, you know, a shame. It, it was like... Uh, shameful. Shameful, exactly. <laughs> Everyone was talking about it. Um, yeah, it was really bummed out the group, It was a big it? thing. It was a big thing. Yeah, the morale, it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was... Uh, a lot of sadness and some kind of just... A lot of people just confused. They just don't understand why. Yeah, exactly. It's like... Why? It's Do those things you, you just spend your life without understanding. But we'll anyway, never know. Here we go. Oh, that's because quick, we like him. Quick in and out for Fierro, who got 4-1-7. So she got 4-1-7. Ellie Turner loses her backup score, which at the moment is low. As it, you know, when it's a low score and he, even with an interference, she has a chance here, Ellie. So she doesn't need to get despondent because right now she only needs a 4-6-7 to go into second place. So it's not a huge requirement. It's not a massive number for her. Maria Diaz looking for just a 2-9-1, though. So as soon as Maria fires up and gets a proper wave, Ellie will be in trouble. But right now, Ooh. she's alive. So it's... Whoa, <laughs> Hopkins! That's radical. Going mad! Hopkins just putting it up there late. Classic Hopkins. That's classic Hopkins. That's, uh, that's true. I mean, if you're a nice one, yeah, that was an cool. upside down. Yeah, good turn. So she's going to improve now, and this situation is going to get a lot tougher for Ellie because Fierro was sitting on a 0.5 prior to that. That's gone. A backhand turn, crisp, complete. She's going to get a number, and uh, now we'll have a legit total, really, for Ellie. It's going to be right up there to try and get with one wave. Let's get another look at this, Zay. Yeah, great turn there. Um, let's let's watch it again. So nice bottom turn. She manages really well that white water and finishes up very well. Upside down kind of kind of you know backside roller. Roller. Do people still say roller? But anyway, this would be incredible. Wow. This this is like a, a a nair floater re-entry Yolanda style you know thingy. Look at this. Hello, she does one of those at Chopes. She's going to get a 10. Yeah, and, and trust me, she will go for the lip. <laughs> Maria Diaz, swinging. Yeah, Maria Diaz, she's, um, you know, trying to catch something of more consequence. Um, at this level, she really has to put everything out in order to score. And yeah, well, smaller turns on this wave, but she still has uh, plenty of time to go back there as we see the amount of rain that's coming in our direction. Um, no, mate, that's not rain, that's some um, 
That's Armageddon. That's actually the end of the world. <laughs> that is. Uh, there was some speculation. The Mayan calendar had it in yeah. 2020, but it's actually today. Yeah. It's this afternoon. Exactly. In it, it will start in Corsa de Caperica. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's in, wow, what's in the Wow, look at that. Oh, no. <laughs> we Quick. enjoyed our son. Shike, got an, he's got an hour to live. He's going to go and think about what he wants to do for the rest of his time on, on Earth. Um, in the morning, I saw people saying, well, I don't think the rain is coming back anymore. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so it's wow. foreboding skies here. Wow. Actually, the, 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 the wind is starting. So uh -oh. I would say I would give, give this 20 minutes to turn around. 20? 20. I'm going to give it 35. 35? Yeah, until we see rain. Okay, you're from here, so... I'm not from the clouds, though. Oh, you, you are known to be a, a fairly good meteorologist. Oh, look at that. that that's really, really dark. Cool for photos, though. Dramatic sky. Makes everything look sort of special, doesn't it? <laughs> I guess. Cinematic, I guess. <laughs> you know? Oh, the light in the foreground. You can see the color of the ocean already changing, unfortunately, again. Yeah, you can see you're really good at understanding these things because the, the things you notice are like, wow. Not obvious It's yeah, exactly. at all. It's you look back guy. at this and you go, oh, it's a lovely day. Why are that. people standing on the pier? <laughs> exactly. Like two guys on the pier with like 15 foot sets coming in and eye tight coming in. So hopefully because they... they're massive QS fans and they want to get close to the action. They can know that there's an Olympian, a Portuguese Olympian in the water right now. Yolanda Hopkins ripping. Tell you, us is ripping. Aimee Fiera got a 7-5 for the backhand hanger. Wow. So just attacking the lip. 7-5, massive number, huge score. Vaimiti goes to the lead. Hopkins drops to second. Ellie Turner's had an interference. She's in all sorts. She needs a 9-8-4. Maria Diaz had a bit of a shock. Whoa! Big turn from Hopkins, and she makes it. Wow! Such a power surfer. It's oh. incredible. Where's that going to go score-wise? She doesn't like being in second. She's like, you know what? Backhand turns, is it? Let's go. So, 6 four, one to go back to first. She hammered it. Hammered it. it, it and, and she's just one of those surfers that you know you're always enthusiastic when you when you're watching her heats even the ones she doesn't go through she always fights to the last second it's just it's always good to see you know um everyone has their style and her style is just i'd say radical wow oh. caught the rail a bit almost got barreled yeah yeah she does that a lot right like Three maneuvers in the same maneuver, like a floater re-entry and aerial, or barrel and like backside off the top. Buried the board, four, five, four, seven, the number for Hopkins. She'll stay in second place, five minutes and a few seconds on the clock as we check the line up. Let's see. I mean, Fiera, your heat leader. And the young Goofy is looking very good indeed in this with a 7 5. She'll go to work on the 4 1 7 at the next opportunity from third priority. Priority is with this woman. She just uses it, Maria Diaz of Portugal. That's a bit better from her. She's not shown us much, actually. She's looked just a bit off the pace in this. She's coming up in a heat, a tough one against two surfers, giving it everything. And with Ellie Turner basically out of it with interference, that's an opportunity. She's not been able to take it so far. She's looked a little sluggish and slow, and she needs to pick the pace up. Because the likes of Amy Tavera are hammering it. Hopkins as well, as ever, going hard. And she needs, needs to kind of like just vibe off that, does Maria, and just start having a swing. Yeah, exactly. Um, especially because I think she would be from Hufflepuff if we were in Harry Potter. Are you like Diaz is a Hufflepuff? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Hufflepuff. Um, and so she she may have something under her sleeve. But we have now the recap. Um, this is Jaime Tefiero. Very on form.
uh, inform uh, Jaime Tefier with really nice surfing, nice turns. This was her best wave, the best wave of this heat so far. Look at it upside down, really managing very well that white water. I think um, the board being red also helps her cause. And here is Yolanda Hopkins just destroying everything that comes her way and doing it very nicely. She's obviously qualified to the Olympic Games. That's a big, big honor. Uh, Who's your men's final, mate? Who's your women's final? What have you got? Men's final. Let's do women first, because we're watching the women. True. Women's final, Tahiti Olympics. Uh, in the Olympics? Yeah. Okay, let's, let me just uh, think about it for a second. She needs a combo, Ellie Turner. She's just, she's just surfing now. Might yeah. as well just enjoy yourselves, get a couple of waves. That was nice, very nicely done. Very nice. I, I, I told you, I, I, I like her style. But unfortunately, she has literally no chance yeah, of she's going gone. through. She's out. Who's in the Olympic final, mate? Olympic final. Yeah. Chopu. Yeah. I would maybe say Yolanda. Yolanda's in the final. It's for for uh, women, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, Who else you got? Yolanda, Caitlin Simmers, Molly Picklem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. Well, nice. You no, know, she just has a calm, a calmness. Yeah, she's I, smooth. She's smooth. Yeah, it's a bit too calm. And she didn't have priority though. And dropped in. Yeah, she could be a bit smoother then. Um, so Yolanda, Molly Picklem, Caitlin Simmers. Um, someone surprising now. Uh, Carissa Moore. Do you like her? I like her. She's quite good. But, like, she's had her time. Ooh, wow. Uh, that's, no, wow. yeah. No, that's, that's, uh, I think, I'm not sure if she's coming back to the CT, actually. Because um, Steph she already said she, she, she was going to, to come back. But from, from Caris, it looked Imagine like a bit. Imagine how hungry uh, she's going to be, though. No, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, she's Whoa. one of the, I think she's still the best surfer in the world. But. I, I thought she was like retired, pretty much. Uh, that's that's what I, I took out of her um, dropping off this okay, year. So you, Carissa out of the final. So who have you got in the final? Um, Do you like Tatiana Weston Webb? Maybe I'm trying to throw names at you here, mate. No. I'm trying to help. Um, I'm here to help. Uh, don't like Tati. Okay. No, I like her, but you don't uh, like her for the final. Yeah. Ah, uh, 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 Betty Lou. Betty Lou Sakura Johnson. She's. Is not she in the, not? No, no, not at the moment. It's oh, two women yeah. in the American team. She could potentially get there, maybe somehow. Don't think so though. Now she's she's third on the on the USA team. Oh. So yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I don't she know could the list. She could get the final, but it seems unlikely. She's not in the event. <laughs> yeah. Well. I'm just saying. I, I I'd say Carissa Moore's got a slightly better chance, seeing yeah. she's actually competing in the, no, in the competition. No, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to find another name. Yeah, yeah. Take um, your time, mate. It's Thirty seconds to go. Let's check out live action from Maria Diaz with some speed. What she got here? Hit it or straighten out. So Diaz will bring it in. And she, yeah, didn't have a great heat. She needs an excellent number, 824. I'm not sure we saw that there. That'd be a learning process for her, but she came up against a couple of servers just going at it hard. The likes of Hopkins and Fierro were really taking no prisoners, attacking the lip. And that's what you got to do if you want to get into the round of 16. What about the sister of IBT Fierro, Vahine Fierro? Vahine Fancy Fierro, her. that's a nice one. Joanne Faye, also France. Joanne de Faye could do you like them? She's amazing well. in the tube, in, in reefs, left yeah, reefs particular. That's going to wrap up, and we will see IBT Fierro in the next round. Also, Yolanda Hopkins, those two onwards and upwards. Ellie Tanner got a six for her last wave. It was a, a glimpse of what could have been second highest score of the heat, but the interference cost her big time so the youngster showing flashes of brilliance with a 7-5 here we'll keep it going more live action from caparica very soon it's good to try even when something seems to make little sense put your weight on it make an impact in this world call everyone set ambitious goals and ask yourself do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. 
O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. Welcome back! The storm is here, Caprica Surf Fest 2024 is ongoing, round of 32, it's six is in the water. Leticia Canales Bilbao, Lucy Campbell, Ariane Ochoa, Anat Lelio. As we can see, the wind uh, got a little bit more uh, rough, right there? As we can see, our spectators all around, from all around the world uh, here on the beach supporting their fellow country uh, competitors and uh, we can see that the weather has changed a bit the tide is coming in there's bigger waves uh, bigger sections and um, I think we're gonna see kind of a rough afternoon there yeah you're right Chico um, but these uh, these ladies will try to perform the best they can we will we'll have Leticia Canales Bilbao from Spain Anat Leilor from Israel, Lucy Campbell um, from Great Britain and Britain and uh, Ariano Shoa from the Basque Country in Spain. So diverse heat, all great surfers. Um, all of them have been here for a while, so they're they're no um, they're not new to this. They they've had their fair share of milestones in surfing and in competition. And we have Lucy Campbell in a nice first turn and a nice second turn. And if her brother uh, Stuart is watching, a big, big hug to that old fella, Stuart Campbell. Um, Very nice. You see the replay from Great Britain as well. But yeah, she could take it away. Nice snap and another one. So she was able to, in that short space, to fit another snap on the white water. So a nice start for Lucy. Um, it's really hard out there. And uh, a person, a woman that is really happy with the performance, with a 7 5 on board, is Emiti Fierro standing by with Cla Claudia Pinto. That's right, Emiti couldn't be happier with her results. Can you tell us, guide us a little bit through your heat and what was your approach? Well, my approach was to catch to my first wave quickly, but that didn't go to plan. It, like I got my first wave at 17 minutes and I only got a four, but then I got just a seven, five later in the heat yeah, on one turn. So I was pretty happy with that, yeah. <laughs> what was your strategy when you come here and the conditions are this hard, how do you how do you manage that mentally? Uh, mentally, I just tell myself that the conditions are hard for everyone. So there's no need to stress yourself about, you know, that everyone's going to have a hard time. And I just tell myself that I'm going to do my the best I can. And usually it works. So, yeah. <laughs> also, for example, the conditions are changing right now. There's a storm coming and the temperature is also a factor. How about that? Yeah, it's for sure. I've been surfing in a 4-3 and right now I'm in a 3-2 for my, for my heat and it was freezing out there. So I was just trying to catch as many waves as possible just to even stay warm. But it was so hard out there. I, it, it was really hard to just catch, you know, waves that were allowed to score. So 
yeah, <laughs> I was just trying to do that. Anyway, even with these hot conditions and the cold and everything, you still made it. How does that feel? It feels great. I'm, I'm really happy I got first in this heat. It was a really good heat. Uh, Yolanda is a good surfer, Eli as well. And uh, so I was, I'm just really happy I got first in this heat, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Yeah, um, so great questions there by Claudia and Leticia Canal is on a bomb wow. of a turn. Beautiful that turn, right? It was like both um, a carve, but also like an off the top, a re-entry. And yeah, nice, nice one, Shiku. And yeah, go for it. And at Lior here with a bit of a double up, a lot of white water in the face ops out of that one but leticia what a nice style and approach on that wave uh, i feel like leticia has such a good style i like how she she just lets the board uh have her own drive and just drive through the rails when she does a turn instead of like keep just pushing on on the on the wrong moment definitely she just lets the board breathe and that that feels good i like Look that expression this. letting the board breathe wow I really enjoyed the section wasn't easy. Yeah, and That's she had a she moment had. where the rail almost caught. Yeah, exactly. She was able to to let the board breathe. Actually, look, Oof. almost caught the 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 inside rail there at the end of that one because the wave got really steep here. She almost yeah. poked the nose, but then regathered herself and uh, actually made the turn. Facial expression on point. <laughs> She's stoked with that one making sure she makes it so Leticia there with a nice core uh, I think so really good surfing by the Spanish surfer Leticia Canales she has a sister that surfed uh, for a long time with her on the juniors and actually I think did a couple QS's a few as well. QS's as well yeah they, they both rip really hard I think so. it's Lucia Leticia yep. and Lucia Canales if I'm not wrong. twins Twin sisters, yep. I actually, if you see them together, you don't know which one it, it's which one, because they're so similar. If they have the board, okay, but if they're walking like one closes, like you, you cannot like, cannot really tell which one it's which one. Yeah. You, you need to know them well. Like, Usually, twins, it's uh, a that, problem. That's, yeah. that's a common, a common question. Um, but right now, uh, we we actually are like. Uh, brothers uh, working at the event they are twins and every morning I say good morning and I, every time I see someone I say good morning oh, <laughs> poke the nose there I'm sure she drank some water and I, I was saying I say good morning all the time because I'm afraid of not saying good morning to the other one so he's like oh you've said good morning to me uh, and I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> so I go, good morning. And he goes, like, the whole I, I saw you. My brother is not here. Relax. <laughs> so it happens. And uh, they're, they're really similar as well. So. Th this peak here is, is now starting to, with the tide, um, Coming fill, in. filling in. It's, you know, th that, that peak is more aggressive. So where the surfers are sitting now used to be where the surfers uh, were finalizing their waves. So it's a bit shallow, but there's more water than, than it was uh, a few hours ago. Um, you can see that peak is, is pretty hollow. Um, but look at the look size at of this one. one. Wow, they're going to get caught inside. And not just the left, the right as well. Oh, they got smashed by this one, actually. Look at them. Did they lost their boards? But it's true. Um, from from the inside, like from here, watching the television, it looks like fun, and it is fun. But af actually, if you if you're live at the beach, it's you know it's a different picture. So I think Ariane got caught by two massive ones, and she got all the way pushed to the inside by those two waves in a row. You can see there. They're on our screen. Yeah, she's struggling. Yeah, she got caught. She and 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 she had like priority and now she has like an X on her name it means uh, she kind of like that's like priority her priority from... her priority is on hold until she gets to the outside exactly exactly thanks so. actually I had never seen that that's that's cool that happened because uh, once in Bells Beach 
Someone got caught by the set, uh, went all the way to the inside, and then I think it was Nat Young and Adrian Souza, and then they, they shift priority on Nim and was like, it was a bit disappointed. I don't know, they changed the rule. Bang! A bit late into that one, lacking a bit of speed in that wave, and not really being able to uh, performed really well on that wave, but the wave was just white, all about white water and uh, not really fun, as we can see. Wow, look at that. Wow. It looks like rain. You might be right, Chico. You, you said like 10, 15 minutes ago that it was going to be 35 minutes, but also it kind of looks that this storm will, Passing will, by? Pass, will, will pass a bit, you know. Why? Not, not not over us actually. I think it will come like around Costa de Caparica. Um, hopefully so. But yeah, let's hope for the best. Yeah, hopefully, so they can keep competing with the best conditions we can possibly have. Because uh, competing with a lot of rain in the water, it's hard, right? So it looks like the ocean gets weird. Uh, it's hard to actually understand which wave is the best one to catch. Sometimes it's it's raining so hard, uh, and this happened to me, especially when it's cold. It it looks like needles. Uh, it looks like needles are hitting you, and, and like I've had uh, a situation where I actually had to put like myself um, in the water and put the board over my head just just so to protect myself from from the the rain from the, the rain. strong yeah. So imagine, like, maybe uh, Lucy Campbell uh, is, is used to that in, in the Great Britain, um, to having the snow surfing. It's something that in Portugal we really do not have. And nice surfing from Anat Leilor, very dynamic there. And on the next wave we have Leticia. We'll, we'll grab the replay on that from the beginning. But... And at Leilor, um, nothing, nothing major, nothing, nothing huge, but very, very nice. This, this is the replay, so nothing, uh, nothing done before this, this, uh, the second cutback. Um, I, I like this wave, she, nice one here, and look at this one with a lot of pop. Bing. Yeah, uh, she showed a lot of aggression there. Something different. Uh, I like the carve combination with the off the top snap. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna match the the wave of Leticia Canales just because it was the biggest section. But uh, it's gonna be our best score so far, that's for sure. So with 16 minutes to go, we have Leticia in the lead with a 5-5, five five. and this last wave it's gonna come around the two range, I think. And. Uh, Wind is coming up a bit more now. You can see by the texture in the ocean. So uh, it's going to get a bit harder there. Yeah, but actually yesterday and the day before, it was it was aggressive. I think uh, it won't get as bad as, you know, I think the, the, the biggest part of the storm has passed. Um, and although conditions might, might be a bit worse. But the forecast says to, to like, in this afternoon, there's another storm. Another. Yeah, during, yeah, from now on until like night and then goes away uh, in the morning, kind of. So hopefully the storm uh, takes a, a bit longer to arrive so we can have a good show until the end of the day. Still uh, early, kind of, 2 p.m. In the afternoon, we've been here since, since 6 a.m., so it looks like it's 5 a.m. in the 5 p.m. in the afternoon. But no, it's 2 p.m. there, so still a long, long day uh, ahead of ourselves. Yeah, exactly. And fortunately, we still have a lot of action, as you can see. Anat Leilor very close to the rocks there, but that's what you want to do if you want that current to help you. And Ariana Shua, she's been quieter in this heat she's a great surfer uh, she's she's had great results in the past both in european and uh, challenger series and she now um, had her first wave that was a bit better 
uh, a bit less rhythm uh, in terms of waves uh, caught by, by the surfers in this heat. So we have been having a lot of action because there's so many waves. And beautiful surfing from Ariano Show, although the wave wasn't, uh, wasn't too big. But she's, uh, she's in tune with her surfing and equipment. As we see the flags don't lie, uh, the wind is here. Yeah, is, the, is it raining already? Uh, I don't know, but here in our studio, we just saw the <laughs> the wall moving. I don't know if if we need. Yeah, just uh, 30 minutes to go. 30 minutes to go, a lot of wind, um, and uh, we had just a technical problem here inside the studio, a quick one. We're going to close the door because the wind is kind of affecting a couple of uh, technical stuff here inside. Now it's better. But yeah, Leticia Canales is in the lead. Second, Lucy Campbell, Anatla Leo in third, and Ariane Ochoa trying to find herself. Ariane with such a good... Um, Backside attack, as we see Lucy here. Bang, nice snap off the top. And uh, couldn't reach that end section. But uh, we can see, I don't know if it's raining. It is, it is raining a little bit, but I think the wind really is uh, changing the conditions. It's, you know, it's harder now. It looks harder. Although Lucy did a very nice turn. She's... A solid surfer. Let's take a look at the replay. You know, she really takes advantage nice. of of that section there, and then really arrives late to that re-entry. That would have helped her cause, but she is now in second place. So an update on our schedule for today. We're gonna finish up the round of 32 of women, and then we're gonna do four eats of men on the next round. And then uh, it's going to be off. So uh, an update from uh, Rob Gunning here um, on the event side. As we see Leticia there with a big hit off the top and she makes it. So she will probably improve on the 307, uh, which, is, um, which is great. She's in the lead. She needs that backup. So hopefully... She puts another number on the board right now. And um, and we see David Prescott giving the information information when they're paddling near the inside so they can hear, right? So when there's a lot of wind, it's important for the, the beach commentator to actually give you the scores when you're close to the beach. So when they're paddling around, you can hear David saying, Leticia, you need this, you need that. So how important it is the, the beach commentator be like that experienced. Uh, yeah, David doing such a good job. He understands probably they're not hearing all the information when they're out there. Then when, they, when, he, when he sees uh, our surfers paddling around. Yeah, and it looks so obvious, but uh, when you're there, you, you, you really need the experience to actually understand, you know, every heat, what's going on. And David is... Um, a very experienced beach commentator. He does the CT, all the QSs, you know, all the European leg. Him and I, I, Brun Lisboa are two, um, two people that, uh, you know, are very experienced. They speak, I think, three or four languages. Um, but, uh, you know... For a, while, uh, for a long that's time now. Cultural, uh. cu cultural in Portugal because we had one of the, you know, most well-known, renowned speakers... Beach, beach speakers of all time, which is Nun Jone. He was actually... Um, what a legend. Yeah, he's a big legend. He he kind of kicked off the surfing industry in Portugal. Um, he was you know? one to bring the first wetsuits to Portugal, for instance, or the, fr the first brand of wetsuits. And he spoke, I think, six languages. You know, like seven. the first few events I saw live when I was young, my father told me, hey, it's Nuno Jone speaking to the beach in J Bay. Yeah. And I was like, wow. Look, Anna Lelor. Bang. 
nice turn. And a bit of a fall. White water is it's difficult. Difficult, yeah. But yeah, as I was saying, uh, I remember hearing his voice and being like, oh, this guy is a god. Like, he's yeah. commentating Kelly Slater. He's talking about Andy. He's giving scores to, like, Taj, Mick. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. How does he. Need? Calling not, them by their names. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll, I was not getting nervous giving scores to Kelly. Like, and then, uh, yeah, and then um, he's been around for like ages. Like, uh, last year we did a little celebration on the Challenger event. Uh, during the event, we did a celebration for Nuno's Jonet career. Yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, I was there for that too. It was like, uh, we celebrated how many years there? Do you remember? I don't have the proper number. Me neither, but there are a lot of years. Like 30, something like that, yeah. Uh, I would say more, more than we are. More, more, more than 30. More than we have. Live so. action now. This is Lucy Campbell. Looks like a good wave. That's nice first turn. The wave kind of fade, dies down a little bit. Um, she she bettered her position with her last wave, a 3-4-3. Three, three. And so she left Anat Lelor needing a 3.1. She had a, a, a she had a 303 on the last one. Just couldn't um, make it. That was very close. And let's see if Lucy Campbell can actually improve her score with these last two snaps. Um, but yeah, Anna Laylor, she's very close. Also, Ariano Shoa, she's been um, a bit quiet in this heat. To, to what we know from her. So I just got the information, 40 years of career. 40 years, Four yeah. Four years, yeah. yeah that's, that's, uh, that's impressive in any career, 40 years in any career. Is For, 41 actually this year, and he keeps uh, doing it, so. Yeah, exactly, uh, he's my colleague in Sport TV. Uh, he's gonna be the, the Cali Slater of the commentary, I feel like. Yeah. He I is already. He already is, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, amazing job. He knows job. a lot, you know. He t yeah, it's uh, amazing job. Bit, a bit of history right there. A lot of history, you know. So that's for sure. Uh, so seven minutes to go. He started off his career in Luanda. So no, no. What a what an honor to have uh, his name under our flag. <laughs> We yeah. speak a lot. Uh, we speak a lot about like um, surfers, <laughs> and we never speak about people behind the scenes that actually uh, are around the industry for ages and, and make and make everything happen. That's for sure. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's true. true. We should start g giving doing ceremonies <laughs> for those like production people. Yeah, there's so many. You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. surfers are a piece of the puzzle. Um, we would maybe say the most important piece of the puzzle because, you know, without surfers, there's no competitions in this case. We're talking about surfing competitions. There will always be surfers. But it's like, what what came first, the chicken or the egg, you know? Because <laughs> without without um, guys like Nuno Joné or Vasco Figueiredo or um, Francisco Spinla, or I'm, I'm talking about all Portuguese people, but like... Uh, let's say without Joe Trapel and without uh, Renato Ikel and without the judges and without the shapers and without everyone, nothing happens as well. So, you know, everybody, everybody's important. Everybody's a piece of the puzzle. And and we can say, and we can say, Jeanne was the <laughs> the first one qualifying for the city, right? As a commentator, the first Portuguese qualifying to the city. He's the only one that has a, that has ever done it. Did you know that? All the cities? It's all, the only Portuguese that I has mean a city? Ever, yeah, city event. A city like Lisbon. No, no, no. <laughs> now you say the, the, the world tour. Ah. Yeah, he um, covered some ground, was a pioneer for sure. So we spoke about John for 10 minutes. There's five minutes to go. Yeah, but uh, the, the situation yeah. didn't change. That's a fact, is it? So it is. And the wind, the wind keeps getting stronger. Uh, we haven't seen our fellow uh, comment, commentator for a while now. Flip is back in the booth because of the wind. So 
as we're going to go for a quick recap of this one. Starting off this one, Zé, Lucy Campbell. Doing such a good job, feeling two turns uh, on that one for a four-point ride. Then Leticia Canales with this one, a big wrap on the pocket, earning a 5-5 five -five on this one. So Leticia making sure she makes it, really compressing the body and uh, doing a backup, a fairly uh, low number, but being able to stick with it at 3.4. So. Uh, enough for the lead for now. Yeah, you don't you don't need much. Remember, double digits. Yeah. Two fives. I'm in, sticking. In this I'm, case, I'm I'm sticking to your analysis, and uh, it has been right the whole day. So yeah, I Congre think a you, few. No, actually, when you say something like what? A few hits, like the the three first surfers, had double digits, but it was like, you know, five percent of the hits. Thanks. Uh, and uh, as we see, an in and out for Ariana Ochoa. What a great surfer from the Basque country, having such a hard time there to find herself out there. She's so good. I know, she's a very talented surfer, really good on the rail, really good on her backside. She has an amazing backside. Um, and just unable to find herself in these conditions so far. She still has three minutes, uh, needs a small score uh, to advance, especially for her. She's more than capable to do a 4-7-3, but so is Annette Lelor. So I would say, you know, besides uh, Leticia that already has a 5.5, every surfer has to, you know, catch a wave and do at least a 5 so they can try and be uh, safer. As we see live action now, Ariane, oh, just having trouble to find herself out there. And out the back, uh, we see Leticia on the bombs. Eh? This looks so good. Nice snap off the top. Can she do another one? Yes, she can. So uh, I really enjoy that first turn. Yeah, really classy, uh, that carve. She has that knee, that back back knee uh, bended, which you like, Chic. Oh, I you, love you actually, You actually do that as well. Let's Look at watch this. this again. Wow. Beautiful. You see the, you know, the torque on that back foot. A lot of power on that back foot to release the rail and throw buckets of water in here. Very hard. She went for it. Um, that was like air with a floater yeah. coming down. Yeah. Like floater, air, fl air floater. Air floater, yeah. Starting with air, ending up on the floater. Hard one to do yeah, because she didn't, she didn't add much space, uh, space actually. So, uh, conditions. Oh, barrel. <laughs> first barrel we saw. No, we saw Kaoli almost making one the other day, but uh, looks really intense right now in the water yeah looks bigger and bigger on the inside we thought the swell was gonna kind of like fade actually not towards for the today. afternoon yeah not for today yeah i think today, today today's afternoon was like five meters exactly like, <laughs> look at the wave out the, the back. back yeah that's big oh that's you should big. we should go out there and do a floater yeah we should try and not claiming it y yolanda would do that and not claiming it yolanda would go and Eddie. Love it. We have a slogan. Let's do it. Eddie would go. Let's get, let's get Yola on the Eddie. Yolo would go. Eddie would let Yola go. <laughs> that would be better. <laughs> yeah, that, that 22 would, seconds that now. Legends in one saying. 15 seconds and there's not much happening. I think uh, this is going to be it. Yeah, the, the, the heat was pretty static from like yeah, the last we, 15 we, minutes. True, Zay. We haven't seen much, unfortunately. And with uh, two seconds to go, that's it. That's a wrap. Leticia Canales with the heat win. Started off early, did the job. She's stoked. You can tell by the body expression. <laughs> Asking yourself, first or second, first or second, primero or segundo. And uh, up first. And uh, great job there by... 
Leticia uh, getting the win. Lucy Campbell in second. And uh, Leticia with a big smile. It's always great when you see someone compete and getting so stoked about like getting through and uh, look at her. She's happy. It means a lot to her. Yeah. Keeping her campaign alive. <laughs> so we're gonna you're gonna stick with us for more action like this. Uh, seeing more carves in the pocket like that. And I'll see you in a moment. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente, ao seu lado, na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Welcome back to Caparica Surf Fest 2024. I'm on the studio and I can see Bougiu and a huge storm kicking in. Uh, on the studio right now, I have a really relaxed and composed person, Flip Jervish. You had quite a long break on the booth. Not really. It's the same as you. That's the same as you guys, yeah. Uh, no, but it was time for having a lunch and I went to mingle a little in the athletes area mingle a little mingle uh, a little in the athletes area with all the boys did you play with the <laughs> no with some friends in the no, ming, you know what the, the meaning of mingle is mingle yeah yeah you just uh, had a quick chat with a, a, a couple of uh, yeah. professional surfers uh, that tend to be around he did a good job on that flip and uh, did you brought some news uh, what did you saw? Tell me what you saw, what you talked. Not really, I, I spent... Uh, did you saw something irregular? I spent most of the time uh, with Joaquin Chaves, who eventually kicked me off because he, he wanted to start to get focused for his hit. And What's I his mood? What's his mood? He's focused, he's super focused because he, he knows how important this this contest is for him. And actually, he was, he was getting uh, pretty... Pretty sucked on, on the conditions he was telling me. Like it, it looks a little better. Obviously, it's hard. But he, in the water right now, Joaquin Chavez is going to be up soon. Round of 32, eight seven. Ina Maria Conradi, Carolina Mench, Bellet Bedrich, Lilo Rumiel. So we've got eight on our hands. Uh, really stacked eight different uh, places. Same goal. Get through win the contest get through and win the contest and, and get enough points to qualify for the challenger series that's the main goal that yeah. is the main goal she, that's why they're all who you got on this one who you got just give me two names to make through i'm gonna be uh, the same as always and wow look at this one oh, that, that left looks good and ah a little bit of a close out uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Carolina Mench because she's Portuguese and I want the, all the Portuguese surfers to get through as we see a huge drop. Look at this wall. Nice wow. first snap by Carolina. That's going to be a really good score. She's got to be happy with that one. That turn was massive. So coming off the bottom, off the top with speed, pizzazz, catching a big one. That, that turn was massive flip. 
It sure was, and that's, it's always a good way to look at this drop. A little wow. bit of air time in there, nice bottom Bam. turn. Puts the board up there, a lot of spray out of, coming out of that turn. Saw the spray. Yeah, that was really good. Look at this, look at the amount of water coming out. Wow. That was <laughs> straight into the suffering red's face, right at the right at her face. And I think it's going to be a, a pretty good score. Carolina will be happy with that one. Uh, as we see, it's not sunny anymore, Shiku. It's still not raining yet, but you can definitely see the the amount. It's of, coming. Uh, it's coming. You can see it's a, lip, a little bit more windy because of that, because the storm is approaching. And when those rains approach, it gets always always gets a little as you can see look at that it's already raining really hard in the south of portugal that's probably alentejo and cisimbra all those places are running it's raining really hard and eventually we'll be coming here as we see ina maria conradi on Bang. a nice finishing turn is that a make, make? She's I think it is. Yeah, <laughs> I think it is. You can't spoke anymore. I, I just said it. You, we said it at the same time. Rumiel <laughs> uh, up and riding on an in and out as well. So, first wave of Carolina, she five points. That's exactly how you want to start any hit. I'd like to start with a ten flip. <laughs> yeah, obviously, but uh, five points on conditions like this, with challenging conditions like this, it's not easy. Uh, so five points might be a backup, might be a, one of those scores that you need to get through those heats. As we see the replay of Ina Maria Conradi, a little setup turn, and then hits it, fluttery entry. Yeah, that's a make, Chico. Yeah, I, I think it's a make as well. She stood there for like one, two, and then boom, boom. fall. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i think it's a make uh, and it's going to be the best score of the heat what do you reckon mm, let me know i don't think i'm going to so. put you on the spotlight i think it is uh, i, don't I think, think so. it is you said no i say yes i think it is 26 minutes to go carolina Minch, five point right to start starting off well Anna ina maria conradi from friends uh doing a big turn there and uh, if that is a make I think it's going to be a big score. Uh, look at the conditions, Flip. I know we've said this <laughs> all week. I think mean, we said that under times. Like, look at the conditions. They they look looks rough now. Yeah, looks because really oh, Carolina wow. on a different spot. Uh, she should have gone for the double up and maybe try and finish that one off. She, she actually got that right really close to the rocks, she, which is something we haven't been seeing. Up and riding, nice. Such a nice car, unfortunately for her. Wasn't able to get on the second section. As we go to the interview with the winner of the last hit, Leticia Canales, it's with Claudia Pinto at the beach. That's right, we're here with Leticia. The conditions changed while we were in the water. We're seeing this big storm coming. How is it? It was really tricky. Like, we were trying to to watch the heat before and the conditions were totally different and I was like I need to be busy I try to catch as soon as possible one wave and yeah it's what I did I, I chose uh, a bigger wave and then I try to have a backup but it's it's really hard out there and how does that feel that still with these hard conditions even though you had to face off this storm still going to the next round it's amazing yeah, I'm, I'm really happy. Uh, I try to, I say to myself, just enjoy, you know, try to, to enjoy your heat, try to focus on, on, the, on the thing that you need to do. And I was with this mindset that uh, helped me to, to get through the next round and this is gonna be my mindset. Congratulations. Thank you. Escaricasco. Escaricasco. Muchas gracias, Leticia. Really good eat. Um, making everyone proud at home making the right decisions and making it happen so Leticia there with the eat win an important one on a really hard eat on paper Anat Lelio and Ariano Shoa big names going down so a bit of a shocker for the for them and uh, 24 minutes to go as we see some more lines approaching the lineup I think we, we haven't seen 
a moment without lines in this, the ocean. This is actually Shikwitz. This is actually a very important hit for Ina Maria Conradi because she's, she's sitting in the eighth position. So she's right there in the bubble. And Maud Lecar is out. Ariano Show is out. We still have Mafalda Lopes. Uh, Carolina Mendes is in 13th place. So also has a little bit of a shot, a long shot, but it's still a shot. We're going to have Tessa Tyson. She's in third. She's going to be on the next heat. Um, yeah, it's very interesting to see some results right here because actually Mod Lecar lost, which is not so good for the qualification scenario. Uh, Ariano Show is As also we see live out. now. Big snap from Ina and uh, going around that section. And we're going to talk about the forecast right now. I think uh, we, we, we need to double check our predictions and see what's going to happen throughout the day and tomorrow, which is finals day. So let's give it a look, Flip. Yeah, for today, you can see uh, it, it says it's, gonna, it's still a building swell. I don't think um, I don't think it is because uh, you get we can so obviously still big, but the, the main thing here for the afternoon is the, the wind is going to pick up a little on the on the afternoon. We have been seeing uh, some calm wind side on shore coming from the southwest, which is probably the worst direction for Portugal, but still is not super strong, rippable, surfable, and we have seen. We have seen some really good turns, so that's pretty much it for today. Um, it's going to be a, a, not a long afternoon. We're going to go straight into the men's round of 16 after this, but we still have a couple of hits to finish on the girls. This hit, hit seven, and also hit eight before going back to the boys. Look at the little, the little wedge. That looked fun. Uh, no face on that one, though, but mm -hmm. our competitors sticking really tight together. 267 for the last of Ina Maria. As you said, right on the bubble for qualification of the challengers. So nervous and important moments for all of these surfers being the moment that yeah, decides I'm, I'm everything. The, I'm checking the rankings. Nadia Rostap is out and she's in fifth place. Camila Camp uh, also out. She's in. She got through her hit. Yeah. Yeah, Camila Camp got through her hit in first, so very important for her. She's super focused to try and get that second, that, that place. And we also have Janir Echipari. She's in second but she's not here on the list. So that means she already lost. Oh no, we have, oh no, we have Annette Janir. Janir is not on this contest. She probably lost on the first round. Um, so it's, we are gonna have a lot on our plate for the next. I don't neck. know if Janir actually came. Came, yeah, that's, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the, the first round hits and she's not here, yeah. She didn't come today, man. She didn't come, and also It'd Nadia. It would be really Rostap. weird to see Janir lo lose first round. Yeah, and she's also so Nadia, good. also Nadia Rostap, she's in fifth, she's not here as well. So a little bit of an opportunity for girls like Hina Maria Conradi, Mafala Lopes is up there, even Carolina Mendes and Kika Vazelko might be up there. Camila Camp, I think she's the one. She's probably really looking for it. And imagine, Camila, she has been living in Portugal since we started surfing, and she's been doing a really good job the last couple of years. She almost qualified for the for the Olympics, and now she she's... qualified for the, the Olympics. In she qualified for the Olympics. I'm sorry, uh, Camila, if you're listening listening to me, I'm sorry about that. That that was a really nice turn. 19 minutes to go now. We still have Carolina Mensch in first. Second, Ina Maria Conradi. Third, Lilo Rumiel. And fourth, Bel Betteridge. What a nice name. It's official, yes. You're right, Chic. She's qualified for the Olympics. So imagine in the same year qualified for the, Oli for the Olympics. <laughs> I love the, the initial phrase. It's official. It's official, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's official for like a month. Not thinking, yeah, not not, not thinking anything out of your No, uh, I saw her qualifying in Puerto Rico. I was watching the event. All right. And I saw her qualify. That's Imagine why. in the same year qualify for the Olympics 
and the, C the Challenger Series. That, that would be a dream year, Chico. And then for the city. And then for the city, because you can do everything in one year, <laughs> pretty yeah. much. That's the dream year, that's what they are fighting for, and uh, that's a good year on the office, right? Oh yeah, definitely. She still has a couple hits to make, still pretty important hits, a lot of points on the line, a lot of a lot of possibilities of a lot of people might might still qualify so we're going to keep you updated as soon as possible on the qualifying the qualifi qualifying scenarios for the challenger series as we see suffering red looking at this left right she decides to go right look at this double up she oh. oh just a bit too late into that one uh nice pedal though she paddled really hard to catch this wave. Um, last year, Ina, year on this event, served really well with some big, big turns. I remember she put up some really great scores. As we see Blue here paddling for this one. Carolina winding off the bottom. Quick snap there. And the wave just kind of like disappears. disappears. Yeah. But she's, she's sticked with her, but as Ina finds a really nice one. Ooh, wow. That was a big turn. That was really, really good by Ina Maria Conradi. She did really well. Not an easy turn. She didn't she looked like she didn't have enough speed, but she adjusted adjusted really, really well and really fast on that finishing turn, she um, um, Wow, she got smashed by the backwash there. <laughs> But yeah, this turn, as you said, not much spice, and uh, she did a little adjustment at the end of the turn that made that turn be be possible. She turned the board all the way around to the beach here. Oof. Wow. She pressed a little bit on yeah. that back foot just to make sure the board wouldn't go nose first on the water. So a little bit of an adjustment and a very good one. That's gotta be the best score of this hit so far. 6.33 Shikusha, that's, that puts her right up there in the first place. Yeah, and on the double digits, so uh, that's so, it. According to <laughs> Zef Gere, she will make it through. According to our fellow commentator, uh, anyone that gets double digits, this event is getting through. So, unless you're on the man on man. It, so, until now, he has been right. So, uh, nothing to say against him. Um, I'm really curious to see if that theory is still going to happen on the next round of man, round 16. Wow. There are so many hits, That's so true. many stacked hits. That's true. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure every single server will have two-digit two digit final score. And obviously, not not every hit, obviously, but I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot more tighter because it's the creme de la creme. The best surfers of the event are still de la creme. the best surfers of the one. event are still on. And as soon as the highest seats put themselves on the water, you can see the difference of the surfing and the high scores will start to come in. We had a day off yesterday. What did you do? Absolute. I want I want to know what. Uh, off day for Flip Jervis means? Uh, usually means uh, surfing or playing football or something like that, but it was just an, a huge storm. Uh, we had we had a big dinner um, Thursday night, Tuesday night, and then I ended up staying at home in Cascais, and I spent the day at home. Uh, went to have, have lunch with my parents. Played and FIFA? Played a bit, little bit of FIFA, <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> what a dreamy day. Dreamy day in between the storms. And yeah, back here. Uh, woke up 5.30 in the morning. There you are. Back to work. And... Uh, as we keep an eye on the action, uh, 15 minutes to go, Ina Maria in the lead, doing turns like this. And we're going to be right back for a short, short commercial break uh, for more of the Caparica Surf Fest 2024. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio. 
está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. Welcome back to Caparica Surf Fest. We are on round of 32, it's seven of women, 13 minutes to go, and uh, lovely day on our hands. A bit of a storm now, but everyone is reaping, everyone is happy, and the girls, like Carolina Mendes, are motivated to keep doing turns like this. Flip. She was happy with that one, a little bit of a climb there. Um, I think she played it really, really smart on that finishing turn. She realized she didn't have enough momentum to attack the leap on the last one. And she cut it up a little short, as we see here. The, the first setup turn, she's looking down the line, she's trying to get some momentum. And she knew that she, if she hit the leap on that one, uh, she probably would have fell because she didn't have enough speed, so she decided to adjust her surfing and just instead of hitting the leap, just carving before the leap. So a little little experience by Carolina Minch. She's going to improve on a 1.93, that's for sure. She needs a 5.44 to go to second and still pull the place of Hina Maria. Um, I don't think that's going to be enough, but that solidif it's going to solidify her. her oh, look at this. That no way. way. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> that was huge, huh? That, that could have been one of the highest scores of the day. So big, big wipeout by the surfer in green, Lilou Romiel. As we if see. she landed that, that was an uh, easy highest, eight, yeah. nine. Highest score of the, the size so of that section was like six foot easy. So, easy. so uh, really, really committed surfing by Lilo Rumiel uh, on that one. Great, great surfing by Ina Maria. She got a 6.33 flip. 6.33 on that on that finishing turn on the right hand. And for Carolina Mendes, 3.93. So solidifies a, a situation. Now the surfer in, re, in green needs a 7.43, which is a lot harder, especially in these conditions. And I think Hina Maria and Carolina Mendes looking really good as we see suffering white bell batteridge from the Great Britain. Looking at that one, you can see a little bit, a little bit more texture on the water, she a little bit more windy. Uh, if you look at the ocean right now, it feels like it's maybe four foot, six foot. <laughs> and out of nowhere, there's going to be huge bombs out the back. So. The girls trying to find their positioning and trying to find the spot on the um, on the lineup is not easy. Yeah, I, I feel like now it's a bit easier than it was on low tide, though. Uh, I think we had a moment during the day where we felt like surfers were having a lot of trouble to find. Yeah, the, f the I think when when it was like full low tide, the, it was kind of weird. Not not on the outside, not on the inside. Uh, they were surfing half like two foot waves uh, when was breaking eight foot waves on the outside so it was, it was kind of weird but you look at this and you can see with the tide getting higher there's a little bit more opportunity the waves are a bit bigger they don't close they don't close out as much but yeah still it's do, do you think we're going to see someone going out the back on the rounds of men with a full tide i don't think so especially with the high tide we, you're going to have like four to six foot on the inside so it's yeah. worthless it's, it, 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 you don't need to go on the outside. I think uh, Paul asked me that uh, a few hits, a few hits before. And in my opinion, if the swell was smaller, like a lot smaller, with the low tide, people would be surfing on the outside. That's for sure. This inside wouldn't even be breaking. But like this, the inside is an optional. Uh, it's an option, and people have been have been getting a lot of really good scores on the insides. So might as well just stick to the plan and keep on going. As we have 9 minutes and 20 seconds, Flip here with me, having a good time, enjoying the best European surfing, woman European surfing, so what a great day 
for uh, European surfing and to be around this area at this moment. Uh, getting the chance to see them rip some really good waves as we see someone paddling there on the corner of our screen. Getting another huge wave. Yeah, unfortunately Lilo. this one this one that didn't allow her to uh, even attack the leap. So, uh, unfortunately for Lilu, she's catching kind of okay waves. That one, the bigger one was a good one. She, she could have made a huge score on that one. Unfortunately for her, the wave closed out and she didn't land that, sec that turn. But right now, look at this left cheek. There's a few really fun insiders, obviously. We're looking from the beach uh, and when you're out there in the open, it's always a lot harder to, to make sure you're catching the good waves. Yeah, there's a few fun ones. When Once you catch the, the good one, it's actually really powerful and there's a lot of uh, face to work with. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's just a question of being on the right place at the right time. I feel like they, they're, they're there. They're waiting for the, the bomb to come or the, the, the excellent score to come. But yeah. It's uh, never sometimes easy, you, yeah. sometimes you're like too far out, too far in. It's just like you're playing around and you cannot really find yourself out there. So seven minutes to go. This seat again, a bit quiet. Flip. Yeah, we see especially especially for both of uh, the third and fourth position, uh, Bell Bell Betteridge with just that one wave of 0 0.5 and. And Lilu Romiel also with a couple of ones. Uh, they've been struggling to find the connection with the ocean right now as we see Carolina Menz on a nice looking right hander. Yeah, that, that looked like a good one, but she lost a lot of speed yeah. uh, during the bottom turn. It would have been a suicide going against that. <laughs> yeah, without speed. Exactly. Yes. As we Ooh. see Ina Maria on a good looking wave. That, that look, that's looking good. Nice. Wrap there. Ops out. So six minutes and 50 seconds to go. I don't think these both scores will go into their top two. That's for sure. That's for sure. So uh, we see green again. Oh, Again, a little bit late. I think the thing about Lilu, she's been catching some really good waves. But for some reason, she's been coming down to the bottom way too much and hitting those those leaps a little bit too late and with with not a lot of speed and if she had landed two of those she had like she, she was probably getting total. through yeah she was probably getting through on that one if she if she landed both of those turns uh, she might as well be in the second position and fortunately for her she wasn't able to land any of them all so just one more throw away for her. Uh, yeah, she, she could have been maybe 2-6 and she's sitting on two ones. So that's a bit different there. Five minutes and 50 seconds now. Let's see what happens next. A long day already for us. Uh, it's 2.45 p.m. in the afternoon here in Portugal. And uh, the storm was supposed to kick in around the around four five in the afternoon. The swell is picking up throughout the whole night, and then uh, I think during the night is the peak of the swell around midnight or something. And then tomorrow morning uh, we're gonna have some fun conditions again for finals day. So we're gonna go for a quick recap of this one and. Uh, Flip. Yes, uh, Carolina started off really well with this huge turn out the back. Imagine if she, get, she gets a second turn on that wave, it would have been a huge score, but still five points. And Dina Maria choosing to surf to the right. Uh, we have been surfing, seeing a lot of surfers going to the left, and this is a 4.1, nice and strong finishing turn. And then we're gonna have this 6.33 on this. Yeah, different strategy by, by Ina Maria. Uh, she has been looking for the right-handers and he has worked off and paid off for her so far. So, um, very good hit by Ina Maria. She's sitting in the first position with four minutes and a half remaining to finish it off. So, she's looking pretty safe. Yeah, I feel like Ina is controlling this hit. Um, double dig digits, so I think she's getting through. Um, Four minutes to go, and uh, I'd like to see a flurry of action flip. 
Uh, I'm, I want to see uh, another opportunity for all of them. Lilo, hopefully can, she can uh, get one of those done. Yeah, she at least complete one. She just needs to complete one of those turns to get herself in the mix again. Uh, obviously, with three minutes and 50 seconds remaining, it feels like it's going to be a little short on time. But, but still, there, there's opportunity and still there's, there's plenty of time for her to turn this hit around. So if you look at it, it, it says on the chart that she needs a 7.43 to get to, first, to second. But in reality, she, she just needs a couple of fours. So, uh, as we see, Belle Betteridge in the same situation as Lilu Romiel. Uh, she's sitting in the fourth position with a 0 0.5 only. She's struggling a little bit to find that connection with the ocean. It's not easy. It's not easy to read. It's not easy to choose the right ones. And it feels like Belle Betteridge has been kind of off on this hit. A little bit of a shocker. Yeah, she hasn't found anything out there, so 30-minute uh, eat, two left to go, and uh, a 0 0.5 total. So I wonder if uh, she's out the back. She is. No, out the back. <laughs> out the back. Uh, right, right on the outside? No, I don't we think haven't so. seen her on seen the inside. Uh, we did. She she actually battled for a couple of waves. Unfortunately, she didn't get in any of those. But Lilo needing the 743 one of those was probably a eight. Oh, probably that yeah. big one the was big one. the big the one big was one at least could have, eight five could have gone really really high as you see Ina Maria Conradi on the right hander look at this meaty section wow. nice scarf she, she, could have, she could have gone barreled and somehow she managed to hit one more time unfortunately she goes down but yeah she could have she could have, she could have got a barrel there. She could carve to barrel, air to flutter. Now for me it was like just barrel straight away, coming out, carve, finishing turn. Wow. Nine, <laughs> and I'm ripping. <laughs> Twelve. As you see, blue there having a look. Oh, that looks like wow, a good one. Someone's gonna go. Oh, it's it's kept that one, Lilo for a bit uh, this was Lilo's wave nice off the bottom and decides to kick out so look here yes. she just needed to stall there oh it could have gone head deep that was a really nice carve I don't know how don't she know. managed uh, right there oh, that, uh, that is so much white water moving that would be really difficult to attack that one as you see Bella Bella Batteridge doing her backup. It's not going to be nothing major, but this girl can actually shake these things off. Unfortunately, the wave disappears and she gets stuck in between sections. Yeah, she's looking right at, the, uh, right at this wave. It's, yeah, it's not easy, not easy. 45 seconds remaining, the girls trying their best to catch some nice waves. And let's see if Lilou Rumiel still has one more opportunity. Hopefully so, 30 seconds to go. Important moments, needs a 7-4-3. Uh, I don't think she will get another opportunity. She's well and truly on the inside. So 20 seconds now, I feel like we have an happy Conradi, a happy Mensch, a sad Rumiel and a sad Betteridge. So, I think this is it for this hit. Really slow end of this one, Flip. I feel like... Yeah, it's just, it, it looks like it's really hard. Look at this left. This could have been a good one. No one's in position, but that wave was really, really good. Yeah, it feels like it's, it hasn't been easy. And the girls just trying their best to find some opportunities out there. As you can see here, Ina Maria goes to first. Carolina Minch. Second place, Lilu Romiel, third place, Bell Bell Betteridge, fourth place. Nice for Ina. She maintains her dreams of qualifying for the world for the champion for the um, Challenger Series alive. She. Yep, yeah. uh, Ina Maria. Hopes are alive, and we're gonna be right back for more action with Tessa Tyson in the water. We're gonna be right back.
It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals, and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. Welcome back to the beach at Caparica. Surf Fest edges towards a thrilling conclusion. Tomorrow is finals day. We're settling the round of 16. We're going to send two surfers to that as we finish up round of 32. Having a look at La Francaise Naya Mulo taking on the Basque and Ed Gonzalez Echabari. Another French surfer in the form of Tessa Thiessen. Out of Germany, Janina Zeitler. I'm Paul Evans joining Philip Jervis. Botard. Botard, Paul. How are you feeling, mate? I'm good. Girls are raping. There's a few waves. A little bit of a stormy uh, session right now, but still rapable, still contestable. So I'm good. How about yourself? <laughs> I've had a little bite to eat. I've had a little rest. I've rest, rested the vocal cords. I, I listened to the commentary of I really enjoyed it. Thought you guys brought, brought the energy. And I'm liking the way all this swell's filling in, as is Tessa Thiessen, as she bouts one backhand. So Tessa, one of those surfers, not a long way back in terms of contention mm -hmm. on those oh-so-crucial rankings. She's right there in the mix. Bird coming into this. Yeah, she's right there. Uh, she wants to make sure she solidifies this uh, position. I don't know which, which result she has to, to throw away, but as we see here, nice bottom turn. Nice snap by Tessa. That's got to be, a, um, obviously, the best score of the heat so far because there's a, only a couple waves being ridden. It's going to be something around the fours. As you see, nice bottom turn. And nice little snap. Got a little bit stuck in there, but she did exactly what she needed. 4.33 ball. Yeah, just classic way to start a heat. It's just make sure you finish your turn first of all. Don't get too hard. Don't, don't force it. It's not really on. And maybe if you just under it a little bit, that's fine. Beginning of the heat, get a number in. At the moment, coming into this event, she's going to snap, but she's on the Challenger Series as she sits in third. Let's see where she is when it's all wrapped up in just over 24 hours' time. But at the moment, she's looking good to carry that French and European representation onto the Challenger Series. Standing in her way here. Younger French surfer Naya Miller, also Annette Gonzalez Echebarri. She's very much one of the rising stars on the Euro scene. Her and her sister have been outstanding the last couple of seasons, and so much confidence from them. They're well trained and drilled and tactically pretty good. Know where they want to be. Yanina Seitler, the world's best river surfer. She is. She comes from She's New a Munich, right? Water shredder. She, she always surfs in Munich as we see two girls up and riding at the same time, slitting the peak. 
Oof. Nice turn by Annette. Uh, couldn't see the other surfer on the right-hander. But yeah, Janina, she's, yeah, she's a river surfer, right? That, that looks pretty sick. Have yeah, you been there? She can do some hacks and fresh water. Did you surf in the in the Munich River already? Nah. Nah? Not my thing. <laughs> pretty cold. It's dangerous, man. I don't have to look <laughs> at that wall. It, it does. Look look, nice bottom turn. Wow. Huge. Huge turn by Annette Echibari. As we see the Deutschland, the German surfer. And we're going to stick her. Yeah. That was just an in and out for Janina. But yeah. Annette with a really good, really good turn, 6.5. Yeah, great wave for her, great turn, 6.5. I don't like the pressure as well, there's a lot of people watching there. Everyone's kind of watching you, it's just like, oh. It's like, Everyone just waiting for you to fall, right? Yeah, so they can have their own, their, their, their time and... The... I can't handle that, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, I'm not into it. You don't right. like to have a lot of people watching you, so... What she got here, wow, oh. big slash. So the power turns already in this going to be what's required and forcing an end section isn't really there the damage was done out the back she'll try and get herself in that rip next to the rock that tide flooding in will have other ideas that water pushing in at paradise beach caparica at the moment as we watch yanina she'll get a number soon she just had a very small throwaway prior to that but that's healthy the first turn had power so 23 Hina minutes here. on the clock. Let's go and hear from Hina Maria. Hina here, the winner of the last heat. How was it? It was so complicated, but I found my two good ways and I'm happy to, to be in the next heat. As far as your position in the water, was there any strategy? Yeah, it was so, so much current and but uh, yeah, uh, I found my two ways and that's it. Perfect. Congratulations. Thank you. Ina, Maria, Conradi. She's right there in the mix as well for the qualification scenario. So very, this, I, I think tomorrow. Right. In this one. Yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow wow. should be really, really big day. Very important. A lot of points on the line. A lot of, a lot, everything's on the line actually to qualify for the Challenger Series because they start right away, like a month from now. The first stop in the Challenger Series in Snapper Rocks or is not even a month in between. Between. Yeah, it's um, keep an eye on these ratings. We'll update them. Amanda Hopkins, she's through. Tessa Tees in the water right now. Yeah, the Aristabe is not here. Yeah. It didn't show. Yeah. Hmm. So, she was in fifth coming into this event. Camilla Kemp in sixth place. And she's still going, and this Maud Lacar's out. Seven. And Janir is not here as well, huh? and she's in second. Wowzers. Wowzers. So all sorts can happen. Yeah. We're watching Tessa Tisa. Now, great looking wave from her. What's she got? Look at this drainer for the Goofy. Oh, didn't quite get the first turn. What's this turn like? Oh, it's really good. That was nice. Great oh. surfing from Tessa. Yeah, it feels like a, the wave was rolling up and then it just had that little backwash, sidewash, kind of kind of weird kind of wave and and kind of disappeared. She prepared the, the bottom turn to attack the leap really hard on the first turn and as soon as, as, soon as she came from the bottom, um, the wave kind of disappeared. Let's check it out. Look at this. The wave looked like it had a lot of wall. As soon as she got up there, the wave just kind of disappeared. But this finishing turn, pushing that back hard, just throwing a lot of spray, very technical, very fast, very well done by Tessa. Ah, this first turn, it could have been a huge one. Unfortunately for her, kind of misread it, but she finished it off really, really well. So look at this, just preparing, pushing that back foot. Dropping her, dropping the body close to the board just to make sure she handles she handles that turn and yeah she's gonna put herself out there because look at the scores Annette six point five yeah. Janina five points Tessa Tyson she's gonna put a, put a, a backup now I think the interesting thing from from that is that one turn can do big numbers you know and we, and we saw that with Aimee Fierro, got a 7-5 for one backhand turn, Annette a 6-5 for one of her own, so you don't necessarily need a runner, just one Meaty section. It's got a clear 
thing that's come down from our judging panel is if you hit it hard in the right place, you can go way up through the scale. Priorities with Naya Milo, what she got. Good looking wave, doubling up here. Ooh. That was nice, got a little bit stuck, but she kind of recovers. And again, just not super clean with the style off the top, but a decent line into it. It promised so much off the bottom, just didn't quite deliver when she got to the lip. Yeah, exactly. That was one hell of a left-hander. That looked really, really good. And as you said, she came off the bottom really fast, but somehow the turn, she, she kind of got stuck on that first turn, and then it felt like she, she lost the momentum and the rhythm for the rest of the wave. As you see, the bottom turn started off really well, but there she's kind of stuck, and then she got kind of late for that one. A lot of white water moving there, and fortunately she goes down. But still, she's gonna put it right there with the other girls, because that first turn was actually really good. But this wave had the, had the scoring potential for a really big score, unfortunately for her, going down on that second one. Yeah, number's gonna come in for her, and she's gonna have to think on oh, it's a 3-6, and that wave had a bit more than that on it, so you need to take these opportunities when they come through. We're enjoying watching this well increase in size, basically just due to the tide, that's it. We've turned off the rip a touch, or oh, this rip's still going, the one that's raging out next to the jetty, but the rip going through the lineup has calmed down because we've got a lot more water on that bank now, and we've got plenty more swell filling in too. Under 18 minutes, Tyson with a 5-4 for that left, the two turns. First one was on well, the wave back to wave, but then she slammed it shut for a finish, and that's solid. Second highest score of the heat so far for Tessa, as we mentioned, going good in the European qualifying series. And the result here would really nail it. You basically don't need to overthink the ratings, just keep winning your heats, mm -hmm. make the final, that's it, job done. Here goes Tessa, heat leader, faded bottom turn, a slopey face, so it's a carve and a bit of a road to nowhere as the wave will sit down. Favorite stop on the Challenger Series, Philip. Uh, if you can only if you only surf one challenger series venue for the rest of your life, what would it be? Bang! Just, oh, that was wow. a really big turn by wow. a Wow! Wow! That's massive. And we talked about one turn scores. Where's this gonna go? That thing was huge. I think it's gonna improve on that, on that 6.5, oh, and I, I'm pretty sure that 6.5 wow. will become her backup. That was a really, really good turn. You can see how happy she is with that one. Another surfer from the EDP Surfer Tomorrow program as well. Zay Ferrer has masterminded that whole that whole thing. Oh, yeah, so He's true. the evil genius behind that. These are the Odriel Zola brothers and Jaime. There uh, Jaime. too. Yeah, yeah, Jaime Vazelk as well, uh, just cheering for her. So the EDP, um, the EDP project making sure the kids just look at this nice bottom turn, huge wow. snap layback. Somehow she managed to ride in front of that turn. That's got to be one of the best turns of the day so far. Big wave, a Bang. big turn. That was really, really well served by Annette. That, look at this. Just pushing that back foot. Oh. Red, oh, putting the rail on the oh. water, holding on. Is she going to go excellent, Philippe? I think so, yeah. I think so. That's got to be one of the best turns of the contest yeah, so far. Sick. Men and women. And I think it's actually going to be the highest single wave of the event so far, Paul. Still waiting on scores. You were, you, were, you wanted to know favorite stop on Challenger yeah. Series? Yep. <sighs> All right. Numbers in 883. 883 for Annette Gonzalez at Chibari. Massive. Yeah, she'll pause just to hear that and go, yep. She's into the round of 16, basically. That's done. That's wrong. There's no so way hard to she's use. finishing third with 15.33. So just avoid any drama. Stay out of trouble. Nothing weird with priority, but she's looking really good. There's still 15 minutes to go, but I reckon it's who's going with her to the next round. Yeah, I think it's going to be a bit more of a, a battle for second place because she's already at 15.33, highest score 
uh, that's gonna that's gonna be really hard to beat. So I think it's gonna be a little bit of a battle to the second place, with Tessa looking pretty comfortable. Janina also has a five point, so she needs to improve on that 0 0.73 uh, to try and steal that second place from Tessa. Still thinking about your choice of challenge um, series, Wade? Honestly, of your life every day. Honestly, I've never been to South Africa, so that's. But I would say Snapper Rocks, I think. Okay. That's because if you have. Not easy on the backhand, mate, though, is it? I, I absolutely love it, and there's okay. one thing that just puts me right up there surfing Snapper Rocks with just three other people for the rest of your life every time you have a challenger. Why not? <laughs> That's a big argument, Paul. That's a big, a big argument. Yeah, or make, when you make the later rounds, just it'd be one other person as well. <laughs> if we go one on one heats. That, yeah, okay, fair choice. And yours? If you had to oh, choose mate, one? It's obvious, isn't it? It's too. obviously going to be Rabira Dillis. Yeah. Come on, mate. Yeah, but the thing is, for me, I don't I, know why I, you hate, I, why I, you hate Eric Sarah so much. I don't. Really. I love nasty. your soda. Absolutely <laughs> love your soda, guys. Don't, don't get me wrong, but. <laughs> No, you Pe said it. You people said it have, to people have to understand. People have to understand that I've I've competed in Ribeira Dillers my whole life. Too late, bro. <laughs> Too late. Thirteen minutes and thirty seconds remaining. We're watching Annette Gonzalez at Chibari is ripping this heat apart. She got an eight eight three for this. Jervis hates Erasira. We're going to go on a quick commercial break. More live action from Caparica when we come back. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals, and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. To the action, Heat 8 wrapping up the round of 32 for the women here at the Caparica Surf Fest 2024. We had bright sunshine this morning, now it's all looking a bit more stormsy as we head into the afternoon. Three o'clock local time, a couple more hours of action to bring you. We'll have the men's round of 16 soon. Right now, we're watching a replay of Janina Zeitler, the German. Nice first carve. Uh, yeah, she ended up uh, finished that one off really well, uh, 3.17. It didn't, she didn't improve and she didn't get, get to get that second score of Tessa Tyson. She needs to get a 4.74 to make sure she gets that second place. So unfortunately for her, not as a big of a score as she wanted. As we see the surfer in blue going up and down on that one, unfortunately. But she's pretty safe, Paul. She can do whatever she wants and just maybe relax and try to get some nice waves. Yeah, exactly. Maybe take on a bit of intel to come back with for finals day, figure out the lineup even more, get a bit of a rapport going. She'll need that on finals day, but you have to think with under 11 minutes and that huge total, very surprising if she doesn't get at least in second place, but a shoe in first really with those kind of numbers. And the 883. She's done two turns in this heat. She's done two maneuvers, and she's got 15.33 points out of 20, which is about, well, let's call it 75%, which I think is an A. It's pretty I think impressive. it's an A, 75%. Yeah, it's really impressive. That. She's got an A for about, if you added up the time she was doing those maneuvers, I reckon it's about two seconds of surfing. Two seconds. It is, yeah. yeah. She only needed like four seconds to get a 15-point score. Two big turns, one to the left, one to the right. And as we see, Surfer in red looking at this nice looking left-hander, Tessa Tyson's up and riding. 
Here goes Tessa, what's she got? Not loads, just put that up a bit late. And the wave was running out of juice. Just sort of, yeah, lost belief really. Halfway through that turn, didn't really commit to it. She's in second. She's a long way back for first, but what she's really thinking about is surfers chasing her down. Like Yanina Zaitla, who needs only a 474. Naya Milo's a bit more work to do. She's way back, actually. Just a three and a two, so she's not really got her heat going at all in this one. And we've seen that a bit, so in the last heat as well. Surfers in third and fourth were on tiny numbers. Twos and ones as a total, so it's not like there's loads of opportunity for everybody. It's who can seize those crucial moments and really squeeze the juice out of a complicated lineup. Crucial ingredient of size, we've got plenty of that. It's solid out there, there's loads of energy, but it's um, it's not the cleanest. Yeah. I, I think actually there's a few opportunities, obviously. It's not, as you said, it's not the cleanest, but I think the opportunities are there. Uh, there are some big sections and, and some big uh, walls to work with and, f and closing out sections to, to, do those, to do those big, huge turns that the judges like to see. Uh, but yeah, in this heat, obviously, Annette just getting herself out there as we see a couple of girls paddling. Tessa Tessa up and riding. Yeah, here goes Tessa. And again, a quick in and out for her. And why not? She might as well just, if she sees something she likes the look of, just go it, put something on the board. Because particularly that, that low number of the 4 3 3, even the 5 4, she can get that with almost an in between wave. Here's a big one out the back. Here's. You heat leader, a Chibari, and it's not wildly dissimilar to a previous effort, although she fell a bit earlier on that one. On this one, she decided to eject as the wave closed out. Yeah, you can see this. It's a lot of work out there. Uh, there's so much power and strength on the ocean right now. It just feels like um, the girls, obviously, just kind of struggle to, to find the good ones, but even paddling out to the back, it's not easy, Paul. You can you look at it and you can see how, how much power the ocean has right now. This, we're surfing on a, on a pretty big um, swell period as we see Whoa. surfing white. Yeah, Naya, yeah, that's much now, better. A little bit better from her and now surfing green. A little bit of a mistake there. Going on an in and out, just pin dropping on the takeoff. Um, is Bell's going to happen tonight, you think? I think so. You think it is? Yeah. OK, let's just check this replay of Naya, and then I'm going to ask you for some quarterfinal matchups for the women. I want your surfing expertise. Yeah, that's a nice turn. She needs a lot more than that came from. Let's start off with DeFay against Ellie Harrison. So winner of the last event here in Portugal, taking on the wild card from Australia, Harry Harrison. I'm going to say Defay because I have her on my fantasy. Heat two, Soy Limblad, mm -hmm. the rookie, needs a result. She's ripping, taking on Brisa Hennessy, who's surfing great this year. Yeah. She's, um, she's rejuvenated. Let's check the recap. Six and a half on the clock. Jervis is going to mull over his quarterfinal picks. In the meantime, we're enjoying this last of the round of 32 for the women here in yeah, Caprica. We, we started off with this split pick with the huge turn on the backhand to Annette. She has been the standout, that's for sure. Uh, this is Tessa Tyson on the second place on a nice looking left-hander. She, fortunately, she didn't manage to get a big first turn, but she got a big second turn. That's a 5.4 for uh, Tessa. And now we're gonna probably watch the biggest, highest single score of the event so far, this huge turn. Setting up on the bottom, hits it really hard. Nice snap, using a lot of rail and a lot of power on that one. Holds all that, that turbulence, all that whitewash. And yeah, highest single score of the event so far. 8.83 coming from Annette Gonzalez at Chibari. Yeah, ripping it. All right, mate. Yeah, what do you like? Limblad, Hennessy. Who have you got? Hennessy. Yeah, I'm a Brisa. OK, let's go with the world champion. Caroline Marks taking on Tatiana West and Webb the Goofies. Mm -hmm. Backside Goofy. of Bells. I'm going to go with Carolina Marks. OK. Last up, Simmers against Brian. This is your heat leader, Echebarri. Trying to do some CT-style surfing of her own. Her score line is reflecting that she's surfing to the very highest caliber in terms of the scale. 
Don't know if she'll threaten the 6-5 there. Let's see. Yeah, what do you like, Simmers, Brian? Power versus the kind of radical X factor. I'm gonna go. It, 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 it's gonna depend if it's if it's run on Winky or in Bells. I think I think my choices will be a bit different. That was a really nice scarf, and another one. Fortunately, the wave the wave disappears. She's showing a little bit of a frustration with the body language, but she doesn't need to because she's sitting on a real. That's a really good technical carving. Um, can you repeat the last one, please? Gabriella Bryan taking on Katie Simmers. I think Gabriella Bryan's a bit of an underdog right now. She has been surfing really, really well. Unfortunately, Good she has... Good match for Bells, yeah. isn't she? Very powerful, yeah. very, very, very good surfing, but Caitlin is all, it's Caitlin, you know, it's always difficult. She has that different flair, you know, different kind of surfing, different approach, but I'm gonna go with Gabriella. Is flair good at Bells? Yeah, that's the thing. That's the, that's why uh, the, the the main difference between Winky and and Bells. If the if the contest will be running in Bells, I think you're gonna be looking for that more, yeah, uh, stylish kind of surfing. Longer surf, rail holds. Longer rails. Yeah. yeah, classical surfing and obviously those huge turns on on the outside. Um, but if you're looking for Wiki Pop, it's a little bit more high performance and blowing tails and and putting some high performance in there, but. I don't know. I, I think it's going to be running in Bells. I'm not sure. I, I read something somewhere. I'm not sure. Uh, hopefully it's in Bells because it's the most classical wave ever in Australia and the most classical event ever. Uh, and obviously we love to see some really good surfing in Bells Beach. Speaking of high performance, Annette Gonzalez Echebarri at the moment just streets ahead in this clash. Massive numbers from, uh, it's still Thiessen holding down second. She hasn't been able to add for a while though. Three unsuccessful attempts to better her number and it's left her vulnerable. Those aren't huge requirements from the likes of Zeitler. Who's only ridden four ways. I'd like to see her get a lot busier. Chasing down a number, just go. It's one turn can do it. You never know what's gonna happen on the inside. The rip gets into the way, makes it double up and all of a sudden you've got a lip. If you smash it, you're gonna be in the fours and fives easy from one turn. Yeah, or the better. Thing, the thing is, Tess has the priority right now, as you see Annette up and riding, just enjoying her situation. Nice slip line floater. Um, the thing is, Tess has the first priority, and, and Janina Zelter has the third priority. So Tess will, play, will be playing her and try to, as you can see, she's staying really, really close because we have the evidence that Janina is actually capable of doing a 4.74 because her first wave it's a five point so she's more than capable of doing that she just needs the wave unfortunately for her she doesn't have the priority and there's a very experienced surfer she's gonna be all over Janina as you can see the suffering red just going against against the wind, trying to maintain as close as possible to the suffering ring. Yeah, keep trying to get away though would be the tactic because we have seen, particularly in this rip, you see two surfers next to each other and the wave will cup up for one of them mm -hmm. and inexplicably just be deep right and be uncatchable. So it's not like a perfect lined up wave where you can kind of use your priority and manage the lineup. That, that's the thing. For me, I look at it and it's in conditions like this, it's really easy to sell a wave. Right now you can see, look, she's going to let them go. It was a good call by Tessa, but it has so many opportunities, so many closeouts, so many waves that it's actually really easy to make a mistake of um, dealing with the pressure of having your first priority and the surfer in green. Oh, that was a big one. <laughs> Janina just oh, dropping the boards. board there. Yeah, I can see boards just in the white water. So where are we? What do we got? That is Janina Zeitler on the inside, struggling now. 40 seconds less than that on the clock remaining. She just needs to go something. This might help her out. She's getting a little bit cleaned up and inside she's got away from Tessa. Tessa's out the back to the left of your shot. So maybe just try and sneak. You, you need a wave. Just go something. Where is she? She's there on the inside. She needs to turn on something. 4.74 is not a huge score, Paul. Yeah, just got to go try and go something now. Counting down. She's not going to get away, I don't think. As we'll count this one down. Maybe this is an opportunity here. She's not 
even. A little bit too deep. Oh, oh she's going. Oh. oh, it looked like that was just after. <laughs> it was a wave that came, but looked after the horn. And you have to say, hats off. Or even berets off to the bass surfer, Annette Gonzalez Echepay, because part of clinic there, really. Two turns, one. One turn waves times two, right and a left, and really just ripping this heat, putting down a bit of a performance marker in terms of surfers heading towards finals day. Showing how it can be done. That's it for the women for today. We're sending the men out next. A great looking heat. We're going to see Dylan Grone, Francisco Aldonis, Joachim Chavez, Maxime Husano recently of the CT. More action from the Caparica Surf Fest with the men right after this. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Welcome back to the beach. It's the Caparica Surf Fest and the juggernauts of QS Surfing thunders on towards the final station, the last stop on the line. Finals day here tomorrow in Portugal. Who's going to quarters two of this quartet grown? Odonias Husano Chaves. I'm Paul Evans. Joined now by Zay Ferreira, mate. How about this? I see some power, I see some spark, I see youth and experience. I'm looking for fireworks to brighten up a, a somewhat gloomy afternoon. Yeah, a bit of a grey afternoon, but we've had something going. Let's see, Maxime, beautiful first turn. Bottoms turns again, another strong turn. So a 5 8 3 for him. Off to a great start. Look at this. Power, yeah, look at that wind now. He's <laughs> to surf to surf to the right now. You have like wind pulling you back. Bam! And the judges were like, yeah, we're gonna give him a 583, nothing too big because we're in the quarterfinals, so now we know that you know stuff can go down. Because Otonia's wiggling, weaving, and diving can't get on the open face. So he'll think on, think about his options. One or two Portuguese goofies out in the water, looking to set up a massive result here. Loads of potential scenarios towards qualification for the Challenger Series. Can, can lump of water here. Joachim, he's got a bomb. Bang. Can he still qualify? Joachim. He can. He probably needs to win. Yeah. Not the wave he was looking for there. An awkward section for him. We'll take a couple on the head. Chiavsu. We had the intel. He's feeling a bit of physical pain. But he looks okay out in the water. He's, he's managing that condition. And he's managing some set on the head right now. Zay, you're a massive Harry Potter fan. Hmm. Possibly the, the, probably the biggest one on the, this commentary team. Are you ready to play Potter or not? I am. I am. I'm, I'm going to give you forward. some names. Are you tell me, are they a Harry Potter character or not? 
that sounds good. OK, David Dimbleby. Yeah, well, obviously. David Dimbleby's not. No! It's a bit, this month's a bit unfair on you. He's a TV presenter in the UK. He's quite well known. He's been a newsreader. Here it goes. Maxime on a bomb. Has to go. He had to just pull back and withdraw from that turn. He was setting up to give it the treatment. And then he had to go, yeah, just do a little mid-face check. His first wave, though, was 5.83. That's big. No, not David Dimbleby. I think I confused him with Longbottom. How about Merkin Muffley? Merkin Muffley. Mm, I don't remember that. Look at this again. Big bottom turn, but yeah, the wave just closed out on him. I'm, I'm right, no? That, that, that guy is, isn't, uh, isn't on Harry Potter. No. But again, Dylan Groen, big guy living in Portugal, surfing for Germany. Big turn. Just the one. And that glare from the sun is just hitting it off. The judges must, must be wearing their sunglasses. And Dylan now is nice duck dive. What about Kingsley Shacklebolt? Shacklebolt. Kingsley Shacklebolt. Potter or not? Where, where, where do you come with these names? It's crazy. Um, Potter or Notter? Yeah, Potter. Correct. Ding! Well done, mate. As we chicken out, Groan, he's got big turns on him, this dude. He's a powerhouse. And he's been relishing these conditions. Look at this stuff. Good control from him. He doesn't like falling off. He likes staying on his board. That generally helps you score. He's good. Meanwhile, Odonias, here he goes. Oosh, awkward. Got a lump, horrible. Didn't didn't want that. It just ruined his wave. It all looked nice when it was paddling in. Kingsley Shacklebot is of course correct. Potter character. Let's go down and hear from someone who has dropped a massive number and gone into finals today with loads of form and confidence. Annette Gonzalez Echebarri is with Claudia. That's right, we're here with Annette, the last heat of the day for the women's. And with a great score, you made it to the next round. How does that feel? Yeah, I'm so happy. It was really big. I was a bit scared, but I made it and I'm so happy. Can you tell us a little bit about that wave and what you saw in it? Yeah, I saw that it was like a good wave with a good wall. So I said, OK, I'm going to do a turn, a big turn here to make a three. And I made like a eight, I think. Yeah. As far as the conditions right now, we're seeing the tide going up a little bit. How was it inside? It was it was tricky. It was big, so much waves. You didn't know to go where. Like I was in outside and I was like, I don't know to go to the right, to the left. And it was really confused, but yeah. What was the strategy to position yourself in the right place? I don't know. It was just go and take two waves, one turn, and yeah. That's it. it worked out pretty well. Congratulations. Thank you. Great stuff. Good strategy. Solid surfing. Looking forward to seeing her back tomorrow. Meanwhile, a little look at a wave which won't produce 22 on the clock. Who's to know? off the 2023 CT at five events. And the long path back there starts off with QS and with this wave, which doesn't take him anywhere. We're playing Potter or Notter. Fanny Craddock, Potter Fanny. or Notter? Fanny Craddock. I would say yes. He is a Potter. Say, yeah, yeah, Potter, you're saying? Potter. Sorry, it's not. Uh, Fanny Craddock no. was a, a restaurant critic uh, from the 1950s in England. Here we go. Here's Joachim Chavez. He's a surf fan. He's a great surfer. He's got lots of fans of his own. And he's trying to find some of these lefts here. The cost of the Caparri cut. And just put something on the board of quality. It's grown with the 4-3-3. Who's to know with the 5-18? That's it. Wow, that was a banger from Dylan. And doesn't fall off a lot. But crucially, he did right there. Yeah, well... That was a strong turn, although I think he was like just looking at the second turn, and so he, he was a bit confused. All right, here we go. Ordonez. He's had a couple of lefts that went weird. That was a much meatier right-hander, but something went wrong. He got away from his board there. 
just fell over his heels. They can wind you those ones. You land on your back on the flats. He seems fine. Tell you what, there's some water coming through. There it's is power huh? and energy. I think um, I think the wind also pushed Ordonish off the board. Maxim had paddle there and couldn't get on the wave. There he goes. So yeah, weak first turn and then really bumpy section, but this was better. And he wanted to go like really quickly to catch that last section, but I think that was too much. Nice first turn for Joaquin. Too much water then. And yet, I can't, I can't really say if, it, if, you know, I'd like to surf now or before. Um, you can have neither if you want. Yeah. You don't have please, to surf, mate. Please, yeah. Okay. All right, we've got a paddle. Here's Maxime. What's he got? He's got some speed. He's eyeing up a section. Whoa, that was sick. Full amplitude, a full blooded turn. And he'll get a completion somehow. He'll get a third one. I didn't see that coming. I thought the wave was done. I thought his board was going to disappear underneath him, but it just goes to show the sprightly evergreen Maxime Houstonot. We've got a third turn done that will for sure will help his cause. He'll improve his backup, which is a small number right now. Let's have another look here. Compare this to his 583 in terms of points. What's yeah, he going to get? Better because look at this first one, trademark Maxime. Then a second one, he really went and, you know, uh, picked the ear of that wave and finish off well. I like that pump. Um, after that f uh, last turn, look at this, because he knows like there's going to be so much water, and now like he pumps a bit, so he's ahead of that white water. Yeah, what a way to adjust your surf into the conditions as well. You, you got to be pragmatic at some point and think the kind of ways really that are coming through and what's actually available versus in your mind's eye surfing. Going straight from the bottom turn into the lip multiple times, falling down from your maneuver with speed. It's not going to be like that. Sometimes you are going to have to pump between sections and join them up. Judges like the way he did it. 583, a point's worth of improvement for Surfer out of Reunion Island. Freshly became a dad about three months ago. He's got a little boy. And he's doing all right in this one. Got some points on the board. No one else really landed much of a blow other than... German Dylan Grun has got a 4 3 3. Here goes Shavs. And a nice flick, light on his feet. But it's a very quick wave. One turns can get big points, but you need to do a little more than that. Definitely, especially at, in this phase. Maxim is really ahead of the pack now. Uh, Dylan looks strong. Here we have Joaquin's team, Nunutel and David. Raimundo and Rodrigo uh, on, on the other corner. Oh, yeah, I think Rodrigo, yeah, both of them. I think both Joaquin and Francisco Ardenas train with, um, with Telmo and David. But Maxim is pretty much secured this year for the challengers. He's in third place of the ranking, so he's cool. But Joaquin, he's in 15th. So if he pulls like that great result we were talking about he might be able to to go but yeah long way to go ahead yeah there he is on screen asking for his situation from the beach announcers want to find out what he's surfing for basically the, the answer is not it's not a lot really don't don't want to focus on that. It's actually just a 274 he needs it that isn't at all what he's going to go for what he needs to do is find Either one big section or multiple sections linked up, like this guy has done, Maxime, on that occasion. From that rip, he found himself a right, running back towards the peak. So he's actually, I think, making his way back, wasn't he? Just from the paddle back out. And while he was there, a little wave popped up. It's like, ooh, OK. Give this a whirl. And the drone is also, you know, has been has been good. Goes shouts again. 
That thing will shut down. So who's to know at the moment he's heading towards finals day. At the moment he's also going to Australia for the Challenger Series, where, of course, he won his world and junior title quite a long time ago now. Here's Dylan Groan. What's he got? Another... Oh, just overdid it a bit there. He's, he's surfing a little angry on some sections. He's, he's trying to hit it hard. I like the intent of him, but he's going to have to try and just clean that up a bit, and he needs to pull some of those turns, because at the moment, these are opportunities. No one else who's chasing down scores is, is putting... And there's something of a missed opportunity, really, to put a bit of a gap. Yeah, that's true, and it's it's that time of the heat where you want to to build and you want to start securing your your waves and your spot. The four three three on, you throw up a five or something, and then after that you try and smash it and go sevens, eights, etc. But just get rid of that one point nine. Obviously, that's what he was trying to do. He wasn't trying to fall off. He will have plenty more time though, and it does seem like opportunities coming through. That's his fifth wave come through. Let's see where he goes in the second half now of this half hour heat. Yeah, but the, this heat is pretty open yet. So Maxime has, you know, he's securing his place, double digits rule. Um, but you know, Ordonish uh, is, is still finding himself. Joaquin Chaves, the same thing. Dylan has a four, but nothing else. So, um, you know, this is the time where you have to kill the heat or at least to position yourself for it. 14 minutes to go. It's the surfer from Reunion on and Maxine Hunstano leading this one at the moment. He's heading to challenges anyway, coming into this event. Who's going with him towards finals day at the moment? Dylan Grohn is in second spot. Find out if he can hang on to that when we come back from break. <laughs> It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals, and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. Welcome back to Caparica. It's the round of 16 for the men. It's Maxim Hussein at the moment. With the lead in this one, decent numbers from him. Dylan Grohn leads the charge to try and chase him down, and he's nudging back, actually. A little improvement from Dylan while we're on break. 3-7-7 for the big man from Deutschland. And our pair of Portugueses, Chavez or Dunyas, still chasing down. Question for Zay Ferreira. What year did Maxim Houssonau win his world junior title, mate? You can watch Dylan Grohn and have a think about that. Talk us through the replay. Yeah, first little snap. Let's see if he can Bang. finish this off. Now he does, so he he puts a 377 in the board. That's good for him. And Joaquin surfed as well. Nice, beautiful sweeping carve. And <laughs> that was weird. Um, didn't make it. I'd, I'd love to see their parents oh. in love again after a good wave. Oh. Speed from Grown. Wow. That was cool. That was cool, different. All right, Odonia's here. Look at this thing. He's got a ton of... Wow, that was a sick turn. And he's still going. No, he's not. Mm. He could have tried on that last one, because the first one was nice. <clears throat> but um, still some time for him. What year for Max, mate? I need a year. I think that was 2000... Definitely 2000 something, yeah. Um, and I would say like 2011. 
2008. Um, he, he must have been around Francisco Zardogna's age, like 18 or 19. Dylan growing now. Yeah, that's how the juniors work. Yep, yeah, it was definitely around that age. Yeah. <laughs> this this would have been beautiful. Oh, that was really good surf from Dylan. Shall I put you out of your misery or do you want another guess? Another guess. Um, so I, I said already 2010, 2009 and 2008. No, you said 11 and 8. It's 2009, mate. We're yeah, just, I yeah, knew. It's, you two, it's 2009. What a great year that was for all sorts of reasons. Really fun. Why? What I mean, happened? I'm just talking about me personally. <laughs> I just had a really good year. Oh, you did? Had a great summer. Yeah, it's just a good time. You remember that? What What did you do? I just... Things. Made, made friends. Had new experiences. Tried, like, different cuisines I'd never had before. Got into, yeah, just different drinks and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Little mix? Yeah. Um, I think I might have got some cool, good, cool jeans or something that year. So, yeah, that's yeah. memorable. Really good. Um, really good. If you had to eat the same cuisine forever, what would it be? You mean, like, an actual dish or no, just a region? A cuisine, yeah. Yeah. Just like... Yeah. Imagine British cuisine okay. forever. Yeah. Uh, Indian. Indian? Of course, mate. Right. Yeah, Indian is, is really good. Yeah, definitely. And uh, diverse. Yeah, delicious. Loads of good vegetarian options. Spicy. Love it. All right, let's see if the spice can be brought by Shakim Shavs as he tags one. And again, frustration for him. He's not had good ways. He hasn't had a runner. He's had little sections stand up and then just disappear as soon as he... It's almost like his bottom turn is telling the waves to, to go away. As soon as he commits to the bottom turn, his waves go in a hole. So he's got work to do. 5-4-3 he needs to attack the German groan in second. He's got eight and a half minutes to do that. He does have time. It's not a massive number, but his rhythm is not great. And he's ridden eight waves. That's, I think it's his uncle, isn't it? Yeah, no, actually, it's Francisco Cordonez's his dad and Joaquin Chavez's his mum. OK. I like it. Here we go. Odonis. Bang. Wow, that was sick. Really nice. Very good. Great backhand turn. Crisp and sharp. And the precision. He just waited at the bottom, didn't he? And went up nice and vert. He needs a 4 6 3 for second. Is he going to threaten Groan? 4 6 3. Yeah, I think he will threaten him. Um, that was a strong turn. Unfortunately, just the one. He tried to go for that second one, but the wave didn't allow. But look, it was a bigger wave, nice bottom turn, some water there. He's still uh, very young, Francisco. I think he's like seven or eight, 17 or 18. So you can see the difference in terms of power, uh, especially if you compare it with Dylan. Um, but it can be close. Uh, actually, his last hit, he passed. He passed a hit kind of like that with, with doing exactly what he needed, and he did just that now. 5 0 3 for Francisco. Goes to second pressure back on the German Grun in red right now, looking for 4 1 8. Seven minutes to go in this one. Chavez still in fourth, not where he wants to be. He's going to need to go deep, deep into this event to even get in the combo for the Changers. And at the moment, he's in last place in this. The good news, though, he's not that far back, relatively, considering the sort of lack of quality of the waves he's had. He still only needs a 5.83. That's very doable for him. Maxime, with priority, has just been a bit more patient now. He's just waiting this out. He's got a big lead. He's pretty solid. He's over four points between him and second place, so he's going all right. Yeah, Chavez is, is being a bit slower. He's been in form for the last two or three heats. I think two heats. Um, just not finding himself out there. He's surfing good. You can see he's on good boards. He does have that little injury, apparently, the, the back thing. 
Just wondering if now the amount of heats he's served in this, if it's if starting that, to take its toll a little bit. Yeah. Particularly yeah. by the afternoon as well. And also this weather, you know, it really runs runs you down if you spend the whole day at the beach, wind, um, rain. It's tiring. I'll tell you what, if you're going to get to any European QS menu for a hurricane and tornado, come to Costa de Cabri. Yeah. Because it, considering the amount of wind that we've had, I mean, we've got trees ripped out the ground. There's signposts lying down. It's Cars that have been, like, pulled yeah, by the water. It's, it's actually been, like, really contestable, yeah. which is yeah. kind of crazy to say that, but it's hard to appreciate when you, when you see these ways just how crazy we are in the middle of it's not even one it's two storms we've had this week one after the other massive atlantic low pressures making landfall and guess what every cloud has a silver lining and as this dark foreboding oh, big cloud moves nice. away look at that a little glimmer that's nice of steely light on Hope. a friday afternoon good friday as it's known yeah it's just um the start of Easter festivities, a public holiday in lots of places, including Portugal, crucially. Party what, night what tonight, happened, mate. What, what happened today, in, in historically? Uh, Re G Re religiously. Jesus was crucified, mate. Was crucified. Yeah, according to the popular myth. Yeah, and he... So, he was cru crucified today. Yeah. And on Sunday, he, he was born again. Or, or was it seven days? Um, well, nice first turn from Francisco. This is the, the the first wave with two turns. I think he will prove improve on that three four seven. Let's have a look at that again. Nice wave. It was a bit under the lip that first one, and this nice slash. The very young surfer in hope from Portugal. He's a smart competitor. Goes through a lot of heats. And the cameras man had an easier day today, although a lot of wind, but the jet skis, as we can see them outside on on the right corner of your screen, not anymore, but poor guys. You need some you need some experience to you know hold the whole day. You, you can see the jet ski here. Look at this. These guys been out in the rain and the wind the whole day. Real heroes. Two and a half minutes to go, Husano is still leading this one. He did work pretty early on to the tune of a 5 8 3 and he's looked great to go come back to the final day tomorrow. Exactly, Maxime, I, you know, I've put my chips on him to actually take this one home because he's, you know, very confident. He's very good in these, in these conditions. I think he really thrives in these conditions. Um, and impeccable surfing. Really like this detail, little bump there to go ahead of that white water there, and then Francisco Ordoñez. He this this is his best score. That was a five points. Those uh, one turners are still uh, valuable, and look at the wind. This is this is pushing now. Look at the Millennium. <laughs> it's. Yeah, the structure is, is uh, starting to give up. It's absolutely howling out there. Somehow, these surfers are able to find glimpses of quality and get points on the board. It's still Ordunas by virtue of that right hand and the backhand turn. He's in second, he's holding on. Dylan Grun just needs a 4-1-8. That is not a big number. That is one of his power turns. That's one successful assault on the lip line. He's got one minute to find that. 
He's got himself a little bit of distance away. Well, first prize is with Maxi Machine. He's not going to get too involved, I wouldn't have thought, with Dylan. So he's certainly not going to sit on him. So Dylan can kind of kind of has priority in a way. I certainly have the surface that he needs to chase down, oh like Ordonez, who's in fourth prio. But Dylan needs a wave, as does Shavs. He's looking for 583. That feels tougher, particularly with 30 on the clock. That's some. Um, that's a taller order. Groan needs to find something, needs to put himself in a position. Oh, Shavs is going. He needs to go for the air. All right, here goes Joachim. He's got some meat on this one. And he belts it. And he disappears. Incomplete. That won't be the number. Counting down 10. So it looks like his campaign. And he surfed through the pain barrier here. He's done really, really well. He'll be frustrated, as you can see, to go out with low numbers, stuck in the twos. But in the context of the conditions, you know what? That's certainly no disgrace. Dylan Groen will also maybe Rue. Think of that one turn on that one left to finish, where he just tried to smash it. If he nursed that a bit, exactly. it wasn't a long way away. He ended up getting a three anyway. He ended up losing, needing a four. It's easy with hindsight to break it down, but we love surface taking risks. And when you do that, well, sometimes it doesn't come off. But well done to this guy, Maxime Houssano, who is through to quarter finals. He'll be back tomorrow for finals day at the Caparica Surf Fest. He's already positioned very well in the QS in Europe. He's going to the challenges anyway before this event. His ranking He's good, but he wants to get a win here and take a little extra confidence in that. He also loves making heats as well. He's a contest machine. There's Maxi. So let's see how he goes tomorrow. Well done to Francisco Ordonez, the young Portuguese surfer who got out of a tough, tough heat against stiff opposition. We're going to get a quick commercial break. When we come back, strong delay, Etienne Lidi. More live action from the Caparica Surf Fest when we return. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Costa da Caparica. My name is Flip Jervis. I'm joining Josef Ferrer in the booth. Uh, we have some really stacked hits for this round of 16. Uh, we started off with Maximo Sino and Francisco Cordonias going through that first hit. And now we have Aaron Strong from the Great Britain, Leo Politien, Gatien de la Haye, and Thomas Lidi. Three French, one English surfer. It's going to be a really good battle. Jose, how the conditions are looking? So it looks, it looks like a little bit stormy, but is there some opportunities out there or what? Yeah, for sure. We have that second wave for Iron Strong. We had a few minor waves during the break. Nothing, nothing special, not even, uh, not even one point, so three ins and outs for surfers. But there's, there's opportunity, yeah. Um, Maxim really knew how to capitalize we'll we'll get back to him in a bit but um experience talking through yeah that. for sure and he's good in these conditions right like yeah because they, they have 
they serve I, 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 a lot of this like in Tiachi you Cap know Breton, when, Cap when Cap Breton is too stormy it's, it's like this, it's always the much. little corner as we see the suffering green Tomalidi on a nice looking left hander oh, that's how I broke my foot Really? Yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, the the the, the like, wind. Uh, no, and the and the, um, the foam just pressed against the the bottom of the of the, of the board, and I got my my foot on top of it and just cracked. Do you remember oh, that? It was like yeah, I remember. Yeah, 15 or 17 when, years yeah, ago. Yeah, you went to the Maldives and you were still. Yeah, I still we I was still wearing the. Um, yeah, the 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 thing. Yeah. Uh, I, I was, just yeah, <laughs> uh, we don't remember the name, but. Um, yeah, I it's could. the thing, the white thing you put when you break something. Look, Francisco Ordonez, David has to be really happy with that result. Francisco Ordonez is one of the best up and comer surfers in Portugal. He's let's, what? Let's try, and, let's try and listen to it. Yeah, they were debating that, that it's absolutely impossible to listen to something out there so he, he didn't even know he got through unless until he got he got on the on the beach so uh, that just shows how <laughs> look at the conditions it, it just changed so much for it's the beginning now like the whole day it has been like pretty pretty mellow pretty beautiful <laughs> in the tv if you go outside it's it's not that that uh, not that bad yeah not that bad but now it looks ugly. Yeah, it does. As we see, Suffering Blue looking at this right-hander. Very good win air for the rights right now. Nice little first turn. Is he going to get in time? He is. But no way. Uh, that, was that would be absolutely yeah. impressive if he managed to get He didn't have the momentum. He didn't have the speed. Uh, so, Gatia. That, that, that could have been a good score, unfortunately for him, falling down on that last turn. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, Ordonez must be really happy. He's one of the new up-and-comer kids in Portugal, and uh, he, he actually he was injured for three months. Three months. Yeah, I'll, I'll be back to that. As we see, a little late in that one, say, and what happened on the finishing turn? Yeah, just too much water. Look at this. Not enough momentum. Yeah, exactly. He he rounded Look, it even a bit late. Yeah, he was trying to get that speed to make sure he had. And he did well. Yeah, because he could <laughs> still hold on. He could still hold on for a bit, but then it was just like eaten alive. Uh, we're gonna go all the way to Maximo Seno with Claudia Pinto. He's on the. Is at the beach. Um, how was this hit, Claudia? Is he happy? That's right. Maxime is in a great moment of not only his personal life, but also his career going into the quarterfinals. How is it? Yeah, definitely stuck. Uh, today was a tricky day. It was very cold in the morning and uh, I came early to free surf because I didn't surf the last two days. I raced with my kid and enjoy with my wife, uh, Portugal. And so I wanted to surf early, but I got so exhausted just paddling around, <laughs> trying to get waves. And it's been a long day, but I'm stuck to be in the final day again. We were just talking about how the water is cold and always contracted and kind of like tense. How do you manage that? How do you try to keep your body loose <laughs> while you try to make waves and make it to the next round? Yeah, well, I, I stretch at home, uh, I meditate a little bit, and then uh, in the water I try to just stay calm. And there's so many waves, so many. There's a lot of opportunity and not many at the same time and it's a lot of information coming in because there's so many waves left, right and coming everywhere. So you try to clear up and, and I was just trying to relax and, and see uh, an opportunity and just try to take it. But um, I, I've been feeling really good and I just feel like I haven't got a really proper wave to really unleash but I got the one turn in and there like every hit but it was enough to make it all the time so it's definitely hard and hopefully it cleans up for tomorrow. <laughs> is being active part of the strategy to make it to the next round? Yeah, uh, just at the start of the hit, try to make sure you get some scores, start to build on something and then in that hit, my first two wave was enough to make it and I, I, after that I stay with the priority, try to manage the hit, but I, I didn't even had to, so it just depends on how the other guys as, as well goes, but the, the hit this morning, I had nothing for 20 minutes, so <laughs> I can't say like there's one strategy, it's just all over the place and you just try to get some waves and try to find opportunity to unleash turns. <laughs>
Congratulations. Good luck. Yeah, very interesting. We've been talking about uh, throughout the whole morning. There's a lot of opportunity, but at the same time, there's, it feels like there's not enough good waves. So you, you see a lot of waves and, and you're trying to make the right calls and you try to make the right decisions because there's a lot of waves, a lot of water moving, but not all of them are good. And that's a good, interesting uh, perspective out of, uh, as we see here, how was this wave by Leopoldi Tianze? Yeah, um, not great. Just two turns, smaller wave. Apparently that's a three points. But yeah, wise words from Maxime. It's 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 great when someone can simplify what everyone what everyone's been feeling and watching in like two sentences. Even there, too he much has a information. Bit more experience. Even talking and exactly, simplifying exactly. the thing. Just but that, that's that's what experience does. Exactly. Too. It simplifies uh, complex information. Um, and so too much information uh, in, in the, in the, the water, ocean, yeah. that's something that you really have to talk about. Then, well, let's just... Whoa! That was an amazing turn by Harden. Strong, keeping his strong game. Look at this, just a weird wall in front of him, just puts the board right up there, big backwash on it, and just airdrops all the way down. Love That's got to be one of the best scores of the heat, if not the best score of the heat so far and one of the best of the day, because that was a really critical section. Yeah. Aaron just feels like he's in a, he's in a certain momentum, right? It, it feels like we're going to be back on that as we see Gatien a little 2 for one turn. I think Aaron, he has been under the radar in Portugal for quite some time and, and it feels like out of nowhere. He popped with amazing surfing and very consistent. And as we see here, Toma Lidi on a nice looking left, combination of some nice turns as well. Yeah, I know. I, I, Six I know. points for Aaron Strong there, sorry about that. That's a really good score. I think he's going to be very happy and comfortable with that one. Yeah, Aaron has been training a lot. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. You really under the radar, in, yeah. A bit under the radar, but uh, releasing his films. Spend, spending a lot of time in Mexico, surfing big waves, heavy waves, um, working a lot on with, the gym. Working with GB uh, international team as well, Great Britain international team. He has been doing a lot of work and, and he actually went to Puerto Rico with them, tried to qualify for the for the, the Olympics. So uh, yeah, I know he's, that... He's been on, on the roll. On the roll, right? yeah. He has, been, he has been working in exactly. silence for a couple years and it feels like finally the results are, are starting to... Uh, to to come out and he feels like he did really well in the nationals last week in Figueira de Foz. He's doing really well here, just showing a lot of consistency and a, a lot of strength and, and especially in these conditions it's it's very easy to fall very easy and he, he has been showing that strength on his legs and that commitment. And he's he's a warrior as well when, mm -hmm. he, uh, obviously. when he goes in the water like he's really competitive and then when he gets out of the water he's it's like the most Chill, super yeah. chill and cool but it's like cool to see that he can almost separate like a he different can, yeah. personality he can separate uh, being in competition and being out of competition he's, yeah. he's told, it's almost, almost like a different provocative person. when yeah, he's yeah. competing like he's not afraid to no, he's not afraid to, to, like, to push you yeah, yeah. to and then yeah, like he's, he's the coolest cat guy mouse. out of the water yeah so nice to see Aaron doing well it's you know, it's it's good when you when you see uh, your work paying yeah, off. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And he, you know, he, we all know he has been struggling with a bit of a disease, and he has been working with it for a while. And, and that's true. Try, trying to he open has a up. podcast now. He has a podcast talking about his uh, his condition, and he has been an ambassador for for his disease. I'm not I'm not gonna get into that too much because I'm not sure what kind of condition it is. Uh, as we see, Leopoldian on nice looking left, this backhand wax unfortunately the wave dies off on him and he has been showing some of the best surfing of this contest but yeah coming back to Aaron uh, yeah he has a, a podcast he's been trying to spread the word on on his condition and and try to make sure people understand that uh, like what any other is. condition what it is uh, how do you deal with it is it possible to to keep on being a professional athlete even having a I think it's something on his lungs I'm, I, I'm not sure but 
that just shows him how much he's willing to be there and just to surf as we see the powerhouse from france pushing really hard on that turn unfortunately the wave didn't provide him that much but yeah aaron has been one of the big ambassadors of the portuguese the eerie side of surfing he has been an ambassador for his condition he has been an ambassador for people that want to work hard is definitely the 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 person to follow and and see what he's doing because he's paying off definitely true that he's in first place in this heat and we still have a slow heat that was the only uh good wave so far gatia leopold and tomalide the three frenchmen are still to find their feet in this heat um, although they've been surfing very well especially Gatia and Leopold. Um, do you know, can, can you tell me more about Leopold? It's, it's someone I, I, I don't yet know very well, but I love his surfing. Like, is he not uh, yeah, a junior for me, anymore? Yeah, for me, for me, he's, it's a bit of a novelty as well. Uh, actually, uh, I was, I'm, I've been wondering since day one, uh, didn't he even, uh, I don't is remember there, him is in, there, in the in the junior series. Is, yeah, isn't there another Polit yet? No, there Paul César. Paul César Distingui. Yeah, it, the, the same one. It's true. Um, Leo Politian. Yeah, it just from even for me, he's a little bit of a new up and comer. Uh, he's he's um, 18th in the rankings. But. Um, yeah, great surfing from him. He had an amazing last heat. Here is Thomas Ledes coach. He's playing the ball. Is that is that an anti-stress ball? You think? Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> Even th th that's actually one of those massage balls, massage balls. But obviously, he's, he might be now is an anti-stress yeah. ball. Anti-stress ball. Yeah, it's a multi-purpose ball. No, Palitian is. He's 25. 25. Yeah. So it's so not not a new anymore. new generation. But he, has, he has been interesting. He, he has been around for a while. He went through the cracks with me. I haven't um, noticed him that much. Um, but probably my my uh, lack of attention. Here he goes to the left. Actually, to the left is Tom Lede. His first pro junior was in 2013. So we, I, I was already out of the mix, yeah, pretty much. So uh, as a junior tour, he did some 33rds, La Canu, Soplana, uh, Portugal, Soplana again, Airwalk Pro, so nothing major. Uh, he has a fourth place in Spingo, in the Pro Junior in, in Spingo, in, okay. in 2016. Okay. Um, he lost to Lander Davila. He has his fifth. He had, in the same year, he had the fifth place at Coruña. So QS nice, or he, Pro Junior? Pro, oh, this is all Pro Junior. Oh, he actually qualified for the World Juniors. Yeah, he got 13th in the World Junior in 2017. Wow. Nice. Okay, so we're nice. trying to to understand and learn keep ourselves up to date. Yes, yeah. also part part of this. Here we go. Iron Strong again. Ooh. Oh. Unfortunately, going down on that one. He won. He won Caraibos Lacano Pro this year. Yeah, he got a fifth place. If he's 25, he can't be on the Pro Junior. He, he got fifth in, in not, not the Pro Junior, I'm talking about the QS. The QS. Yeah, he has a fifth, wow. a fifth in Rip Girl Search Tagazut Bay. He has, oh, but this is, this is part of, ah. Uh, Last year he got oh no that that's two years ago he got last year on this on this contest he got fifth. We're gonna go on commercial. We'll be back with some more information about Leo Politian and, and uh, all the all the other surfers as well as you see Jason Aparisi with a different kind of warm up. We're gonna go on commercial. We'll be right back. Stay with us.
It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals, and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. Welcome back to the stormy Costa da Caparica, challenging conditions, but the contest goes on and we we, we have a lot of good uh, good hits on on stack. This is hit two of round, round of 16, very important hit for a few people in here. As we see Aaron uh, drop the score while we on our break, we're gonna be the, we're gonna check the replay on that. So he improves any situation of 4.5. So Aaron, Zed, look at this, 4.5. First nice carve and then I'm sure he played it well there. He did. He liked it. He's now into the double digits world. <laughs> so according to you that means he's gonna get through. <laughs> he has a 90 90 or 95 percent of getting through. As we see the surfer in white, Leo Politian, nice snap. His feet came out of the deck pad on that first stand and showing a little bit of a frustration there. So it feels like he's he's not finding the rhythm and the connection yet yet with the ocean since the beginning of this this contest. So he's gonna try and regroup and, and readjust and, and maybe have a 10 minute if Yeah, um you know the, the the beautiful thing about these conditions is you can actually do that. You can actually change the whole heat in one third of the time in, in that heat so he every, everyone in this heat is still um, very much in it especially due to the poor scores everyone has besides Aaron Strong um, but that also tells you a bit about the conditions Katja De La Haye here he has some open face beautiful turn another one and this wave just terminates but that carve layback was yeah it felt it, you a fall that was really beautiful but it felt like he was a little bit off rhythm the whole wave uh, it, it was just that one turn that actually he made he made the connection with the with the board and the wave um, but at the same time he felt like he want to attack the leap but then just switch into a floater you see here you want to attack the the leap here a little late comes around the section and then, yes, nice card laid back. And then even here, it didn't, yeah, too it didn't light. Look, yeah, it didn't look too committed on some of those turns, but that middle turn in the middle of the wave, the cutback, Iron Strong straight into a nice wave. Huge first turn. Is that the only turn on this wave? That's the only turn of this wave. So is he going to improve on the 4.5s? Uh, let's see the replay. What do you thought of that? For me, that's a really good technical turn. Yeah, let's watch it again. Uh, beautiful turn, nice style there. Couldn't make the second turn, unfortunately. It's closing out a lot, but uh, yeah, definitely has a chance of improving. And I think that was Leo Paul. No, 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 no. I think. Yeah, Leo Paul is still yeah. there. As you see, surfer in green. That's some really harsh conditions as we see up and riding on a nice looking left. I was expecting you go for the air because we know Gatien is really good on his left or on his backhand going for the air. Uh, but these conditions obviously not easy to, to launch to the air. Uh, I think most of the surfers are just trying to land those turns. They're not even thinking about going for the air. So uh, that just shows how challenging it is right there. And so yeah, the, with windy conditions, it's it looks like it's a bit of a southwest wind right now. We have been yep. we have been dealing with a, a lot of um, we've we've oh, look at that. Oh, that's windy. people enjoying the wind, enjoying the holiday, the the, the Easter holiday in Portugal. That's I want to be in the mix. I want to be in that photo. <laughs> 
Just go out there and ask them for one. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to. That looked like three fun people having fun in the rain. And probably they're going to be singing like I'm singing in the rain for a bit. Or maybe they're going to put that music on the, the story. That's, that's, it's I'm pretty amazing. Singing in the rain. <laughs> it's, pretty am it's pretty amazing seeing people just turning up on the beach with these conditions still. It's not sunny, it's not glassy, it's not one of those uh, one of those summer days, but people still come on the beach, enjoy a, enjoy the holiday and and make sure you're around and, and what, watching the action. We're gonna go and recap Z, just let us know what you think of the best waves of these hits so far. I will, my good friend. So Katya starting strong. Great surfer, love his style. Did great results last year. I think he got a, was it a final in the ch Challenger or maybe the semis? He got a great result, but this guy has been ruling this heat. This was uh, six points. The only Brit representing and representing it well. Not only representing um, Great Britain, representing Portugal. He grew up here. He is Portuguese to us, and that was a 4.5, so he's comfortable leading this heat that um, has actually been very slow. No one has, has done anything above the three-point mark uh, from the other three surfers. At least they're consistent, it's balanced, and it's wide open. Yeah, any any surfer can jump on the lead and uh, try to steal that second place for Gatia. Everything's still quite open uh, with five minutes and a half remaining. Uh, Leo Palitian is in the third place, needing a 3.56. Tomalidi in the fourth place, needing a 4.16. Gatia in second with a couple of threes, needing a 7.17 to take the to take the lead out of Aaron Strong. Aaron doing really well, as we see Surfer in green, Tomalidi on a nice looking left, right-hander, hits the leap. Tomalidi is having a shocker. Yeah. Unfortunately, not, not being able to choose those, those waves that allow you to, to do one strong turn. And, you know, it's, it's look at this, it's messy, it's ugly. Um, it's, you know, even scary for some of the surfers. And honestly, it, it I, I, I totally get it when Maxim said like, it doesn't even matter how well you surf, you just want to get through. Because this, obviously, you want to perform every time, but in conditions like this, you just want to see guys like this. Look at this bottom turn, a huge exit. Oh my god. That, that, was, that, that was so weird. I think it took a little too long on the bottom turn, Z. Exactly, yeah. He could have gone straight into the finishing turn. <laughs> I hope and he's that, okay because. Yeah, that looks like it, it took a little beating on him. No, yeah, at some at some point, I think he like he <laughs> crashed he against the boards. It felt like it. Yeah, let's watch. It. <laughs> See, let's watch it again. Yeah, beautiful it, bottom turn. Yeah, here. but he waited for too long. Waited a bit too long, but look at this. Grabbing, Grabbing the, rail. the rail, and then it's couldn't so, go yeah. up. <laughs> look. <laughs> Yeah, he that was, hits the that board. Was such a sketchy situation. Yeah, but he, as a surfer, you know, bong, <laughs> you you know that those <laughs> look worse than they actually are. Uh, we know that as a, as yeah. a surfer, usually you see. And I people, think he's going to. Oh, oh he, he broke, broke board. his board. Yeah, exactly. Something. Oh. Uh, and this guy is running really fast. Trying to end the three and a half minutes remaining, he still has a shot. What happened there? Oh, he buckled right, right after the the fins. You can see it right yeah, in, exactly right on top of that sticker. So that's it's completely. Why, that's maybe buckled. why he lost control there. Probably, yeah. It's such a powerful ocean right now. Look at that. But we didn't oh. have many broken boards today. I think yeah, that that's true. true. But. Um, yeah, he still has an opportunity. Three minutes, he'll get there before that, as he's a strong guy, as you can see. He's a big guy, big dude. He's, he still has ooh, two minutes and three minutes remaining. He's still on the beach. He needs to go around that corner. And yeah, that'll be a nail biter ooh, for him. That's going to be harsh, because uh, there's a lot of water moving, a lot of 
A lot of whitewash, a lot of deck diving, a lot of paddling. It's not going to be easy for him to get out there in, in I two think, and a half minutes. I think this was one of the the lowest scoring heats of of at least the heats I saw. Um, you know, they have been. They that, have been. That just shows you how challenging it is right yeah, there. Because yeah, exactly. These are some of the best European surfers. And for them to not being able to perform as high as we usually see them, uh, that just shows you how how challenging it is. How challenging it is yeah, and, and, out there. Yeah. And this this is an an advanced phase, so it means that um, we have the best European surfers, but we also have surfers that are on a roll. You know, they've won two or three heats already, so no one's really that nervous at the moment. Everyone is feeling fairly confident in their own surfing they they all have to had to overcome a few challenging heats before so everyone here is like on a, on a bit of a roll this is qu the quarter fi quarter finals of four surfers so and for them to be like this it, you know it really means something it's it's one of those days yeah it just shows you how how difficult it is out there that could have been a good left. Everyone looked at it, no one won on it. Uh, but yeah, it, it must have been so hard to be reading the ocean right now and be trying to understand and and trying to make the decision on which wave to go. And, and it's you have to really trust your instincts, but at the same time, you need to be a little, a little bit lucky. Yeah, that's true. Look at the quantity of Lidi's waves. So oh, nine waves. Most of them has a lot of waves. And 057, one point, one point. There's so many in and outs and yeah, in and outs and wipeouts and everything you know? throughout all the surfers and which makes it a lot harder and just makes you think how hard it is out there. It's, this yeah. is really, really I you know, honestly I can't remember conditions being this hard in an European QS, but here goes Gatia finishes off two white water turns not bad not good but he wants to improve on a three two three think he did that uh, I don't know I don't know I'm not sure to be honest now nah, he didn't 2.4 uh, he, he's just waiting and crossing fingers that Leo Politian doesn't score any kind of wave it, it looks like he will he won't uh, I'm not even sure if Leo actually made it to the outside. Uh, we're still waiting on the last wave of Tom D. Is it something... No, uh, attention, Leo Politian actually got a wave. We're gonna wait. What's happening here? This is Gatian, last wave, a 2.4. It's not improving his situation. Um, Tom D got a 0 0.43 on that last wave, but waiting for last wave of Leo Politian. He, need, he only needs a 3.56, so... Uh, another in and out. Uh, we're gonna see the replay of the wave. Still waiting, yeah. Still waiting for the wave of white. We have the signal on the on the scoreboard that we're still waiting on that wave. Uh, 3.56. It's a it's a low scoring uh, fair hit, and it needs a low score. Eh? Anything could ha could appear right there on our monitor. It's gonna be interesting to see. Yeah, judges are taking a bit to um, a bit. Yeah, they're taking their time. That's for that. sure. Um, but uh, Katia De La Haye is probably receiving the news that he passed because mm. I'm. Look at that! Leo Politian just switched the heat. He went to, from third all the way to second, uh, 4.13. Unfortunately, we missed out on that wave. Um, there's so much stuff going on, and Gatia was a little bummed with that one. But I think he's he's probably pretty safe uh, when it comes to rankings. Um, I'm gonna check out just to make sure. He was in fifth. So, who? Gatia was in fifth on the rankings. Okay, okay. So, so not that safe. Not but that safe, but on, at the same nice time, place, yeah. But, uh, at the same time, he, this guy Leo Politian just switched everything on the last second. We didn't see his wave, but he managed to go to sec to second place. And this guy Aaron Strong, 
the happiest all, guy all happy in, the happiest guy in costa de caparica right now he's on a bit of a roll i think he's pretty happy that smile says everything's there uh, we're gonna go on commercial soon and we're gonna be able to talk with iron strong and get to know what happened on that heat and how did how did he feel so stay tuned we're gonna go on commercial we'll be right right back with more action uh, stay with us It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals, and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente, ao seu lado, na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. This guy, that's gotta be a very happy Leo Palitien. He, he turned up on the last second of the heat. We actually missed on the action, but it doesn't matter. He got through, that's a really a broken board, Chiku, uh, paddling. He had two minutes and a half to get on the outside. So that's that was super interesting. We are back on the booth. My name is Flip Jervis. You're gonna keep on, keep on, keep up with the action. We are in Costa de Caparica, Praia do Paris. Look at this. It's not raining. It's not sunny anymore, but at least it's not raining. And there are some really good waves. Uh, some challenging conditions, but some really good turns, Chico. Uh, welcome back. Um, look at this hit. Another stacked one. Thanks, Flip. Yeah, stacked hit, leader of the rankings in the water. So. This was green uh, on his first wave, quick car. Seven points. And bang. Ooh. That's exactly how you want to start off a hit with a seven point ride. Two turn combo goes around the section. Is he going to hit it one more time? Is he going to have a double up? Yes, he will. Nice. He somehow managed to get one more turn in there. Do you think that, that put a lot of scores on the board or just the damage was done already? Yeah, I feel like the damage was done. Uh, of course, an extra alpha point there. Uh, but what a start for Adur. He has 27 minutes now to find a backup. Uh, I feel like he's in a, the drive, drive position of this seat right now. And uh, yeah, what a eat on, uh, on the water right now. Uh, Tomas de Bier, he really likes this type of conditions. He, he's a big guy. He likes to throw some likes big to go turns. Left. Yeah, he loves some big conditions. Tiago Carrick, the leader. So uh, always a stand up and a fun tunes that has been with so much drive and uh, confidence and what a hit. Like, I feel like anyone can win this hit. Yeah, pretty much every hit now. Uh, the, the first hit was really good. Last hit was really good. This one was, was going to be really good as well. The next hit was going to be really, really stacked as well. So that just shows us how high is the level of surfing in Europe. And you can see the amount of water moving now with the wind. Is looking messy, is looking really, really chunky, but the surfers are making the most out of it and getting some really, really good um, scores. And 
Yeah, sometimes not the highest scores of the con of the world, but you know what? Just you, you just need to get through hit by hit all the way through the final and score those points, put those points on the on the board to make sure you get the qualifying for the Challenger Series. Yeah, it's uh, pressure time, no matter the conditions. How the conditions are, you, you have to perform. And uh, sometimes we say, a lot of the times we say, oh, it's a, t a bit too small. And today it's a bit too big. It's a so, bit too big. Uh, there's days like this. We're going to go and meet Claudia. She's with Aaron Strong, the winner of Last Hit. Claudia, uh, how's Aaron? That's right, we're here with Aaron, showing us again that hard work pays off in making it in first to the quarterfinals. How do you feel? Yeah, I think first time I make it to the quarterfinals, it's been kind of a kind of tricky barrier for me getting through this heat, especially with the, all the amazing competitors that the European Regional Tour has, all the French uh, have been pushing me and all from uh, other competitors have pushed me to to yeah to reach this level and uh, uh, do my best do you think we saw uh, it's been the conditions have been very challenging in this contest and we even saw Thomas snapping his board do you think the physical preparation it's definitely making a difference for you to go and make it up with yeah. such i think for sure um, most of the off-season, uh, all the athletes are training and getting as well prepared as possible to get ready and uh, be prepared for anything that's um, in the day of the contest. So for sure it's essential and it's half of the, the work that you have to do to, to be in the water, not only the surfing, but also the physical, nutrition and mental work. Comparing this with triathlon, what what's hardest? Uh, I'm not sure. I think just to stay calm and uh, make sure you make the right cho choices because not every wave is good. It's kind of a bit of luck, but um, just stay calm and the wave you go on, make sure you make it count. Congratulations. Good Thank luck you. for our next one. Yeah, very nice information by Aaron Strong. <laughs> Thomas de Pierre flying off that that meaty section, Shiku. Imagine if he tried to land that one broken board, probably. <laughs> I think he did the right call by ejecting himself out of there. That was really, really sketchy. Let's just look at the see size of the wave. He tried to go for the floor, oh actually. My so. God. <laughs> That was Look at that, he didn't have enough speed, he didn't have enough space to do that and still, that look how, just look shows... Look how thick is the lip, actually. <laughs> this is oh cost of the Caparica, my friends. That was really insane. We also had this wave, but for green, Adura Matrian trying to, trying to back it up that seven point with a couple of turns. Um, still waiting on score on that one. And we also had Tiago Carrico on, on the right hand of Chico. Yeah, nice snap off the top, and the finishing was great. He timed it really well. So uh, nice two-turn combo there. Uh, the, the last turn is the money turn, the money turn for sure. So Tiago Rick putting there um, a good score on the board, I would say. Probably in the mid-range uh, for conditions like today. I, mm -hmm. I feel like it's going to be a mid-ranger. Uh, and Adur with the backup. So Adur uh, is on the. He's on a roll. Uh, Afonso yet to find his first wave, but um, 21 minutes to go, so plenty of time to actually catch his first wave. Probably not as as much as he would like, as there's a long paddle back out. But um, yep, uh, last one of Thiago, 4.5, and last of Adur, 4.8. So Adur uh, solidifies oh. his positioning on the first place and uh, that puts Tiago Carrique in the second place searching for a 7.3 and uh, both Thomas de Bière and Fos saint with nothing very important so far still trying to figure out the lineup trying to understand which waves to go and where to sit it there's a lot of water moving a lot look at that it just would you go surf you if you arrive at the parking lot right now no chance <laughs> 
but uh, if it's a, a comp, I would go, of course. Well, obviously, you have to. Kind of. It's part of the game. <laughs> kind of. Oh, you got to pull out, pull out your... Quick injury <laughs> on the parking lot. Sometimes can happen. A little stomach ache ju just before the heat. Yeah, maybe. Just a problem in the ankle. Did a flutter on the free surf yesterday. And you felt a little pain. Yeah. <laughs> maybe just give a bit of time. Two months. <laughs> Wait until the, the the summer arrives and the waves are not Have you ever pretend pretend a, an injury because of the ocean? Uh, uh, well, Knowing that was going to be huge uh, for competing. Do you reckon someone has already did that? Probably. Like saying, ah, oh, it's a back pain. <laughs> Slept really bad. Slept really bad. It's better if I don't go. No, honestly, every surfer knows. Uh, that's part of the game, the conditions, and it's part of the game what, uh, what you have to deal with. So it's everyone has to be prepared. Everyone needs to have the the, the, the equipment ready for these kind of conditions and and the mindset ready for the kind of conditions because it's not easy. It's it's very easy to get frustrated and and to lose motivation throughout the whole day because you spend the whole day looking at the ocean and it's just so challenging and you have to stay positive and make sure you go on the on the heat with the right attitude yeah just be happy right yeah try to be happy all the time but um but yeah i just feel like in, into these rounds as i said just before i feel like all of them have a lot of confidence because they they made a couple of eats they they're kind of on a roll so uh, they're, they, they're basically playing against the ocean right now. So they're not yeah, really like playing against uh, themselves or exactly. the other. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of, oh, look at this left. This could have been a good one. No one is in, no in, no one is in position for that one. Uh, yeah, it feels like sometimes you actually, you, you, you go against your, your opponents and everything. And, and today it feels like you have to battle your opponents, yourself, and the, the ocean, and that makes the competitor's life a lot harder than when it's like that. I feel like, although uh, the ocean is difficult, I feel like days like today, you kind of disconnect from uh, the fact that you're competing. Yeah, and yeah I think so too as well, yeah. And sometimes it's just like performing um, uh, for yourself and trying to outperform yourself. And uh, oceans like this uh, really help you to, to maybe be a bit more calm uh, in terms of uh, date strategy and like, because it's just try to survive. <laughs> yeah, it is a bit, a bit, wow. wow. That's a nice and vertical uh, hit off the top by Tiago Carrig, just making sure he finishes that, finishes that one off. Uh, but yeah, she, I totally agree with you. When it's this stormy, you don't even listen to the scores, you just, you have to be 100% focused on yourself and obviously not making a, a priority mistake because they can happen. Because uh, you still have priorities, even though it's a big field and everyone's just trying to, to survive. Uh, I think you always have to be careful with, that, with the priorities. Um, how about this one, Sheik? I really enjoy the, the last turn. The last turn was really tight Oof. in the pocket. So three turn combo on that one, a, a bit of a smaller wave. The judges feel it feels like they want to see those bigger ones. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna keep keep rolling on those um, medium range scores, and that's exactly what's happening. For Tiakari, he got a 4.5 on that first one, and he gets a 4.73 on this one. So very good surfing. Maybe the wave a little bit small, as we see Thomas Di Pierre on a big big wave. Is this allow him? to do something he won't so for a little bit frustrating for Tomé Di Pierre but yeah it feels like the judges want to see the big turns on the big waves Chico. yeah I feel like that's a point of difference always but he has built a nice solid foundation now and he will probably have uh, a couple more uh, opportunities, opportunities yeah, so sure. he will improve on, on one of those scores but at least he's not sitting there with uh, a combined, a yeah. combined, yeah. Or even like uh, Afonso, because he's still waiting. It's been 15 minutes off, almost 40, 14 minutes since the heat started, and he still has no waves. Yeah. What do you think? He's nervous. He's over selecting. Um, what do you reckon? I feel like I feel like he's not over selecting. I feel there's not 
many waves you can take off in and actually perform uh, a good score. So he's just trying to, to identify a good one as he's taking off now. Yeah, up and riding a false. Nice first snap, a little bit of a whitewashy wave. Second, nice snap. And third nice. one. So as you said, a lot of flow, a lot of a lot of a very good transition in between turns. He's been showing this kind of surf since the beginning of the contest. And yeah, he waited 15 minutes and a half for this wave, but it feels like it paid off, Shiku. Well, I think it's going to count and he's going to help himself. I feel like after this one, he will need another one like this to get through. But this is a good start. First hit of the top a bit late. Here he starts to get the, the rhythm. Nice wrap and nice that click of the tail. Really good. The board looks really good. I think this is going to be the second best wave of the heat so far, most Maybe, likely yeah. because of the, the last two turns. This one wow. and this one. And Bang. That is so fast. The transition between the second and the third turn was so fast. Another thing is really close to the rocks now, so it's going to be too great to paddle back out. Mm -hmm. Oh, this looks like a meaty section coming at it. Ooh. Thomas Dibier, who really loves these big turns. He started off pretty well with that first scarf and then hits it really strong on the outside. Still waiting for the wave to do something else. We saw Duro Matrien had a little bit of an extra, the extra section on the inside. That this, this didn't, didn't happen for him. As he's going to go for a paddle around, he's going to go closer to the rocks and make sure he spends the least time possible to go out there. Yeah, as we see live action now, Oof. wow. Nice first turn, straight into a second one. Adura Matren trying to improve on that and four turn. Point, uh, on that 4.8. Uh, might as well have done that on this one. Uh, we'll see what the judges thought of it. So pretty much waiting for scores on every single surfer on this heat so far. Uh, I'm really curious to see where that Afonso Antunes wave will, will go, as we see top to bottom that was a really good wow. first turn Chico. that turn was massive but I this one impressed you the most <laughs> like the third turn i was like wow <laughs> how did, does he have the speed and the momentum to go up and open over and this one thomas de pierre nice first carve and waiting for this section he knew it was going to be a good one the timing was perfect pushing really hard on the big one that's got to be a really good score as well for thomas hero and it feels like thomas de pierre will have a really good score as well. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't have a backup yet, but you know what? He still has 12 minutes remaining. He's right now, he's paddling all the way through the outside. As you can see, even close to the rock, Chico, which is looking really nasty out there. <laughs> Look at that. Look at the amount of water moving just that close from the rocks. But uh, right now, it's a good tide to go near the rocks because there's no waves breaking. Mm -hmm. There's only the rip because it's so the tide is so high that yeah, it's pushing in. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a bit easier now than on middle tide. And uh, Adur with a, a score coming in and a six-point ride for Thomas Debier. So Thomas Debier now in third. That was a really good wave by Thomas. Yeah. But now he needs a he needs a really small score, 3.23. So he has plenty of time to go and try and catch another wave. As we see Afonso on a nice looking right hander, he decides to leave that wave. He kind of looked like he could have gone for one big turn. What do you think? That section looked like a good section for an alley -oop. He had speed. Oh yeah. With this win? Yeah, that's true. Huge alley oop, 9.5. <laughs> he turns around. Super comfortable. Unfortunately, he decides. I haven't seen no one throwing a big air to the rights, but um, it's just because it's really hard. Yeah. But, um, the but, wind, yeah. but the if you get the right perfect. ramp. The wind is perfect to the right hander right now. Yeah, you can that's just side shore. Huger. Yeah, that's side shore. But at the same time. I feel like they don't have enough uh, time. Energy, yeah, time, everything. Even even mentality, because you, you're trying to survive. You're not thinking about going for the I air. feel like the wave is quick as well. So sometimes the timing is not the best one to to prepare yeah. the air. Yeah, exactly. A lot of water moving you. For the airs, you really need to set it up really well. And it feels like sometimes here you don't have enough time to think about it. Just put the board up there and absolutely smash the lips. Uh, look, Adura Matria, 6.5 on that last one. So that just puts him with 13.5, a total score and gives him that safe and confident league lead 
Uh, I don't think he's too too worried about uh, who's in second place. Tiago Rick is in second place with needing an 8.77 Chico. So uh, we're gonna keep on watching, keep on waiting to see more waves. We're gonna go on commercial soon and we're gonna be right back for DC. That is a lot of really good surfing. This guy is absolutely smashing it. Look at this. Stay with us. We're gonna be on commercial, be right back for more surfing like this. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. In life, there's something that nos inspire. The millennium is always present on your side in the conquest of new desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. Every time we come back from commercial or something, I, I always say the same. Look at the challenging conditions. It looks, it looks so, so hard out there. And looking at the scores, we had the best wave of the heat on during the commercial. 7.5 for Thiago Carrick. That's going to make everyone's life a little harder. Uh, it just needs to improve on that 4.73. You know who I spoke with? Uh, on my and we're gonna see the 7.5 Chico take us through this. Big snap off the top, winds up again, and bang! So two big turns out the back, 7.5. So really well served by Tiago Carrick, earning the best score of the eight so far. So sick wave there by Tiago. And this was Adur's turn. Wow. Under Still. the lip, blow of the fins, and another one. Still is looking so sharp on these conditions, because it, it, it feels like everyone's trying to to hold it all together, and and you see Adur just pushing really hard on those turns, so that just shows you how confident he is right now. As you can see, look at the conditions outside. I was, I was speaking with Lorenz Kazenstein, one of the jet ski assists, he said like the first day of competition was probably the hardest day of his life as a, as a jet, ski, jet ski patrol. He spent the whole day inside the storm and on the outside going against 10 foot waves. And he was actually saying that's going to be a, a, that was a really hard one. Here we see the Portuguese, Guy Ribeiro. This is a very important hit. You can see all the Portuguese kids just tricking shafts. Showing up for support, That's, this is a very important hit for Guy. He could be a make or break to qualify for the for the Challenger Series. He knows also he had a little hug from his dad. What do you think he's saying? A little word? A little hyped up word? Or uh, just trust yourself? You're at home? Just enjoy the, enjoy the ride? I don't know. I, I feel like Guilherme, he feeds off uh, the support. He really enjoy, mm -hmm. enjoys having a lot of people people around him supporting. Uh, there's two types of athletes. There's some that don't really enjoy to have too much noise around them and people. And Guilherme is, is the opposite. He loves to have all his mates coming down. He loves to have family, girlfriend, everyone supporting him. So uh, it's a big moment for him. I had a quick chat with him and, and 
told him, mate, uh, I feel like this this is your conditions. Like you're fine. Like you just gotta perform what you know, and everything is gonna be fine. Because I feel like if there's a, a type of conditions for Guillermo to do well, it's today. As we yeah, see, he's actually why. really good on closeouts, isn't he? It just feels like he has that timing and that strength on his legs to hold on really tight on those big turns. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. I, I really hope he gets through uh, because I really want to see a Portuguese in the Challenger Series, Chico. Yeah, he's got a great opportunity. I think if he makes it, he's, he's, for, he's for sure he's in. If he doesn't make it, I think it depends on other surface. We need to double check that. Uh, the whole scenario. As oh, we see. look at this wave. Big midi section, big wave for Tiago. <laughs> oh, he got, he got swallowed by, by, the, by the leap on that one. That was a really big wave. He already has a 7.5. He wanted to improve on that 4.73. Uh, but look at that. Oh, oh he gets through right, the, right there, right in the right spot. Um, as we have a Foss and Tunes, a 3.8 needing an 8.16 so life a little harder uh, the only server I, I actually see look at this look at the size of this wall could he attack the leap right there shiku maybe try an air there <laughs> <laughs> look at this oh <laughs> God. guillotine that was like he chopped his head off unfortunately went down but he needs to improve on that 4.73 but watch out for thomas de pierre Watch out for Thomas Di Pierre. He needs a 6.24 with three minutes in remaining. Adura Matrain is pretty close to, to Thomas Di Pierre right now. We're, I'm pretty sure we're going to see Thiago Carrique. He's going to be right on his feet as well um, with three minutes and a half remaining. They, all the surfers know how good Thomas Di Pierre is and he needs a pretty average score. We already saw some high sevens. Uh, so we're gonna see we know he's capable of doing that score uh, it's just it's just a matter of having the luck of finding that one Chico. yeah I feel like if Thomas gets uh, the opportunity of a big section I think he's gonna do the score um, it, it, it's not easy a 624 but for Thomas and his level I feel like if he gets a big section and he throws one of those big backside turns he can turn the around really quickly so. oh really really quickly so and the, and the, you know what with what happened with the last heat with what happened in the last heat uh, we know that anything can happen like we saw Leo Palitian coming out of nowhere with two minutes and a half remaining he was still on the inside and somehow he made managed to get through that heat yeah I feel like uh, he, he can turn it around really quickly and um, if there's someone that can do that is is him and uh, that's why we are on the round of 16 um, there's big names anyone can change it around really really quickly and anyone can throw some excellent scores so let's see what happens in the last two minutes uh, I feel like this one, everyone got into the rhythm, kind of. Yeah, it was actually, there's, there's a lot of really good waves surfed, and uh, it feels like there was a bit of more op opportunity of what we saw on, a, on, a, on the last few hits. And maybe the, the opportunity is the same, but uh, the surfers just found the rhythm and, and the waves a little bit easier than, than on the other hits, as we see Surfer in Blue looking at that one. Fonson Tunes, look at that double up. Tiago Carrick on a medium-sized wave, nothing too special, he still has time to go out there. I would go right on top of Thomas Di Pierre, he follows Tiago right now, because with 1 minute and 50, 15 seconds remaining, anything can change. Thomas Di Pierre has the priority, he's going to wait until he, he has 100% sure that the wave allows him to go for the 6.24. So, last minute for uh, Thomas Di Pierre, it's going to be interesting. A huge set coming in, washing through everyone. Let's see if there's a little bit of an opportunity with 50 seconds remaining. We don't see Tiago anywhere, anywhere close of Tommy Di Pierre. Maybe because I think they actually have the same coach. And maybe they said, Jason Aparicio said something like, let the surf do the talking. Don't 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 start start and go all all to strategic kind of, of things. 
As we see, Tomedi Biak looking at that one. Afonso Antunes decides to go. He was looking for something special. The wave just kind of doubles up in front of him and straight a big close out. 14 seconds remaining. Tommy Di Pierre still has an opportunity. Where is he? He's looking for this one. Shiku. 6.24. Yeah, that was just in the closeout. So. Oh. Signs of frustration there. That's normal. It's just really hard to lose. Afonso Tunj gets third. What a nice event for Afonso Flip. Oh, yeah, he has been one of the standouts since the beginning of the heat. He has been surfing really good. I know he's, he's a competitive kid. He's going to be mad with himself and and probably with the conditions. But you know what? The conditions are the same for everyone. And somehow the other guys managed to find some good waves. You can see the body language, the frustration coming in. Adura Martrian absolutely smashing this heat, 14.33. Thiago Carrick score total of 12-23. Afonso Tunes gets eliminated, unfortunately, and Toma Di Pierre also eliminated. Also eliminated. Um, we're gonna go on to the final hit of the day. We'll be right back after this. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Welcome back to Caparica as we bring in the final heat of the day. Who's going to quarters? Who's coming back to duke it out? On well, final day tomorrow at the Caparica surface. Two of these for Teva Bushka, Morocco, Guillaume Ribeiro, Portugal, Justin Becre, France, Luis Diaz, Canary Islands. My Paul Evans, he's Chico Alves and mate, what a heat we got on our hands here. And what a moment oh. for Guillaume. Woo. If he gets through, he's on the challenges. No way. Yeah. This is total madness. Mate, this is Bushka. Quick start. Big turn ah. there. Did he made it? What? Whoa. If he had made it, he, he, wow. we need to give him the... Wowzers. We see Green upriding the replay. What? Huge turn by Guilherme. And comes off the bottom. Nice carve. Oh, what a great way to start eight like that. Guilherme needing to get through this heat and uh, making it happen. Bang! Another one. So huge score to Guilherme coming in for sure. As you see, Luis Diaz on a bomb. Look at this wave. Nice double up. Nice carve. And can he get... Oh, my oh, God. Oh, my days. That was massive. <laughs> what? He got clobbered. What happened? A bit too late and... Oh. <sighs> Can you imagine uh, how, what the earrings said to him? You want a roundhouse? Come on, mate. A roundhouse kick to the face while I'm wearing these pants. Oh. Five, six, seven for the first of Guillermo Ribeiro. Are you sure if he's through this, he's on challenges? Is that right? He told me this. He told me that. That's why all his family, everyone is on the beach. Okay. Yeah. 
he told me that. I, I, I think he, 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 I think his coach made made all the the maths. So all right. we need to double check that. But we, we, we do. That's yeah. why all the family came down. His father. Everyone knows that if he makes it, uh, I think he's uh, guaranteed. So. Uh, it's not official, but uh, I feel like they, they've done the maths and he told me, like, I'm guaranteed if I make one more. So, based on all the maths they've done, uh, I think it's, uh, it's quite possible. Because uh, this is a 3,000, a lot of points on offer, and he's making uh, a big jump if he gets through this round. There's a lot of, a lot of points still to be grabbed uh, by the surfers in competition. So nervous moments for Guilherme Ribar, if this is true. But uh, everyone is around here to support the local Guilherme Ribar. As we go for a quick interview with Adura Matria, winner of the last seat and one of the standouts of today's action. That's right, we're here with Adud, who made it to the quarterfinals. How did you find your rhythm and positioning out there and make this total score 14? Uh, I was watching the hit with my dad and I was watching the hit before and I was like, there's not like a plan to follow because the ocean is so unpredictable in this kind of day. So I was just flowing and I found my rhythm and I got a few good scores, so I'm happy. Congratulations. Good luck for the next one. Thank you. And also, Sorionak Amacho, que surortia dia. It's my mom's birthday, so I'm going to say happy birthday. <laughs> Obrigado. Sorionak. Congrats. Sorionak to Adur's mother. What a special day to be in the quarterfinals. Quite a good present to his mother. I uh, feel like any parent would love to see their son perform well on... What's the best gift you've ever got your mum for a birthday? A purse. And as we see green, uh, bango. Nice turn there. Quite a nice backup for Guillermo. Making sure, he's, he's so intelligent. He made the five, six, seven, turns around, does the backup. Now he's gonna improve on that. But uh, he has two scores already. So Guillermo is a really good competitor. He's, he knows what he's doing. A bit of a white water in the face, comes off the bottom and bang. So really nice turn there by Guillermo Ribar. And uh, Guillermo looking laser focused on the seat. And Luis Diaz on a bomb, Paul. Whoa, meaty, wow. look at that slash, look at the speed. Oh, it's really similar to the one before, but the crucial difference, he makes it. What? What did we just see? That's that got to be a nine. That's got to be excellent. You'd have to think that's got to be excellent. That's a nine. Look at this. C carve to start off. Look at this. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> then he holds the fins and he goes, whoa. And he makes it. Oh, that was sick. Wow. That's a hard Diaz. wave to deal with. And he, he, he dealt with it really, really well. So. Buenas Diaz. What, what a great mental. surfing. Wow. That was really cool. Calm under pressure. Power when needed it most, Chico. I think that's going to be the best wave of this round so far. Uh, I feel, Or maybe the comp. I, I feel like this is going to be... Uh, I, I feel like it's going to be the best. Well, there's a lot of power in the water right now. Let's check out <laughs> yeah, Bacray. What's he going to do? He likes a bit of juice. This guy doesn't find it there. But these lefts, they're muscled up right now. There's heavy sections. Is it going to be the best wave of the event so far? Oh, I don't know, mate. But I'll tell you what, the anticipation is killing I think me. Yes. Oh. I think yes. I'm right there with the information. Huge number is coming in for the Canary and Luis Diaz. Nine. Nine. I called Nine. it. Chico Owls nails it once again. He can't read the schedule and show up for his heats that he's supposed to be doing, but he can judge a wave on the QS. <laughs> a nine. nine. Nine point ride for him. Best wave of the event. I'm out. Put the phone down. Yeah. See you later. Yeah, mate. I mean, it's a good day. The first time today. Have a Cheers. good day. Lovely Cheers. to see you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. See you next year. Yeah. 21 minutes remaining. Luis Diaz with a nine. 
massive number. And what a way for our final heat of a huge day of competition. And the Canarian just dropped an absolute hammer. Excellent range, great surfing. It really, there's so much offered from the ways. It was all about recovering, really. Two turn combo, and she got how, how hard is this to do? Talk us through this because that's such technical surfing as we watch what? an awkward one for Teva. But that's a big section. How hard is it to hit that lip? Well, mo the, the difficult part there is after the carve, you had so much speed that was to all the transition from rail to rail. After the first carve, you see him, he does the carve, but here, after, when he, he puts the inside rail again here, it's really hard to, in such a short place, to actually hold the line and after uh, hit the lip with so much projection. So he did such a good job on that. So Where did he go? He completely disappeared for about a second. Yeah, he got barreled. <laughs> he was gone. I think Alpha Point was the barrel of he the white water. Gone. And then Houdini emerges from nowhere. Houdini. Wow. Magic. Nine point ride. Oh. All right, we talked about Guillermo Ribeiro's support crew. We got his pops is with Claudia. What would it mean for Guillermo to get a place at Challenger Series here at the place where he grew up surfing? Well, for Guy, it's a big, big challenge for Guy. If he make it, it's going to be something very, very, very special. It's a very, very, a lot of years of work. He's a, a worker and uh, I hope he can get it. I hope so. Do you think doing it, making it here in Caparica makes it extra special for him? Yeah, very, very special because it's his hometown. Of course, if he, if he get it here, it's something special not not only for Guy but for all Caparica. Caparica needs this. Eh? And Guy, I'm 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 very happy to have my son on this this kind of uh, competition to get a very uh, special place on a challenge. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great stuff. Thanks, Claudia. Really cool to hear inside the camp. Great family Caparica support. Caparica needs this. Uh, it'd be, it's a water story. And just shows how significant it is as well. I mean, it's a massive opportunity, really. Rather than just going back to your training and getting ready for, what, a summer event in Newquay, I guess, maybe first up on the QS, is heading to Australia for two Challenger Series. If you get results there and you get spring in your step, who knows where that can take you? Exactly. Unbelievable. It is. It's a huge window and a huge opportunity that opens up new goals, new dreams. And uh, that's what the QS is all about. Step by step, making it, it happen. And uh, talking about making it happen, what a day we had, Paul. Yeah, we've made it happen, mate, big time. Yeah. <laughs> we are. I feel like we are there with them right now. And... Um, we can tell. I can tell you what the ocean is roaring. It's loud. It's loud. It's loud. It's angry. And the wind as well. Yeah, that too. Um, all right, here goes Bushka. <laughs> What's he got? He's got some power. Oosh, ouch! Flicks the board away. Board gets tossed in a gale, and the spear lands thankfully away from him. Here's Guy Ribeiro, the hometown hero. Does well Bang. to just sit out the first section and then tags one. Ooh, and does well to just work the angles there. So another combo from him. Yes, I think he will improve on that one. Picray there. Looked like he was sort of fired out of a cannon. What happened? So this is Guy Ribeiro. And a good snap. Just what, he, what he's doing, he, he's not wasting time. He wants to improve the back up, 3-2-3. Three, three. Let's see what happens. You all right, Shiko? Yeah, I'm all good. I, I just uh, got a bit uh, emotional about all the action. 
and um, I had to regather myself. It happens yeah, sometimes kinda. at the booth. I think we are, we are allowed to have a kind of a breakdown moment. I had mine. No, I, I encourage it. <laughs> you're, you're, I like you when you're like this. <laughs> when you loosen up a bit. I'm loose. Yeah, you're better. Yeah. <laughs> better than are, afternoons, would you say, or mornings generally? or just? I think afternoons really like 3, like 5 p.m. Best hour. 5 to 7 p.m. 8 p.m. I need to it's sleep. already over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. so from six to noon, it's like over as well. So I've got a small window. It's like a small tide. <laughs> we can actually have fun. It's like two hours and a half a day. So uh, well, really we, boring. Actually. We've got 15 minutes and 20 seconds to have loads of fun here, as we watch Luis Diaz with a nine already. Best moment of the day. Is that a question, or, or this is <laughs> best? Moment. I'm asking you, right? Best moment of the day. You know, I'd love to tell you that now, but I'm not going to because I'm going to save it for the it's post. It's in the water right now. I'm going to save it for the post show, Chico. It's in the water right now. The show's coming up after Nine this heat. Nine points right. That might, that might be, that might be your best moment. Don't project on me, okay? You're projecting. You just gaslit me, man. You know, like you're it being gaslit. You can get influenced by the people you yeah. stand. You're an influencer. I stay with you like the whole yeah. day. Of course, I'm getting like. Yeah. No, you'll have to wait and find out. All right. Stay for the post show, bro. We've got loads of big talking points from a huge dev competition where the surf has gone from, yeah, kind of shoulderish high on the low tide in a rip to just, how big is it there? Eight, nine foot. Nine foot. <laughs> nine to 11 feet. Side faces. <laughs> Here in Caprica, we I'll see the waves by the side. I'll tell you what's big is, is the lips are really thick as well. They are. I saw it. Really heavy. And anyone that tells the yeah, air has no heavy waves, it's strong. There's heavy waves here. <laughs> 14 on the clock. It's the surfer from Canary Islands, Lewis Diaz at the moment, with a massive number of a nine. He hasn't backed it up, though. He'll look to do that. We're going to get a commercial break. When we come back, we'll wrap up our last seat of the day. Post show coming to stay tuned for more heavy hits and action like this right after the break. Good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals, and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo. The action continues from Costa de Caparica as we just draw a breath and just soak in the drama going down in the water right now. We're watching Teva Bushka on a double up. Here he goes, off the bottom, really nice turn. A carve to snap, and again, that is so smooth, I love it. So great surfing from him, and he needed that wave. His high scores are 267, and a massive improvement for the Moroccan Goofy. And they'll want to get going here. It's not got much done. Neither has Bacray, who's been quiet in this one so far, but this is a good way to get yourself in the heat, Chico. Yeah, nice carve off the top, really strong surfer, uh, engaging really well the rail and finish it off really well, the, the last turn. So really a compact style, not making any mistakes. The wave was really hard to read because it was bumpy and uh, had a lot of white water in the face and actually had a wave in the front. So um, just a hard wave overall, but. As he said, he needed this wave, and I think with this one, he's back on this hit. And, um, and yep, yeah, I think this is going to be a great score for him. Really cool. Kept the speed up throughout. That's crucial. 
Turns were distinctly different. They were seamlessly joined up as well. Some white water on the face. But he cleaned it up nicely with sharp rail work. Did Bushka. He's back in the rip now. 10 minutes and 50 odd seconds. There's our lineup priorities with your heat leader, Diaz. He's got a nine in the bag already. What's he going to back it up with? They want to get something soon. Just locked in. It's only, only on a two for the Mo. At the same time, oh, we'll watch. Justin Becray on an absolute bomb. And he'll go down on the takeoff. She goes, how big was that wave? Uh, I, I saw it from above. I need. I only see it from the front. But that wave was really, really big. Just have a guess. Uh, like six foot. Oh. Wow. What? What? That was... Back door. Yeah. Back she door. Uh, I don't know if they, they were prepared to... Oof. Behind him. Uh, look at the size of this wave. <sighs> and normally on the screen it looks smaller than it is. Oh, just detonated from behind Luis Diaz. Made the drop. And then the beast came from behind and blew him up. True. As we see, Guillermo there sitting with priority. Last of Teva, 5.37. So Teva is closer now. Paul. Yeah, he's lurking dangerously, isn't he? He's breathing hot breath down Guy Ribeiro's neck at the moment. He needs a 374 to threaten Guy. There's the crew, there's the squad. Mum and Dad watching on. He goes, Guillermo, and can't find much on the inside. Was picked up towards the end of that ride. Not sure if loads of work was done prior to that. Either way, he'll coughed up priorities back to Diaz. He's surprised how much is picked up, or not at all. The ocean. Yeah. Uh, no, it's just because the, the the ocean that was out the back is now on the inside, so that's why there's a, a lot more size. Yesterday, when we had a walk here in the afternoon, was huge on the inside. So we did have a nice walk, actually. That's right. Yeah. Didn't we? Yeah. I think it was great. To actually got, know you better. <laughs> just after you got your eyebrows done, we went for a nice walk. Yeah. <laughs> it was great to know you better. <laughs> nice little stroll. Yeah. Great place for it. You know, if you're in the area this afternoon, get down. You've got about eight and a half minutes to watch high octane surfing competition from Europe. Closing out the season. We'll finish our season tomorrow. A sad day in many regards. Happy in others. And we'll be sending surfers to challenges. Who's going? Is Ski Ribeiro going to the challenge series to fly the Portuguese flag? Very possibly. He's very close. Let's see. Uh, I, I double checked the information. It's not confirmed if it gets through, but it's really, really close. That's what I know. So um, I think it's in, but the contest need, needs to be finished to be official. So yeah, yeah. Seven minutes to go, Paul. Anything can happen, and uh, a lot of waves on the horizon. I think we, we we haven't seen the ocean without waves coming all week. <laughs> That swell's not been a problem, that's for sure. We've, we've, we've had waves, we've had, we've had size, we've had power. We've had some wind as well to deal with, but what a way to deal with it at Costa de Caparica. With these wedging bowls, just... Oh, that almost got a bit seasick watching that on a tight shot then. As you see these triangles coming through and hitting this sandbar hard. If you can get yourself in the right spot, get a runner, as Luis Diaz did, there's all sorts of points available right now. So, three surfers together. He's having a sniff. Meanwhile, a Frenchman all on his own, Justin Becray. He's to the right of your shot. You get an opportunity here, Justin. Here he goes, right-hander for him. Softest section to open up. Then, a double up. What's he going to do with it? Wow. He'll stomp that, or will he? Oh. Is that complete? I think it's incomplete. Uh, he needed to stay a bit longer. Wow, Luis, nice. what's he got? Bang. He needs to get rid of that 2.27, so I think he did, he did that. So he will improve and get a bit more uh, distance of Guillermo Ribar. And uh, now out the back, Guillermo Teva with six minutes to go. Now it's, I think these last few minutes will decide everything. Um, Do you reckon? So, yeah, I reckon. As we see, bang, nice turn there. Trying to get another carve in, but the wave just got really frothy. So 
nothing else on offer. And this one, unfortunately for Zustan, he needed to land this turn. And, uh, and now he's going to be all the way on the inside with six minutes to go. And uh, a fall there, unfortunately for him. So, as you see, Guillermo. Whoa. Whoa. So I'm right back on the heels just from the takeoff and then that one stretched away from him. That's going to gobble up some time. Danger man now, David Bushka in the lineup with priority with five minutes, five and a half, and looking for 374 to take first from Ribeiro. If he's going to do that, he will need a wave. Let's see if anything tickles his fancy. His last wave, the 537. Got him in this heat. He had a look there. Good call not to go. That I want to close out. His read of the lineup. Been pretty solid throughout this event. That's why he's hit with a shot at quarter finals. As we see the replay. He almost got there in time. And the crew there really disappointed the wave closed out. So it's normal. Everyone is supporting. The home hero, Guillermo Ribeiro. So uh, everyone wants him to get through this round and gain more points to be uh, on the Challenger Series and doing it at home. What a special place to do it on the last event of the, of the season, Paul. So nervous moments. Are you nervous? I mean, I can make the tensions palpable. The it sense is. of drama is heightened by the sort of leaden skies and. Wow. The fact that the swell's big as well, I think that adds to it. Adds, if, it's, yeah. if it's like one foot and it's like, oh, there's a, he needs to make this, you're like, yeah, okay. But like right now, it's it's solid and like there's real jeopardy in every bot, every bottom turn. The surfers aim at the lip. You're like, what's going to happen now? What's going to unfold? It, it really is. Just feels like everything's been ramped up in terms of the significance of all. With four on the clock, let's recap this. It's been. Oh, it's just been a thrilling, thrilling heat so far, Sheik. Yeah, Guillermo started off really quick with this one. I thought this wasn't, was a bit higher. That turn was massive. And then he backed it up with a nice carve off the top. So a uh, really nice start for Guy Ribeiro here with a 5-6-7. And uh, most of that score coming from that first turn. That turn was re really tight in the pocket and really well done. And uh, a double grab there at the end on the backwash. Felt great. And this was... The man of the moment, huge carve and a huge turn to finish it off. And that board pulled that line really, really well. Nine point ride for uh, Luis Diaz and uh, uh, an epic wave for him. This is Guillermo's backup, 3.43. Just a quick snap off the top and another one. Trying to get rid of that small number uh, as soon as possible, but still in second place. So. Really close one now. Oh, it's tense moments, isn't it? It really is. So, bushka has gone to second priority without riding a wave. So, he's done something slightly silly in terms of priority, and he's surrendered it to Guillermo Ribeiro, who has the second place position and priority over, well, everyone. He's in first prior, but crazy in all sorts. Got nothing, a 183 and a 0.5. He's nowhere in this. Still only needs a 7.27 though. That's a very gettable score from him if he connects. He had a heavy wipeout on a, a big drop, really. The bottom just fell out of the wave and he fell through the bottom. And time will tick away here, which will be on the side of the local. He's in second place at the moment. If no one rides another wave, he's going to finals day. It's Guy Ribeiro at the moment. The main threat to that is Bushka with just a 3740. He's, he's waited a while. He hasn't ridden away. It's been a few minutes since he got his five. He, he needs to go something soon. He's going to have to just try and find it. He can get a 374. More or less anything other than a straight closeout. Well, even on a closeout, you could go do a big air. Let's see. Oh, Guillermo has priority now. Yeah, I just said that, mate. Glad, glad to follow it along. That's cool. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> I was I was making sure I yeah. uh, I heard it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he has. So what's he gonna do with it? I think he's gonna stick to Teva like glue. Uh, he's doing just that with uh, one minute and twenty seconds to go. I feel like he needs to. Ooh. Not. Okay, so he lets him go here. Oh, oh, wow. 
So a big hammer of a turn from Bushka to the flats, and he, oh, for a second he looked like hanging on to that, and he didn't, and he'll go down. Guy Ribeiro, live action here, what's he got? Off the bottom, clips one off the top with a bit of authority, just the one turn it'll be for him. Inside 55 seconds, he'll beach this, he's bringing it in, his work's done. Looks slightly baffled, possibly not sure exactly of his situation. What's happening in the lineup? Diaz is still sitting on a 2 9 as a backup. Bacre, what's he doing? He's trying to find something. 7 2 7 is what he's after. There's Bushka. Is he going to get out of the back in time? I'm not sure. 30 on the clock. What nervous, tense moments these are. Bushka needs a 3 7 4. Yeah, it's really close for uh, Teva and Guillermo. Uh, if he gets a wave on the head now, yeah, so... this is going to be good night, I think. If he gets dragged back here, he's not getting in the lineup, is he? Teva, he's gone. So that's it for him. Possibly a chance here for Bukhre if he can go. And he won't. And we'll take this away. That's your heat leader, Luis Diaz. Guillermo Ribeiro, look how much it means to the squad. There's great passion here. Massive scenes and celebrations. His camp, we think, has done the mass. We haven't had that confirmed yet. We'll just, you know, we're, we're not second guessing their arithmetic, but we'll wait till it comes down from the proper channels before we confirm anything. But what we can confirm is Guillermo Ribeiro in his hometown event at Costa Costa Rica. he's going to final day, Chico. Yes, he is, and uh, I think they're all celebrating because he's doing such a massive result at home and possibly because he's. Uh, I think one or two steps inside the, the Challenger Series. Uh, and I think this was a really important hit for him. And uh, what a moment to have uh, the homeboy uh, doing such a result on such a, a pressure uh, in a stressful moment. So um, unfortunately for Teva, what a great job. And Justin always uh, on point and uh, not actually performing on this one. But the home, the home, crowd, the home crowd is uh, stoked for Guillermo Ribeiro. And, uh, and uh, we haven't had the official. Um, let's hear what, he, what he's saying. And there's a debrief there. As they see Abra and Guy Ribeiro. Just talking about situations in the heat, but the big takeaway is this guy absolutely blazed it with a massive, massive number, huge, brilliant surfing from Luis. He has well earned his spot in the quarters. That'll be tomorrow. So we're all set up with court finalists. They will send Luis Diaz and Guy Ribeiro to finals day tomorrow. That was our last heat of the day, but it's not the end of the show. We've got the post show coming up. We've got waves of the day. We've got talking points. We're going to look at the forecast for tomorrow as well. We're basically just going to reflect on what's been a really fun Friday at Costa de Caparica. That's all coming up in the post show. That's real soon before we get to that. As we're just soaking up emotional scenes and vibing it. Beautiful moments, these. Yeah, they, they, they're crying, so... Tears of joy. Yeah, tears of joy. It's what a beautiful moment. Beautiful moment. Well done, Guy Ribeiro. We're going to get a quick commercial break. When we come back, it's time for the post show. All of those talking points, they'll be coming up. And particularly, of course, one of the main ones is the hometown hero, Guy Ribeiro. That's all coming up. Join us for the post show right after this. It's good to try, even when something seems to make little sense. Put your weight on it. Make an impact in this world. Call everyone, set ambitious goals and ask yourself, do you want to change surfing? Dare to test. Ride the future. Na vida, há sempre algo que nos inspira. O milênio está sempre presente ao seu lado na conquista de novos desafios. Juntos, partilhamos a paixão pelo futuro. Milênio, aqui consigo.
They call it Good Friday. They call it really, really Good Friday if you're a fan of Portuguese surfing in particular. Right here on the Costa de Caparica where the hometown hero has just blazed his way into finals day. Welcome to the post show. Loads of great talking points from myself, Paul Evans, joined by Zay Ferreira, Philip Jervis. Boys, have you, have you, have you calmed down? Are you very excited? Are we, are we good? Are we, are we okay? Yeah, it's it, it's been. Uh, we're trying to figure out the whole excitement behind the Gigi yeah. Byers qualifying. I, always, I thought not. it was maybe going to be a fight then during the break. Is it that really cool? <laughs> no, yeah, that, was, that was emotional. It was. Yeah. It yeah. was emotional Tensions because tensions are running high. Yeah, people. I'm want, nervous. Yeah, people <laughs> wanted to be to be through. I also wanted to be through, mm -hmm. but we have to wait and 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 calm down and, yeah. and make sure that the the, the scores are official you know because yeah. i really want him to be on the challenger series but not let's not make a big fuss out of it before having the the official we know call. what we do know he's, he's coming back for finals day and what an opportunity Obviously. for him here he's home break he's surfed brilliantly all week Guy Ribeiro, a great shot taking out the title here there's a lot of big surfers for him to try and get past is that your thoughts on a on a huge day of competition here have you enjoyed yourself yeah, I enjoyed myself. Uh, it was a long day of competition, uh, a few upsets, a few surprises. Obviously, finishing finishing off the day with uh, the golden key <laughs> of Guy was yeah. great to see their parents. I know we had way more mm. than just that, but it was a yeah great day. Yeah, great performance from him uh, in the final heat of the day because it wasn't the high score that went to a man from the Canary Islands, Luis Diaz. He's standing by for a chat. That's right. What a way of finishing the day with the emotional uh, Guy Ribeiro passing to the quarterfinals and Luis, who gave us the, an amazing performance, achieving a nine point ride and a, only a two point back up. How did that felt <laughs> out there and what were you looking for? It felt a bit stress, <laughs> stressing <laughs> because at the beginning I couldn't hear well and I didn't know if it was a nine point or a five point. So I was stressing a little bit because then after that, I realized it was a nine, but I had a, like a two backup and I couldn't find a backup. And you know, these guys are super good and can switch the heat at any moment. So a bit uh, struggling for the backup, but super happy to make it. Going against the local Gigi Bayer, was that an extra pressure or? No, like, actually everybody's super good. He rips, but I, I, I was thinking about myself, like trying to do good, trying to pick my two waves and that's it. Like the rest is, doesn't matter. You did amazing. How do you get prepared for conditions like this? Uh, being strong physically, training strength and conditioning a lot uh, back home with Ruben. Shout out there. <laughs> and yeah, being strong and just be a lot in the water, you know, have a lot of resistance paddling and go for it. Now moving forward to the quarterfinals, where is, you know, where is your in your mind right now? Right now, I don't know. I, I'm pretty bad for qualifying, so I need to win the event or something like that. So just taking it step by step, hit by hit, and trying to surf and enjoy the, the, the hits. That's it. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you guys. Yeah, great stuff. Thanks, Claudia. Luis Diaz, what a legend. Nine point ride from him. Absolutely smash out. Good value. What a way to get yourself in the cause. It's one way to kind of squeak through, but to get through with a nine, that's got to give you so much confidence for Luis. Yeah, he could have gone through with 18 point uh, uh, score total if you want <laughs> because he got that nine but the wave before it did a really very good very similar but unfortunately it went down but obviously uh, coming out with the nine points on a hit it's always a good one time to talk about wave of the day first of all we'll go to the women and remind ourselves of which single ride stood out from many and here it is yeah Annette blowing this end section so that one turn that what uh, that wave with one turn is still really valuable and of course this was one of the well the, the the best wave of the day but one of the highlights of the day this heat was crazy to watch look at this last section that was incredible a lot of risk there and the judges um, being generous and passing a clear message this is what we want to see very impressive indeed. That extra swell filling in, offering big opportunities. We think there's going to be quite a bit of swell tomorrow. Should we get into the forecast? Should we dive into that? Mm. What are we looking at for tomorrow? It's finals day. Obviously, it's our most important heats of the day. We'll have quarters. 
And then head into finals. And a drop-in spell normally isn't what you want, but actually, maybe that's not such a bad thing. Yeah, for here and for the, the big storms we've been having the whole, whole week, uh, it should be fun if the, the swell drops a little. And I think it's going to be actually pretty fun. And then maybe in the afternoon, we're going to have a, a little uh, rising swell again. But I think overall, it should be easier than today. It should be calmer than today. And uh, I think it's going to be a, a nice finals day. Yeah, so there we go. Swell's going to dial down. Might be a bit of wind around. There's going to be waves out here. We are going to be crowning champions tomorrow. Of course, round of 16 still to run for the women as well. So quite a few heats to get through. Quarterfinals are all set for the men. We're going to send you out with highlights. We'll see you back here tomorrow. We're going to have a 6.30 call for a 7 o'clock start. So bright and early, set your alarms. Maybe some bells tonight. Let's see. Either way, we'll see you tomorrow. WorldSurfLeague.com. Ciao for now. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. Some nice morning lights bursting through the clouds that have now broken and some anticipation for a massive day of competition on the European QS game phases. Really good feeling about getting started here this morning at Costa Caparica. Attacking that leap very vertical. Where was it's the massive. I was wrong. Let's have another look at this look again. At this bang. Chuck him shoves. Bang into the white water. Look at that section, that was really hard to make. Uh, this was a bigger section and uh, he blows the fins out. He's hit meanwhile, Karik, what's he got? Air reverse, he'll nail that. Choosing the waves wisely as well, you can see that local knowledge. Really good. That turn of Teresa on the last one was really strong. Yeah, Kika is uh, on point today. It's Camilla Kemp who is going to Dainty to represent the fatherland, Deutschland, and she's blazing this one. Responding to that nice big snap under the lip. Vertical, um, vertical wave, vertical turn too. That was cool. Look at it upside down, really managing very well that white water. Ina Maria, hopes are alive. Hits it really hard, nice snap, using a lot of rail and a lot of power on that one. Highest single score of the event so far. Francisco Ordonhas. He's a powerhouse. I like that pump. Bro, he's got big turns on him, this dude. The only Brit representing and representing it well. He grew up here. He is Portuguese to us. That was a really good wow. first turn cheek. <laughs> Two big turns out the back. Really, really well. So. Buenos Diaz. Pressure, power when needed in most Chico. I think that's going to be the best wave of this round so far. This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League.